Hello. Welcome to the series Max Level Newbie. And first of all, I wanted to say thanks to all of you for 5k subscribers and your great support to this series. This is a 5k special video. If you want to support me financially you can join my Patreon only for $5. My goal is 50 Patreon and then I will become a full-time YouTuber. And special thanks to my first Patreon Zoa C. If you want to support, my Patreon and Discord links are in the description. And thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of the series we see that someone is playing a RPG game and calling it a trash game. It refers to a game that simply isn't fun, or is unbalanced. Or has subpar administration, or has absurd difficulty. The virtual reality game, Tower of Trials, is in this category. When the game was released, Korean gamers, whose hobby was to conquer the game before even the developers expected them to, got on the grind to conquer the game. It continued for 365 days a year, without eating or sleeping. But once three years had passed, people started realizing that the Tower of Trials is an unbeatable game. The Gate Guardian is practically invincible. The Arvidex temperature is minus 60 degrees which kills anyone within an hour. A labyrinth that exceeds 10,000 km square in size. The game wasn't intended for fun. Rather it was almost like a torture for those who play it. Afterwards, the game started declining. To be exact it almost went under. There were still pros who didn't give up challenging this impossibly difficult game. Then a window appears saying you have conquered floor 50. Congratulations. You are the first to have cleared the Tower of Trials. After that we see that our protagonist is standing injured with dagger in his hand, saying is this for real? It was simply fun. The sense of accomplishment that came after researching unknown ways to conquer the tower. And repeating it again and again until it became second nature to finally beat the level. It was enough for me to devote 11 years of my life to it. Then he says, to think that I'd really clear the last floor. Maybe I should have streamed this. Or maybe I could upload this onto YouTube. Then a message popped up saying thank you for playing our game until now. A reboot update is planned to happen in 12 hours, so please continue to enjoy the game after the update. He thinks this is unexpected. They're doing a reboot update. Did they find an oil field in the middle of a desert or something? This really makes no sense. This shouldn't be profitable for them. Oh well they probably have their own thoughts about doing something like this. Even if this game is getting a reboot update, I don't intend on playing this game anymore. Then he put down his headset and says that, I plan on quitting my job as a streamer and a YouTuber, which I have continued up until today. Although I don't have a family to support, I'm already 27 years old. I can't afford to continue living on an income of $500 a month. I should probably tell the gym owner that I won't be working out for a while. He looks outside the window and says that people used to tell me that I should become a professional fighter, but right now, money is more important than fighting. After that, we see he is streaming live. And live chats say what's up today you're early. Then he gets serious and says hey guys, I have something I need to tell you. Someone in the chat says, don't tell me you're getting married or something. Boring. He suddenly starts laughing and says, no, is just wanted to change the way I talked as a joke. He thinks, I should probably just post an announcement about me quitting tomorrow. He goes to sleep after drinking some bottles. Then he wakes up saying damn my head. I should probably upload my Tower of Trials clear video. He turns on his computer and sees a live stream titled that, the Tower of Trials actually became reality. He thinks the Tower of Trials became reality. Then we see a huge mana wave came out of the Tower of Trials. He thinks how could this be? This is the sign of beginnings in the Tower of Trials. Then a message popped up in front of him saying Tower of Trials reboot version first update has been completed. A. Message popped up in front of everyone saying, everyone please clear the next floor of the tower within 90 days. If you fail, humanity will be eliminated. 
Then another message popped up saying, the acceptance of reality for people has greatly increased. Our protagonist thinks that, I need to cool my head off. If the Tower of Trials has really become reality, I can't be here wasting time like this. He is running while thinking, I need to hurry, to the place where I can get that item. The world might end, but despite that, my heart is beating in excitement. Then we see the central city where a lot of people are gathered. Saying what's the fastest train to Busan? Another man says, not even Busan's gonna cut it. We need to get out of Korea. Then a girl says, what are you talking about? That tower appeared in other countries too. Then where can we go? We see that, our protagonist is running behind the people. He thinks now is not the time to retreat, but instead the time to charge in. In the Korean server, this place was selected as an external zone. In the whole country there are 30 or so. This was the closest to me. Then a message popped up saying you are now entering an event zone. The people here, are all people who've played the beginning of the Tower of Trials. They're all glaring at each other. That's natural I guess. The item that will soon appear is limited in quantity, if we're lucky, we might get 5 at most. A man appears behind our protagonist and says, Yo you're Kong Jin, right? It really is you, Kong Jin. Wow, you came here as well, I mean, you did do nothing but play this game all day, hold up in your room. Our protagonist says that, he is Paprika TV partnered streamer he also has 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. Lee Jong Su. In other words, he's a really popular streamer. And at the same time, he was the CEO of the company I was a part of. Our protagonist asks him, isn't it time for one of your scheduled streams? Lee Jong Su says, with things like this, what does streaming even do for me? Anyways, what floor did you hit on this game? Come on, let's gather the secrets together, his former co-workers. Our protagonist thinks, co-workers. His company tricked many streamers into a slave contract. The more they streamed, the more money they'd lose. So my closest friends that I'd been together with since the beginning, had left the industry. Lee Jong Su says, I know you're a great gamer, and you do mukbang streams pretty well. I'll rewrite your contract so we can be on better terms, how's that sound? He says angrily says, Lee Jong Su. The world has changed. Don't talk to me like you're my friend, then he hits him with a headbutt. Our protagonist breaks Lee Jong's two teeth, and thinks that felt great. It should be about time the item comes out. Everything started shaking, and a tree grew up from the ground. Everybody says, it's a mangrove. Our protagonist thinks that, it's really the same as the Tower of Trials. Is this a dream? My memory was right. Then a message popped up saying the mangrove of greed has appeared. Everyone says, wait isn't that. Fruits. The tree has fruits. Each of those delicious looking fruits that are ripening right now, raises strength, agility, health and magic stats. Our protagonist thinks it's a good item for sure but, there are only 4 fruits total. It's going to be a fierce competition. Everyone started pushing each other and started running to the tree. Then Lee Jong Su says to our protagonist, if you had worked with me and split the fruits, we both could have gained benefit. Now we won't get any fruits. Our protagonist says, if you don't know shit, stay put. Now is not the time. Then one of them gets a fruit, he eat it immediately and his agility points increased by 3 points. R. Protagonist says that most people don't even know about the fruit. Those that have played the game a few times will focus on getting the fruit. And people who've no life the game like me. Enjoy the more sadistic and perverted process that follows. A tree branch hits the ground, and one of the other people says, I forgot it become dangerous if you eat all the fruits. It was so long ago that I forgot. Run. I died here at least 50 times. Then Lee Jong Su tries to run. Our protagonist says are you giving up? Lee Jong says, obviously. I don't want to die here like that. Our protagonist says, really? That's a shame. The real prize of this event can only be obtained once you eat all the fruit. 
Li Zhang says, are you serious? Our protagonist replies saying, if I wasn't, why would I still be standing here? Li Zhang thinks, I was wondering why he wasn't going after the fruits. So that was why. I don't know the details, but it seems like a nice opportunity. Li Zhang says, so let's say you're telling the truth what are you suggesting we do? Our protagonist says, we gotta dive in. And we move one by one, we'll be easy targets. So we need to charge from opposite sides at the same time. Li Zhang says, so you want to distract it? Our protagonist says, yes. Remember if even one of us hesitates, we both die. Li Zhang says, don't worry I've played plenty of this game as well. Then our protagonist starts running and say, now. Tree branches attacks our protagonist. Our protagonist thinks what about Li Zhang Su? Li Zhang Su is standing and says you stupid idiot. Who would trust your words? Go ahead and debate. Our protagonist thinks, I'm so glad. You haven't changed. Our protagonist dodges tree branch attack, while saying, the one who is the bait. Is you. The person who is standing further away. The tree branches grabs Li Zhang Su. He asks for help. But our protagonist says, why should I? If you have a problem, take it to court with those lawyers of yours. Tree branches crushes Li Zhang Su to death. Our protagonist says, goodbye, you piece of shit. Next is, he is standing front of the tree alone. Then an attack come towards him he thinks 22 degrees from the left. 35 degrees from the right, he dodges all the attacks like this. He thinks dodging isn't hard. A tree branch hits itself, revealing the hidden fruits. Our protagonist says all right finally. The core of the mangrove has revealed itself. It's exactly the same as what I experienced in the game. With a smile on his face he thinks, yeah, finding out the exact angles the attacks come from and manipulating the attacks to my advantage is the difficult part. Then he picks up a broken branch of the tree. Our protagonist says let's not trouble each other. Why don't you hand over the tree orb? This is an event mob, so it doesn't even give experience. All it does is give you a spot in the hall of fame at best. Then a lot of tree attacks come towards our protagonist. And message window appears saying the mangrove of greed uses the skill vampiric vines. He says even though I am a no lifer, I can't dodge all that. However, then he deflects an attack of the tree with the broken tree branch. He gets only a scratch on his face. Then he thinks however, deflecting the attacks is still definitely doable. A bunch of tree branches merged and attack the protagonist. He thinks there's no need to be scared, and no reason to be afraid. He deflects all the attacks and tries to reach near the tree. And says, it's something I've repeated many times before. After that he thinks, almost there. Then a lot of butterflies come toward him, he says sleep butterflies. He covered his nose with his arm and says, they are monsters who spread sleeping powder as a defense mechanism. It's easy to get done in if you don't take. Countermeasures against breathing in the powder. It's simple to counter though. Just holding your breath suffices. Then jumps towards the orb of the tree. He grabs it. Then a message window popped up saying you're the first to defeat the mangrove of greed. He says. To think the excruciating amount of pattern and timing research would help me in this way. I'm feeling unexpectedly thankful for everything I've done so far. A message window popped up saying your achievements will be recorded in the Hall of Fame for the entirety of tomorrow. Please stat your name. He thinks, as expected. This trash system demands for you personal information to enter the Hall of Fame. He say, I don't have a name. It will all be confidential. I absolutely refuse to release my personal information. I'll get all kinds of attention if it gets found out that I was a former top player. Look like the system won't accept complete confidentiality. It's telling me to settle for a hidden identity. Well it's not like there's nothing I can do about it in the future. This is more important right now. He takes a green pill out the broken tree. A message popped up saying obtain tree essence, tree orb. If each fruit increases strength, agility or magic by three. 
The tree orb gives as much as 12 bonus stats. Considering that leveling up once gives 3 points, it's the same as leveling up 4 times. It's a broken item, there's nothing as cost effective as this even in all the 50 floors. He eats it. He starts glowing. Alright should I check its effect? We see his status window. He has 12 stat points. Level 1 with 12 stat points. I'm the strongest level 1. One hour later, a message popped up saying the video will be uploaded in 10 minutes. The chat exploded. Other than the initial few comments, most of them were disbelief. Saying I got lucky, or that I cheated. But, a message popped up saying the video uploaded. The doubtful reactions disappeared once the video was uploaded. Reactions, although slightly vary, were consistent. Meanwhile on my main account. 100 million 10 billion won one offers started coming. He says, was it really that amazing? Of course, the mangrove of greed isn't easy to beat at level 1. But it's not something to be this surprised about. Well I guess it's understandable since most people haven't played till the mid-late stages of the game. I always forget I shouldn't be using my standards. Anyways, 1 billion, I lived a life that was hard to even a living with. It was common to be late on rent. And I had to starve for several days to collect enough money for mukbang streams. If I was given this opportunity yesterday, I would have accepted it in a heartbeat. But now, I don't plan to share my knowledge for 1 or even 10 billion won. The most important thing right now is. Information. Monopoly. My next destination. The moment the game updated, the leaking mana from the Tower of Trials spread throughout Seoul. It didn't have a significant effect. But if there was one big change. It was that the artifacts outside of the tower became holy artifacts. Of course they were fake. Since the artifacts of legends were within the tower. They were replicas in other words, copies. This is the place where you can get the most replicas. The National Museum of Korea. The National Museum of Korea was basically a reassure chest with countless artifacts stored within it. The problem is I'm not the only one aiming for these replicas. Unlike the mangrove of greed which appeared in seven locations throughout Seoul, there is only one National Museum of Korea. There will be people gathering from each region for the artifacts. And among them will be former top players. Then a message popped up saying, you have entered the event area. It's quieter than I expected. Is no one here yet? He sees a burned dead body and thinks is expected. Someone got here before me. Since the world has chagged, I expected other people to adapt. But the gap between expectations and reality is larger than you could imagine. People have gotten really bold in only a day. What they're aiming for is probably the artifact kept in the Medieval Classical Era Gallery. The artifact that everyone who came here aims to obtain is. The Great Map of the East Land. Of course, I'm not trying to look at the map of Korea. The Great Map, which is now imbued with magic energy. Contains information about the Tower of Trials. That's why everyone wants it. It tells you where the mazes and ruins are, and explains which monsters and items are within them. Who wouldn't want this item? Although it only give information up to the 10th floor. It's more than enough to light the hearts of people ablaze. You everyone will want that. And they will miss the really important artifacts obscured by the mud. Then we see a lot of people are fighting with each other to get the artifacts. After that, a man screams and says everybody freeze. That man says anyone who moves from now on. Will die to me. A man with the hammer says, no one here will listen to your threats. In fact, if you move as much as a single toe, I'll smash your head in. Then other man says, I guess words won't do the trick. His arms turns into stone arms. A girl says he already has a unique ability. Man with hammer say, that's a bit dangerous. Stone arm man says, the map is mine. An old man appears and says, the map is yours. I can't agree with those words. Man with the stone arm says, hey old geezer, are you crazy? Old man says, your mouth is dirty for someone so young. You've got a knife for a tongue. However, 
Which do you think is faster, for you to break my neck, or for me to turn you into coal? Man is surprised to see the old man use magic ability. Old man throws a fireball at him and says him catch. The he turns into coal. Old man says, it was your tongue that brought you misfortune. A school girl says, man fire type magic really is hot. I'm glad I decided to join forces with you. Old man says oh Miss Lee Yuri, did you get the goods? I'll leave my back to you. She says, leave it to me. I just need this guy. If anyone gets in the way, he'll take care of it. Then her statue gets big and strong. She says, anyone moves from now onwards will be seen as an enemy. Got it. I'll make him munch on your head. Let's cooperate, okay. Then everyone throws their weapon and says, I'll give up on the map and whatever else, take it all. She says, thank you. Our protagonist is walking around with hands in his pockets. He says you have really make a mess of this place. Do you all have no respect for history? But at least you didn't tear this. Lee Yuri says, hey Mr. Fearless. Do you think I'm joking right now? She orders her statue. Get him. Her statue, threw his spear at our protagonist. He is standing fearless, in front of the spear with serious face. In this part, we are shown that a spear is coming toward our protagonist. He deflects the spear with one hand. Lee Yuri, get surprised to see how strong our protagonist is. Then other players says, what in world, what did that guy just do? He deflected the spear, is that even possible? He didn't even dodge it. His hand is fine too. Our protagonist thinks, they don't know what my stats are like right now, which is why they are reacting that way. Then he says to Lee Yuri, what are you going to do? Your puppy, its only weapon is gone, isn't it? She puts her hand in her bag, and says, who said so? I have other statues. Then she takes out four more statues from her bag. After that a message popped up saying, artifact the avatar of Anubis replica in coming to life. She says, how's this? Are you still smiling? He says, that's pretty nice. He thinks, seeing that she can operate five statues at the same time with her small mana pool. She's definitely not your average person. Just like the magic using old man from earlier. There's a fair amount of players who've graduated from being a newbie. She says, nice. After that he says, yep, yeah, well, somewhere between decent and nice to be exact. She says, trying to act cool, I don't like you. He says, oh, really? Then I should show you. After that he thinks, if the gap is too large, she won't even be able to comprehend it. I need to show her with her own two eyes. He throws a paper behind. He thinks, the canyon that exists between our levels. Then he puts his mana in the paper he thrown behind with a painting of tiger. A message popped up saying, mana has been injected into the pinewood tiger replica. The ruler of the mountains is appearing. After that, a huge tiger appear besides our protagonist. She is shocked to see that and says, no way. He says, a mere jackal bears his teeth in front of the ruler of the mountain. He orders his tiger, to eat them up. The tiger kills one of her statues with one hit. The tiger eat the statues or destroy them. After that she thinks, no way, I've heard of plenty of different ways to use artifacts but. I've never heard of a method like this. And this magical force. I feel like my skin will tear off. Then she sees, a huge shadow of the tiger. And thinks, I can't win. I thought, I drew the strongest cards. But how? Who is this guy? Then we see our protagonist with a creepy smile. He came near her and said, hand it over. She asks, what are you asking for all of a sudden? He says, the mask of Tutankhamun. She says, it's useless in Korea. What are you even going to use it for? He calls his tiger with a finger. She gets scared and says, fine. I'll hand it over. She takes it out of her bag and gives it to him. A message popped up saying, you have obtained the artifact, the mask of Tutankhamun replica. Our protagonist thinks, alright. With this, I've obtained the second artifact. 
She asks him, are you aiming for the great map of the East Lands? He thinks, map, oh yeah, I forgot about that. He says, you don't need to worry about that. He ordered his tiger, keep guarding this area, so that nobody can follow. Then with a big smile he thinks, the preparations are done. Let's go, to get the strongest skill in the Tower of Trials. After that we see old man is thinking, how is this happening Li Yuri? The old man and our protagonist are standing side by side. The old man thinks, who is he, and how did he come all the way up here? Don't tell me, did he get past Li Yuri to come up? Here. Then we see that, there's a barrier blocking the entrance to the relic room. Our protagonist says, I think it's a one star rank barrier. Old man says, seems like you know about this. I've never seen a barrier like this before. Neither physical nor magical attacks work on this barrier. Then our protagonist touches it and thinks, the spot where the flow of mana diverges. Carpo. I think there is a way to destroy this, but, there is a condition. Old man says, a condition. Our protagonist says, you must be constantly using your flame magic. In order to make the barrier weaker. Old man says, how long would I need to use it for? Our protagonist says until I go inside and come back out, with all the necessary relics. Old man says, so you're saying. While you're inside, I'm just going to stay outside and keep using magic. Our protagonist says, I can't hold magic that's powerful enough to weaken the barrier for a prolonged amount of time. I know you may not trust me, but this is the only way. It'll be morning soon, and we can't get out of here without getting anything, can we? I'll let you keep the map. After all, I am in need of something else. Old man thinks, nothing gained from hard work. That would be the worst possible outcome. Old man says, do you promise to hand over the map to me? Our protagonist says, of course. I wouldn't want to make an enemy out of a high ranking magic ability user. Old man thinks, no matter how hard I think about it, there is only one conclusion. I guess I'll have to trust him. Old man says, very well then I will trust you this time. Our protagonist says, then, I'll be in you care, grandpa. Old man says, I'll try my best. After that, old man uses his magic on the barrier, with full power. Then our protagonist says, here I go. Carpo. He jumps through the gate. Inside the room, old man says, hurry. Our protagonist says, all right. Our protagonist thinks, I'm planning on trying my best. In my own way, of course. We see there are a lot of relics untouched. He thinks, it doesn't seem like anyone has been here, unlike the lower floors. Except for this, of course. Then a message popped up saying, the iron sword that has Qianlong inscribed on it. He thinks, that guy. He already finished his business here and left. And I'm sure he's the one who put up the barrier. He's planning of leaving after taking what he wants, whether other people are fighting or not. He's still not trying to risk anything, but I'm sure even you didn't know of this. Our protagonist says, this one, and this one, and. That the relic you took is nothing but a second-rate relic. Found it. Songpyeong Tongbo D rank. My personal inherent ability. The last puzzle piece. Required to make the most powerful skill. The materials I need are. Ceremonial Persian Formwork Rank E. And the Right Eye of the Tutankhamun's Mask Rank B. By combining the two relics. A message popped up saying the two relics are reacting. It's a message that only pops up when relics that fit each other are met. And at the same time, it's a message. Telling me to pay the appropriate price if, I want to continue. Then he breaks the relic Sangpyeong Tongbo rank D. And drop it on the other two relics. After that a message popped up saying, the three relics are reacting with each other. Another message popped up saying, you have successfully combined the relics, against all odds. You have acquired the relic the Eye of Truth rank SS. After that a skill window appears, the Eye of the Truth. Obtaining difficulty, SS. Details. 
You are able to browse through other status windows, and you can tell whether one is telling truth or lying. Three times a day, our protagonist thinks, the eye of truth is the greatest eye, out of the five eyes that exist in the world. But there is another reason why I came. To the museum today, quest window popped up saying, hidden quest, you have successfully combined three replica relics of B rank, or lower to craft an item of S rank or higher. You have met the requirements. He thinks, copying and storing the many abilities that exist in this world. And using those skills to create an even stronger skill. That is my weapon. In order to become the strongest, in the Tower of Trials. You have acquired the inherent ability, fusion over rank. Memory of the world is being created. Then a skill appears, inherent ability fusion. Obtaining difficulty, a measurable overlink. Details, by completing specific quests, you are able to copy and store others, inherent skills in the memory of the world, and fuse the skills to create skills of higher dimensions. However, if the difficulty of the condition for copying a skill surges, the condition may be partially changed. Then the old man says, if you're done, hurry up and, I don't think I can hold on for much longer. After that our protagonist says, let's see in order to copy that old man's ability. Let's see what I need to do. He uses his ability on the old man. A message popped up saying, copy condition, Min Jungwoo has always been hiding his true feelings under a mask. Make him reveal his true feelings. Our protagonist says, in other words, I just need to piss him off. The old man says, hurry up. Our protagonist says, you can stop using that skill now. The old man looked at our protagonist with a shocked face. Our protagonist says, we actually didn't need to do it that way. The old man nervously asks, what do you mean? Then why'd you tell me to use my skill? Our protagonist says, Carpo. He thinks, I disabled the force field easily with a Latin dispelling magic. The old man did nothing for the opening of the gate. What's attacking a force field like that going to do? All it does is waste your mana. With this, that old man's magic reserves have nearly been emptied. Now that I've made preparations, it's time to make him mad. I know the tower through and through already. So that means that this map with information up to the 10th floor is useless to me. But that doesn't mean I'm going to give it away. After that our protagonist lights a lighter. The old man loudly says, what are you doing? Our protagonist with an evil smile says that, didn't I tell you earlier? I don't need this. Then our protagonist burns the map and thinks, if someone has the map, they gain information up to the 10th floor, which might decrease my advantage of knowledge that I have on others. Then the best thing to do is to get rid of that possibility. The old man angrily says that, why would you burn it? You son of a b I'll kill you. I'll grind you to a pulp. You. Then a message popped up saying that, the conditions have been met. After that, a skill card start forming above his head. Another message popped up saying, you have successfully copied, the element of fire rank B. The copied skill will be saved in the memory of the world. Then our protagonist thinks, the element of fire, it's not a bad start considering it's my first copy. The old man angrily says that, you'll regret this. I'll make you pay. Our protagonist with an epic and evil look on his face says that, I don't think you quite understood. Did you not comprehend why I burned the map? After that our protagonist uses, the element of fire ability in front of the old man. The old man is shocked and thinks, that's the same skill as mine. But the power of his skill exceeds mine greatly. He's not your ordinary guy. Considering he doesn't need something like the map. Old man says, what are you? After that our protagonist says, old man, if you want to climb the tower comfortably, you better listen to my words. Then we see that, R. Protagonist is outside of the museum and thinking that, there were only four former high rankers, that appeared in the museum, including me. Now that the tower of trials has become reality, I understand why they would want to reduce their risk. However, they expect to be ahead of others by acting like that. 
I need to gain as many abilities and skills as possible. After that our protagonist says to old man that, I'll contact you later. Go level up together with the girl downstairs. I gained some pawns that is can use as I please. But there's still a long way to go. I need to set my priorities straight and get the abilities I need. I'm only one person, so I probably can't make it to every opportunity. But the most important and delicious ones, are all mine. After that, his stomach starts to make sound, he says, anyway, I'm reaching my limit. Then our protagonist go to a restaurant. There is a news on the television, about the incident in the museum. The similar incidents are occurring all across the world. Our protagonist thinks that, as I thought, the players of other countries are making their move, in preparation to climb the tower. After that, the footage of the museum was shown on the television. Then, a breaking news appears, the government is currently investigating the unidentified structure known as the Tower of Trials. And have used government workers that have gained special powers. To establish a new department called the Awakened Association. Our protagonist thinks, the Awakened Association. The government is responding faster than I thought. Seeing as how they've created a department with people who've awakened. They've probably decided to accept this new change already. That's unexpected. I thought it would take at least few weeks. After that the person on television says, we have brought a related guest to speak with. Another person show up saying, my name is Han Sangjin. And I am the chairman of the Awakened Association. The reason I came here today is to recruit those that have awakened. There might be difference depending on your ranks. But we will guarantee you a minimum salary of 60 million won and treat you with the benefits of a 7th class government worker. Of course, the person who just appeared on video is an exception. I will make this offer while swearing on my name. If you join us, the government will support you in every way possible. After that our protagonist thinks with a smile, the person who just appeared on video is an exception. So their goal was me in the end. They've been treating me like a complete tool. No matter what they try to offer me, I have no intentions on joining others. In this world, the value on one extremely well-trained individual is higher than that of a hundred average individuals. Han Sangjin knows that too, and that's why he decided to offer a blank check as a means to persuade me. Han Sangjin, if he's been selected as the president, it must be because he possesses the skill to back it up. If not, it must be because he has the most experience within the Tower of Trials. He says with a slight smile I really hope that it's because, he has a nice skill. That way, it will be more interesting for me to copy. After that our protagonist says, tonight at 7pm. When the hour hand points at the new hour. The Tower of Trials, will open. Then a message popped up saying, the Tower of Trials has now been opened. After that we see inside the tower there is a huge green land with some small floating islands. And all the players are entering the tower through a portal. Our protagonist is standing behind everyone. Then someone in the crowd says, it's exactly the same as it was before. I still can't believe it, damn it. Our protagonist thinks it seems like they're all newbies. A message popped, up saying a celebration for entering the tower. You have been provided with 100 coins. Coins are the currency that can be used within the tower. Players can upload videos that record their accomplishments, and earn 100 coins for every 10,000 views. However, there will be a premium charge based on the player's status. All players within the tower that watch videos will only have their first 10,000 views count. So, please be careful before deciding on which videos to watch. The live broadcast function can only be used when dealing with the boss to go to the next level. Then a warning message popped up saying, if one is found to be manipulating view counts or using other forms of cheating, there will be adequate punishment. After that our protagonist says yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The bridge between people that want to climb the tower and those who want to continue living outside the tower. The broadcast system 
Viewers will choose to watch players that have a higher chance of showing off the top of the tower, thus increasing their views. After that we see that, a lot of players are streaming live. Our protagonist says, of the functions within the Tower of Trials, this is the most interesting one of them all. The more famous you become, the more coins you can earn. After that we see that, everyone is running to get a good spot to farm. They are bumping with our protagonist, our protagonist is standing calm while thinking they're all in such a hurry. They want to try clearing it as soon as possible and try to be ahead of everyone else or be rich. Earning coins should be easy. Since I know everything about this place. However, I don't have any intentions on uploading a video first. Rather than relying on the videos to earn coins, sharing the information that I know would be a greater loss. I already know what's that first thing I have to do. Something special that nobody else would do first. While we were clearing the lower 30 levels of the tower, there was a time where we couldn't proceed any further. In order to go to the next level, we needed to look for hidden pieces within the lower levels. And that meant retracing our steps from our previous experiences. In the end, we were able to find the solution in an abandoned ruin. And that was when, we found out, the fact that my character was flawed from the start. For this to be the result we found after all this time. For the character that I spent years growing. To be shit. Then a message window appeared saying, would you really like to delete your character? He says, I devoted everything to this, so, why was this the answer? No, even the time I spent regretting was a waste. I'll need to start over. Then he presses yes. After that we see, a delete icon in progress bar above our protagonist's head. He says with an epic look on his face, next time, I'll reach the top. He thinks was that already six years ago. Then we see that he is standing in front of a huge door. A message popped up saying. Name, Labyrinthos. Type, Labyrinth. Difficulty, B. He thinks, the cornerstone of getting beyond 30 floors is building your foundation. The key to figuring that out is within this maze, Labyrinthos. He says with a gloomy face that, I never thought I would have to go through this again. Even then, although I hate it, it has a sense of nostalgia. He inserts the key, and open the door of the maze, and says, let's go. Inside the maze there are some glowing butterflies are flying around. He says, this scene, this smell, it's all the same as before. Then a butterfly lands on his finger, he says, it's nice seeing you, luminescent moth. But, after that four people appears in the maze. He says, who are you people? Then a girl says, nice to meet you. We were looking for a place to farm, but decided to come in here before the labyrinth closed. After that we see 10 minutes before entering. A man says while looking toward our protagonist, I know we followed him because there might be something. But isn't that a labyrinth? He went to the labyrinth right after entering the tower, what is he planning? He even opened the door without a key. The girl says, let's go in too. Another man says, go in. Even though we don't know how big or dangerous it might be. The girl says, try thinking about it with that brain of yours. You all should know that, the early parts of the Tower of Trials are the most important parts, right? He opened a labyrinth without a key for it. And if someone who was level 1 went in, it must mean that it's not that difficult. Well, I guess it is a labyrinth on the first floor. Another girl says, but do you think that, that guy will just nicely share the items with us? She says with an evil smile, of course he won't do that. All we have to do is let him have his eternal rest inside the labyrinth. After that she says to our protagonist that, we can all share the risk of danger together. Our protagonist thinks with an evil and epic look on his face, is she trying to fool me while believing in her numbers? Is she the leader? He uses his eye of truth ability on her. She says, my name is Park Hannah. I'm 22, and I have once reached the second floor of the Tower of Trials before. He sees her skill list and says, this girl has quite an interesting skill. Level 1, Commune. 
A skill window appeared saying that, commune, can naturally became friendly with anyone, even strangers. This skill can completely erase feelings of discomfort. A copy condition window appears saying, cooperate with Park Hanna for at least 240 hours. However, once 240 hours pass, there must be no one nearby you and Park Hanna. He thinks a girl with black wings and white ears while saying, commune, it'll be helpful when dealing with her down the road. After her other partners introduces themselves. Our protagonist introduce himself as well by saying, I'm Kong Jin Hyuk. He turns around and thinks, they're obviously going to stab me in the back later, so there's no need to remember each of their names. Park Hanna grabs our protagonist's arm and says, then, Mr. Jin Hyuk. Up to what floor have you played the Tower of Trials? A message popped up saying, Park Hanna has activated the skill level 1 commune. He moves her to the side and thinks, so you use it like this. If I didn't know about it, I might have become intimate with her. He says to her that, I've gone up as far as I can. She says, wow, is that so? And thinks, what's with him? The commune skill should be in effect, strange. After that she asks him, then please tell us what kind of monsters are here and their traits, please. He says, I can do that much. This labyrinth, changes at fixed time intervals. She says, what? With a nerves expression on her face. Then the labyrinth suddenly started shaking. She says, what's this? Shouldn't this only be a labyrinth on the first floor? Then the wall starts to move around at rapid speed. They all barely manage to survive. One of them says, I don't see Mina. Other one says, to think there is a labyrinth like this on the first floor. Our protagonist says, haven't you all experienced terrain changing labyrinths at least once? She says, this is too dangerous for level 1 players. We need to get out of here ASAP. She asks to Min that, can you find the exit? You should be able to do that with your skill. Min says, the skill activation was cancelled when the labyrinth was changing. Park Hanna says, then you can't find the exit. We're trapped in here. Our protagonist thinks, I was wondering why they entered the labyrinth so confidently. It seems like, they were only relying on a navigation skill. These newbies must have thought of a labyrinth as a neighborhood supermarket. Well, these idiots aside, it should be showing itself soon. She looks at our protagonist with anger and says, Hey, you, why didn't you tell us about something as important as the labyrinth changing earlier? The walls were flying at us. We were injured after just frantically dodging the pieces. We almost died because of you. That's right. He's hogging all the information. We got separated from Mina because of you. He says with a calm expression, Hey, did I ask you to follow me? She says, what? His eyes started glowing and he says, You guys just decided to follow me on your own. I didn't drag you in here by force. One of them gets way too angry and says, this bastard just keeps talking shit. We're already feeling like shit just being trapped in here. I didn't like you from the moment we met. Yeah, since things already turned out like this. Then a big axe hits him killing him in the process, he falls to the ground. After that we see, a minotaur a bull monster is running toward them to attack. Minotaur grabs his axe and gets ready to attack. Park Hanna thinks, we're going to die. Our protagonist loudly says, out of the way, after that he runs towards the Minotaur. Park Hanna says, what's he doing? He reaches near the Minotaur. The Minotaur swing his axe with full force to attack our protagonist. Our protagonist jumps to dodge the attack. Then a message popped up saying you dodged the attack. He smiles and thinks alright. He gets a scratch on his shoulder. Then a message popped up saying, you obtained the hidden state rift. Let's begin. In this part we are shown that Minotaur attacks RMC with a huge axe. RMC dodges the attack by jumping up. A message popped up saying, you dodged the attack. He's smiling and says, alright. There is cut on his shoulder and he is happy about it. After that a message popped up saying, you obtained the hidden stat, rift. 
Rift, a stat that reduces the difference between you and an opponent of a much higher level, and increase the difference between you and a weaker opponent. RMC thinks, when fighting an opponent stronger than you, it reduces their level by 1 for every 3 points in this stat. He grabs the horn of the Minotaur and jumps down. He says, the best way to grow is a level 1. After endless trials and errors, this was the only method I could find. The Minotaur lifts the axe and attacks the MC again and again. RMC thinks, I've already been hit by his attacks tens of thousands of times before. His stat rift increases by 0.05. He says, his attack pattern has already been etched into my body. His stat rift increases by 0.05 again. He dodges Minotaur's attacks left and right, his stat rift increases a lot. He says, I am, a former top player. Minotaur attacks him again, he dodges the attack by doing a backflip. His stat rift increases by 0.05 again. He says no matter how strong the attack is, it's useless if it doesn't hit. The other three who were trying robe RMC are shocked to see him dodge Minotaur's attacks like this. One of them says, my god, we were about to go against someone like that. Park Hanna says, I was stupid to think I could kill him and take the rewards. I must have been insane. After that we see that Minotaur is still attacking our protagonist and he says, slow. Too slow. Since you're swinging like that, are you even trying to hit me? The Minotaur gets angry and swings his axe again. Armic says, the way to get stronger quickly is simple. Gamble with your life on the line. As the Minotaur's axe is about to hit the protagonist's neck, he barely dodged it with a little scratch on his neck. He says, the higher the risk, the higher the rewards. A message popped saying you have just barely evaded a fatal attack. Stat rift has increased by 1. Our protagonist thinks getting 1 stat point for just a scratch isn't a bad exchange. He says alright, it would probably be dangerous if I keep doing this. He says, I should wrap it up. After that we see that Park Hannah and her group is trying to escape. Our protagonist says, wow, look at them. The extras are trying to exit the stage. Park Hannah says we'll find the exit as long as we follow the walls. After that we see that, Armic is standing behind Park Hannah saying, where are you guys going? She gets scared to see him. As Minotaur is about to attack, our protagonist says if you also want some stats, why don't you guys join me? You'll receive a hidden stat if you evade his attacks. It's easier than it looks give it a try. We should all share something so great, no. Minotaur gets ready to unleash a big attack, our protagonist grabs Park Hanna's arm. Minotaur uses his attack, his attack destroy a bunch of stuff around the area. One of them dies and the other are shocked and scared to see that. RMC smiles and says, why would you just stand there doing nothing? At least, you should duck or increase the distance. Out MC stands in front of Minotaur ready to fight says, right you calf. Then the labyrinth starts to change again. RMC waves his hand in front of Minotaur and says, I'll see you later. After that Minotaur gets angry and starts to attack. Park Hanna and her friend says, Min Gook, and even Hyaman, we almost died, too. Did we lose it? It won't chase us anymore, right? Then our protagonist says, the dust of the luminescent moth that I touched earlier attracts the Minotaur. She asks him, why are you doing something so crazy? He says, obviously, to increase my stats. After that he says, I rest every time the labyrinth changes and recover my health and play with the Minotaur when he come at me. Efficient right. She says, for how long do we need to? Our protagonist says, until we escape the labyrinth. For a month. They get sacred and says, 30 more days in this hellish place. She says, we'll go on our own. If you're not with us, then that means we won't be chased by that monster. Our protagonist give an evil smile and says, that's true, but where will you go? It's even more dangerous to wander aimlessly. She says, then, does that mean you know where the exit is? 
He says, as I've said before, I know this labyrinth better than anyone. Of course, I know where the exit is as well. She thinks, so there's no way to escape by ourselves. It can't be helped. Then we'll accompany. Our protagonist says, nothing is free in this world. Even buses have fares. He puts the dagger toward her neck and say, spit out all of you coins. After that we see that a player is fighting some monster and doing live streams. He has over 1 million views. He says, it really worked. See, they just eat this stuff up. The notice board is filled with stuff about Yu Myung Wan. Fighting all those goblins was worth it. We can get a hundred coins with the view count alone. It's thanks to all your hard work. Thanks, guys. People probably think you did it all by yourself. It was edited pretty well, and we only provided subtle support. There's no way they'll find out we gave him some buffs. Someone in the comment named Human Bald Male says 15 hours is not that short of a time. Someone I know cleared it within 5 hours. Myung Wan says, Human Bald Male. What a party pooper. Some people just say things to ruin the mood. Don't be so depressed. The world is usually dominated by talented trailblazers. After that a message popped up saying a new video has been uploaded to the Hall of Fame. Myung Wan says, what the hell is this? Crazy. Plus 10 reinforcement. Myung Wan is shocked to see that and says, that's impossible. How can something like this happens? After that we see, 10 minutes ago, our protagonist says, now, pay attention. Don't stand there like poles and go to you jobs. We need to get some moss to sleep on, and some firewood to make a fire. We have a lot to do. Park Hannah says, alright. No need to nag at us. We'll go. He says, now, should I get started as well? Store. A message popped up saying, welcome to the store. He has 5000 coins. He says, since I got some coins. Let's see. This and this. He buys one enchanted tarot cards rank F for 70 coins. And one worn down bronze key fragment rank F for 80 coins. And wooden cartwheel fragment rank E for 300 coins. After that he buys 10 lottery reinforcement scroll rank F for 10 coins. He says, they seem like trash that no one would buy, but. What's important is how you use them. After that he says, I will combine these three items. A message popped up saying, three items are being combined. Combination successful. Goddess of luck, Fortuna's wheel of fortune, incomplete. Acquisition difficulty, S. Description, increases the luck stat to the maximum for 10 minutes, one time use. However, since it is incomplete, there will be restriction to its range of usage. He says, success. Luck with restricted range. If you do not know the maximum range of luck, the work you did to obtain that luck may just become a futile effort. However, I know exactly where that range is, since I've experienced it throughout my life. He uses the goddess of luck item. Then a message popped up saying you maximum luck value has increased. He brings out reinforcement scrolls and says, the probability of a successful reinforcement is 0.0000012%. The reinforcement scrolls are known for their terrible probabilities. But when my luck is maxed out, probability of success 100%. He uses all of them on the dagger. A lot of reinforcement is successful messages popped up. And then a message popped up saying you have obtained old dagger plus tent max. His dagger gets covered in purple lighting. A message popped up saying. Bonus achievement. You are the first to create a plus 10 item in the Korean server. You have obtained 5000 coins. This achievement will be posted to the hall of fame. Then he swings around the dagger to check it out. He says, I've finally got something usable. Park Hannah and her friend are sitting scared and saying, day 10 of this hellish life. We made bonfire out of twigs, slept on a bed made of moss, and have had nothing to eat but mushrooms and moss. And we see that our protagonist is sleeping on a bed of moss. The next day those are running and he is fighting the monster to increase his stats. The minotaur appeared at the fixed time. 
the life or death labyrinth changed. And that bastard easily handled it all. Park Hannah no more. We'll really die at this rate. We'll just be thrown away after being used by that devil. She is slowly talking to her chat. She says, have you found out anything about that guy? No one knows about him anything, she says, to think I selected these pieces of trash to support me from outside the tower. Stop blabbering. Did you tell my brother about the situation here? What did the Crow Guild say? People in chat says, Guild is also investigating. She says, I have to endure this for three more weeks. Her friend asks her, Hannah, what did the guild members say? What are they doing? Hannah says, they have absolutely no information. I've been thinking, if we kill this bastard and wait in that stone chamber we found until Big Brother arrives. We can definitely survive through this hell. The problem is figuring out how to kill him. Isn't it our chance to kill him while he's sleeping? Let's get it over with. Everyone dies when their head gets split open. As Park Hannah's friend is about hit him. She grabs his hand says wait. He says, what? She replies, that man's reaction speed is monstrous. We have no chance of winning, whether it be a frontal assault or a surprise attack. He'll most likely wake up and counterattack the moment you attack. He says, then what are we supposed to do? We can't keep being abused like this. She says, who says we'll continue being abused? Don't you know my older brother is part of the Crow Guild? He gave me this to use in dangerous situations. A deadly poison that can kill a hundred trolls with one drop. A giant bumblebee stinger. If we're doing this, let's go all the way. With something that he can't handle. After a while when they sight down to eat our protagonist is not very happy and says, is it roasted moss and mushrooms again? It feels like I'm in a survival show. Hannah says, what else is there to eat here? Why don't you catch and eat some bats or moths? He thinks so feisty. Our protagonist says, Miss Park Hannah. Can you pass me the water behind you? Mr. Chul Shik, please give me some more mushrooms and moss. They do what our protagonist says. Our protagonist says, let's eat. Park Hannah thinks. He's acting like he's the master. They both think he ate it. He throws the plate. Chul Shik throw up. And dies. Our protagonist says, idiot. Did you think I would carelessly eat whatever you guys give me? Park Hannah says, you knew that it was poisonous. Yeah, when is asked you to? Give me more, I made a quick switch while you guys were distracted. After that he opens the report button and says, and you guys hidden broadcasts are an illicit act. She says what are you talking about? Do you have proof? Let's see here. Live broadcasts can only be turned on when fighting the boss to go to the next stage. If any illicit acts such as viewer count manipulation, etc. are caught, appropriate measures will be taken. Then a message popped up saying in no illicit act are discovered, the reporter will receive a penalty. Will you continue with the report? He says, you should pay attention to you expression when you're broadcasting. It's so obvious. You're only at this level. Park Hannah what a disappointment. He presses yes. She gets shrouded by warning messages. A message popped up saying report confirmed anonymity has been removed. Everyone her broadcast gets scared and start to leave the broadcast one by one. Her viewers count go to zero. Viewers related to this incident cannot watch videos for the next month. If caught for the second time, they will be banned permanently. She says, what happened to them? Where did they got? A message popped up saying penalty to the involved paler. Has been changed to a harsh fate. Then suddenly Minotaur appears on the scene. She says, you'll fight it again this time, right? She hides behind him and says, just tell me where I need to go. He says, Miss Park Hannah you're quite shameless. You just tried to poison me. So why should I tell you anything? She says, what do you mean, you were telling me things up until now. Then a message popped up saying condition has been fulfilled. You have succeeded in copying the skill commune rank C. He looks at her with an angry look and says, you're no longer needed. She says, wait, you'll regret this. My older brother is in the crow guild. 
Minotaur attacks them. Our protagonists jump in the air to avoid the attack and she gets hit by the shock wave. He says what carefully from over there. Between that stupid guild and me. Which you should fear more. He attacks the Minotaur on the head with his dagger. He says, still too shallow. Minotaur tried to hit the protagonist with a powerful punch. He dodges the attack and says, it's still receiving damage. It was worth it to raise Rift. Regardless, I can't kill it. If that's the case, he dodges another attack by sliding on the ground and says, I just need to make it so that I can. He uses element of fire attack. Minotaur blocks the attack with the axe. Protagonist appears behind the Minotaur and cut his legs. Minotaur falls. Our protagonist says, don't flail around so much. The meat gets too though if there's too much muscle. Almost there. The moment that he reveals his trump card. After that a message popped up saying the guardian of the labyrinth Minotaur has activated level 10 berserker. Minotaur gives a loud scream and he gets a power up. He muscles get bigger. Minotaur gets surrounded by green aura. Our protagonist is calm and standing there blocking the wind. On the other hand Hannah is scared and says, how are we supposed to defeat something like that? A skill description popped up saying the Minotaur's attack power, attack speed, and movement speed increase by 30% for 5 minutes from the moment of activation. Additional option temporarily increases intelligence. Able to speak a language. Minotaur says, human I'll rip you to shreds. And scatter you pieces all over the dungeon. So that you can never trespass into this dungeon again. Our protagonist says, his magic power efficiency feels higher than before. Not bad. Bring it. Minotaur attacks our protagonist and says I'll crush you. Our protagonist deflects the attack they with do it attack. again and again. Park Hanna is shocked to see the battle end. Says, how can this be? He's not dodging anymore, but rather blocking by redirecting the force of the attack. It's a booze monster that has activated a skill over level 10. Not even the full force of the Crow Guild could be a match for it. But how can that crazy bastard be laughing in this situation? Our protagonist says, it felt like time had stopped. I hated the reality that felt like I was at a standstill no matter how much I ran, and felt powerless within this reality where nothing ever changed. Whether it be reality or a game, their difficulties are both hell. But, then a message popped up saying, Rift stat points obtained, 57. This world responds to me. His Rift stat is increasing as he is fighting the Minotaur. He dodges the attacks left and right, again and again. Minotaur gets ready to punch our protagonist and says, You're full of cheap tricks human. You can only make scratches on my body. Minotaur punch stops right before hitting the protagonist, and protagonist is calmly standing there. He did not even try to dodge it. Then a message popped up saying the guardian of the labyrinth Minotaur's level 10 berserker skill has ended. Our protagonist says 5 minutes have passed. The berserker skill can exert power beyond the individual's limits for 5 minutes. However, there is a penalty of the individual falling into a suspended state for 24 hours after that. A message popped up saying, the guardian of the labyrinth minotaur will fall into a suspended state for 24 hours. He says 57 rift stat points. In terms of levels, the gap will be reduced by 19 levels. He says 20 days left. I can easily reach my objective of 100 points in that time. She says is it over. He just can't move after his berserker skill ended. After the labyrinth changes and 24 hours pass he'll come to chase us again. There are still 20 days left. 20 days later. Minotaur gets ready attacks. Our protagonist says a right horizontal slash. A message popped up saying, the rift stat has increased by 0.015. And then a low slash. Rift stat points obtained 100. Finally. Got it. Anyway, why does it feel like you're getting weaker as time passes? Must be my imagination. He hits the minotaur with a powerful punch in the face. Time to say goodbye, calf. He says to her I guess the only thing left is how to dispose of you. She says, dispose. 
He says, we will now begin recruiting interns for our veteran company. She says, intern, you're lacking enthusiasm. I guess you're not interested. She says, I am please let me join. I've always wanted to enter this company. He says good, what a passionate applicant. Then, here's a question for you. Tell me what you have to offer that can benefit the company. She says, sociability. My exclusive skill commune will definitely be of use for the management of the company. He thinks it's not exclusive anymore. What else? She says, I'll never betray you. He says, that's it. There's nothing else you have to offer. What disappointment. We will now announce the results. The first successful internship recruitment of the veteran company. She says, no, that's please give me time to think. Our protagonist says, never happened. She says, Bram's ring. I'll give you Bram's ring. My brother said he'll be negotiating with China as payment for offering them Korean ginseng. So please spare my life. He thinks Bram's ring is going to fall into the hands of the Crow Guild. Bram's ring. One of the best items you can obtain on the first floor. It increases movement speed, grants magic resistance, and even has the ability to suppress the magic power of monsters. It has three useful options. He activates the Eye of Truth. And Hannah's words are the truth. He says, it doesn't seem like she's messing around. Congratulations. You have passed and have become an intern of the veteran company. She thinks, I'm saved. Our protagonist says, our company does not give wages to interns. You must come running to me whenever I call you, wherever you are. I don't care, whether it be 3 a.m. or if you're on Jeju Island, so keep that in mind. Now most importantly, time to fill out a contract. She says, a contract. I have to fill out something like that. A message popped up saying you have read the memory of the world. He says, yes of course you do. He combined skill commune rank C and element of fire rank B. A message popped up saying the two skills will be combined. He says, it'll get a bit hot. A message popped up saying you have obtained brand of tribulation rank A. He grabs her by the shoulder. She says that's the contract. He says, did you think you'd put a seal on some piece of paper or something? Congratulations for entering our black company, intern. A message popped up saying brand of tribulation will be engraved on Park Hannah's face. Then a skill window appears saying brand of tribulation x question difficulty rand a. Description, engraves a brand on a subject. The branded subject must obey you commands. The subject is restricted from any action that can harm you. If the subject breaks this restriction, their entire body will ignite in flames under excruciating pain. Ah, I see light. A message popped up saying, you are the first to clear the labyrinth on the first floor. She say, we survived. We really survived. Message popped up saying, this will be recorded in Hall of Fame tomorrow. 5000 coins will be paid to each player who cleared the dungeon. She say, Kuhu, I'm being reward for all of my suffering. Intern. She say, yes director. He say, hand them over. She give all his coins to protagonist. Protagonist think, with this, I have over 10,000 coins. There shouldn't be any players at this moment who have more coins than me. He say, ah, get me Bram's ring in three days. She say, number, three days is too short. He say, two days. She say, yes I'll get it no matter what. We see a reporter saying, in one week the, Dangan, Guild will mobilize as the representatives of Korea to clear the third floor boss monster. By the Dangan Guild, you mean the top guild in South Korea. Yes, since Evanth us, Europe and Japan having hard time. All the attention has been shifted to South Korea. Is China still keeping quite about the matter? Yes, rather than hoping for assistance from other countries, wouldn't it be better to look for a way to clear it with our own strength? I think the Dangan Guild is more than capable of clearing it. Protagonists say, they're trying to clear the third floor boss monster after only one month. How much do they want to regret it later on? I understand their impatience. 
They must want to monopolize the countless resources that exist in the tower. However, 90 days are given to clear each floor. In other words, there's no need to even go to the second floor, much less the third floor. If you increase the difficulty with weak foundations, when you reach a wall, the pressure felt by the difficulty will be much fiercer. There are no retries after human extinction. For now, let's gather information about what happened during the month. To gain reliable info in a place overflowing with groundless rumors and fake info. I need people I can trust. Sources that I've known for a while and can trust. He searched something in his mobile and say, as expected they are the only ones. We see a boy introducing himself, hello, I'm human bald male. My real name is Lee Taman. A girl say, I'm nuclear fist of Bulguang district. My real name is Yu Yangwa. Protagonists say, they've changed a bit from their gaming days. To think I would meet with the veterans that I played with two years ago in the Tower of Trials. We see the message saying, you have activated level 1 foot eye of truth. We see the states of Lee Tarman, his level, age, sex and coins etc. He has exclusive ability, Machine King. It has no flaws other than its large magic power consumption. It is an exclusive ability that specializes in large-scale battles. After that we see the states of Yu Yanwa, her name, age, level and coins etc. She has exclusive ability, Kyokoshin Taekwondo. It's an exclusive ability designed for close proximity tanking and damage dealing. Since their levels are similar they must have houted together. Indeed, they were pretty compatible back in the day as well. We see a message saying, copy condition, these two peoples are comrades that you've accompanied for a long time. Once the three of you reach the 20th floor, you can copy Lee Taman's and Yu Yanwa's abilities. Lee say, Hung, what are you doing? It's your turn. He say, ah, my name is Jin Hyuk. My nickname is Poop Fart. Why did I name my character that 11 years ago? I'm 27, and I was a streamer on Paprika TV. Lee say, you were a streamer. I watched Paprika from time to time. I'm no longer streaming now. Hung, you can so eat comfortable with us. We've been together for so long in a game. Yeah, we'll be more comfortable like that as well. Hung say, okay, I'll speak comfortably. Then, their social skills are through the roof. There were those who tried to use me. And those who tried to stab me in the back. I'm tired of dealing with people like them. Although it's my first time meeting them in real life, I feel comfortable. Taman and Yanwa told me about the events that occurred during my month's stay in Labton. The movements of the representative guilds around the world. The trends of the streamers. And, the group that call themselves, Demon, who kidnap people and operate a coin factory. Lee say, Hung, you said that you were somewhere else for a month. He say, yeah. Then, did you not take the test yet? Hung say, test. Lee say, people have been flooding to the Tower of Trials ever since it appeared. However, size the number of casualties increased dramatically ever since the second floor. The Awakened Association restricted entry into the tower to those who passed the ear test. You say, after you pass it, you get this certification code. Hung Think, Awakened Association President, Han Sangjin. He's using the increase in casualties as an excuse to recruit the powerful people hiding in the shadows. If it has to come, then that fucking system made by the association. I'll exploit it as much as I can. After the appearance of Auckland Association, players who recess ranks below F rank, are deprived of their rights to even climb up to the second floor. In contrast to that, if you receive a high rank, you will immediately be stormed with calls from nation and high level guilds. Therefore, only three kinds of people gather at the test site. Those who desperately want the right to climb the tower. Please, please give me a good rank. I'm not even hoping for D rank just give me at least E rank. Those who gathered to estimate the qualification of those wanting to climb the tower. Which guild will take this time a rank? There need to be some sort of scope today. And those who want to show off their qualifications to the whole world. 
It's Park Hannah. Park Hannah of the Black Crow Guild. Is she the one who survived the labyrinth? Next to her is Park Hajin, the future of the Black Crow Guild. Wait, look behind them. Kim Kate of the Fighting Father Guild is also here as well. Don't miss a single moment. Kim say, why are there so many people here? Can anyone just take the test now? Hajin say, I think it's there are many people hoping to strike gold. He say, there's no time so move the people waiting in line. We can't afford to stay here for hours when the reporters are waiting. I came all the way here because of you siblings, so don't mess up. You know what will happen if you do, right? They both say, please don't worry, we'll do well. Guards say, get out of the way. Can't you see someone's trying to pass through? Move to the side. Hurry up. You'll get a beating if you keep dawling. What the hell are you doing are you deaf? Hung say, move. Why should I? I'm waiting for my turn after getting number after getting my number, so why should I move? Hajin say, what the hell? You can't even get rid of one person. I don't know who you are, but you are making a huge mistake. It's not too late, so fuck off now. Is that person standing up to Park Hajin? He must want to die is he insane? Park Hajin, is he the brother that Park Hanna was talking about? We see a message saying, you have activated level 1 foot eye of truth. Now we see the states of Park Hajin, his name, age, level coins and his exclusive ability. He say, what? What the hell are you staring at? Again message pop up saying, copy conditions. If you reach maximum friendliness with the subject, you can copy their exclusive ability. If you reach the maximum hostility with the subject, you can copy one of the subject skill that you want. Hung say, oh ho, maximum hostility. Hajin, say, this bastard, you're still not getting out of the way. You think nothing gonna happen since there are many eyes on us. Hannah say, Opa, what's going on? We see protagonist giving dangerous look. He catch the finger of Hajin and break it. He say you insect and run to attack the protagonist. He attack the protagonist but get knocked down. Everyone shocked, saying what the hell happened. Hannah say, why is that man here? Kim say, leave it at that. Fighter father Kim Kate. Protagonist try to activate Eye of Truth. But get the warning. Due to level difference being over a fixed limit, the skill activation will be cancelled. He must be over level 20. Hung say, I didn't know this guy had his nanny with him. Kim say, he's a bit of a handful, but it can't be helped. Since he's useful in some ways. Hung say, useful, huh? Is it because he's supplying Korean ginseng to China? Kim say, how do you? Hung say, does the how? Matter. Can't you ask a more practical question? For example, the method of dealing with the side effect of Korean ginseng. Kim say, stop there. We see message saying, Kim Kate has activated level 3 feet blackout barrier. We see a black barrier start a pairing around the Kim and Hung. Kim say, so what you are saying is, you want an exchange with 10 of our monopolized dungeons. How can I be certain whether you know the information that you claim to know? An edible item known for its excellent stamina and magic power recovery. Korean ginseng. However, if you eat it raw, there is a magic power poisoning side effect. You must already be having a hard time due to this side effect. But it can easily be dealt with by using three items. Kerosene's extract, moonlight stone, and most impotently, the mandragora root. Besides the other two, you must be having a hard time finding the root, right? I'll tell you where you can find them. Well, do you trust me a little more now? Kim think, it matches with the information from the guild research team and the explorers. This man, who in the world is he? Very well I'll play your game. However, if you're playing some poor trick, be prepared. I won't just let it slide. Kim think, even for this info, demanding 10 of our most profitable dungeons that we monopolize is an extremely expensive price. I need to draw the line here. Hung say, you must be misunderstanding something. The one who's offering the apert unity is me. 
Hong hit Kim. We see Lee and Yu fighting outside the barrier. Yu say, get back, if you don't want to die. We see message, level 3 feet blackout barrier, has been removed. Hung say, calm down Yanwa. Lee say, Hung weren't you dragged along by force. Just say the word, I'll wipe the floor with all of them. Hung say, I'm really alright. He was a better listener than I thought. Ha Jin say to Kim, please wait. Are you just going to let them go? If you give me one more chance, I'll go all out. Kim catch Hajin from his neck and say, he's not someone the likes of you can handle. I'll make you regret it if you act out on your own again. Got it. Hajin say, yes I understand. He think, what the hell happened inside the barrier? How dare you to humiliate me to this extent? I'll kill you no matter what. We see a message, copy condition met. You have succeeded in copying the skill, shallow breathing D. Shallow breathing, description, can control breathing capacity and heart rate. The copied skill will be saved in the memory of the world. Hung think, shall I take the test now? Oh, did our intern eat some ginseng before taking the test? Next person please. We see examiner he say, test is simple, you just need to strike the magic stone in front of you. You can use any item or you exclusive ability. This test measures the size of your potential when you strike the magic stone. A dagger, is it? Will you only use your weapon, and not your exclusive ability? Hung say, yes this is more than enough. Examiner say, okay you can begin whenever you are ready. Huh, Mr. Jinhyuk, that's a mid-grade magic stone. Please use this. Low-grade magic stone. The mid-grade and higher stone don't even budge against normal people. Jin Hyuk about to take the stone. The stat, Rift will be activated to its maximum amount. Shall I see how much my suffering in the labyrinth has paid off? He attacked the stone with so much force. Examiner is in shock. He say, I've never heard of someone cutting the magic stone in two. Congratulations. Your S rank. I will report this to my superior, so please wait here. Jin Hyuk say, wait. Please postpone the report by one week. Examiner say, what? What do you mean by postpone? Jin Hyuk say, personal reasons. I won't care where you release it after one week. Examiner say, but. Jin Hyuk say, I've learned many things in my life. One of them is, the fist that's close to you is much scarier than the law that's far away. Examiner say, yes. Jin Hyuk say, you're here. Intern Park Hana. She say, I have what you asked for. We see Bram's ring increase the states of Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk say, see it was possible. We reunited earlier than I expected. She say, I kept my promise, so please remove this. Jin Hyuk say, I'll decide from your actions. What? We say, your F rank. What? How I was sure you'd be higher than us. She say, Opa, you have to go to a dungeon for the second test. What are you going to do? Jin Hyuk say, I'll have to search for one. Don't worry about me and keep climbing the tower. I'll contact you soon. The first test classifies your rank by measuring your magic power. And those who have passed the test will take second test. The contents are simple you just need to clear one of the dungeons in the Tower of Trials. Since the test has no difficulty restrictions, most people choose the dungeons with goblins or orcs in them. However, the one that I'll be going to are the only ruins that exist on the first floor. Even when the Tower of Trials game released 11 years ago. Nor even now when the Tower of Trials appeared in reality. It is a domain that no one has ever cleared. It's been a while since I was here. The Hall of the Depraved. Hey Master Kong. Hurry up and move the luggage. Tower of Trials East Floor Mountain Area Ruins. Since I am in F rank right now, I cannot enter the ruin alone, as the guild regulating the ruins won't leave me alone if I do. If that's the case I just need to register as a porter. A person asked Jin Hyuk, what's your reason for coming all the way here Mr. Kong? Jin Hyuk say, it's because I need money to live. He say, true, I guess we're all the same. I'm here so that I can feed my wife and kids. 
Jin Hyuk think, ah, these kinds of things are usually death flag. He say, F ranks like us have to be especially careful. We'll die if we make a wrong move. Ambulances can't even reach us size machines don't work here. Jin Hyuk say, don't worry. At the very least, the people here will be able to return home safely. He say, what? Yeah, yeah, I'll accept your kind words, at least. You have guts to compare to the other young people these days. We see a message, the attack force exclusive quest will begin. Number 1 Clear the Ruins Difficult S. Details Defeat the boss monster and recover the throne in the heart of the ruins reward, you will be granted the choice to choose one of the holy artifacts. However, if you do not kill the boss monster, the holy artifact choices will be limited. We're here. Good work, everyone. Take a rest until the attack force arrives. We see a message saying, the benefit for the, one of the first conquered the tower has arrived. Jin Hyuk think, benefit, am I the only one who received this? The benefit will open. Your luck and adaptive stat will both be increased by 10. Cold heart will be activated. Cold heart. You are able to keep your composure even in tense situations. However, your human emotions may start to diminish. The passive, monopoly, will be activated. Monopoly. When you take all the final rewards alone without sharing, you can receive the best possible reward among those. This is awesome. There are countless section type rewards in the Tower of Trials. It's a win if you get one good reward out of the thousands possible. But with this, the probability itself won't apply to me. We see a light appearing from the ground. And some people coming out from the light. One of them say, ah, my head. I can't get used to this no matter how many times I do this. Have you confirmed all the members? Other guys say, all 50 of them safely arrived. Of course, whose magic do you think this is? Are those people the main attack force of the Balhae Guild? That man must be the captain. Jin Hyuk activate his skill, Eye of Truth. Attack force captain say, from a line as we depart, we'll catch up to the advance party. We see the states of the captain, his name is, Song Chianwa, his age, level and coins etc, he has unique ability, item lightening and also has 4 skills. We see copy conditions, gain Song Chianwa's trust during raid. Jin Hyuk think, ah, shit. Gain his trust. This is not going to work. No, wait. An attack force captain from one of the 10 guilds is only on this level. I guess it's fine as long he doesn't slow me down. We see a person, he say, it'll get very dark from here on out. Everyone please make sure to follow right behind me. If you start strolling somewhere else while not paying attention, there is no way to save you. He activate his skill called, Illuminate. We see red light coming out from his stick. One guy say, amazing. These are the monsters that advance party defeated. It seems like they completely demolished them. What a grotesque atmosphere. Shut up. You are scaring me. We see a new party. One guy from them say, oh, they're here. Over here. Chian Wahung. The porters have arrived. Jin Hyuk think, strange, not even a single person is injured after fighting all these monsters. Based on the state of their main attack force, there's no way in advance. Party could have come this far. One of the porters say to Jin Hyuk, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing just standing around? Go give them some ice water. We'll take care of these area, so you can take care of the foreigners over there. Jin Hyuk think, foreigners. That design, they're part of a small group of elites in Europe. The Zion Guild, there's a pretty small person among them. Should I try befriending her? Thank you for the hard work please have some ice water. She say, ah, thank you. Jin Hyuk activate his skill called, commune. The subject has a slightly favorable impression of you. Jin Hyuk look her and think, this person. The youngest daughter of European noble family, the Laubantias. The universal type player who wields holy power, excels in attacking and defending, and even possesses a healing skill. She is the hero who saved Amsterdam from turning into a wasteland after an outbreak, and is currently one of most famous player in Europe. 
The saintess of Amsterdam, Teresa de Laurentia. She must be the reason why there were no casualties. She is the most effective person against the undead. Anyway everyone must be aiming to reach the higher floors. But they unexpectedly chose this ruin instead of clearing the third floor boss. Jin Hyuk activate his skill level 1 foot eye of truth. He can't see her state because the level difference is too high. Now Jin Hyuk activate level 2 skill, eye of truth. Now he can see her states. We see her name, level, skills, coins, sex and her unique ability is, blessing of the star. She also have 5 skills. Copy conditions. Teresa is one of the top 100 rankers in the world. The moment you save her from life threatening danger. You will be able to copy her unique ability in one of her skills. These number are huge. No wonder people are fanatical over her. Job quest. This must be why she gave up on the boss conquest and came here. She thanks him for the water. He say, no problem I should be the one thanking you. Yes, I am much more thankful. She has the unique ability that is considered the best among the holy knights. The blessing of the star, and she's giving me a chance to obtain it. The problem is how to create a situation where he fall into danger. And how to save her from it. This condition isn't easy. Chion Wahung, come here, right now. Captain say, oh my god. Hung, this is bad. The guards that were keeping the eye on the guardian are dead. It's too late. The guardian of the ruins gazes upon the trespassers. The remaining, 959. The security system that protect the ruins, sleeping bomb, awakens when it receive a stimulus from the outside. When it wakes up, it will call upon the guardian that protect the dungeon. It wouldn't be dangerous as long as it was left alone. Captain say, who the hell touched this? Who cares about at this point? It's starting to awaken. It's too late. There's only 10 minutes remaining. It's practically suicide to face the guardians with these forces. At the very least, half, no, more than that die. As long as the we can evacuate the non-combat personnel within 10 minutes we can escape. I can't. Stop before it even starts. I worked my ass off to get to the attack force captain position. I can't let it end like this. We'll keep heading inside. Hung are you serious? The late arriving force hasn't even arrived yet. Guardians will rush from all directions, is that really alright? Captain say, stop complaining and follow me. I will take responsibility. We have a chance even if we dan't have the late arriving force. Since we have the saintess, Teresa. Did you all hear? The guardians are awake. What are you so worried about? There's no way a large guild like the Balhae guild are doing things without a plan. Is that so? Of course. Solo player like us just. Need to follow what the attack force captain says. The Balhae guild probably already destroyed the guardians. One of the guardian attach him with his sword. Now the fight is start between the guardians and attack force. Main vanguard force the guardians are here. Prepare for combat. Tanker, forward. Porters, get back. Hurry up. Buff the tankers. Dealers, gather magic power. Song Chinanwa has activated level 0.3 feet iron shield. Song Chianwa has activated level 2 feet wedge formation. Li Yunmi has activated level 2 feet warriors song. They are coming, maintain the formation. They start fighting with guardians. One person say, captain send some tankers here as well. We can't hold on by ourselves. Healers. Where are the healers? Captain the solo player. Quiet focus on the battle. There are bound to the casualties. If can't be helped. There's no need to take care mere solo players. Unlike the guild members, who knows systematic tactics, the solo player lack the ability to fight as a group. They definitely saw us. We were abandoned. Someone please help. At last moment, Teresa come to help the solo players. She think, two guardians slipped through the main force. The non-symbotants are in danger. I have to get to the rear as quickly as possible. Rear supply team. One of the porters is about to die. Guardian is about to attack the porter. But our protagonist come to save the porter and say. 
What are you saying Ajusi? Didn't I say that you'll be able to return home safely? Guardian tried to attack the Jinhya, but he dodged the attack and activate his skill, Element of Fire. You don't stand a chance. He destroyed the Guardian with only one hit. It'll probably die on his own. I can't kill it since I have to stay at level 1. To think they awakened the Guardians in this ruin that has an absurd difficulty. They should have absolutely nothing to gain from doing such a thing. So who would? Terry's come and take the porter away from Jin Hyung. I thought you were a kind person. But to think you threatened a non-combatant with a knife. You must have been the one who awakened the dungeon. I will now place you under the custody. Jin Hyung say, what? She attacked the Jin Hyung but he dodged the attack easily. She say, please do not resist. I don't want to hurt you. He say, do you really want that? There must be some misunderstanding. She say, you can justify yourself at the association. He think, she's so stirred up to listen to me. If it has come to this. He attack her and say, I am not the one who awakened the guardians. If I was the culprit, I would have killed you right here. Porter say, why are you fighting? Kong SSI is the one who saved me. Girl say, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It happens. I also did something worthy of misunderstood. She asked him, you said your name was Jin Hyuk SSI. Why are you hiding your identity? He say, reason for hiding my identity. It's similar to your reason. Just like how you're using Zion Guild as your cover to secretly obtain the Convenant of Peter for your job quest. I also need to secretly obtain something. She think, how does he know all that? He say, I already know how to clear this ruin. With your skills, I can rely on you. Since the things we want are both on the same place. How about it? Would you like me to accompany you? We see the captain, he say, absolutely not. Are you insane? We have to organize our forces and keep advancing. But you want to act separately. She say, you already have the map to the 20 kilometer point of the ruin. Everyone already have the clear strategy memorized. So nothing major will change if I'm not here. Moreover, our contract, wasn't it for the captains of each attack force to have equal authority until the boss battle. He say, alright, but you must return by the time we reach the unmapped point of the ruin. She say, okay, I will definitely return before that. Oh, also, can I also bring one person to be my porter? He say, ah just do whatever you want. Just make sure you return. She was about to choose the porter. All of them thinking, we'll be heading down too. Hell without a doubt. Don't make eye contact, whoever makes eye contact will be dragged away. Please just don't let it be me. Jin Young say, me, I'll go. Everyone shocked and saying, your life is important than love. He say, have you ever had a burning passion for someone during your youth? This is the moment. This is the moment that I must ignite my passion love. Even if I lack the skill and lose my life in the process. Now they both going toward the final boss. See that there are so many zombies in the ruin. Teresa say, the covenant of Peter is in that sarcophagus. I see it as well. He say, do you know how to remove the barrier surrounding the sarcophagus? She say, yes I know. We see a warning message. The owner of the Hall of the Depraved gazes upon you. Jin Hyuk think, there's no doubt about it. It's the boss monster indirect message. It's never shown any interest toward the players before. It's quite amusing that it is showing us attention in this way. She say, did you see the status window as well? He sat, yes I saw. She say, it looks like it was sent by the boss monster. But what does it mean by its gazing upon us? Does that mean it acknowledged us? No. He say, it means that it acknowledged me. She say, what is with this man's groundless confidence? Jin Hyuk, I'm curious about something. You said that you know how to clear this dungeon back then, right? He say, yes, although it's been a quite while. Then, she say, what should I do? Teresa jumped towards the zombies and activate her skill, Battle Song. All states will increase by 3 for 10 minutes. 
Your John is simple. You just need to draw the undead attention. She stayed attacking the undeads. Teresa, when you emit divine power, the undead will fall into confusion. She activate her level 5 skill, sacred reinforcement, and start killing the undeads. Jin Hyuk say, please let me through. Most of the aggro is drawn to Teresa. By leaving all the mobs to Teresa, the risk of my leveling up the accident decreases. He notice the energy coming from someone. We see, the hidden dead of the ruin, Elite Lich, has appeared. It finally appeared, the Elite Lich. One of the Dulahan attacked the Jinhyuk, but he dodged the attack in a cool way. He think, what the hell, the Dulahan shouldn't be over here though. Did its pattern change because I brought Teresa along? I should take into accounts all the variable from now on. We see the elite Lish's black lightning. That can easily destroy something like Dulahan. And it's fatal for even talented veterans. Jin Hyunk dodged the lightning of the Lich easily. Most class 3 barriers are no match for it. He destroy the magic barrier of elite Lich. He attack the Dulahans and destroy all of them, with only one attack. We see Teresa fighting the undeads, Teresa is almost done on her end. Elite Lich say, and you're alone you bag of bones. Jin Hyunk attack the elite Lich and destroy his skull. Someone say, there's only one person can move as if he can anticipate the monster's actions. I would certain that you would come here. It's been a while. Jin Hyunk say, you, who are you? He say, yes, you must remember. You don't recognize me. Jin Hyunk uses the Eye of Truth. A message popped up saying the stat effects have nullified the level difference. You have seen through the subject status window. His name is Chun Yu Sung. Then a copy conditions. Chun Yu Sung believes to be stronger than anyone else in the sword. Defeat him using the sword, which he believes in the most. Jin Hyunk an iron sword with Qian Long engraved on it. It's the artifact that disappeared from the National Museum of Korea. If he has that, then. Back when the Tower of Trials was just a virtual game. There was someone who, after losing to me once. Kept on challenging me no matter where I was or what I was doing. He had an extreme warrior concept. That psycho stalker. Chun Yu Sung says, to think you wouldn't recognize me just because the game became reality. Did you only see me to that extent? Jin Young says, I remember. I didn't want to believe it back in the museum. Just give up already, man. You're that bastard who kept following me around every day to challenge me. Chun Yu Sung says, it will be different this time. Since we both started from the beginning, I won't be pushed back by you any longer. Jin Young says, I won't stop you if you really want to fight. But will you be okay? My comrade won't just sit still if you do. Chun Yu Sung says, the same test. You've brought quite the annoying comrade. I will no allow anyone to intrude. Chun Yu Sung uses Battlefield Selection Level 5 ability. Saint Tess says, Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk picks up a small ball from the tomb in front of him and says, I'll see you later. Jin Hyuk and Chun Yu Sung both disappear in front of her eyes. And appear somewhere else. Chun Yu Sung says, there won't be anyone to bother us anymore. I challenge you again. Chun Yu Sung uses his ability 1 on 1 level 5. All of Chun Yu Sung's stats have increased by 10%. The opponent Kong Jin Hyuk's stats have decreased by 10%. Jin Hyuk says, I'm currently being nerfed by this bastard's skills, battle selection and 1 on 1. The situation has become very disadvantageous. A message popped up saying, an overwhelmingly disadvantageous situation has been detected. The special condition of the skill fusion has been activated. When a situation becomes overwhelmingly disadvantageous for the original copy conditions, the conditions will be modified accordingly. Copying the skill before fulfilling the conditions has been approved. I will copy Chun Yusing's unique ability. You have copied the unique ability Song of Swords rank S. Song of Swords. Increases you understanding of swords by 200% your body will naturally follow the most efficient sword path, and your body senses will dramatically increase. The copied skill will be recorded in the memory of the world. 
Chun Yuxing's run towards Jin Hyunk and says, You're ignoring me again. Don't be so relaxed. He brings out his dagger and blocks his attacks. Chun Yusung is shocked to see his sword play and says, This bastard, what are you planning? What happened to you mid-range fighting style? You're fighting me with only a dagger. Jin Hyunk says, This much is enough for now. Swordsmanship is quite fun as well. Chun Yu Sung gets angry and says, You're ignoring me until the end. Chun Yu Sung activates Soul Chasing Sword Energy. Jin Hyunk says, Aren't you trying to hard? You're using sword energy against a swordsmanship beginner. Chun Yu Sung get angry and says, The fact that you're calling yourself a beginner is bullshit. Jin Hyunk thinks, The blade is bound to break if I go against sword energy with this. Then I'll make one. An ability that can go against sword energy. Jin Hyunk says, I'll fuse Song of Swords with the Demosnik Soul Pill. A message popped up saying, Fusion Overank has been activated. The skill Song of Swords and the item Demonic Soul Pill will be fused. You have obtained the unique's ability Grave of Swords Rank SS. Then a skill appears saying, Gave of SW Rods, increases your understanding of swords by 500% You body will naturally follow the most ideal sword path, and your body senses will reach the maximum. It is one of the talents necessary to receive the title Sword Demon. He activates unique ability Gave of Swords and Knight of the Black Moon. Jin Hyunk says this isn't even a tenth of its normal strength. Yet my magic power isn't enough to handle it. I should increase it as soon as possible. Chun Yu Sung thinks, what is this unbelievable strength? I'm in a battlefield that's most ideal for me, and my opponent isn't even using his specialty, mid-range combat. Everything should be overwhelmingly in my favor. Chun Yu Sung gets frustrated and says, why can't I win? Inside game and outside the game, I did my absolute best only to defeat you. He screams and says, why can't I surpass you? I can't accept this. He uses his full force to attack Jin Hyunk. Jin Hyunk cuts through all of his sword energies. Chun Yu Sung says, you slashed all my sword energies. I fought against someone who was faster and used something much stronger until I was tired of it. Jin Hyunk lifts his dagger and hits him with an upper slash with full power. Chun Yu Sung was hardly able to stop it. Jin Hyunk attacked Chun Yu Sung and his sword fall from his hands. Jin Hyunk says, looks like I win again. Though I'm not sure how many times this makes it. Chun Yu Sung, it's the 138th time. Kill me. Jin Hyunk says, looks like it'll be the 139 next time. You must know as well, but the Tower of Trials isn't something scoff at. This is the kind of place where even rankers die as soon as they let their guard down. Therefore, we need as many strong players as possible. Especially if they're as strong as you. It takes 60 days to copy another skill from the same person. I won't have to go find him to copy his skills. Since he just can't wait to deliver his skills to me. Jin Hyunk uses the commune skill. Chun Yu Sung turns around and says, I've lost this time, but keep this in mind. The result will be different next time. Jin Hyunk says, alright, I'll look forward to it. A message popped up saying battle selection has been deactivated. Chun Yu Sung says, come to think of it, I still don't know your real name. Jin Hyunk says, we don't have that kind of relationship, do we? Chun Yu Sung says, I see. Then I'll call you by your original name. Jin Hyunk gets a bit scared and thinks my original name. No, don't say it. Chun Yasing calls him Poop Fart. Someone is saying to Chian Wahung that, didn't we already defeat the monsters up ahead? Chian Wah says, what are you talking about? He says, my detection magic is picking up a magic power reading up ahead. We've taken care of all of them, so there shouldn't be anything left. Then an iron golem appears in front of them and someone is riding. One of the players says, wait a second look up there. Someone's on it. It's an high ranking vampire. He jumped down from the golem. He bow in front of them and says, greetings, humans, my name is Bellis. I am one of the blood kins of the Alice, the owner of the ruin. Chianwa put his sword against the neck of Bellis and says, why did you come to us? 
there must be a reason why you came here on your own. Bellis says, it looks like you are the boss here. I came here to give you a proposal. I'll give you two choices. Will you follow me without resistance along with everyone here? He cut his finger using the sword of one of the players. He activates his ability. Blood Fest. He kills one of them and says, will you be dragged along? After half of you become my lunch. After that we see that Teresa is using her ability, Sacred Decipherment on the Frozen Tear. A message popped up saying you magic power has increased by 12. Our protagonist thinks, I obtained the Frozen Tear along with the Demonic Soul Pill. You usually need to spend a lot of time to absorb the magic power of the Frozen Tear. But I already absorbed 12 stat points thanks Teresa's divine power. She says, is that all Jinhyuk? He says, yes, this much is more than enough for now. Then a message popped up saying, the owner of the hall has given you an invitation. Details, if you want to save the attack force members, come to the innermost room of the ruin. Difficulty, none. If you accept this quest, all the monster and traps until the final room will be immobilized and deactivated. Teresa says, this is bad. It looks like all the attack force members have been kidnapped. The entire attack force have become hostages. She says, I have to go. I don't have any reason to hesitate if I can save even just one member of the attack force. But, can I defeat the Alice after I get there? What if I'm just dancing around in the palm of the Alice? Honestly, defeating the Alice without an attack force is impossible. Would things have been different had I remained with the group? All I wanted was to protect even more people by become a paladin. Did I make the wrong choice? Chun Yu Sung says, since I have nothing to do with the attack force. I'll take my leave here. He says to Teresa, oh, let me tell you this. If you're having a hard time making a decision, keep this in mind. That bastard is a selfish person without even a speck of honor. It's one of the reasons why I resent him so much. However, I will guarantee one thing about him. The only person in the world who can defeat the Alice at the moment, is Haim. Looks like I took too long. Teresa says, thank you for your advice. She says to Jinhyuk, I'd like to commission you for a party contract, Jinhyuk. My commission fee is by no means cheap. Will you be alright? I'll give you as many coins as you want. Please help me defeat the Alice. He thinks she's still planning on going. They do a fist bump and he says, alright, let's give it a shot. A message popped up saying you have accepted the quest. The monsters have fallen asleep. After that reach the final room of the ruins. Teresa is shocked to feel the amount of magic power seeping out. She thinks it's too unreal. Jinhyuk says, there's no need to be afraid. Didn't you already know that the opponent is strong? She says, that's true, but. Jinhyuk says, it's not necessarily the strong who win in battle. Teresa says, do you have some sort of plan? He says, just one. No matter what happens inside. You must give me you unconditional trust. After that they enter the room a lot of vampires are watching them. Alice is sighting of the throne. Alice says, you're here at last. We see that she is a high ranking vampire with big black bat wings. Her full name is progenitor Alice Von Ataraxia. She says, I was tired of waiting. Jinhyuk says, are the others okay? She says, see for yourself. Then she deactivates her ability dimensional severance. Everyone is wearing blindfolds and tied with ropes. Jinhyuk sees Park Hajin and thinks is he the one who woke the guardians. Alice says, the reason why I invited you all the way here, I because of your scent. He says, scent. That's right. It's sweeter than anything I've ever smelled before. The scent of your blood. I was stimulated by the sweet scent. Incomparable to ordinary humans. He is shocked to hear that and thinks, what the hell is she talking about all of a sudden? Nothing like this has ever happened before. She says, you seem very disturbed. Jinhyuk says, wouldn't anyone be disturbed if a vampire aimed for their blood? She says, do not worry. I like to conserve what I find delicious. I'll allow you to live for at least 60 years, so there is no need to be afraid. He thinks, in other words, you want to keep me around for my entire life with a straw down my throat. He says, I appreciate you goodwill, but I have no plans on living as a high quality lunch. She uses some kind of laser ability which give a little scratch on his face. She with an angry expression says, who said I wanted to hear you our opinion. You don't have a choice in the matter. Jinhyuk bow down and says, you're so fierce. 
However, I'm not saying I won't give you anything. I'll give you something sweeter than my blood. Teresa is shocked to see Jin Hyuk and says, Jin Hyuk what are you doing? Alice says, something sweeter than blood. Your subterfuge is pointless. There is nothing more important to us than delicious blood. Whatever you have to offer, my mind will not change. Jin Hyuk looked toward Alice with an evil smile and says, are you sure about that? Even if my offer to you, is freedom. All the vampires in the room gets angry to hear the word freedom. They say, how dare you say that word here. I'll rip you apart, human. Alice raise her hand stop everyone. She says, you must take responsibility for what you just said. Jin Hyuk says, if I couldn't take responsibility, I wouldn't have come here in the first place. Alice says, then take responsibility. Jin Hyuk says, my name is Kong Jin Hyuk. As the representative of the demonic humans in the tower, I will free you from this place. Then he puts on an epic mask on his face with purple marking on it. He says, demonic human, it is what those who have rejected humanity due to money, revenge, or even their own individual beliefs are referred to. The demonic humans blocked players from climbing the tower. There were even times where they joined forces with the monsters of labyrinths or ruins. Alice says, I have heard of you people. But you're saying you're one of them. He says, I have already gotten in contact with the temple on 27th floor. The fact that you are here, and how to fool the barrier enveloping the ruin, are all what they have told me. Teresa thinks, how exactly is this situation flowing? He's posing as a demonic human all of a sudden. Vampires there thinks, what exactly is the temple for them to be this shaken? Alice says, well, if you know of the temple, then I guess your words aren't mere bluffs. He says, then, will you trust me? Alice with anger says, no what does it matter whether you're a demonic human or not? Anyone can say that they can resolve what no one has been able to for a very long time. Moreover, you are too much a smooth talker. She summons a lot of blood spears and says, I don't trust you. She says, you have such sweet smelling blood. It's truly unfortunate. All the spears go towards Jin Hyuk and he is standing there calmly. Teresa comes in front of him and uses her ability sacred reinforcement level 5. She was able to stay. She says, Jin Hyuk stay behind me. I'll hold on as much as I can with divine power. Then she uses another ability sacred shide level 5. Alice starts to laugh and says, it's funny how you're going all out against only this much. She suddenly gets angry and says, but I hate divine power. It's nauseating. She uses her ability called blood explosion. Then a huge ball of blood appears above her hand and she says, I'll send you flying all at once. Teresa thinks with a smile, how long will I last against her? But I'll trust Jin Hyuk behind me. Then suddenly a dagger pierced through her chest. She cho out blood and there are tears in her eyes. It is Jin Hyuk who has stabbed her in the back. She falls to the ground covered in blood. Alice is shocked to see that. Jin Hyuk says, if I prove that it's not just a bluff, will you trust me then? Alice deactivates her ability and says, how amusing. To think you betrayed your comrade who protected you. Prove it to me some more. Teresa grabs his leg and says, we decide to save the attach force together. You said you had a plan. Was this you plan? Jin Hyuk stabs her again. Alice starts to laugh and says, impressive, for a human. Very well. I understand that you're on my side. I'll give you a chance to speak. Jin Hyuk brings out Bram's ring and says, to fool the barrier and trapping Alice, I've prepared a 7 star spell. If I seal Alice's soul in this item, the barrier can be temporarily fall. She says, seal my soul. That's the first time I've heard of it. Jin Hyuk thinks, the reason why I maintained my level 1 status. To the point I gave up on all the experience I could have gained since the start of the Tower of Trials. The 7 star skill soul transfer can't be used unless you're level 1. A message popped up saying the level condition level 1 of the user Kong Jin Hyuk has been fulfilled. The casting of the 7 star soul transfer will be activated. The casting cooldown time is 365 days, you can only bring one soul with you at one time. The spell will be completed once you receive the subject's consent. This magic circle will forever disappear once a minute passes. The magic will activate right away once you accept. The choice is now up to you. Now, what will you do? Bellis thinks, to think it can be used in this way. Alice says to Bellis in his head, my confidant Bellis. He says, yes, Alice. 
She says, I can't completely trust him. If he tries anything strange, kill him and destroy the magic circle. He says, yes, Alice. She thinks, the protective measures have been put in place but I still feel disinclined to consent to a spell I've never seen before. However, I've been confined here for far too long. It's been well over a thousand years since I've been exiled here. Yes, if it's not now. I may never be able to escape from this underground palace. She says to Jinhyuk, I will ask you for the last time. Can I trust you? He says, if you only give me the honor, I will not let you regret it. He uses commune skill on her. She say, I Alice Von Ataraxia, allow the soul transfer. Then a message popped up saying, Bram's ring will absorb the soul of progenitor Alice. She speaks through the ring and says, not as bad as I expected. I thought it would be stifling, but it's unexpectedly cozy. He says, what a relief. That you like your new home. She says, my new home. Then a message popped up saying the unique ability blessing of the star has been activated. After that we see that Teresa stands up again. Jin Hyuk says, welcome back. Alice speaks with anger, you ingrate, you dare disrespect me. Bellis. Kill this dirty liar. Teresa says, I have a lot of questions, but I should save it for another time, right? Jin Hyuk brings out his dagger and says, you should. Since we're not out of the woods yet. Bellis says, you foolish humans. Did you really think you could leave here alive after betraying our master? Bellis uses his ability blood wave level 13. Then huge wave of blood surround Jin Hyuk and Teresa. Jin Hyuk uses his ability element of fire level 5. And punches the ground. It burns the wave of blood. He says, Teresa the hostages. She says, yes. Teresa uses her ability sign of the cross level 4 to free everyone. Leader of the attack force says, you came for us. What about the vampires? She says, I'm relieved that I'm not too late. He's taking them on by himself. Bellis says, how can a mere human like you take on my magic? Jin Hyuk says, you magic and my fire are re complete opposites. And also, you're misunderstanding something. The moment you master was sealed inside the ring, you already lost. Kong Jin Hyuk uses his unique ability Grave of Swords. And Bellis uses his ability Dark Fighting Spirit level 9. Bellis says, shut up you mere blood pack. If my magic doesn't work on you, I'll just kill you with my sword instead. Destroy the ring and free our master. Leader of the attack force is shocked see him fight and says, Teresa, that man who the hell is he? Then we see that all the vampires are dead Bellis is setting on his knees in front of Jin Hyuk. Teresa thinks, if he's wearing a mask, her must not want his identity to be revealed. She says, I just happened to meet him on my way here, I don't know the details either. She says, to Jin Hyuk, that really hurt. That was my first time dying, and to think it was by my alley's hands. Jin Hyuk says, but didn't we succeed regardless? She says, yes, we really did it. Her tears of joy start to fell and she says, thank you. Everyone survived thanks to you. Then a message popped up saying you have saved the life of Teresa, the holder of the unique ability Bellissing of the star. You have fulfilled the conditions. You have succeeded in copying the unique ability Blessing of the star. The copied skill will be saved in the memory of the world. Then a skill window appears saying, Blessing of the star, acquisition difficulty double S. Details, can wield divine power and return from the threshold of death. Cool down time 240 hours. Jin Hyuk says, why are you crying? She wipes a here tears and says, I don't know. I can't help it. Teresa says, you knew that I was able to revive, right? He turn around and says, who knows? I'll just say that I'm glad you're still alive. She gets angry says, do you want to die? He says, shall take the divine artifacts and get out of here. Song Chianwa says, I am the Comptain of the attack force. Song Chianwa. All of the items found from this raid are under the ownership of the Balhae Guild. Jin Hyuk says, I saved your life, and now you're asking for the ruin rewards as well. Song Chianwa says, that's not what I'm saying. We'll give you another form of reward. We'll give you na money or coins that you won't be dissatisfied. Jin Hyuk thinks the audacity of this failure of an attack force captain. He says, if you really want it so much, then take it. Song Chianwa says, do you really mean that? Jin Hyuk says, yes, however no matter the result, please do not regret it. 
Captain thinks even if the majority of the attack force were captured as hostages, we'll be able to redeem ourselves as long as we obtain the divine artifacts of the ruin. He touches a broken staff, a red cross mark appears on his hand, he says, what, this? Jin Hyuk thinks, what do you think? It's a curse. Melon's staff is an okay combination material, but it has an annoying curse imbued in it. It's a divine artifact that you can safely obtain only be killing Alice. However Alice is alive in my ring. Captain's hair starts to fall off. Teresa is shocked to see that. Jin Hyuk says, let's just go. After that we see that in Seoul Tower of Trill's entrance someone is calling department head. She says, department head, are you sure we haven't been given false info? Is what that man said really true we're not even certain. She is an awakened association affiliate her name is Young Jaehun. Department head says, I told you, we should just wait and see. Stop whining. His name is Kim Taechun. He says, we should at least try to do something with the info that we got. Jaehun says, the experts said that it would take at least three weeks. It was Chun Yu Sung who told the department head that, the ruin subjugation will end soon. Kim Taechun thinks, I'm a bit concerned that he wasn't a member of the Balhae Guild, but I have a strong feeling about this. Then a message popped up in front of everyone that, the ruin hall of the depraved has been bleared. Kim Taechun is shocked to see the message. The media was waiting for the subjection squad in front of the gate. Everyone starts to congratulate them and media starts to ask them question. After that as soon as captain of the squad come out of the gate everyone is shocked to see his bald head. They say, oh my god, just what in the world happened inside? Teresa says, it is not Song Chianwa who cleared the ruin. Someone in media says, did the Zion guild clear it? She says, no. Then Jin Hyuk come out of the gate. She says, this man alone cleared the ruin. We were nothing more than spectators at his stage performance. Young Jaehun says, should we contact the association immediately? Kim Tichun says, good idea. After that we see that Jin Hyuk is back in his apartment and gets ready to eat. He thinks, they added all kinds of words for decoration. I knew there would be a heated reaction, but this is beyond my expectations. Thank God I wore a mask. Teresa, who knows my identity, promised me that she'd keep my secret. So there's no need to worry. With this, the problem is solved. Shall I have a talk with the progenitor with a chip on her shoulder? Alice says, how dare you stuff me in you dark and smelly pocket for a whole day. Human, do you not know who I am? He start to spin the ring like a spinner. She says, I am getting dizzy, so stop. He says, well do you feel better now? She says, would you feel better if you were me? Listen carefully. Vampires never forget a grudge. He says, really? She says, wait, you're not thinking of doing that again, are you? I order you to relax your expression. He says, for you, who still doesn't know her place. I'll give you a fitting punishment. She says, stop, please I'm gonna puke, so stop. He spins the ring with super speed and says, vampire grudge separator. Then we see that three hours later. He puts down the ring. She says, stop I'm really going to die. He says, stop crying and come out. A message popped up saying, you have injected magic power into Bram's ring. As soon as she come out of the ring she with a sinister smile says, it's finally time to take my revenge. I'll return the humiliation that I suffered 1000 fold. She is as small as a child right now. He says, I materialized a portion of you in a sealed state. Alice says, a portion. He says, yes, you could call yourself a mini version of Alice. You won't even be able to manifest 1% of you true power. He says, even with this restriction, you're still way stronger than an ordinary vampire though. She sits and starts to cry. He says, stop crying and listen. What I told you at the ruin weren't empty words. She says, shut up. I didn't want this kind of freedom. Jin Hyuk says, I know. Who called this freedom? The freedom that you truly desire, I'll help you gain it. She says, what do you mean? He says, Alice von Ataraxia, if you help me, I will eliminate everyone who betrayed you. And help you regain the Ataraxia family's head position that was lost. Then a message popped up saying a new video has been uploaded to the Hall of Fame. The raid that everyone thought was going to fail. However, the situation was completely turned on its head after the appearance of the masked player. 
Then we see that Jin Hyuk say, I hear the guilds were sitting on a pile of money. And it looks like it's true. He bring out his mask and says, it's not my problem whether a large guild is monopolizing everything or is corrupt. But they dare try to kill me. He destroys the door and says, I can't let that slide. There are a lot of security guards standing in front of him. He uses the element of fire ability and says, for people like those. I'll completely destroy them. On top floor of the building Shin ji say to Park ha -jin Hey, you fucking bastard. I told you to discreetly kill in ruin, but you dare come back here after messing that up. All you did was wake the guardians and make a complete mess. Our guild's reputation is being dragged through the mud and is about to disappear, all because we can't teach on person a lesson for humiliating us. He kicks Park Hajin and says, you useless bastard. Then suddenly the door gets blown to bits. Jin Hyuk says, are you the guild leader of this place? Guild leader says, what the hell? Someone get him. Park Hajin thinks this is the perfect chance to look good in front of Hung again. I'm going back to the super rookie Park Hajin that I used to be. Park Hajin jumped toward him to kill him with his dagger. Jin Hyuk removes his mask and says, what's up? Park Hajin is shocked to see that. Jin Hyuk punches him in face. Guild leader says, bastard it's you. The one who humiliated us at the association. Bastard, do you think you'll be safe after doing something like this? He sits on a sofa and says, that's not something you should be concerned about. Shin Jiansu uses high ability called Quick Sword level 5. Shin Jiansu thinks, you're not even paying attention to my Quick Sword. Which is faster than the speed of sound. Then you should die. Jin Hyuk break his sword by throwing a go piece. Shin Jiansu is shocked to see that. Jin Hyuk says, you had something perfect for me to throw. He puts his feet on the table and says, now then. Shall we resume our discussion, Shin Jiansu? Shin Jiansu says, Kong Jin Hyuk are you here to take revenge because I tried to instigate your death? Just for that, you're destroying the entire building. He throws the go piece again, it hits Shin on his forehead. He falls to ground and his head starts to bleed. Jin Hyuk gets ready to attack again and says, your words are quite inappropriate aren't they? Just for that, Shin Jiansu says, you've done enough just stop already. Jin Hyuk says, so you're saying that I should keep it moderate. Just think about it calmly. We have over 50 rankers that aren't here because they're clearing the tower. Jin Hyuk says, so, Shin says, I'm saying that, if you kill me, they will chase you to the ends of the earth to kill you. Do you understand what that means? Blood calls for blood, and revenge breeds revenge. So long as one side doesn't forgive the killing will never stop. Jin Hyuk says, it funny how that's coming out of your mouth, but it makes sense. Words like, blood and revenge only exist to disturb my good night's sleep. So let's just end things cleanly. Shin says, what? Jin Hyuk says, I'll be the last one to take revenge, so you guys forgive me. Shin gets scared and says, wait, how does that make any sense? Jin Hyuk says, what do you mean? I'm just following you logic. Then Jin Hyuk kills the guild leader. Jin Hyuk says, Park Hajin the only reason you're alive is because of your sister. You better stay out of my sight until you die naturally. Hey you over there. The one who's pretending to be dead get up. He says, yes. Jin Hyuk says, if you show me that you're useful, I'll let you live. Start you self introduction. He says, my name is Kim Hee Wong, 26 year old. I was in charge of managing general businesses of the Black Crow Guild. I majored in computer science and accounting at Stanford you can leave anything to me. Jin Hyuk Sias, wow, very good, I'm very impressed. As you can see the situation here is not very good. It's also a waste to simply destroy one of the leading guilds. Therefore, I'm going to leave running the guild to you. He say alright. Jin Hyuk says, it's nothing to grant. You'll just be maintaining the Othar appearance. Kim Hee Wong however even if I serve as the guild master, no one will follow me. Jin Hyuk says, that's true. Jin Hyuk thinks, there's bound to be opposition if a non-combatant, moreover a secretary, rises to the top position all of a sudden. Jin Hyuk says, you don't have to worry about the people who oppose it. Kim says, will you be taking care of them? Jin Hyuk says, no, why would I do something so bothersome? I'll let you borrow someone else don't worry. After that the emergency meeting was called for all the high-ranking players of Crow Guild. There a lot of people are gathered around in front of the building. 
One of the high ranking player go check it, he see that guild master is dead. Then he rushed toward the office of the guild master and says, who sent the emergency gathering order. Kim Hee Wong is sitting on the chair of guild master. He brings out the dagger and says, why are you sitting there? He grabs Kim from the tie and says, tell me everything that happened without leaving a single detail. New consignees have come. He says, new consignees. Alice she says, this is so bothersome. I told you to make it so that I don't have to step in. He says, I'm lost for words are you seriously telling me that this child is the one who caused all this? She gets angry and says, did you just call me a child? She destroys the office. Jin Hyuk is watching from the outside. He say, I asked her to take care of the guild, but she went and did that. It's been around two months since the Tower of Trials appeared. The world order is changing drastically. People were also quickly adapting to the new world at a matching pace. The news was broadcasting a special program about the masked players. It drew a lot of attention because a ruin that even a large attack force coolant clear was cleared by a single person. There are only two people who know that I, who entered as a porter, and the masked player. Mr. Kim, who was the porter leader, joyfully accepted my request to keep it secret. And Teresa, who also promised to keep my secret. The me who wears a mask, and the me who does not. With this I'll be able to act much more easily. Then we see that he going into awakened association. Thinking all the condition have been fulfilled. There are no more restraints binding me. Now, it's truly time for me to monopolize everything. In this see that in front of the Hunter Association Jin Hyuk is checking out his new awakened certificate his rank is F. He thinks, the certificate looks more ordinary than I expected. His friends were waiting for him out the Hunter Association. They say, we leveled up a bunch too. And also, these people said that they knew you, so we were just talking. Jin Hyuk says, I'll introduce them to you. He says, she is Alice a player from Northern Europe. He think, there's bound to be chaos if I reveal that she's a progenitor. He says, and this is Kim Hee Wong, who will be managing the Black Crow Guild I took over. He'll be managing stuff like dungeon scouting and the likes. Kim says, if your acquaintance is of Representative Kong, then I will help you to the best of my ability. Jin Hyuk says, it's okay to ask him for favors whenever you need it. His friend says, then are you the Black Crow Guild Master? Jin Hyuk says, although he's the master in name, I'm the true master. They say, let's get along even better from now on. Alice and Jin Hyuk starts to yell at each other. Alice says, what it's their fault for irritating me. I wasn't planning to go that far. He says, how could you possibly blow up the building for being called a child? You can't even endure provocations like that when you've lived for thousands of years. She says, that's, there wasn't anyone who provoked my like that. Jin Hyuk says, all right, just follow me. Let's go hunting. She says, can't you hunt on your own? Jin Hyuk says, I'm gonna be hunting a horde, so I need a supporter. Alice says, a horde. Are there even any hunting grounds left? Jin Hyuk says, indeed. As long as the third floor booze isn't defeated and the fourth floor isn't open. The cream of the crop dungeons are regulated by guilds. There aren't any unknown hunting grounds. Or so everyone thinks. Of course, excluding me. After that we see that at Tower of Trials first floor Moon Lake. Jin Hyuk says, the place famous for being the most beautiful scenery in the Tower of Trials. However, ironically, there's no longer anyone who visits this place. It's been a long while since I've been here. Since they have no time to enjoy themselves when facing the extinction of humankind. Alice says, it's quite an elegant place, but how are you going to hunt here? Jin Hyuk says, just wait and see. He starts walking in the lake. Alice says, are you going into the lake? Water won't fill up your pants, right? Right. He says, there are 12 statues ordaining the tranquil moon lake. And among them, this one. This statue has another objective other than ordaining the lake. Alice says, does this statue have some sort of secret button? Jin Hyuk says, everyone would have already found it if it was that obvious. There must be hundreds of players who have found this groove on the statue. It was enough to be brought up in the community, after all. However, no one has ever successfully discovered the key that fits this groove. No wonder, since the key for this isn't just some piece of metal. It's moonlight. Use Mapam to regulate the amount and angle at which the moonlight enters the groove. 
to match it with the sequence engraved on the sequence stone inside the groove. Then after much effort, and opening it very carefully, the door leading underground opens. He says, let's go. You have entered the lower ground first floor of the Tower of Trials. Alice says, oh my. To think suck a space existed in the Tower of Trials. She thinks, this feeling it's truly been a while. This sense of freedom I've forgotten. How is, it, aren't you glad that you made a contract with me? She says, well, it looks like you weren't talking complete nonsense. Then a message popped up says, you have used the blessing of the start to manifest divine power. The second defrosting of the frozen tear will begin. Mana has increased by 18. It will be available for use again after 24 hours. Remaining absorption amount 70. He thinks, after absorbing the frozen tear again, it's become much easier to retain Alice. Now that I think about it, what do the beings in the tower think of players? We know that it's a game that's been made into reality. But would Alice, who has lived for thousands of years, think that she's part of data within a game? She says, Alice, I want to ask you something. Backslash. She says, what is it? He try to say something but glitches out. And Alice gets scared. Alice says, what are you saying? You scared me. He so it's like that. Information related to the tower is being completely blocked. But the fact that I found out that I can't talk about it to the beings within the tower. Is enough. She says, something's coming. It's a beetle. He kills using the element of fire. He says, I call the lower ground first floor of the Tower of Trials a spawning ground. The reason for that is. Then suddenly hundreds of beetles starts to spawn he starts to kill them using the element of fire. He says, because monsters endlessly crawl out of the abyss. Then a giant beetle scarab level 25. Alice freaks out and says, disgusting. Jinhyuk says, Alice, get back. He uses, unique ability blessing of the star. Then a huge yellow energy ball appears and hit the beetles. Then a message popped saying, the monsters, physical defenses have decreased by 30%. Jin Hyuk says to Alice, show me what you're made of. Alice gets angry and says, what? You dare tell this noble one to face those disgusting insects. Jin Hyuk says, what noble? And starts to spine the ring around. She gets scared and says, all right I'll do it. Then she uses her ability called blood bind, to kill the beetle. Jin Hyuk brings out his dagger and says, perfect and uses his stat rift. Then a message popped up saying rift stat possessed 100. Reduces the level gap by 33. He kill a lot of beetle in one move. And level up a bunch. He says, I was sick of holding myself back all this time. Looks like I was quite stressed out from maintaining my level 1 status. So I'll be counting on you guys. He suddenly gets surrounded by the hundreds of beetles. He uses unique ability, Grave of Swords. He gets way too excited and says, don't stop coming at me. After that we see that in Olympus Guild conference room, there is a meeting going on. Titan Guild representative Patrick says, since it looks like most of us have gathered, let us begin. As you all know, the 8th raid to climb to the 4th floor has failed. Among the 15 attack forces made up of 100 people, the number of people who have returned is only 9. The boss of the third floor is nothing but ordinary. However, we need a way to defeat the 100,000 statues that he commands. Zhongwu Guild representative Ten Wei hits the table and says, even with a divine artifact with the response force ability, we still failed. So how are we going to get through that huge mass? Olympus Guild representative Maria says, the second and third floor raids were done too quickly. The players did not have enough time to grow. If only we had enough players who were over level 15. Teresa is also standing behind her. Dangan Guild 3rd Raid Captain Beck Jinyo says, Indeed. Aren't we in this mess because of guilds like Jongwa. That regulate the dungeons to monopolize the magic crystals. Tenwei says, I can't overlook that statement. Beak Jinyo says, Did I say anything wrong? The way in Beak. Jinyo starts yelling at each other. Tenwei says, All we did was climb the tower for humanity. I will not stand for humiliation without any evidence. Beak Jinyo says, anyone can spout shitty excuses like those. Patrick says, stop it. This is not the time to be bickering amongst ourselves. We have gathered to solve the problem in front of us. Maria says, have you thought of something? Patrick says, yesterday, before daybreak, we received word from the demonic humans. They said they would help us if we heeded one of their conditions. 
All the other are shocked to hear that, and they all refuse it on the spot without a second thought. Teresa thinks, everyone is disgusted by the idea of working with demonic humans. No wonder. With the world as it is now, the influence of the large guild surpasses that of government. With the increased influence, having a just and great cause is more important than ever. Therefore, they must be wary of what they say and do. One of the demonic humans appears in the room and says, what do you mean we're trash? You're hurting this trash's feelings. It's good to be prideful. But don't you already know that you can't do anything with your strengths alone? They all get scared and stand up. Beak Jinyo says, you demonic human trash. Where do you think you are? He picks up the table and throw it at him. Demonic human change the direction of the table, as it is about to hit Ten Wei, he brings out his sword and cuts the table in two. And says, we finally agree on something, Beak Jinyo. Demonic human says, you're all quite hot-blooded. However, you might change your mind after hearing my proposal. Join forces with us. We have the power to defeat the third floor's boss. Beak Jinyo says, bullshit. The demonic human association doesn't even have 100 people. How could you possibly be able to penetrate through that army? Demonic human says, we just need to have quantity don't we? Then he uses his unique ability Grave Keeper of the Black Tomb. Patrick see outside of the window and sees that, that there is a huge army of the skeleton is coming out of the ground. Demonic human says, thanks to the long history of wars it looks like there are many useful corpses buried around here. As you can see, there are many among the demonic humans who are well versed in necromancy. Patrick says, so you were a necromancer. But to command a force this large, could that staff be? Demonic human says, you recognize this thins. The special item that can only be produced by obtaining 99 materials. The Staff of Greed. Tenwei says, if it's a combination of the famous Staff of Greed and a necromancer. The chances of success in the third boss raid in not non-existent. Maria says, Tenwei what are you saying those bastards are evil demonic humans. Beak Jinyo says, we know, Maria. We should be ripping this bastard to pieces right now. However, if they ask for a condition that the public will never know about. I believe it's worth a shot. Teresa thinks, how did things turn out like this? To think they'd even consider joining hands with the demonic humans. They're out of their minds. If only Jinhyuk were her. We wouldn't be in this situation. What should us do? Then a message popped up saying a video call request has arrived from the outside. Will you accept that call request? Caller, Kong Jinhyuk. She accepts the call and says, Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, have you been well? Have you leveled up a bit? What's with this situation here? Demonic human says, who are you? Why don't you reveal yourself T instead of hiding behind a screen? Then a message popped up saying, the video call will be changed to a collective call. Jin Hyuk says, as you wish. He appears on a big screen in front of every with the mask on. The says, the super rookie who single-handedly cleared the first floor ruin. Unknown. Guilds from all over the world wanted to recruit the super rookie. The super rookie they were trying so hard to find appeared in front their eyes. And the ones who tried their best to get in contact with unknown. Swallowed their spit in happiness due to his sudden appearance. Demonic human with a big evil smile on his face says, how amusing. I've heard of you as well, the one who cleared the first floor ruin. But are you aware that this boss raid is completely different from that place? Jin Hyuk says, are you saying that you can do it? Demonic human says, of course. What can't I do with this many summons? The guild representatives were also agreeing. Jin Hyuk says, really? There's no way you can, with that fake staff. Demon human gets scared and says, what? Fake. Jin Hyuk says, saint's heart. Prison uniform wet with holy oil. It's obvious you made it with only those two materials. Isn't that right? Patrick says, do you have evidence? Jin Hyuk says, the real staff of greed has a red gem embedded under the skull. There's no way you can make the real one with only three floors. Also look outside. The quality of the summoned skeleton soldiers is too low. Those flimsy soldiers won't even last half a day in the boss room. It's obvious that he's planning to abandon you all. After taking some coins and items in the middle of the confusion. Demonic human gets angry and says, arrogant bastard. You'll regret not taking my offer. I wonder if you can still stay so composed when we meet in person next time. I'll be watching you. 
Then demonic human disappears from the room. Patrick says, what do we do now? Jin Hyuk says, leave it to me. I'll make sure you won't have to join hands with the demonic humans. As well as gain profit from clearing the tower. Patrick says, are you saying that you can do it alore? Jin Hyuk says, yes, that's right. They thinks even if he fails, it gives me an opportunity to recruit him. Compared to joining hands with the demonic humans, this has no downsides. There's no way I can miss a chance like this. Tenwei says, unknown, how much are you thinking of for the down payments and rewards? Maria stopped Tenwei and says, wait, Olympus will give you all the support you need. Patrick says, what are you talking about? Titan is most suited for providing monetary support. Beck Jinyo says, money may not be the thing that he wants. If you have anything you need, then I, Beak Jinyo, will. Jin Hyuk stops them and says, you don't need to give me anything. Please block the entire area so that no other hunters can enter. If you let me go in by myself, then I will not take any rewards. Maria says, no wait, why are you doing all this for us? Ten Wei says, you're only making us more suspicious. What is your reason? Jin Hyuk says, a reason. I'm just doing what needs to be done. For the person I consider as my precious comrade. Jin Hyuk thinks, I'm cringing for my own words. Beak Jinyo gets excited and says, how marvelous. This is true comradery. Man is a guild representative, I have nothing to say. You're really making me reflect on myself. Jin Hyuk says, any normal person would have received the down payment. But people like that can't see the big picture. A play that gives up on rewards for his comrades. Just this is not again something that far outclasses a down payment. Since I can't antagonize the gills, I'll just upload after editing the demonic human part a bit. I'm already level 12 after not even a day in the spawning ground. Things are going much smother than I expected. Alice gets angry and says, Kong Jin Hyuk how could you just leave everything to me? Jin Hyuk says, since you have the strength to complain, it looks like you won't die. She says, you think that's funny. She start to act like. Child and says, what we have isn't a partnership. But a slave contract. Jin Hyuk says, a slave contract. You're hurting my feelings. He opened the shop and says, I was going to buy you a mana supplement. Sorry, but that kind of supplement won't cut it. Jin Hyuk says, it won't. She says, there's no way a mere supplement is able to fill my mana. Moreover, if I'm low on mana, I can't give you decent support, right? So I'll be taking the mana that I consumed, every single drop of it. She bites him on the neck and drink his blood. He thinks, how much blood did she suck from me? I feel dizzy. She says, now my mana is full, what do we do now? He says, he'll be doing some shopping. He buys some items. Alice says, what the hell you bought a bunch of useless stuff. He says, it may look like that, but they all have their purposes. Alice, we'll be getting extremely busy from now on. We have to get to the end of the underground first floor by today. Hold on tight. He jumps down into a deep hole. Alice gets scared and says, why are you jumping down when you don't even know how deep it is? He thinks how deep it is. I know exactly how deep it is, since I've jumped down over a hundred times before. He says, now Alice. She grabs his cloths, and uses reverse gravity skill. She says, you're too reckless. Are you skilled, or are you just lucky? He uses element of fire to light up a big fire in middle of the room. He says, it's okay, I know. I'm in the right place. Insects of this caliber are no match for me. Why don't you just come out, yourself? Then a huge statue appears in front of him saying, you know about me. Jin Hyuk say with a smile says, of course I do. The hound who roams the desert. Anubis. Anubis says, since you're the first human to ever come here, I was planning on killing you after some amusement. But you're hastening your own death. Jin Hyuk says, I didn't come all the way here to chat. Hurry up and come at me. Anubis gets angry and says, the absurdity. You're telling me, a divine being, to fight the likes of you myself. Alice come in front of Jin Hyuk and says, this guy is seriously dangerous. She says, I'll handle this guy somehow, so get out of here. He thinks look at her, worrying about me. Jin Hyuk says, don't worry just watch. Alice says, what? This is no time to put on airs. He says, I'll show you what kind of person you make a contract with. Anubis bring out his staff and says, how amusing. 
Anubis uses his unique ability, Judgment of Anubis. Anubis says, Answer. Did you hear about me from the vampire of yours? Jin Hyuk says, This skill is always activated when him. The Absolute Judgment Skill. Judgment of Anubis, activates once you answer three questions. Then a copy condition window appears says, make Anubis's patients run out to destroy the vessel holding his consciousness. If I make his patients run out, I gain the power to answer the most powerful question in the world. In truth, I can just answer by saying anything, regardless of whether it's true or not. That's right. How else would I have known about this place? A message popped saying, the subject has answered the question. Anubis says, as I thought. Did you come here hoping to obtain the hive? Ji Hyuk says, it sells for quite the price on the black market. He says, then I will ask the last question. Did you think you could get out alive after entering my territory? He says, if I can't slip out from this like of you, I might as well just give up on life. Then a message popped saying the required conditions have been fulfilled. Judgment of Anubis has been activated. A giant wolf appears behind him. The a message popped up saying, all stas have been reduced by 50%. The usage of unique abilities and skills will be sealed for one minute. Anubis says, now, I need a proxy for the judgment. A message popped up saying, Anubis is selecting a warrior of judgment. Anubis says, let me introduce you. Giant Mantis. This is the warrior who will judge you. What do you think of my brave warrior? Jin Hyuk says, quite amazing. But this is all I need to beat it. He brings out a mini phonograph. Anubis is confused to see that, and says, the musing of humans, all of a sudden. Have you gone mad after seeing my warrior? Jin Hyuk says, nothing of the sort. I'm just getting, absorbed in the music, the perfect song that I found after hundreds of thousands of trials. The beat that perfectly reproduces the giant mantis's attack patterns. Like I've always done, follow the beat of the music, to conduct its attacks like a conductor. Anubis thinks, he's following the beat of the music to perfectly evade this is definitely not a coincidence. It's a meticulously calculated move. Alright it should be time. Then a message popped up saying, one minute has passed you are able to use your unique abilities and skills. He thinks the penalty duration has ended. He uses the skill grave of swords. And giant mantis into pieces. Giant starts to regenerate. Anubis says, do you really think that's enough to defeat my warrior? The warrior can instantly regenerate its body. But it's over for you the moment your stamina runs out. Jin Hyuk says, you're right I can't kill that mantis the way that I am right now. But I can make it so that it doesn't want to live anymore. He cut giant mantis arms and legs again and again. Alice is watching all this and thinks, what the hell. He's completely treating it as his plaything. I knew he was strong, but not to this extent. If it's him, it's possible that he really could fulfill my revenge. Giant Mantis starts to back down. Anubis says, what the hell are you doing don't fall back and fight. Jin Hyuk says, the warrior chosen by a divine being has a high level of pride. The final blow to completely break the will of a warrior that never thought it could possible lose. Humiliation and provocation. Jin Hyuk sits on his face. Gate Mantis gets angry and cuts his own head off. A message popped up saying the warrior of Anubis has collapsed. Anubis is shocked to see that and thinks, the warrior committed suicide. Jin Hyuk's level increases. A message popped up saying, Grimoire of the Felteris Principality. Once deciphered, you will be able to learn ice magic. Jin Hyuk says, would you look at this. You can only see something like this in the middle floors of the tower. So this is the effect of Monopoly. A message popped up saying, you have obtained the skill level 1 ice formation. He uses ice formation ability and says, what an unexpected reward. Anubis says, I will certainly admit that you are no ordinary human. But are you seriously going to fight me with that ice toy of yours? Jin Hyuk say, fight you. You can't even come fight me, so I don't know what you mean. You're only backseating from the 42nd floor. Anubis says, so you already know that only my consciousness is here. If that's the case what is your reason for picking a fight with me? Jin Hyuk says, reason, well, because it's fun. Anubis gets angry and says, fun you say. How dare you use me for your amusement. Disrespectful. Anubis activates the hive. Hive an ancient beehive that endlessly summons giant insects. Anubis says, kill that disrespectful human this instant. Hundreds of insects of appears in front of him. 
He used ice formation skill to kill the insects. He says, I guess this won't even make a dent. H fuses the skills element of fire rank B and ice formation rank A. Then a message popped up saying the fusion has succeeded. You have obtained the skill daylight ran double A. He uses daylight level 1 skill. A lot of laser beams hits the insects. And kill. Them. Anubis says, it looks like I need a change of plan. Anubis activates his ability subject selection. Then a message popped up saying, a reinforced entity has formed within the hive. A huge bee comes towards him with rapid speed. He uses ice formation to kill it. Anubis says, it's useless. The subjects who were selected will not die and keep proliferating. Then bee multiples to four. Anubis says, no matter how strong you skills are it's pointless. Jin Hyuk brings out a pill and says, finally. It's a gigantification pill rank C. A special item that expands a subject's side by a maximum of 10. He throw the bill into one of the bee's mouth. A message popped up saying, the pill will take effect in one minute. He jumps on the head of one bee then on the other. He stands on one of the bee and grabs its antennas. Anubis gets angry and says, what are you doing kill him? Kill him this instant. Jin Hyuk says, infinitely proliferation without dying. This broken trait will plunge the opponent into despair. One of bees tried to attack him from behind but dodge bee hit the bee on which he was standing. He says, they become unable to properly understand the situation under the ridiculously unfavorable condition. He uses the unknown cube ran D to trap all bees. He uses four other items to reinforce the unknown cube. Jin Hyuk says, however, if you figure out the pattern through endless repetition and can calmly analyze the situation, then in the end. He uses element of fire level 5. And says, your way of thinking will change. Then the gigantification pill effect gets activated. Then a lot of gigantification pills appears in unknown queue. He says, to face the boss commanding the army. I need as many gigantification pills as possible. These infinitely proliferation monsters. Hive huge amounts of experience and they're the most efficient copiers. Anubis is shocked to see all this and says, that in the world. I happening. Did he even prepare the items for the compounding beforehand? He figured out he hives trait beforehand and laid a trap. I'm sure of it. He provoked me while aiming for this from the start. Anubis gets angry and destroy the hive. Jin Hyuk says, what the hell I was enjoying the show. Anubis gets angry and says, a mere human. Dares to humiliate me. He screams and says, disrespectful. You better stay alive. And come to the top. Jin Hyuk says, you don't have to scream like that, I'm going to. Anubis says, when that day comes. I will enact judgment on you or disrespect. Then a message popped up saying Anubis's vessel has been destroyed. The condition has been fulfilled. He gets the skill judgment of Anubis, acquisition difficulty over rank. The ability can only be used once on the same person if abused, you will incur the wrath of the ancient Egyptian gods. The ancient Egyptian gods are starting to show their interest in you. A few of them are expressing intense hostility toward you. Seriously, the gods of this place are so narrow-minded. Alice is also confused to see all this and says, just what in the world happened? Jin Hyuk says, what do you think, I won. His level now is 19 and he thinks, isn't this my first time growing this much in this place? Since I don't know what will happen in the future. I'll have to distribute my stats evenly. Then a message popped up in front of him says, you have received a video call request. Jin Hyuk asked Alice to go somewhere else for a second. Jin Hyuk says, for you to call me like this, what's gotten into you? Chun Yu Sung. Chun Yu Sung says, what? Where are you right now? Is it somewhere I don't know? Jin Hyuk says, none of you business. What is it? Chun Yu Sung says, Kong Jin Hyuk, I have a proposal for you. In 24 hours, the Awakened Association will be hosting a martial arts tournament. The player double up. Rank and up are scheduled to participate. Jin Hyuk says, in this situation where the third floor boss raid keeps failing, the Awakened Association is holding a martial arts tournament. Chun Yu Sung says, Kong Jin Hyuk, participate in this tournament and have another battle with me. Jin Hyuk says, what? Why should I? I don't want to waste my precious time on you. Jin Hyuk thinks, it would be a different story if you got some worthwhile skills to copy. Chun Jin Hyuk says, no, you won't be able to refuse. Because, I have a black market ticket. Jin Hyuk says, according to Chun Yu Sung, a black market. 
different from the coin exchange that players use. It is a secret auction house that sells items through auctions with real money that only a select few members can enter. So auction houses like these have formed, now that Tower of Trials has become reality. I was in need of some items to clear the third floor boss. If it's an auction house that only rich people secretly come to there should be some good items that I can get, right? After that a message popped up saying, congratulations. Your video has been selected as a hot issue video. He thinks have the rumors already spread. He says, the video that was uploaded through the newly made unknown channel. On the screen, you could see unknown and the rankers of large guilds, along with Teresa. Since I edited out the part where the demonic human appeared, there wasn't anyone insulting the guilds. There aren't any benefits at the moment to make an enemy out of the large guilds, after all. The reactions were as expected. The player of interest, covered in veils, that everyone wants to know about. Unknown. Since he declared to solo clear a dungeon that all the large guilds failed to clear. Everyone was bound to be hyped. Considering that a person can only watch a video a day. 50 million views is quite an astounding number. Since 100 coins are given for every 10,000 views, 50 million views could give me 500,000 coins. With the 90% commission fee, it comes to around 50,000 coins. Although the commission fee is harsh, it's not bad. He yawns and says, anyway. When is this going to end? This damn martial arts tournament. There are 24 martial arts tournament participants that are double a rank or higher. To raise public trust in the awakened association in the large guilds that have fallen due to consecutive third floor boss raid failures. The association decided to broadcast it live without any edits. To show the citizens how strong and trustworthy the players are. In other words, it's a show. Like the gladiators of ancient Rome. I guess it makes sense, since not everyone watches new to, and you don't get to see the players' abilities very often. It's not a bad idea for loosening up the tense atmosphere. Then we see that Chun Yu Sung says, if you agree to the match, I will give you this ticket. Jin Hyuk says, wait, I haven't even been judged as double a rank or over. I can't participate in the tournament. Chun Yu Sung says, the winner of the tournament is given two choices. One is the opportunity to choose one divine artifact replica from the National Museum of Korea. Jin Hyuk thinks he's completely ignoring me. Chun Yu Sung says, the other is the opportunity to choose a player to duel against. Who hasn't participated in the tournament? Chun Yu Sung start to yell and says, this time for sure, where everyone is watching. I will defeat you. After that we see that in tournament, the players are fighting to each other, it's a battle royal. The old man and schoolgirl from chapter 5 are also there. Some peoples are watching them from the sidelines they say, that group of two also looks quite useful. The standards of the match are quite high. With this, the public should feel relieved to some extent. There are many talents to scout. Don't you think so, director? Black Cloud Guild director S rank Hong Diokyo says. No, there's only one person that catches my eye. He watches Chun Yu Sung and thinks. Marvelous. Excellent. Power control. A wide field of view. And most of all, his will-groomed battle spirit. You're the first person to refuse my offer to join my guild. He has quite the spirit for someone of this generation. Then Black Cloud Guild triple a rank Yung Doyen says, this is so hard to watch. If only you let me participate, I would have destroyed all those insects. And even made that arrogant Chun Yu Sung kneel before me. Don't you think so Hung? Director Hung says, stop saying the same thing over and over again and worry about your interview later. I used some money to prepare it. You understand, don't you? Yung Doyen says, don't worry, I'm more photogenic than you think. Director thinks, Doyen has enough talent to rise to S rank within three years. And if word gets out that we recruited such a prospect, our guild's reputation is naturally bound to rise. It would be great if he could stop bragging though. After that we see that Chun Yu Sung defeats everyone else using a single move. Chun Yu Sung choose to designate an opponent. He points his sword towards the audience and says, come out. Yung Doyin gets excited and says, you sure know your stuff. Very well. I, Yung Doyin will. Then suddenly director grabs him and says, sit down. He's not designating you. Look at the point of his sword and his gaze, he's pointing to somewhere about us. Chun Yu Sung says, stop acting dumb and come out. 
Young Doyin thinks, there shouldn't be anyone here worth fighting other than me and Dio Kyo Han. Then Jin Hyuk stands up says, for God's sake. You're an expert at annoying people. Crowd says, what? Chun Yu Sung lowered his sword. It looks like it's that person. Who is he? Look through the database this instant. Found him. His name is Kong Jin Hyuk. An F rank player. Director thinks. It would be a huge topic if he dueled against someone like R triple a rank Doyin. But he chose an F rank player. This doesn't benefit him in any way whatsoever. Does Ha have some fetish for tormenting the weak in front of a crowd? What are you thinking, Chun Yu Sun? Jin Hyuk says, I'm begging you, if you lose this match, please stop challenging me. You should know when to give up. Chun Yu Sung says, you're acting like I'll lose. Are you seriously saying that after you saw me win the tournament? Jin Hyuk says, it does seem like your skills have improved. You must have trained hard, yeah. Chun Yu Sung gets angry and says, hard. I didn't stop for a single moment and did my absolute best to catch up to you. If you want the ticket, you'll have to give it your all. Chun Yu Sung activates his Soul Chasing Sword Chi Level 6. Soul Chasing Sword Art Second Movement. Soul Chasing Inferno Emperor. Jin Hyuk thinks there he goes again. He uses Element of Fire and says, Alright, bring it on, you damn stalker. After that we see that roof of arena explode. Chun Yu Sung is standing inside the smoke and says, How many? How many damn skills do you have? And he falls down to ground. Jin Hyuk come near him and bring the black market ticket out of his pocket and says, Since this is what we promised, it isn't stealing. I'll make good use of this black market ticket. Everyone in the crowd is shocked to see the fight and says, Did you see the giant ice missile? No only that. He also completely destroyed the ceiling with some light ray. Wasn't he F rank? Forget F rank, is he even human? Then Jin Hik goes and talks to the old man says, It's been a while hasn't it? Old man says, It has. We haven't met since the museum. After all. Jin Hyuk says, With a smile our first meeting was a bit savage, but isn't it all water under the bridge? Let's get along. Old man says, I also don't want to be you enemy. Jin Hyuk says to Lee Yuri, Then, as a way for us to get along from now on, please do me a favor. Please, give me your number. You can refuse if you don't want to. She says, then I'll have to refuse. Then Jin Hyuk says, of course, that's only if you can handle the consequences. She thinks, it's only a favor in name. It practically a threat. Here it is. Young Doyin jumps to the ring in front Jin Hyuk and says, what a surprise. I thought you'd get floored since you're an F ranker, but to think you'd be this powerful. Jin Hyuk uses the eye of truth to see his stats. Young Doyin says, I never imagined an event like this would happen. Then a copy condition window appears says, the current subject has approached you with some sort of scheme in mind, if you figure out what his intention or you will be able to copy the skill giant's clutch. Jin Hyuk thinks a scheme. No, more importantly, how does the system know exactly what other people are thinking every time? Is it more than a simple program? Young Doyin Sias, don't glare at me like that. I didn't come here to fight. Jin Hyuk says, then what do you want? It's simple. As a person who works in the same business, I'll be seeing you quite often. As a colleague who will be working together with you from now on. I'll be in you care. In you care, huh? Jin Hyuk again uses the eye of truth. It says, Young Doyin's words are a lie. Jin Hyuk thinks, behind his superficially composed face. There's a subtle amount of inferiority and rage that's displayed. The gathering reporters as if they were waiting for this moment. His hand, requesting for a handshake. Young Doyin's unique ability power of a giant. The black cloud representative who has an expression full of expectation by overpowering the new recruit that defeated. The winner of the tournament in front of all these reporters. He's planning on redirecting all the attention gathered to himself. What an obvious scheme. Then a message popped up saying, you have seen through Young Doyin's intentions. The copy conditions have been fulfilled. You have obtained the skill Giant's Clutch Rank B. Giant's Clutch Acquisition Difficulty B. Description, you are able to use the power of a giant. Your grip strength will dramatically increase, and you are freely able to use items that are 10 times your weight. Jin Hyuk thinks, back when Tower of Trials was a virtual reality game, I didn't have many chances to copy skills due to the lack of players. However, now that the game has become reality, all the skills that other people have obtained through all kinds of efforts are just waiting to be collected by me. 
Jin Yuk says, colleagues. How interesting. Then, does this handshake represent the Black Cloud Guild? Yung Doyin, of course. It looks like you aren't affiliated with any guilds, so if you join us, we'll give you special treatment. Jin Hyuk says, really? Will I receive a massive down payment if I join? Yung Doyin starts to laugh and says, isn't that obvious? Just say a number, and we'll match it. As they are about to a handshake Jin Hyuk says, with an evil look on his face, then let me ask you one last thing. Did you think you could win? If it was only a contest of strength. Yung Doyin uses giant's clutch and says, of course. Isn't that obvious? He uses his full strength to he was not able do anything against Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk uses judgment of Anubis. Yung Doyin gets scared and thinks he's not moving an inch. Jin Hyuk squash his hand and says, you're holding on quite well, aren't you? It seems you're quite confident in your strength. But for someone of you size, aren't you exaggerating you pain too much? Yung Doyin screams with pain and says, stop. Then Jin Hyuk punches him in the stomach. He goes flying. Jin Hyuk says, how dare you try to act friendly toward me? After that a fire come towards him. He jumps and dodges it and uses the eye of the truth. The one how. Uses the fire's ball as director. He says, how dare you make a rag out of Doyin. Do you have any idea how hard I worked for this moment? Then a copy condition window appears says, Shatter Hong Gyokyo's pride. If you succeed, you will be able to copy the subject's unique ability, Blood Demon Chi. Jin Hyuk says, I understand you anger. But why don't we hold off on the fighting? Director says, hold off. Are you getting cold feet after coming this far? Jin Hyuk says, no I just don't want to destroy any guild masters yet. Director jumps and says, you fucking bastard. And activates his unique ability Blood Demon Chi then says, are you seriously saying that? Jin Hyuk uses his ability Daylight Level 2. He start to shine really bright and bring out his daggers and block Director's attack. And uses his Rift stat. A message popped up saying, using the 99 points, the difference has been reduced by 33 levels. Director thinks that, to think this bastard can withstand my Blood Demon Chi impossible he's on par against me who is at the vanguard of the raid against colossus the boss of the second floor don't make me laugh then some says please stop and uses arbitration level 4 skill don't you think you should try to look dependable in this martial arts tournament that everyone is watching it is association president han sangjin jin hyuk thinks so this is the man who leads korea's awakened the awakened association president han sangjin Director says, Association President. You're just in time. This man made a rag out of a player affiliated with our guild. President says, Calm down, Representative Hong. This isn't some talent show, so isn't it obvious there would be injuries in a match? President says to Jin Hyuk, It's nice to meet you, Player Kong Jin Hyuk. I am Han Sangjin, the president of Korea's Awakened Association. To be honest with you, I did not know anything about you until about 20 minutes ago. However, I received a call from department head Park who was in charge of the martial arts tournament. He said to come here immediately. That something unbelievable was happening. There were some weird things about it, so I debited to investigate your test results. I see you pressured you examiner. Kong Jin Hyuk. Congratulations on becoming the 16th S rank in Korea. The association takes responsibility for the misassessment in the ranking and deeply apologizes. All reporters on the scene gets excited starts to run toward him while saying, S rank, a new S rank player. Tell everyone in the reporter conference room to get the hell over here. What a scoop. Get out of the way. Director thinks, what kind of shitty situation is this? This martial arts tournament was supposed to be the Black Cloud Guild stage. But we're being completely buried into the ground. I have to mend the situation somehow. Wait. He grabs one of the reporter and says, Mr. Reporter. The Black Cloud Guild will be clearing the third floor boss. Reporter free himself and run away saying, I'm sorry. Um, please give me a call next time. Everyone starts to take pictures of Jin Hyuk. Director starts to walk away. Then a message popped up saying, the condition has been fulfilled. You have acquired the unique ability Blood Demon Chi. After that we see that on the news and social media everyone is talking about Jin Hyuk being the 16th S rank hunter. Jin Hyuk see all that and says, I see some good reactions. 
We see flashback where President says, did you say you'll be heading to Las Vegas? Then, as an apology, we will prepare a plane for you. Jin Hyuk says, so this is why people want a high rank. It's a completely different treatment. Then an air hostess come to him and says, please excuse me. And show him his food. So this is what first class is like. Alice says, Jin Hyuk you see that? Man in front of you. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, the scent he gives off is strange. It's a displeasing and uncomfortable smell of blood. I'm certain I don't want to taste his blood. He says, what the hell are you going on about? Alice says, I'm not joking. That man isn't some ordinary human. If Alice, who sees humans as mere blood packets, is saying something like that, then there must be something to him. Jin Hyuk uses the eye of the truth. His name is Alex Judra, and is shocked to see that he is with the Demonic Human Association. And a copy condition window appears saying, based on your affinity with the subject, you may copy his unique ability and one of his skills. However, to reach maximum affinity with the subject, you must apply to the Demonic Human Association. He thinks a demonic human. To think that man was one of the demonic humans. I can't believe he's putting on an act with such a calm look on his face. Alex comes near him and says, could you be player Kong Jin Hyuk? Aren't you the person who was recently assessed as S rank in Korea? Jin Hyuk thinks, this can't be coincidence, he definitely got on the same plane as me on purpose. I guess the large guilds aren't the only ones who are taking interest in me after the S rank announcement. Jin Hyuk says, yes, I was reassessed as S rank not too long ago. Alex says, I thought so. I saw the martial arts tournament coverage, what a surprise. Alex bring out his ID and says, please excuse my manners. My name is Alex Judro. It must be fate for us to have met like this shall we go have a drink. There's nothing like alcohol to pass the time during such a long flight. Jin Hyuk thinks, I guess I can play along for a bit. I guess you're right. Jin Hyuk thinks, he told me all kinds of stories as he pulled out some high quality cognac. His story about how his cosmetics business has been booming, and the kinds of hardships he faced after the Tower of Trials appeared. I wonder if this demonic human, who's trying his hardest to tell me who he is, knows. The fact that I already know who he really is. Alex says, to be honest, the reason I went to Korea wasn't because of my cosmetics business. It was to expand my business related to the Awakened. Jin Hyuk says, an Awakened related business. Alex says, yes, I thought I'd give it a go, considering the change in times. But, there's a slight problem. Jin Hyuk says, what kind of problem? Alex says, Jin Hyuk, are you aware of the recent player who has been going wearing a mask? Jin Hyuk says, oh that unknown person. I saw him declaring that he'll clear the third floor boss. Do you have some sort of relationship with unknown? Alex says, to be honest, we were going to participate in the third floor raid. But we've gotten into a difficult situation because he's stopping our efforts so strongly. Though he says, it's to protect his comrade, he told us not bother him since he has something to do alone. Jin Hyuk says, you're talking as if you know unknown personally. Alex says, you could say that. Jin Hyuk gets frustrated and thinks, how calmly he's lying to the person in question's face. Jin Hyuk says, unknown is quite greedy. Alex says, you're right. He's too much. So my point is, if you come to the third floor boss room with us, you'll be a great help to us. Jin Hyuk says, me, didn't unknown declare a solo raid. Alex says, since S ranks are given the right to act on their own, no one will be able to touch you. Moreover, you'll be able to obtain a hidden item from the third floor boss room. Jin Hyuk thinks, in a situation where the large guilds have promised unknown a solo raid. Since they will be strictly restricting any entry into the third floor boss room. They're trying to enter this way. Jin Hyuk says, but isn't this a bit too much for a request? I've only just became an S rank, but aren't you basically telling me to go against the large guilds already? Alex says, Kong Jin Hyuk, I am an entrepreneur. The harsher the demand, the more rewarding the payment you'll receive in exchange. I wonder if you've heard of this. The potion of legends. That can cure any disease, and even heal a destroyed heart. It's an elixir. Jin Hyuk thinks, what the hell does the demonic human association do? To have something this rare. Jin Hyuk says, this is quite tempting. Alex says, anyone would desire such an item. I will give you that elixir as an advance payment. 
if you just sign this contract, that is. Then a message popped up saying Alex has activated level 6 contract of the dead. Alex says, you won't come across such an opportunity very often. Jin Hyuk thinks, contract of the dead. Just from its looks, it's no different from an ordinary contract. However, it's a contract where, if you breach the conditions, death will come to you. However, there's nothing to worry about as long as you don't sign it. Jin Hyuk says, I apologize, but I can't sign this. I'm the cautious type, so making an enemy out of the large guilds is a bit. Alex says, so even this won't satisfy you. How unfortunate. I had high hopes for you. Alex says, then let us forget about the deal with the elixir. As he about to grab the elixir Jin Hyuk take it away. Alex says, what are you doing? Jin Hyuk says, though I am the cautious type. I'm also the greedy type, who needs to have everything that I want. Alex says, what the hell are you talking? Alex fell strong pressure in the air. Alex thinks, what is he trying to do by pulling out this much mana? If this crazy son of a be planning on crashing this plane if need be. Then the pilot says, this is an announcement for all passengers in the cabin. The plane is currently experiencing sudden turbulence. We ask all passengers to get back to their seats and strap on their seat belts. Jin Hyuk says, you heard the announcement, right? I should get back to my seat. Alex says, did you know from the start? Where I'm affiliated, I had a rough idea. You're pretty good at acting. Alex says, you do well not to irritate us too much. Unknown will demand you pay the price for this matter, no matter what. Jin Hyuk says, that's an obvious lie. You're on the same side as unknown when you were the ones who were humiliated during the Olympus meeting. Alex thinks, what the hell? How does he know that? Is this guy actually close with unknown? No he might just be bluffing. The large guilds may have shared some info since he just became S rank. Jin Hyuk says, who knows? I might give you some info about him if you're nice. I'll see you next time. Alice says, this is a human city. Well, I guess it's not bad. Jin Hyuk says, as promised, don't cause trouble. If you do, you're going straight back into the ring. I took her out as a reward for discovering the demonic human. Though 150 centimeters is my limit with my current mana. I call out the memory of the world. Then a message popped up says, fusing the skill eye of the truth double S rank and blood demon chi S rank. He acquired a new skill eye of gluttony triple S rank. Eye of the gluttonly. Acquisition difficulty, triple S. Description. As the superior version of eye of truth, it possesses immunity to all kinds of barriers. In addition to the ability to inspect a target status window, you can also use view sharing and mind reading. However the characteristic of the blood demon chi increases the chance of your personality being corrupted if used too often. View sharing and mind reading can only be used on targets of lower level than yourself. Jin Hyuk thinks, I was going to fuse it with a more stable spirit type ability in the future, but it can't be helped, since I need it right now. Alice says, hey, contractor, are we going to some place like that? She points towards a casino. Jin Hyuk says, no, we're going somewhere else. You can't use skill in regular casinos like that. Alice asks, skills. Jin Hyuk says, I'm talking about magic. He thinks, though I can Juti take their money by force. For merely earning funds for the auction. Taking money from hardworking regular people is crossing the line. Then Alice says, then where are we going? Jin Hyuk says, us. Somewhere incomparable to an ordinary place like that. Alice gets excited and says, incomparable you say. They are standing in front of private gambling house Tortuga. Alice says, I like the other building better. I said we aren't here to play around. This place. Then they go inside and Alice gets excited and says, well there's a bunch on stuff that looks fun. What's so different about this place compared to the others? Jin Hyuk says, this a casino where you can use magic freely. They go the bartender and says, please put everything on my tab. You can just make her anything that she wants to drink. Alice gets angry and says, what the hell, you want me to just sit still here when it's been so long since I've come outside. What are you gonna do by yourself? Jin Hyuk says, earn some foreign currency. Someone uses skill source seal on the cards. Then a message popped up saying, the designated object is not affected by skills for 10 minutes. However, the user's skills still take effect. Tortuga table dealer Pedro. He has two jokers card. 
He thinks, it's quite a decent hand. I've already lost over 500,000 to this Asian. It'll be bad if I lose any more. I'll finish it with this no matter what. He says, raise. Audience says, this round may decide it all. Whoa, what an absurd about. Jin Hyuk says, all in. Someone in audience says, wow, isn't that at least 5 million dollars. Jin Hyuk says, is this really all right? It's quite a large amount of money. Pedro says, the house is always confident. Jin Hyuk says, in any case, which guild manages this place? Pedro says, the scavenger guild invests in and manages this place. Pedro thinks, he was quiet until now, so what's with all these sudden questions? Jin Hyuk says, am I not allowed to ask many questions in this place? Pedro says, of course not. I can always, answer questions to the extent for you, dear customer. Pedro thinks, shit does he have some sort of mind reading skill. Pedro says, then, I will flip the cards. He thinks but that doesn't matter. If I substitute the cards as soon as I flip them, you won't be able to do shit. He uses strange gestures. He flips the cards but they are still two jacks. He is shocked to see that and thinks, what the hell happened? We see that Jin Hyuk has activated judgment of Anubis. Pedro thinks, I'm sure I substituted them with my ability. Jin Hyuk says, wow, what a relief. I won by a hair's width with my pair of kings. Jin Hyuk thinks, my newly obtained eye of gluttony. Its mind reading function is quite useful. Jin Hyuk says, then, I will take the chips. Then a lot of people surround says, I don't know what skill you used to win this big, but you need to come with us. Jin Hyuk says, is this how you treat you customers? He says, we don't consider people who take this much money from us as customers. Jin Hyuk says, I that so. One of the people says, drag him into a room. One of the people goes flying above his head. Jin Hyuk says, after hearing what you just said. You reminded me of what I heard outside as I was about to enter this place. What was it? That's right. In this place, the one who gets scammed is the dumbass. One of the guards shoot him with a gun. Jin Hyuk dodges the bullet and punch him in the face. After that we see that Jin Hyuk is fighting them and Alice is drinking calmly like nothing. Is happening. She says, what's this call? Bartender says, it's a cocktail called Kiss of Fire. It's an alcohol that represents the passionate love between couples. She says, passionate love between couples. One of the guards says, are the guild executives not here yet? Other one says, they said they'll take at least 30 minutes. He thinks something's wrong. No matter how lawless this place is. No one goes wild like this all by themselves. One of them says, section chief. There's serious trouble. Please take a look at this. What could possibly be more serious than this right now? He's someone who was newly assessed as S rank in South Korea a few days ago. Player Kong Jin Hyuk. S rank even America only has about 20 S ranks. But to think someone like that is before my eyes. If he resolves himself to do it. He could destroy this whole casino. He shouts and says, all of you stop. I apologize. We acted rudely toward you without recognizing who you are. Please forgive us this one time. Jin Hyuk says, why are you apologizing all of a sudden? Are you thinking that you crossed the wrong person after finding out my rank? He says, that's not what I mean. Jin Hyuk sighs, how absurd. Wasn't this that kind of place from the wasn't this that kind of place from the start? Where the one who gets scammed is the dumbass. I'll get the money that I won, as well as compensation for the mental damage caused by you trying to screw me over after I won fair and square. He says, I'll settle for just 10 million dollars. Jin Hyuk grabs him and says, or you can close your doors for good. Jin Hyuk checks his back balance there are 10 million dollars in his account. This should be more than enough to buy the items that I want. Anyway it should be here soon. Then a car comes near him and driver says, are you customer number 117? Jin Hyuk says, yes that's right. Driver says, I will escort you to the auction house. Jin Hyuk thinks, I can't see the outside form in here. I guess the auction house's location is top secret. I'm already looking forward to it. Alice says, you didn't forget your promise, right? Jin Hyuk says, just wait, I'm going to a place where people can't see us. Alice says, hurry hurry hurry. Jin Hyuk says, stop pestering me. Alice says, the outside air is the best, after all. Jin Hyuk says, are you that happy? Alice says, yeah, I am. 
This place is befitting of a noble being like myself. Are you going to do that thing called auctioning now? Jin Hyuk says, yeah, we're heading inside now. Don't do anything that stands out in there, Alice. Alice says, why? Jin Hyuk says, because there are many eyes in here. It's already that 175th though I attend this every year, I'm especially nervous today. Aren't a bunch of items from the Tower of Trials going to appear? From what I heard, the Ichthyosaur's heart is going to appear in this year's auction. Really? It's all thanks to the appearance of the Tower of Trials. All kinds of ancient treasures are reappearing because of the mana wave or whatever. I'm looking forward to it. Even though I probably won't be able to buy it, I'll at least be able to see it with my own eyes. Alice says, this stench. Jun Hyuk says, what's wrong? Then a demonic human come near him it's nice to meet you. He says, my name is Julius Cedric. You must have a vague idea, but as you can see, I am this idiot's master. Jin Hyuk thinks, so he called over his master in that short time. But it looks like he has received quite a beating. Probably because he got an elixir taken from him without getting any results. Jin Hyuk uses Eye of Gluttony, as I expected, he has marvelous stats. To think he even has a unique ability with good synergy for a necromancer. It's an ability that is longed for, since it can be used to manipulate many summons with like mana. A. Copy condition window appears saying, Cedric is in a very furious state due to his subordinates continuous failures. If you complete his black magic education and receive an A+, plus, you can copy his unique ability or one of his skills. Jin Hyuk thinks, what kind of copy condition is this damn thing? The system is getting crazier and crazier. I might as well provoke him. Jin Hyuk says, I received something quite valuable from you disciple, and it was quite a nice flight. Julius says, I'm relieved to hear that. About that, I've come to ask of you before. Jin Hyuk says, oh about unknown. Julius says, yes, it is something very important to us. Jin Hyuk thinks, this old man is quite straightforward. Jin Hyuk says, since we've come to such a nice place, let's discuss that some other time. Julius says, unfortunately, there is no other time. We must take care of this as soon as possible. Jin Hyuk gets angry and says, I missed the part where that's my problem. Alex gets angry. Julius stops him and says, leave him be. There's still a way. Alice says, those smelly bastards are so annoying. Should I erase them? Jin Hyuk says, leave them be. Nothing good will come out of making a fuss here. All I have to do is just buy some useful items. Then auctioneer says, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for waiting. Jin Hyuk says, it's starting. Let's go to our seats. We will now begin the 175th black market auction. The first item is, a meteorite that landed in the state of Arizona. It's said that it's been emitting powerful mana ever since the Tower of Trials appeared. Auctioneer we will start $100,000. We have 150,000s. We have 200,000s. Jin Hyuk says, there are currently no artisans who can work with meteoric iron at the moment. In other words, right now, when there's currently no one who knows how to use it, is the best time to buy it cheap. Jin Hyuk raised the purse. Auctioneer, whoa. We have 300,000s do I have anyone else? Nice, I bought meteoric iron for dirt cheap. 1 million dollars. Julius bid 1 million dollars. Auctioneer says, we have 1 million dollars. Huh. Jin Hyuk says, would you look at them? Auctioneer, do I have anyone anyer says, now the bidding for the sealed psychiatric ward catalog will start at 100,000 dollars. Bid raises to 150,000s, 200,000s, 250,000s. Jin Hyuk raises the bid 300,000. Demonic Human raises the bid to 1 million. Everyone is shocked to see here the new bid. Auctioneer says, 1 million. Is there anyone else? Sold to the old gentleman for 1 million dollars. Jin Hyuk gets angry and thinks, I knew it. He's planning on buying everything that I bid for. That's how you're gonna play, is it? After that Auctioneer says, the next item has been found in South America. The Maya Civilizations. Auctioneer says, we have 500,000s. Alice says, you're buying it without even listening to its description. Jin Hyuk says, just wait, I have a plane. Then Demonic Human says, 1 million. Auctioneer says, we have 1 million dollars. Is there anyone else? Jin Hyuk says, 1.5 million. 
Demonic human raises the bid to 3 million. Auctioneer says, we have 3 million dollars are there any more bids? Sold to the old gentleman for 3 million dollars. Demonic human thinks would you look at him. After that they continue to bid against each other. Demonic human buys another item for 2 million dollars. And one more for 3 million dollars. Another one for 5 million dollars. Auctioneer says, the next item is quite amazing as well. When Columbus discovered the new continent. Alex says to Julius, Master, why don't we give up on something at least once? Julius hits Alex and says, you imbecile. What are you gonna do if he easily gets something that he wants if we do that? Julius thinks, though I'm suffering some losses, I have plenty of funds. I'll secure the items that he's aiming for. And exchange them for information on unknown. Auctioneer says, the next item is for the true fans. I introduce to you the first chess board. All the buyers says, how trivial, what the hell are we supposed to do with a chess board without any pieces? Let's conserve our funds for the ichthyosaur's heart that will come out later. Jin Hyuk says, 50 thousands. Julius says, 100 thousands. Then both of them go higher and higher Julius reaches 8 million. All the other buyers thinks, is there something to it that we don't know? This is crazy who the hell buys a chess board for 8 million? Jin Hyuk says, 10 million. Julius gives an evil smile and stand up says, 30 million dollars. Julius says, 10 million dollars seems to be all you have. I finally found what you really wanted. Julius shouts and says, you'll have to beg me on your knees if you want this item. Auctioneer says, 30 million is there anyone else who'd like to bid? Jin Hyuk thinks, I wasted so much of his funds yet he still has this much. He has way more than I expected. I need a plane. Auctioneer says, then, the 56 the auction item, the first chess board. Is sold to the old gentleman for 30 million dollar. As auctioneer is about to complete his sentences. Alice stand up says, 100 million. Julius is shocked to hear that and thinks, 100 million for the mere chess board. Auctioneer says, young lady, it's not that I'm doubting you but. Can you provide proof of balance? She says, proof and opens a small portal. A lot gold coins come out of it. That checks the items and says, unbelievable. Just this crown alone is easily worth over 500 million dollars. Julius thinks, that crown alone is worth over 500 million dollars. That brat. Was she not an ordinary human? But. What's more dangerous than that girl is. Tong Jin Hyuk. Who's treating that girl as if she's his subordinate. Perhaps. An enemy more annoying than unknown may have appeared. Julius says, our plan has been overturned. Julius says, to Alex proceed with plan B. Alex gets excited and says, I've been waiting for you to say that. They bring the chess board and says, congratulations. We will deliver the first chess board to the young lady. Alice says, give it to him, not me. Jin Hyuk says, I'm thankful, but isn't it too much? Alice says, it doesn't matter, I was thinking of clearing out my treasury either way since it was so full. Moreover, I won't tolerate imbeciles looking done on my contractor. Jin Hyuk thinks, this girl so she knows how to say some commendable things. Then suddenly something explodes behind Jin Hyuk. A girl says, it's collapsing. Everyone, evacuate. We have to get out of here. Everyone starts to run to evacuate. Alex kills some of them and says, where are you all in a rush to? You're all precious sacrifices to be my materials. Alex activates Mana Furnace. Everyone start feel intense pain in their body someone says, my head feels like it's about to explode. Someone grabs Jin Hyuk foot and says, please save me. Jin Hyuk gets angry and looks toward the Alex and says, you've crossed too far beyond the line. You sick bastard. Alex sucks the mana out of everyone's body. A huge monster appears who absorbs all the mana. Jin Hyuk says, what a repulsive necromancer. There are more than one those monster. Alex says, how can you call these lovely beings repulsive? Jin Hyuk is hardly standing. Alex says, as expected of an S rank to think you'd be able to stand within this magic. I remember very clearly. The humiliation you gave me in the airplane. Now that I've received the order to kill you. I no longer have a reason to hold back. Both monster jumps toward the Jin Hyuk to attack him. 
Jin Hyuk jumps backward and dodge the attack. One of Monster's punch hits the ground there is a huge explosion. Alex says, you're very quick on your feet. Where did that arrogant rich brat run off to? Jin Hyuk says, she hates disgusting things like these, so she ran away already. Jin Hyuk thinks, her materialization was released because it became harder for me to maintain my mana within this mana furnace. I'm accumulating damage from the furnace. The longer this drags on, the worse it will be for me. He bring out his dagger and says, I'll end this as quickly as possible. He uses the grave of swords to cut down the monster. He kills both monster with a single attack. Alex says, wow, how surprising. I couldn't even see what Zhu happened however. I'm enjoying myself quite much with this many materials, you know. Alex summons to new monster and says, what business could possibly be easier than this? And two monsters that Jin Hyuk killed earlier regenerate as well. Jin Hyuk think, I see, he's planning on stalling for time like this. Continuing to raise as many monsters with the vitalities of those around him. And playing around with the opponent until their mana bottoms out. All monster surrounds Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk thinks, the standard battle style of a necromancer. Monster starts to attack Jin Hyuk he dodges the attack. He jumps back to keep his distance and says, to think you'd consider something like this your trump card. Jin Hyuk uses the daylight skill and says, I'll burn them all before they resurrect. He shine very bright blue light. Alex says, I knew you'd use that. But I'm aware of all his skill from watching the martial arts tournament footage. Alex thinks disperse an attack before the light ray fully charges. He is shocked to see his monster are not moving and says, what? Why aren't they moving? All the monster legs are frozen. Alex thinks, he used the flash of light to blind me from seeing him use an ice skill. Jin Hyuk says, go off now. Then a giant ray of light comes of the roof of auction house. Alex falls to the ground and says, impossible. He see all his monster are burned to ashes and says, my darlings. Jin Hyuk appears behind him says, look at you precious darlings. Alex throws something toward Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk cuts it into two pieces. Alex starts to run away and thinks, shit how did I lose? I'm sure I was the one at an advantage. I have to get out of here and regroup with master. Jin Hyuk throws his dagger and hit Alex in the chest from behind. Jin Hyuk says, this is how you're supposed to throw. Jin Hyuk come near him and says, you caused this huge mess, and now all you can do is run away. Jin Hyuk take his dagger back and says, I'll tell you how you're going to be dying. You lungs will slowly fill with blood for the next 30 minutes. Once your lungs have filled up with blood, you'll finally be able to die from suffocation. I hear the second most painful death after burning, is probably suffocation. On course, I can make it so that you won't have to suffer for so long. Jin Hyuk bring out elixir and says, if you give me information about the demonic human association that is. Alex says, I can live. Alex start to speak he says, demonic human, and then cough out blood. He thinks shit. I can't talk because my throat is blocked. If so, then I'll write. He start to write with his blood. Jin Hyuk steps on his hand and says, if you don't want to tell me, then it can't be helped. Alex thinks, this bastard. He never planned to listen to me in the first place. Jin Hyuk says, I guess I won't need this anymore. He gets him out of his pocket and throw it towards him says, you can have it back. It was the visiting card that Alex gave him earlier. Jin Hyuk says, I'm begging you, try to suffer for as long as possible before you die. You trash. He see item called safe made by Michelangelo rank C. And also ichthyosaurs here rank up. Jin Hyuk think, I can make quite a large subspace inventory with these items. He combines Ichthyosaur's heart ranka and safe made by Michelangelo rank C. A message popped up saying, you have succeeded in creating massive subspace inventory plus 5000 kilograms. Auctioneer appears behind him he gets scared and turns around. Auctioneer says, thank you for saving us. Auctioneer's son says, thank you, mister. Jin Hyuk says, so this kid was the host's son. Damn it, I was just in need of this item. What should I say so I can take it? Jin Hyuk says, it's not like I was just going take these. Auctioneer says, it's alright. I saw you before I completely lost consciousness. 
Weren't you the one who saved us? I didn't have even the slightest desire to report. Someone who saved my one and only son. Jin Hyuk thinks, this is a first, but. It's not bad. After that we see that at the Tower of Trials third floor Church of Hatred. There someone blocked the arrow with a wooden door. She says, damn it. Why is the security system here so damn annoying? Is there really a need to do this every time? The man with her says, stop complaining, Melina. I'm already in a bad mood because of that moron Alex. Melina says, you're in a bad mood. Melina brings out the dagger and put it against his neck. Why do I have to give a shit about what mood you're in? You should if you don't want to die. Then a masked man appears and says, leave it at that, you too. Aren't you comrades who've spent the last 10 years handing between life and death together? Why are you always trying to kill each other? He says, the reason why I summoned you is because a new person of interest named Kong Jin Hyuk has appeared. Melina says, this Kong Jin Hyuk guy must have played this game a lot too. Though he's probably at the same level as every other ranker out there. Do not let you guard down. He may have reached a floor much higher than us. Our executives who've reached the 20th floor are already considered lunatics, so wouldn't that be unlikely? I also think that it's an over-assumption. In our case, we chose this unpopular virtual reality game Tower of Trials to escape from Interpol's eyes. So we know more about the tower than the average person, but... Melina say, he's right. There's no way other people would have a special reason like that, right? No matter how bored you are, playing a sadistic game like that. There's no reason to continue playing it unless you're some insane pervert. Masked man thinks, they're not taking this seriously. But real deals can discern each other. We must not underestimate Kong Jin Hyuk. As he poses a threat to us, I must remove him. Masked man says, both of you, follow Cedric. Help him so our plan doesn't break down. Melina says, you fret too much geezer. After that we see that Jin Hyuk's friends are training. She hits him with a powerful. He falls to ground she asks him are you alright. After that he watch something on a tab and says, Nuna, come take a look at this. He is seeing a video of unknown. He says, I've been watching him for a while, but there's something unusual about him. Nuna says, isn't he an attention seeker just like everyone else? He says, possibly, but I feel something special form him. She says, isn't this the human faced tree's temple in the third floor boss room? He says, yeah, this place was pretty famous back in the day. If you answer all three of the human faced tree's questions, you get an item imbued with an ability as a reward. But the real problem lies in its insanely hard questions. Then we see that a lot of peoples are watching his live stream in boss room. After that human faced tree says, I haven't seen a human in a while. Have you also come to answer my questions? Jin Hyuk says, yeah, try to give me some fun questions. Tree says, very well. If you answer all three of my questions, I will give you one of my maple leaves. But if you get even one wrong, then two huge statues appears behind him. Tree says, I will punish you. Now, the first question. What is the ideal water level and temperature for the seawater species Kelgorn to inhabit? Nuna gets angry to hear that and says, who the hell would possibly know that? Unknown says, the answer is 175 meter deep, 1.5 degree. Nuna is shocked to hear that. Even the tree mouth is open. Jin Hyuk says, next question. Tree says, I didn't say if you're right or not yet. Jin Hyuk says, I know it's right, so just give me the next question. Tree get angry says, very well. This question won't be so easy. Second question. How do you take a dose of Feliani's spongy tissue? Tree was not even able to complete his question and Jin Hyuk give the answer saying. Braise it with the sunlight desert salt and second advancement priest's holy water for 5 hours. Nuna and her friend are confused and say, what the hell are they talking about? Tree says, correct. Last question. The giant eagle of the sky plateau mates only once a year. When is it? Jin Hyuk press a red button and says, the answer is, on the day of the first snowfall in the tower. Tree starts to laugh and says, correct, you're the first human ever to answer all my questions. Jin Hyuk says, it was fun for me, too. 
It's been a while since I could talk about the tower. Everyone in chat is shocked and saying that is the rotten water to the core. Tree says, as promised, I will give you the maple leaf that you want. Red, yellow, or green? Which one will you choose? Red grants fire attribute. Yellow strengthens defense. And green increases movement speed. Nuna says, since the third floor's boss commands an army, wouldn't he choose movement speed? I would have done so. Jinhyuk says, get those ordinary maple leaves out of here. I want something else. He grabs the tree and says, hand over the black leaf that you're hiding. Tree is surprised to hear that and says, how do you know about the black leaf? Nuna and her friend are confused and says, black leaf. Tree says, please, I can't give you that. Yes, if you choose the red leaf, I'll also give the green leaf. How about it? Isn't this a great deal? Jinhyuk says, the honorable and almighty human-faced tree, told me he'd give me the maple leaf that I want if I answer all of his question correctly. But you're talking too much. Jinhyuk get angry and says, stop bullshitting and hand over the black leaf. You're not thinking of sullying the honor of the tree spirits are you? I wonder what would happen to you if the administrator finds out about this. Tree gets scared and says, shit. Then a message popped up saying, distributing the reward is for the tree spirits pledge. You have obtained black leaf 1280. Jin Hyuk thinks, good, I've obtained the final piece of the puzzle. Shall I head out? Both status starts to attack Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk get ready to attack and says, after I get rid of you guys that is. Guard in front of the gate says, hey, did you hear? Apparently, Unknown started his solo clear of the third floor boss room already. Other guard says, he started faster than I expected. First guard says, all we need to do is just stay here and go home when he's done. Second guard says, but still, is there even any purpose in standing guard here? Who'd be crazy enough to come here? It's because we were ordered to do it. Just do what you're told to do. Then a dark magic appears under their feet. Someone says, absorb their vitality and keep it saved. We'll need everything we can get. We have no more time to waste. It Julius and some other demonic humans with him. Julius says, he's already begun. Jin Hyuk cuts of the heads of the statues. A lot of people in chat says, they trust him. Jin Hyuk says, I don't care whether you trust me or not. But I'd appreciate it if you could stop babbling. It's distracting. He looks toward the camera and says, I did say it to you guys. Watch if you want to watch. If you don't, then leave. Streamers commonly display all sorts of charms to their viewers to increase their views. But if the push the concept of no giving a shit from the start. A fandom that prefers such a concept is form. Jin Hyuk sends some dark mana and thinks, there's someone else here. Grabs the camera and says, today's stream ends here. Then we see that demonic human army and boss army are fighting with each other. Demonic humans summon the summons the skeleton army. Jin Hyuk is watching them from a high cliff and thinks. Demonic human bastards, they're fighting neck and neck. Or not. Are they slightly stronger? Demonic humans says, the battle is slightly tilting in our favor. Good. Keep pushing. Let's ride this momentum to destroy the, he gets hit with some on his neck. Jin Hyuk attacks them with ice magic. Demonic humans says, long range attacks from the enemy. Raise the shields. They uses defensive magic and says, where ain't they coming from? They sees Jin Hyuk and says, over there. It's a man wearing a mask. He's only one man one. Get rid of him. The summoned skeleton army of demonic humans attack Jin Hyuk with arrow. He dodges all the arrow by running between boss army. And uses blessing of the star. Then a huge yellow light appears and all the summons turns against the demonic humans. Demon human says, shit. We can't control them because of the divine power. Focus on taking back control. Summoned monster starts to kill the demonic humans. Someone says to Julius, the third position has been destroyed. Julius gets angry and says, I can see that without you telling me, you dumbass. The four positions made to efficiently command the undead monsters. The third one has already been destroyed. If the network is shattered by destroying the first position, the entire structure will collapse. Jin Hyuk uses the element of fire and says over here. 
His fire hits a statue and he says, how could you possibly catch me with those slow ass movements of yours? It is a big statue called Battle Moai. Moai is running after Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk runs towards the demonic humans with the Battle Moai running behind him. Jin Hyuk grabs two of the demonic humans and no. You can't stop it. Battle Moai do a high jump and land on them. Demonic human says, the first position has also been destroyed. We'll be surrounded at this rate. Julius gets angry and I said I know, you dumbass. Julius says to unknown, what sort of grudge do you have against us to keep ruining our plans every single time? Julius activates guardian of the pyramid. Someone says to Julius if you use that here, you won't have enough mana to face the booze monster. Julius says, shut up. I'll use my full power to kill you. He says, awaken, guardians. Some strong mummies appears. Julius sits done tired and says, it seems I've pushed myself a bit too much. Julius says to one of his subordinates come closer. Julius grabs him and absorbs all his mana. Julius says, stay still. You'll only prolong your suffering. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, damn, he's even absorbing his allies. Julius fully absorb him and says, good. I finally feel better. I've mad e you wait. A huge army of mummies appears and he says, then, shall we get back to it? All the mummies get ready to attack. Julius gets excited and says, what do you think of my strongest troops? My mummy soldiers can freely utilize their bandages that are as hard as steel. One of mummies destroy one of the statue using its bandages. He says, they have both defense and attack power. Truly, the strongest undead. I had to save them until I faced the third floor boss. But I'd at least save some face if I kill you here. So just die, you goddamn masked bastard. Melina and other one is watching the fight from top a tree. Melina says, isn't that masked bastard more fearless than I thought. It's been a while since I've seen Julius blow his top. Other demonic human says, his intentions up to destroying the structure were good, but he was stupid not to get out of there after. He must have miscalculated the difference in overall power between him and his opponent. He must have thought it was manageable from looking at just the skeletons and the death knight. A complete misjudgment, Julius's unique ability is much more bothersome than that. Considering the circumstances, there's not even a need for us to intervene. Jin Hyuk do a high jump, Melina says, what's he doing? He uses the element of fire. Jin Hyuk thinks recall the experience of those days. Then we see a flashback. Where an old man says, your sword is sharp and powerful. But its flaw is that its force is dispersed because you put too much strength into it. Take a good look at this rope. A true master. Can exert several times the force with the same amount of strength. Like the wind enveloping the air. Around yourself within the fluidity. And at the right moment. Outstretch strongly. Would you like to try applying it to you soul chasing sword? A message popped up says, a portion of the skill soul chasing sword dance has been reproduced. Mommy starts to get burns. Jin Hyuk swings his dagger with full speed. Then a message popped up saying, dramatically increasing the understanding of the skill soul chasing sword. Julius is surprised to Jin Hyuk's power and thinks, this whirlpool of mana is strong enough to pull in everything around it. A huge tornado of dark blue mana appears. Jin Hyuk uses, Soul Chasing Sword Dance 5th Movement. Soul Chasing Heaven Obliteration. He cuts down all the mummies in one move. Julius activates double shield. Julius think this bastard. It hasn't even been half a year since reality changed. How does he already possess such nonsensical power? Julius's S staff and his shield breaks. He falls to ground and thinks I have to run away. This was never a battle that I could win. He shouts anyone stop him. Protect me. That's an order. Jin Hyuk says, how do you act exactly like you disciple? Acting all high and mighty, and then pathetically running away when you're about to lose. No, I guess he learned it from you. Julius is surprised to hear that and says, you bastard that means. You're Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, send you disciple my regards. He uses element of fire on Julius and says, I'll send you to him, since he's probably bored on his own. Julius dies and all the summoned monster starts to disappears. 
the army of status starts to kill demonic human army. Jin Yuk says, it sure is difficult to digest the soul chasing heaven obliterating so suddenly at this level. I may have pushed myself a bit. He purchases some mid-grade mana recover potion. Jin Hyuk says, but it'd be a huge loss not to come here right now. Then he uses mana recovery potions. And says, I'll push myself a little longer. He sees a shield on the ground and says, a shield flew all the way over here. I used to play a lot with a shield back in the day. He pick up the shield tie it behind his back and says, how nostalgic. He brings out his dagger and grabs the shield in his other hand and gets ready to fight. A big statue appear in front of him. Jin Hyuk says, don't you think so too, guys? Guardians of the temple four heavenly kings. Then four really big statues appears in front of him. He get ready to fight. Guardians attack him. He blocks attack with the shield and says, I love that you guys are silent. He slash attacks with his dagger on two of them and says, spit out the key already. I'm tired. Statues attack him again. He jumps and hits one of the statues on the head. Jin Hyuk says, did they have a pattern like this? One of the status uses stone pagoda of enlightenment and bring out the key. And put it in the keyhole. Then a message popped up saying, the key that leads to the main room is reacting. The being beyond the gate is responding to the call. Jin Hyuk says, damn, he was more determined than I thought. Then a huge flower appears and shine bright yellow light. A huge golden being come out of the flower. Jin Hyuk says, he's calling out his hung right off the bat. The named monster, Thousand Armed and Thousand Eyed Avalokitesvara is manifesting. Thousand Armed says, it's been a while since the four heavenly kings summoned me. To think there was a human among the invaders who could pose a threat to even the key within the stone pagoda. Jin Hyuk says, this is nothing I'm gonna be slaying the boss on this floor, too. Thousand Armed says, what an impudent human, I'll acknowledge you bravery, if not anything else. Jin Hyuk says, you must think I'm joking, let's end this. I'm so goddamn tired. Thousand Armed says, I'd like to chat with you a little longer, but I guess our intentions are not mutual. Jin Hyuk gets ready to fight and says, I'm not into chit-chatting with statues. Thousand Armed bring out his weapon and says, every second is a gift. What a foolish young man you are. Savor this moment, then. You'll long for even this moment when you're on the brink of death. Thousand Armed throw one of the spears with full power. Jin Hyuk deflects the spear with his shield. Jin Hyuk thinks as I thought, its power is overwhelming. Even redirecting it make my body feel like it's about to shatter. But I have endure it. I only have one chance. Thousand Armed with an evil look on his face says, to think you'd react to a sonic attack. Thousand Armed jumps toward Jin Hyuk and says, you're raising my interest in you more and more. Jin Hyuk activates ice formation and attacks the Thousand Armed with multiple ice spears. Thousand Armed destroy all the ice spears using his own spears. Thousand Armed gets angry and says, you bastard, you use filthy western witchcraft. Jin Hyuk throw his shield towards Thousand Armed. Thousand Armed guards his shield and says, how stupid, young man, such a shallow trick. Then a dagger hits Thousand Armed on one of his arms. Thousand Armed says, you rotten bastard. Two shallow tricks in a row. His arms start to break. He says, what did you do? Something like poison shouldn't work on me. Jin Hyuk says, it's something called blood demon chi. I can deal a continuous amount of damage once I cause even one injury. Thousand Arms rip his arm off and says, it matters not. Such a petty trick will not work a second time. And what will you do from merely taking one arm from me? Jin Hyuk stepped on his ripped of arm and says, yeah, taking a single arm from you is nothing if I want to kill you. I also know the same thing won't work twice on you. But, do you know? He gets a blue sphere out of his arm and says, I got exactly what I wanted. Thousand Arm says, he was aiming for the arm that the jewel was attached to from the start. Jin Hyuk bring out the grimoire of the Felteris Principality and combine it with Thousand Armed Avalokitesvara's jewel. He gets a new item called Lamegaton of the Golden Dawn Rank S. He thinks this much is enough and activates his Eye of Gluttony. His level is too low to check Thousand Armed skills. 
Then a copy condition window appears saying, the thousand armed has an utmost disgust for western magic. Mock the opponent for 5 minutes using ice magic. And create a large and beautiful sculpture for him. However, an appropriate song and appropriate attire must accompany the fulfillment of the condition. Jin Hyuk is surprised to see that and says, wait, wait, I'm not seeing this wrong, am I? A song and a sculpture. The system is growing more and more insane by the minute. Thousand Armed is confused to see him and says, what are you doing all of a sudden? He brings out small podium and says, no matter how eccentric the condition is, I can't give this up. This is the only place where I can obtain mandala beneath the 25th floor, after all. Thousand Armed sees that and gets angry and says, you bastard, just what do you think you're doing? Jin Hyuk plays the music and says, I'm begging you, don't ask anything from here on out. I hate it too. Thousand Armed gets angry and says, how dare you play around in front of me. Thousand Armed activates Mandala and says, I'll let you experience pain worth a million samsaras. Jin Hyuk activates Glacier Formation. Sure is amazing. Melina and other demonic humans see the fight and says, I can't believe it. He turned on music all of a sudden and is fighting the thousand armed Avalokitesvara. I also can't believe he advanced his ice magic to this extent already. Why is he wearing a wig out of nowhere? I looks like a consumable wig from the coin exchange. Other demonic human stands up and thinks, what an unpredictable guy. To think that unknown bastard would challenge the thousand armed Avalokitesvara right after killing Julius. The overwhelming force of the thousand armed Avalokitesvara that you can barely handle only after getting past the 10th floor. He's truly worth being called the third floor's second boss. But that bastard, who's facing such a thing head on, has gone well beyond the realm of humans. Melina says, do you think we'd win if we teamed up? It'd be difficult. Melina says, let's give up, Li Chao. We can't do this by ourselves. We need support from at least an executive. Li Chao says, no if we do that, the position we rose to after all this time will come crumbling down all at once. Melina says, then what? You wanna die just cause you wanna keep your position. Greater than, he brings out a cursed coin and say, I think the time has come to use this. Jin Hyuk sees them and says, would you look at that? Looks like Julius wasn't the only one sent by the demonic humans. Thousand Arm throws a spear toward Jin Hyuk it hit Jin Hyuk's leg. Thousand Arm says, how dare you look away from me. Jin Hyuk uses element of fire on his leg and says, sorry about that. I got a bit distracted fixing my hair. Jin Hyuk activates, glacier formation. Thanks to you, I'm feeling some tension. Thousand Armed and Jin Hyuk throws hundreds of spears to each other. Thousand Armed say, foolish and activates inescapable lattice. Thousand Armed and Jin Hyuk are now trapped in a cage. Thousand Armed says, is defending all you can do. Where did you confidence from earlier go? Thousand Armed throws a lot of spears and activates heaven and earth amalgamation. Jin Hyuk activates glacier formation. Thousand Armed spears are bouncing of the shield. He says, a pointless resistance. He uses displeasure. And also used swastika spear. Jin Hyuk says, Guanyin Bodhisattva. Such a petty trick won't work a second time was it. Sure works pretty well. Jin Hyuk uses his glacial prison and traps the thousand arms. Jin Hyuk says, do you know how much your hate for my ice magic saddens me? How can someone said to have attained nirvana through self-discipline be so prejudiced? There's nothing better than shock treatment for such an obsession. I makes thousand armed really angry and he says, you damn human. I'll make you suffer endless pain in the abachi. I'll make you reincarnate into a bug a thousand times no, then thousand times over. Then a message popped up saying, the condition has been fulfilled. You have succeeded in copying the unique ability Mandala rank S. Saving the copied skill in the memory of the world. Jin Hyuk removes the wig and says, don't waste your strength. He uses Mandala. Thousand Armed is shocked to see that and says, impossible how are you using that ability? How could the likes of you reproduce my mandala that I created through endless days of perpetuity? Jin Hyuk says, I'll be using you mandala very well from now on. You can screw off now. He hits thousand armed with mandala. After that thousand armed break into peace and his level go up by two. 
He takes the stone statue's key. Then a key description window appears saying, can summon the boss of the corresponding zone. Regardless of your progress, however, can only be used on the third floor. Jin Hyuk rubs his shoulder and says, this guy's always so hard to deal with. It felt even harder than in the game. Jin Hyuk thinks, Julius and Thousand Armed I certainly did push myself a bit. After that Jin Hyuk State's window appears, his level is 21. And he has 6 stat points. He thinks I should invest my stats into mana. His mana goes from 71 to 77. He stretches a bit and says, that feels better. I should prepare something that can supply me mana next time. Man, I'm always lacking in mana. He says, oh, right. There were still some pests remaining. He says, the environment of the Tower of Trials is a little special. When night falls, the temperature falls drastically, and aggression and attack power of the monsters also greatly increase. That's why, when night falls, most players either get out of the tower, or stop hunting and find somewhere safe. Then we see that Jin Hyuk is cooking some giant shrimp and eating them. He thinks, to think I get to experience this taste that I couldn't get anywhere else but here after all this time. I should copy some cooking related skills next time. He hears something from the forest. Melina and Lee come to Jin Hyuk and says, wow, that smells delicious. We also have to spend the night, so can we stay with you until the sun comes up. Lee says, we should have left before night fell, but we couldn't. Jin Hyuk says, sure, have a seat. I can at least let you escape from the cold. They introduces themselves. Jin Hyuk says, you must have gone through a lot, you're telling me. We were dying from the cold. He says, I've prepared a lot of food. Would you like some? Melina's mouth is filled with water to see the food. Lee stops her and says to Jin Hyuk, I appreciate you goodwill, but we try not to eat food offered by anyone we don't know. Especially if that person is hiding his face. Jin Hyuk says, are you bothered by the mask? Lee says, isn't it obvious? You must be wearing a mask because you have something to hide. Jin Hyuk says, something to hide. If you're really that bothered by it, I can take it off for you. Melina gets excited and says, really? Lee says, what? Jin Hyuk says, but since it'd be boring to just take it off, let's play a simple game. The both say, a game. We must have a lot of questions for each other, so let's take turns to ask each other three questions. As long as you answer all three of my questions, I will take off the mask. Lee says, by as long as you answer the questions, he's saying it doesn't matter if we give him false information. He doesn't have any way to figure out whether we're telling the truth or not. I don't know what he's planning, but we wouldn't lose anything from this. Melina flips a coin and says, then, let's decide who goes first with this coin. She says, I bet on heads. She reveals the coin in its head. She says, alright, or first. She thinks this minute amount of mana. It's Caligula's coin. By designating a target and infusing mana into the coin for 5 minutes. It can dominate the target's mind for a short period of time. She says, I'm sure you wouldn't answer even if I asked you for your name or affiliation. She asks the first question, did you come here with any comrades? Jin Hyuk thinks, what a realistic question. She must be trying to confirm any variables. Jin Hyuk answers and says, I came here by myself. It's my turn to ask now. He says, from the looks of it, you're also aiming for the boss, so why have you only observed until now? You must have seen me in battle, no. She says, we were waiting for the right time to enter the temple. We had to be cautious, since it's such a notorious place. She says, my turn again, and asks, shy do you climb the tower masked opa? Money. Glory stuff like that. Jin Hyuk thinks, if I meet the requirements. It looks like she's also thinking about cajoling me. He weighs, what I want, I wonder are you able to do something about it if I say I want something. She says, of course, if we agree on something, that is. We can do a lot more for you than you think. He says, then, last question, if you answer this, I will take off my mask as promised. She says, alright, what's your final question? He says, my final question is. 
did the demonic human association seriously think the likes of you two could actually face me she gives an evil smile and says i knew it you already knew who we were i've confirmed how strong you were with my own eyes masked opa to think you'd take care of the thousand armed avalokites vera by yourself but didn't you push yourself quite hard we've already figured out you're very weakened if that's the case then even two of us is too much actually this is more than enough to deal with you she brings out the coin and points it toward him but nothing happens she says what the hell why isn't it activating lee says what are you doing melina she says is it broken Jin Hyuk says, no Caligula's coin is fine. You just can't use your mana. He activated judgment of Anubis. Lee says, our plan has seen through. Melina, we're switching to plan B use you skill. She says, none of my skills are activating. He says, you sure are scrambling like crazy. Then two wooden pools appears and a message popped up saying, the divine spirit of the shrine are satisfied by your sincerity choosing a warrior to carry out the judgment of Anubis. The totem pole, great general of all under he, has been designated as the warrior. The totem pole, great general of the underworld, has been designated as the warrior. Both of them get scared. No way. I've never heard of there being something like this. Jin Hyuk says, guardian deities of the land great general of all under heaven great general of the underworld. Two poles starts to attack both of them. Lee thinks, that this offered to the shrine awakened the totem poles. So it wasn't just a meal. Jin Hyuk lay down and says, man, I'm exhausted. You shouldn't move carelessly. It'll be impossible to run away as well. One of the wooden poles activates no admittance. Lee jumps toward the Jin Hyuk and says, these damn things will disappear as long as you die. Jin Hyuk says, I told you not to move. One of the wooden poles uses exemplary punishment. It smashes Lee. Melina says, damn it, I told you we should have run away in the beginning. Jin Hyuk says, stop to the poles. He says to Melina, since it looks like we've more or less established the hierarchy, shall we have a chat now? He activates Eye of Gluttony. A message pay popped up saying, skill activation has been cancelled due to the level difference. Jin Hyuk thinks, the luck stat isn't activating this time. Can't be helped. I hope you'll answer the question that I'll be asking you truthfully. Melina says, what do you want to know? I at least know about you demonic humans since I've heard about you a lot. But what I don't know is your motive. Humanity will go extinct if we don't climb the tower, so why are you interfering with the players? That's. Lee says, don't, shut your mouth Melina you mustn't tell him. He says, never. Then a wooden pole killed him. Jin Hyuk says to Melina, though it's commendable that you're trying to stay loyal, you really should know the time and place for it. He says, listen carefully. It's my policy never to spare the people who am for my life. But I may let them live if they give me useful information. She says, you let me live. He says, yes information from the inside is quite costly, isn't it? Not as costly as your life, though. She says, I don't know the actual name of the one who sent us to kill you either. But we call that person Lancelot. She says, there are 11 other executives besides him, but I don't know much about them since I'm in the assassination division. Jin Hyuk uses Eye of Gluttony. A message popped saying, Melina's words are the truth. He says, continue. The executive said that, if you gather all 12 of the cursed divine artifacts, we can survive even if humanity goes extinct. And we'll receive enormous amounts of rewards for it. I don't know anything else beyond this either. This is everything I know. Melina's words are the truth. Jin Hyuk says, I guess this is as much as I'll be able to find out. Lancelot and 12 cursed divine artifacts. I see. They're crazier than I expected, aren't they? So the demonic human's objective is to summon the demon king. We see an epic and awesome demon. Jin Hyuk thinks, also, what's this about them surviving even if humanity goes extinct? I should calculate my plans while taking this into account from now on. Jin Hyuk says, thank you for giving me useful information. You were a great help. She says, then I can go now, right? He says, no. She is surprised to hear that and says, didn't you say you'd let me live? You promised you'd let me go if I told you everything I knew. 
He says, don't worry, I'll keep my promise, after you sign the contract, that is. She says, contract. He activates brand of tribulation. He says, contract that states you'll do everything that I say from now on. She says, no, wait. This is a hundred times better than dying. As long as I can live. Jin Hyuk posts a notice and says, I will not stream the third floor boss raid. I will upload a video later, so watch if you want to. He says, they must be pissed off since I previously said I'd stream it. He is standing in front of a castle and says, now then, shall I begin? He brings out the stone statue's key. Then a message popped up saying, the stone statue's key is reaction. A gate opens to the third floor boss castle. And a message popped up saying, the master of the third floor is answering your call. Then a lot of big and small statues come out of the gate. The boss come out of the gate and says, who dares to interfere with my break time? He activates the eye of gluttony. Then a message popped up saying the luck and adaptivity stats have nullified the level difference. He is third floor boss and his name is Muhan and his level is 105. A copy condition, window appears saying, copying unique. Abilities or skills is impossible due to the level difference. Boss say, although countless humans have challenged my army so far. You're the first to call me using the key. He is sitting on a giant statue's head and says, but where is you army? We see big army of statues called, Muhin's 100,000 stone statue soldiers. Jin Hyuk says, my army. He summons first chess board. And activates first chess board. He summons 2,851 mana infused chess pieces. Muhin says, what an original idea, certainly, you'd be able to act as a one-man army with those. But what can you possibly do with those little things? Jin Hyuk says, just wait I'm not done yet. Then he uses 2,851 gigantification pills on 2,851 mana infused chess pieces. All the chess pieces grow big. Muhin says, I must admit that you're not like the other humans who came before you. Now Jin Hyuk is standing in between 2,851 giant chess soldiers. After that we see that old man is drilling something into chess piece and says, Miss Yuri how many more are we supposed to make? She says, at least give us a number so we know what we're working up to. Why is he just forcing us to make these out of the blue? She says, honey, mister, we don't have time to complain. We made at least more than 2000. We'll be killed by that demon can Jin Hyuk if we get on his bad side. So now that it's come to this. We might as well show him that we're on his side. After that we see that Jin Hyuk says, you acknowledge me. Acknowledgement from the likes of a boss who's putting on airs on merely the third floor. He is riding on a horse and says, isn't worth shit. Muhin says, what did you just say? Jin Hyuk says, aren't I right? You're on such a high horse after only beating a few weaklings. That's why you stay on the third floor. Because you're not strong enough to go any higher. While the boss monsters of the Tower of Trials act as the gatekeepers of each floor. They also exercise their influence on the floor they're in. They can also climb the tower like players to gain more power. Muhin says, what an impudent human you are. Do you seriously think I can't because I lack the strength to do so? Jin Hyuk says, yeah, you're pretty much a poltergeist who's stuck on the third floor. Muhin says, sure, keep babbling on as you like. Agitating you opponent like that must be your plan. Muhin says, however, let me show you that there is an absolute difference in our forces. And that the superiority of my tactics cannot be surpassed. First squadron. Muhin order his army to attack. Jin Hyuk think an advance force of a thousand. He must be trying to assess my ability to make countermeasures. Jin Hyuk activates the ability of first chess board. Increasing the attack and defense powers of all chess pieces in the field by 30%. He says, pawns at each end, three squats forward. All forces in the first row, prepare a line of defense. Pawn chess pieces activates iron perseverance. His pawn throws spears toward stone statue's army, maintain the formation. Then the statues and pawn starts to fight. He says, hold on until the end. Pawn archers fire. Rook chest pieces or activates arrow barrage. They kill a lot of stone statues. 
Stone Statues uses the shield to block his attack. Bishop Chess Pieces activates Flame Strike. Statues blocks the flame attack using their shield. Muhin says, he annihilated the advance force of a thousand units not bad. Muhin order the second and third squadron. Forward. Jin Hyuk says, 100 knight chess pieces turn the enemy's flank. Knight chess piece activates wedge formation. Increasing collision damage by 200% upon impact. We'll break through them in a flash. Knights attack statues. Muhin thinks. He's quite adept as a commander. Flawless transitions between attacking and defending. Accurate timing of commands. However, what is that opening he left on their flank? It looks too good to be true. Just like a poisoned apple. Muhin activates weakness detection. A weakness window says, all chess pieces on the chess board will stop if the crown is destroyed. Only the king or queen can wear the crown. All stats of the king or queen will increase by 100% in battle when they're not wearing the crown. Muhin says, so I can defeat them easily as long as I destroy the crown. Muhin starts to laugh and says, how daring. I was wondering why he made a blunder that no even novices would make. It turns out that isn't the case. Alice is wearing the crown and Jinhyuk says, he was telling me to enter if I dared to. Mohan says, scouts forward. Jin Hyuk thinks, there are around 3,000 of them, including the 15 meter units. I knew he'd aim for the headquarters as soon as I left. Jin Hyuk says, ignore them. The enemy's defense is 3,000 units weaker. Muhan thinks I'm already well aware that this is a trap to draw me into attacking the crown. By leaving a gap in your defenses on purpose, Pawn pieces attacks with fire. Some of the status crumbles. And some really big statues attack Alice. Muhin says, it's over. Alice is standing there calmly. The is reach near the boss. Boss says, so, you've managed to crawl all the way here. I must commend you for coming this far with such few troops. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, why don't you cut the bullshit? I know you opened up a path for me on purpose. Boss thinks, he knew it was a trap. Well, whatever. You entrusted the crown to a scrawny girl, and came all the way here with only that many troops. There's nothing more for me to expect from you. I'll finish this right here. Boss summons two huge monster, David and Vajrayaksa. Vajrayaksa says, does the mundane world not have anyone more decent? David says, I don't see anyone with perfect body proportions either. Boss toward Jin Hyuk with a surprised look on his face and says, you son of a bi, are you insane? We see that Jin Hyuk has calm smile on his face. Boss says, why are you smiling in a situation like this? We see flashback where, Jin Hyuk gave the crown to Alice and Alice said, will you really be alright on your own? Jin Hyuk says, what, are you worried about me? She says, of course I am. The guy isn't the guardian of the third floor for nothing. Jin Hyuk says, this is my first time seeing you praise someone so much. Are you saying that he's stronger than you? She gets angry and says, how dare you? Are you comparing this high noble of the night to those stone heads? She says, if only I wasn't confined in that corridor, I would've. Jin Hyuk says, then that means I can leave things here to you, right? She says, obviously, even if I'm in this state, 10,000 of those stone heads is a walk in the park. Then a lot of stone punches come towards her and she is standing there calmly. Jin Hyuk says to boss, I'm sure a certain someone would be pissed off by that you just said. Alice activates blood spears. She gets angry and says, damn small fry. How dare you try to lay you hands on my head. She destroys some of the big statues with one attack. After the activates blood explosion, a huge ball of blood appear on her hand. She says, die, and throws the big ball of blood on the statues as soon as ball hits the ground it explodes killing a lot statues in the process. She stands on top of the destroyed statues. Boss is shocked to see that and what? How can such a feeble girl possess such power? Jin Hyuk says, you biggest blunder was letting me get this close. While assuming with certainty that you advanced troops could defeat the queen. Jin Hyuk activates blood demon chi. Then a message popped up saying, Black Leaf is reacting to Blood Demon Chi. A new item attribute has been granted. Mental Breakdown. It deals continuous decay damage. The attack target will not be able to distinguish friend from foe. He throw his spear toward the sky it starts glow really bright, stone statues see toward the light. 
A lot of statues fall under his spell. Vajrayaksa says, I never liked them from the start. Vajrayaksa attacks David and says, your damn dandy face and smooth muscles. They're unbearable. Vajrayaksa hits David in the face. A lot of other statues start to kill each other. The boss thinks, my army. My tactics. I can't believe they're all being ruined by one man. Boss starts to freak out. Jin Hyuk says, hey, poltergeist. Stop freaking out it makes you look weak. Jin Hyuk activates glacier formation. A big mountain of ice appear behind the boss, stopping him from retreating. Boss thinks the rear is blocked. Impossible. Jin Hyuk brings out a bow made out of ice and says, where do you think you're going? Boss jumps on the ice mountain and order his biggest statue to stop him. The biggest statue punches the ground with full power. A lot of Jin Hyuk's army goes flying. Jin Hyuk jumps and activates Mandala, and bring out a golden spear. Jin Hyuk says, your habit of leaving it all to you subordinates after you've been driven into a corner is the same as always. Then a message popped up saying glacier formation and Mandala are resonating with each other. Jin Hyuk gives an epic smile and use golden spear as an arrow with the ice bow. And says, checkmate. The big statue try to stop the spear but it goes through his hand and hits the boss. Then a lot of yellow lights start to come out of his body. He falls to the ground. Then a message popped up saying, the third floor boss monster, Muhan has fallen. The fourth floor of the Tower of Trials is opening. Time left to conquer the next floor is 90 days. This message goes in front of everyone. Everyone gets happy to see that. Then we see that Jin Hyuk is standing calmly and a lot of big explosion are happening behind him. Jin Hyuk level ups a bunch and says, I can put all my stats into mana. Let's go get my rewards. The treasures that you can earn from killing a boss monster can be distinguished by their colors. The ones you can get from the 10th floor and below are all red, the lowest rank. But an orange rank appeared. It must be thanks to the effect of Monopoly, where I can get the best reward possible if I hunt alone. He gives an evil smile and opens the treasure box. He gets, pink diamond, top priority ticket, squishy grain, natural water, solar seed, fire spitting snail. He says, wow, what a haul. He gets another item called eclipse stone. He thinks, isn't the effect of Monopoly way too insane. He makes an evil face and says, with this I might be able to score real big when I conquer the fourth floor too. Alice sees that and thinks, I can never get used to that face. All the large guilds are having in conference again. They sitting there grab their heads. Patrick says, he really succeeded. Alone, at that, Beak Jinyo laughs and says, it's the birth of a hero. Maria says, thank god we bought 90 days, worth of time for the next floor. We'll really have to prepare properly for the fourth floor. Tenwei gets angry and says, thank god. Thank god, you say. You fool. You seriously think raids like this benefit us in any way. He's gonna be getting all the views on his videos from now on. Teresa is also there and says, wait, what in the world are you talking about? We were the ones who almost joined forces with the demonic humans after continuously failing the raid. Thanks to him, humanity obtained 90 day, worth of time without the demonic human's help. How could you say something like that? About someone who helped us in such a crisis. Maria Ani. Mr. Beck. Say something. Both of them stay silent. She says, are you all serious? Do you all really feel the same way as Ten Wei? Say something. She says, it can't be helped, then. I will withdraw myself from the conference from today onwards. Mara says, Teresa, what are you talking about? Think over it again. You know how hard I worked to get you in here. Patrick says, the conference is not a group you can just enter and leave as you please. It is a super elite group that only allows entry to people who are most adequate in saving humanity. Once you leave, you can never come back. Do you really trust that man to that extent? She says, yes, and leaves the conference. And says, with my life. After that we see that Jin Hyuk is walking on a beach and says, I'm exhausted. I have tons of money. Should I try staying at a luxury hotel? Yanwa calls him. He says, hey, Yanwa. Did you call? I was in the tower so I couldn't. Pick up. She says, Opa. Grandpa. Grandpa isn't opening his eyes. He says, where are you? Yu Yanwa, aka Bulguang Nuclear Fist. The granddaughter of Yu Chianyang, the legendary martial artist at the peak of the South Korean martial arts world. 
It was my first time seeing Yanwa, who's always tough, cheerful, and bright. Make such an expression. He grabs her from her shoulder and says, don't cry. Can you tell me what happened? I think it started happening not long after the Tower of Trials appeared. Do you remember the outbreak in Incheon? He think, oh, when Park Hannah and I were in the labyrinth. He says, I saw it on the news. My grandpa was on the scene. Although grandpa who awakened during the outbreak, succeeded in subjugating the monsters, he couldn't fully recover after getting badly hurt on that day. And his condition has gotten worse recently. He thinks, so this person is Yu Chianya. The man who used to be called the strongest man in Korea. He checks his stats and a copy condition window appears saying, Yu Chianyang's death is almost certain, if you save his life, you may copy one of his skills. Jin Hyuk thinks, is he seriously someone who has never entered the tower? Then someone comes to them and says, Miss Yu Yanwa, what happened? You left all of a sudden, only to bring a celebrity who knows nothing but how to fight. I don't know why you are here. But even an S rank awakened wouldn't be able to do anything here. He is in a rank healer Heo Jinsu. Jin Hyuk says, I've known Yanwa for a long time. I just came to see if there was anything I could do. Heo Jinsu says, I see, I almost came to misunderstanding. I was nervous that the famous Kong Jin Hyuk would lay his hands on even the world of healing. Yu Yanwa gets angry and says, how frustrated do you think I must be to bring him here? The greatest experts of the field are looking after him. But why isn't grandpa showing any signs of getting better? Heo Jinsu says, we're doing our best. But we're severely lacking in time to research every single disease. Caused by the tower of trials with our current medical expertise. I'd like you to at least understand the fact that we're doing our very best. She says, I'm sorry I let my emotions get the better of me. Jin Hyuk uses eye gluttony on Heo Jinsu. She says, Jin Hyuk Opa, let's leave so the doctors can focus. Jin Hyuk gets really angry on them, he reads their mind. They are thinking, why is a ranker here all of a sudden? Shit, we were scoring real big, he's not here to get in the way, is he? I'm tired, how much longer do we have to keep pretending to treat him? Jin Hyuk thinks, would you look at these leeches? Heo says, it seems the elders cultivation technique and the tower's mana are colliding with each other and causing this state of coma. We'd like to try out a treatment method involving magic crystals that we're researching, but the material costs are quite expensive. She says, don't worry about the money. I will prepare it for you, even if I have to sell the entire dojo. I don't care as long as grandpa can make a full recovery. Jin Hyuk is standing there getting angrier and angrier. Heo says, very well, miss. Jin Hyuk says, what kind of bullshit are you spouting to scam her? You damn thug. Subordinates of Heo starts to say, what are you talking about? Scamming. Are you insulting us right now? Heo says, this is very unpleasant. Even if you're the young lady's guest, you can just spout whatever you want. Heo thinks, what? Is he just trying to egg me on? Even if we're caught, there's no way that he can find out about he 7 borrowed name accounts and crypto wallet. Even if he's a god. Jin Hyuk says, look at you, borrowed name accounts and even a crypto wallet. Just how far have you gone? Yu Yanwa gets angry and says, Opa, what do you mean? Heo says, what a bare-faced lie. Do you have proof? Don't just accuse us out of nowhere. Jin Hyuk read their mind again, they think, what the hell's with this guy? How much does he know? Shit, could he also know? That we've made contact with the Black Cloud Guild and the resident. Jin Hyuk thinks, wait, what? Contact with the Black Cloud Guild and the resident. He gets surprised and says, a resident of the tower made contact with a human. Jin Hyuk thinks, I can't believe Hong Diokyo would make contact with a resident. In the eyes of the residents, humanity are outsiders that threaten the tower. Just what are they thinking? Yu Chianyang suddenly cough out blood. She screams and says, Grandpa. Heo starts to run away. She stops him with a powerful kick to the wall and says, where do you think you're going? Since you're running, you must have really been hiding something. She cries with an angry look on her face and says, if grandpa passes away, you'd better give up on getting out of here alive. Jin Hyuk says, calm down Yanwa. The elder's treatment comes first. He says, he's right. I'm just trying to go get seizure medication. Why are you acting like this all of a sudden? 
It's thanks to us that Yu Qianyang's condition is only this bad. Jin Yuk says, you're still spouting nonsense after getting caught. Yanwa, kick him just once. She kicks him with a really powerful kick on his face. Jin Yuk thinks, mana congestion disease and it's severe. A normal person would have died a long time ago. I can't let him die. Heyo says, that's an elixir. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, I guess you're not a complete quack you know what this is. Jin Hyuk thinks, I was going to use this when truly necessary. My friendship with Yanwa, who I've known for a very long time, aside. There's no way I'd let a chance to copy a skill from a big shot like Yu Qianyang slip by. He opened the elixir and throw it all over Yu Qianyang. A message popped up saying, the elixir is being absorbed. His condition immediately get better. She starts to cry happiness. Then a message popped up saying the condition has been fulfilled. You have successfully copied true heavenly flower cultivation technique rank S. Heyo thinks, it can't be. He actually cured him. He tries to run away again and says, we have to get out of here. Jin Hyuk kicks from behind and says, screw off small fry. Let's have a talk you and I. They go somewhere and Heyo says, what are you going to do to me? Are you going to kill me? Jin Hyuk says, no, I don't kill people just because they scammed someone out of their money. I'll let you go if you return all the money that you scam. Heyo says, you let me go. If I just return the money. Jin Hyuk says, that's right. It's not a bad deal, right? I'll put in a good word to Yanwa, so don't worry about her. Heyo thinks, he's letting it get resolved so easily. Something's suspicious. Jin Hyuk says, what? You don't want to live. Yanwa gets all her money back. Heyo is running away thinks, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Alice you're really gonna let him off like that. It's unlike you. Jin Hyuk says, of course not. Alice, follow him to find out who he goes to see. Alice says, what, you let him go on purpose. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, of course. You won't get anything useful out of a dreg like him. It's better to use him to find out where their base of operations is. If you understand then go. She fly away. Jin Hyuk says, don't stray off anywhere. She laughs and says, okay. Jin Hyuk thinks, she's so excited. Jin Hyuk says to Yanwa, can you give us a minute? I need to confirm if the elixir was absorbed properly. She says, yeah, okay. Call me when you're done, then. Jin Hyuk says to Yu Qianyang, everyone's gone now. He opens his one eye and says, you knew. I thought I had completely hidden it. Was my breathing that awkward? Jin Hyuk says, no, it was perfect, sir. Yu Qianyang says, I'm sorry. I didn't try to fool you on purpose. Jin Hyuk says, it's alright. I fully understand you for being wary of a person. Who appeared out of nowhere and treated a disease that no one else could treat. I would have done the same, sir. Yu Qianyang starts to laugh and says, how are you able to figure out how someone feels so? Well, you guessed what I was thinking so accurately that I have nothing to say now. Jin Hyuk says, I'm happy to see you healthy, sir. Yanwa was really worried about you, to the point that she called me when she usually doesn't ask for help. Yu Qianyang says, I see, so you're friends with my granddaughter. Jin Hyuk says, sir, there was something I wanted to ask you when you woke up. Yu Qianyang says, you're my life's savior, so I'll answer anything that I can. What happened? During the outbreak, Yu Qianyang touches the scare on his chest and says, it all happened while I was heading to a conference. Then we see a flashback where he is sitting in a car. Suddenly a gate opens in front of them. And a lot of spider monster came out of it. A spider is about to eat a policeman. He tries take out his gun he doesn't have his gun. Yu Qianyang kicks the spider with full power to save the policeman. He says to policeman, you evacuate the people, I will keep those creatures at bay. A humanoid monster came out the gate and said, I see that there are some useful people among the outsiders. Well, then, let's play. After that we see that Yu Qianyang kills some other monster. He thinks, I can more or less take care of these giant monsters, but. The humanoid monster jumps toward Yu Qianyang. And cut Yu Qianyang. Yu Qianyang thinks, my fists, aren't reaching this man. He says, damn it. And falls to the ground unconscious. He says to Jin Hyuk, that's my last memory. I've never seen someone have command over such a swift sword. Jin Hyuk thinks, long hair and oriental attire. If the elder is telling the truth. 
Then that means the Murram faction that rules over the 21st floor have started to move in an unpredictable direction. They were bastards who would use any means necessary to get what they wanted. I had a hard time because of them, even when I was playing the game. What could they be planning, for them to go as far as to pry their way into reality? Jin Hyuk says to Yu Chiangyang. The man who attacked you is one of the tower's residents. Yu Chiangyang says, the tower's residents. Jin Hyuk says, I never expected them to come out of the tower, things might get more complicated than I expected. Yu Chiangyang says, you said that you've known Yanghua for a while didn't you? He says, yes, it's been quite a long time. Yu Chiangyang says, how reassuring. Yu Chiangyang starts to laugh and says, proceed with your marriage to my granddaughter immediately. He says, sir, Yanghua and I don't have that sort of relationship. Yu Chiangyang says, one thing I'm sure about is that as I aged. One thing got better, even if I didn't want it to. My eye for people. There's a saying that you need to dedicate at least 10,000 hours to field to truly know it. I don't think that's wrong either. We see that Jin Hyuk's play time is 50,125 hours. Yu Chiangyang says to Jin Hyuk, only a few months after the tower appeared. The ones who are the most overestimated are those awakened or whoever who calls themselves experts. However there's something different about you. How should I say it? It's like you've been endlessly tempered. I can see that you know the bitter taste of victory and defeat through all kinds of hardships. And how seasoned you've become through overcoming them. Jin Hyuk says, you're overpraising me. Yu Chiangyang says, and you're also humble. However, you cannot hide the composure of yours that seeps out naturally. Well, that's that, but I'd like to repay my life savior somehow. Is there anything you want? Jin Hyuk thinks, a favor from the most powerful martial artist family in South Korea. Jin Hyuk says, something I want. Can I really ask you for anything? Yu Chiangyang says, don't worry and just tell. Me. Then he came out of the room. She says, how's grandpa? Is he alright now? Jin Hyuk says, the elixir has been properly absorbed. He'll make a full recovery in a few days. She says, what a relief, how can I possibly repay you for this? Jin Hyuk says, it's alright, Yanwa. He says with an evil look on his face, the elder expressed more than enough gratitude. Then we see that Yu Chiangyang is standing by window, he starts to cry and says, I can't believe he asked me to give him that. He goes a luxury building and walks around in his new apartment and says, money sure is nice. He says, when you're somewhere expensive. He calls the room service and orders a bunch of food. He eats only one bite and says, this flavor, it's insane. It melts in my mouth. So nice, it was only a few months ago when there was nothing I could have for a meal but cup ramen. Alice is also there in laying of a couch and says, you sure are eating deliciously. Jin Hyuk says, people used to pay me to watch me eat. After that we see that on TV reporter says, in this segment, beyond the tower of trials. We've invited an expert in tower conquest. The guest with us today is, a ranker of Korea's strongest guild Dangan, Jang Yunsuk. Please welcome him with warm applause. She asks him what do you think is the key to climbing the tower Yunsuk. Yunsuk says, the most important thing needed to climb the tower is to first get stronger. There are two main ways to get stronger in the tower of trials. The first way, which is the most universal way that everyone knows, is to raise your skill level and your own level. She asks him, I see. Then, what is the second way? He says, it's using coins. Reporter says, oh, you mean the currency that you can only use in the Tower of Trials. He says, yes. Heaving the purchasing power to obtain even better items. In one of the best ways to become a ranker. If the dollar was the key currency that made the world go around until now. Then the coins will be that same currency from now on. Jin Hyuk goes to rest. Yunsuk explained about the fourth floor and says, the one who cleared the third floor is given the privilege to be the first one to enter the fourth floor. The fourth floor is a special dungeon with 100 large scale waves. The key to clearing this floor is to occupy a base in the field and protect it to the end. The problem is that if the player S who entered all fail to defend the base. The entire fourth floor will be sealed for 20 days. Reporter says, you won't be able to enter for 20 days. Yunsuk says, since there is a massive risk of calamity if each floor isn't cleared within 90 days. Not even unknown will be able to announce his entry so recklessly. 
Will humanity really become extinct after 90 days pass? I believe the tower's system possesses an absolute right of exercise over the world's rules. You could say that it can ignore the law of causality. Considering that, it is highly likely that humanity could become extinct. After that we see that a girl says to Yunsuk that, you're really free for a month right? He says, of course. I'm sure even a month out of the 90 days will be barely enough time to prepare to clear the floor. So, let's go somewhere nice for about a month. She says, sounds good. Then a message popped up in front of him saying, player unknown has announced the start of the fourth floor conquest. We ask all players who will challenge the fourth floor to get ready. The first wave will being in 8 hours. He speed up his car and says, gather all the rankers. This is an emergency. All the large guild starts to panic and says, we're fucked. We only have 8 hours and we have nothing prepared. What the hell are you thinking to pull something like this? Unknown. After that we see that Jinhyuk and Alice sleeping like a baby. Jinhyuk wakes up and says, I slept like a baby. He asks Alice, shall we head out? Then a message popped up saying, time until the first wave begins, is 1 hour 37 minutes 51 seconds. After that we see that there is a boss female monster and a lot of zombies, Jinhyuk says, 100 waves consisting of normal and special zombies. There are only two ways that players can block them. They can either optimally set up thousands of defense tower combinations, or choose a base that can be defended efficiently. For normal players, that is. Jinhyuk enters the fourth floor a message popped up saying you were the first to enter the fourth floor of the Tower of Trials. Other players may enter the fourth floor in 20 minutes. Jinhyuk says, this place is as dreary as always. 20 minutes isn't a lot of time I should hurry. The fourth floor is a destroyed city. He come in front of the Sangam World Cup Stadium. He uses high priority base ticket. A message popped up saying Sangam World Cup Stadium has been selected as your base. He spreads, squishy grain, and plant 5 solar seeds. And uses natural water which increase the plant growth speed by 20%. Jinhyuk says, preparations are complete. Let's head back. We see that a lot of players are gathered at 4th floor staring point. Jinhyuk seeing them from top of building and says, most of the famous large guilds are participating. Yanwa calls him. Teresa is also there. Yanwa and her friend are shocked to see her. Jinhyuk says, don't be surprised, I called her here. Jinhyuk jumps down and says, sorry to call you all here out of the blue. Things progressed faster than expected, so I didn't have time to explain. His friend says, no, it's natural we'd come when you call us. Teresa says, I don't mind either, since I'm not affiliated with anything anymore. Being together with you is better, too. Some other player sees them and says, wow, look over there. It's Yu Yanwa and Lee Taemin. Teresa is next to them, too. I subscribed to her new two, but I can't believe I'm seeing her in person. The one next to them is Kong Jinhyuk. The new top call star who appeared in Korea. There aren't many of them, but the lineup is insane. Jinhyuk says, have you all come prepared? Yu Yanwa says, we have, but will it be fine with just this many of us? The number of zombies in this floor's waves are insane. Lee says, the level of my ability to control summons isn't very high, so it'll be difficult. Jinhyuk says, isn't a little difficulty what makes it fun. I also chose the stadium as the base on purpose. Yu Yanwa says, stadium. You don't mean the Sangam Stadium do you? Please tell me you're not. Lee says, we need at least a hundred people to defend that huge place. Yu Yanwa gets angry and says, and what do you mean by fun Opa? This isn't a game anymore. We'll die for real if we die here. Lee says, I can tell from his face that he still has his old habits. Teresa says, Jinhyuk you're like a pervert. Jinhyuk says, don't be so stressed out. A place like the stadium is the perfect place for horde hunting. Yu Yanwa says, that's only possible for you. It's hard for us. Teresa says, Jinhyuk can I also ask something? He says, what is it? Teresa says, I heard that you need at least five people to defend a base. But you know that there's only four of us here right? Lee says, come to thinks of it you're right. Jinhyuk says, don't worry about that. The last one will be here soon. Chun Yu Sung come there with angry look on his face. He says, Kong Jinhyuk. And bring out his sword and says, I'll kill you, you son of AB. After that we see that Chun Yu Sung training somewhere in the mountains. 
he receives a message from Jin Hyuk saying, run over to the starting point of the fourth floor within an hour. Chun thinks, hilarious. There's no reason to go just because he said so. I'm still lacking in training. Jin Hyuk sends another message says, if you come now, I'll face you without using my left arm and right leg. Chun thinks, an obvious taunt. A superficial and childish one. I'll only be dancing in the palm of his hand if I take the bait. Jin Hyuk sends another message and says, okay, I'll even have my eyes closed. Deal. Chun says, endure it. I'll use this rage as fertilizer for my revenge in the future. Jin Hyuk calls him a chicken. Chun gets really angry and says, I'll kill him. After that we see that Chun, is walking to Jin Hyuk with an angry look his face and a sword in his hand and says. You son of a b, I'll kill you. Jin Hyuk says, you're finally here. Over here. Jin Hyuk sees the sword and thinks, a tribute sword, an item that makes up for the weakness of swordsmen, long range battle, by infusing elemental magic into the weapon. I knew he'd get his hands on that, how readable can you get? Chun says, you asked if I'm a chicken. I'll show you right here. Whether I'm a chicken or not. Jin Hyuk says, it's good to prove yourself, but you're gonna fight me with that incomplete sword. Chun says, what do you mean? Jin Hyuk says, I mean exactly what I said. An attribute sword isn't bad, but it needs to be completed to display its full power. It just so happens that the random box that appears on this floor, includes the item that can complete that attribute sword. The fire attribute is what you want, right? Chun says, stop bluffing. A random box, just as its name suggests, is random. You never know what's going to come out of it. Don't you already know that I prefer abnormal shortcuts? I'll give that to you if you participate in the defense. So let's agree to fight after you complete it. How about it? Chun puts the sword back and says, that item better come out of that random box. A message popped up saying a five-man party has been established. The minimum number of members for the base defense has been fulfilled. Teresa says, will it really be okay to be on the same side as Chun like this, Jin Hyuk? Jin Hyuk says, he probably won't stab me in the back, until he gets what he wants. He may look like that, but he is surprisingly pure side to him as well. Yu Yanwa says, oh, right, I almost forgot, Jin Hyuk Opa. Take this. She gave him the twin dragon swords. Jin Hyuk grabs them and thinks, I knew the artifacts of the past gained enough men to rival divine artifacts due to the Tower of Trials. But it's even more amazing after touching it. Yu Yanwa says, Grandpa asked me to deliver these to you. He values these a lot, so how did you get them? Jin Hyuk says, I think he's taken a liking to me personally. Jin Hyuk see a note on the sword saying dowry, Jin Hyuk thinks, that old man sure is consistent with his jokes. They are all standing in front of the stadium, Jin Hyuk says, we're here, that's our base. Yu Yanwa says, we're supposed to defend this massive base with just the five of us. Chun Yu Sung says, you're peerless as always when it comes to thoughtlessness. Jin Hyuk says, I have a plan, so don't worry. Then we see that some peoples are standing front their base, they says, I was wondering who made the stadium their base. But it was you guys. Jin Hyuk see a pattern on their swords and says, that pattern is. One of them move ahead and says, so you're Kong Jin Hyuk. Someone walks toward Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk sees a pattern on his sword and thinks, that pattern. There's no doubt about it. He's one of the members of the Muram on the 21st floor. The Black Cloud Guild, and now the Triad. So it's true that the residents are stretching their influence outside the tower. One of them bring out a dagger and says, he's asking if you're Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk reply yeah, that's me. That man says, my name is Nam Gong Yun. Jin Hyuk says, I don't give a shit. If you're gonna introduce yourself, please stop. I've already heard about how idiotic that wusses of the Nam Gong family are. Yun says, what did you say? Teresa says, what's with you, Jin Hyuk? And what's the Nam Gong family? Do you know each other? Jin Hyuk says, we did. Jin Hyuk thinks, the Nam Gong family of the Tower of Trails of the Tower of Trails 21st floors Muram world. Although they're highly trained elites. Their arrogance pierces the sky. Yun get really in as he is about to say, you son of a. Jin Hyuk acts like him and says, you son of a bitch. Do you know who I am? I'll eradicate you entire family and all you relatives for insulting the Nam Gong family. Jin Hyuk says, please refrain from saying bullshit like that. 
I'm tired of such third-rate villain dialogue. But, does the Namgong family even have something like pride they have to protect? Your name value is all you have. Yun says, I don't know how you know of us but. You bastard. How dare you insult the Namgong family. Yun brings out his sword. Yun's level is 68. A copy condition window appeared says, you have encountered a resident from the Murum the other residents that came with him are hidden among the triad. You may copy one of his skills once find all of them. Jin Hyuk thinks, there are other residents here besides Namgong Yun. This is a bit excessive for simply just coming to pick a fight. Teresa says, what should we do, Jin Hyuk? Jin Hyuk says, whatever their goal is, I just have to copy his skill. Jin Hyuk gets excited and says, let's prepare for battle. Yun order his men, cut of these bastard limbs. He says, take care of the left side, Nuna. She gets ready fight and says, I finally get to warm up. He throws some gears and activates Machine King. A message popped up saying, manifesting machine summons. She activates, refusal to retreat. A message popped up saying, the damage you receive is reduced by 15% as long as you do not retreat. Teresa says, I will handle the rear. Chun says, I always think the whenever I see you, but you sure live without weighing the pros and cons. Jin Hyuk says, I need around 3 minutes. Can you buy me that much time? Chun says, 3 minutes. He says, there's no need for that. Since I'll take care of them all by myself. Teresa activates sacred reinforcement. She activates battle song. Battle song increase all stats by 5 for 10 minutes. Nuna gets excited and says, nice. She kicks a lot of them. Teresa also beat a lot of them. Yun's men says, those bastards are strong. Chun also kills a lot of them. Yun says, looks like this place isn't completely made up of insects. Yun attacks Chun. Chun tries to block Yun's attack with his sword but was not able to and gets a big cut on his shoulder. Yun says, good reflexes. You seem to have handled a sword before. But it's nothing more than flailing without any foundations. I will personally show you what the true swordsmanship of a noble family looks. Like, Yun uses King's sword's form. A lot of attacks come toward Chun. Chun blocks the attacks and thinks, it's heavy. Compared to the triad, he's on another level. Yun gets ready to attack, as his attack about to Chun. Teresa blocks the attack with her shield. And saves the Chun. Jin Hyuk says, nice timing, Teresa. That's 3 minutes, switch. Jin Hyuk activates element of fire. Fire surrounds Yun. Yun swings his sword and says, tricks like this. Jin Hyuk jumps really high. Yun says, you fool. You put yourself in a position where you can't evade. I'll pierce you in the air. One of his legs is covered in ice he can't move by it. Jin Hyuk says, people don't usually look twice at the place that just sweet. You should always double check. Jin Hyuk activates daylight. Someone jumps in the middle of their fight and blocks the daylight. They say, he's completely destroyed my expectations. Yeah, I don't think Yun can take him on his own. Yun sees them and says, Hung. One of them says, I didn't think someone from outside the tower. Would posses this much internal energy. Other one says, indeed. Isn't he the first? Jin Hyuk smiles and thinks they're finally all here. A message popped up saying you have discovered all the residents within the trade. The condition has been fulfilled. You have successfully copied the skill, infinite steps. He fuss infinite steps and grave of swords. A message popped up saying you have acquired the skill sword Demon King steps rank S. Jin Hyuk thinks, alright. One of them says, are you alright, Yun? Yun says, I'm perfectly fine. One of the residents says, it's my first time seeing brother Yun so dumbfounded. Other one says, it looks like he's past his prime. Yun gets angry to hear that and says, I was fine on my own. Who told you to butt in? One of them says, we weren't doubting your skill. However, do not forget that the Lord's order was not an execution, but rather a conciliation. She says, Brother Hwangbo Gun at his right. If you're planning on being with us, then there is no need to fight. Yun says, I already know something like that. However, son of a bitch. Already know that we were from the tower. All of them are surprised to hear that and says, what? They say, he knew about us. Is that true, Hung Nim? Yun says, why would I lie about this? Yun get really angry and bring out his full power and says, screw conciliation, I have to kill at least that guy of all people. 
I don't like him. Gunnit says, Yun, I understand you rage, but we have to go now. Yun says, what? Someone comes to them and says, there's a zombie wave coming from the right. They're three minutes away. Jin Hyuk says, Shu, Shu. The stadium is ours, so go find someplace else. Gunnit says, we wouldn't take such a garbage location even if you asked us to. We already have our own base. It's much more magnificent than a place like this that's as huge as a construction site. Try to hold out. We'll be back once the first wave is over. Move to the Ba and build a strong point. All of you, move it. Young says, consider yourself lucky. I won't let my guard down next time. Nuna says, I wasted energy before we even began. We need to save as much stamina as we can. Hung, we should go get ready too. Jin Hyuk thinks, a supermarket. It's an ideal place for a long-term siege due to its tall walls and the abundance of food inside. Although, it has a fatal flaw. Jin Hyuk, says, yeah let's go. Then we see a drone is flying toward the zombies. There are a lot of zombies. He says, Hung, can we really stop all those zombies by ourselves? She says, Opa, you didn't choose this for the thrill like you used to do in the past, right? Jin Hyuk gives and smile and says don't worry. A huge sunflower appears behind him and he say, these things are more useful than they look. Teresa says, I've never seen such huge plant defense towers. Jin Hyuk picks up a stick and say, now, I'll explain the plan. All of you gather around. The purpose of this base defense is to stop the zombies from occupying the flag. I set up the flag in the middle of the stadium so we don't lose sight of it. This stadium has four large entrances in all four directions. And I've spread those plants around each of those entrances. Jin Hyuk says, as long as these plants are safe, not only will we be able to protect this huge base, we'll also be able to aim to the most kills reward using this huge field. They all get surprised to hear that and says, are plant tower really that strong? What are we supposed to do, then? Jin Hyuk says, the plants will kill most of the zombies that come from each wave, by they need around one minute to charge from time to time. Chun says, so you're asking us to stop the zombies during that time. Then, I will take the west. Jin Hyuk says, don't push yourself too hard and get bitten by the zombies. Chun says, do you seriously think I'll be done in by mere zombies? Jin Hyuk says, you were beaten by those Murum guys after you said the same thing. Chun says, that's different from this. Jin Hyuk says, Taemin, you're in charge of checking the situation from the center and assisting when necessary. Don't forget to widen your field of view using drones. Taemin says, alright leave it to me. Nuna says, can I take care of the north, then? Teresa says, I will handle the south entrance. Jin Hyuk says alright, everyone, to you positions. Jin Hyuk smiles and thinks, I can finally test these twin swords out. Taemin also bring out some of his own turrets. A message popped up saying, beginning the first wave. Taemin says, they're coming. They all get ready to fight. Zombies starts to walk in the stadium. A message popped up saying, the solar plants are activation sunlight. Sunflower throws a huge fireball towards the zombies. All the other sunflower starts to throw fireballs at them as well. Nuna sees this and thinks such firepower. They can't even compare to normal defense towers. A lot of zombies turn into pails of ashes. Sunflowers starts to recharge. A lot of zombies starts to walk in. Jin Hyuk bring out the twin dragon swords. Jin Hyuk shouts and says, this is when it really begins. Hold out for one minute. Jin Hyuk and Teresa see toward one another and smiles. Jin Hyuk puts on his mask. Teresa thinks, yes, Jin Hyuk was always there in moments of danger. And every time, we overcame adversities by trusting each other. She of Jin Hyuk saying, I'm just doing what needs to be done. For the person I consider is my precious comrade. She bring out her full power and thinks. So, I will put my wholehearted faith in Jin Hyuk this time as well. After that a message popped up saying, the first wave has ended. The second wave will begin in 3 hours. At some other base someone is thinking even the first wave is so difficult. Someone else says, don't push yourself too hard. Dangan Guild member Song Chianwa in saying, just think only about the items and experience points. We can just run away if things take a turn for the worse. Other one says, yeah, I'll be careful. A message popped up saying, broadcasting highlights from each base for popularity votes. He thinks did the Triad Guild take over the supermarket. 
They're defending the narrow entrance by using holy defense towers as support. They're not bad. Hung take a look at this. There's a team that took over Songam Stadium too. With only 5 people at that. He gets socked and says, only 5 people for that massive stadium. Let me see. He see that and says, no way. How can a plant be that powerful? The plants aside, take a look at this. These guys are way out of the ordinary. They aren't being pushed back by the sheer numbers at all. They says, Lee Taemin, Yu Yanwa, and even the S-ranked Kong Jin Hyuk, that team is made up of famous rookies. He says, wait, Lady Teresa is there too. He says, all of you vote for this video. Others says, damn it, this guy's going crazy because of Teresa again. Hold him down. A message popped up saying calculating solar energy. 1800 solar energy has been obtained. A yellow ball of solar energy appear on Jin Hyuk's hand. They asks him what is that. Jin Hyuk says, it's what you obtain by killing the zombies, and you need it to strengthen the plant towers. Everyone is tired and out of breath except Jin Hyuk. Teresa says, it'll get easier for us then, right? He says, of course. Some messages popped up saying, bullet plant X2 energy required 600. Freezing plant X1 energy required 350. Boulder plant X1 energy required 250. Berserk plant X1 energy required 600. Jin Hyuk give Teresa some seeds and says, plant one bullet plant at A east and south entrances. A freezing plant in the center. And one boulder plant in the west. Jin Hyuk says, is for the berserk plant. Yanwa says, is just planting it in the gourd all we have to do. No, they won't grow in time if we use normal methods. Just wait, I'll explain. We need a special fertilizer to make these guys grow quickly. A message popped up saying, the seed leaves of the plants are shaking. They are licking their lips from the sweetness that they've never experienced in their lives. Jin Hyuk says, all done. He feeds the plants and says, yes, yes, eat lots and grow big. Lee says, Nuna, I think Hung has finally gone insane. Yanwa says, how long do you have to be stuck in the tower for to become like that? Chun see that and get angry and says, against someone like that, I. Teresa says, Jin Hyuk you're like a pervert. Jin Hyuk says, anyway, if you use this fertilizers they'll grow in no time. Take good care of the plants until the next wave. Teresa says, where are you going? He says, to clean you pa mess. Teresa is confused and says, to clean. He sees some people and thinks, they're all frantically gathering supplies in the field. They must be preparing for a long-term battle. Idiots, you're only wasting your time. Only weakling prepare for a long-term battle. He goes inside a building and thinks, it's been so long since I've been here, around 8 years as I are. The huge number of spider webs is the exact same. Same goes for the view. He removes a cloth from a mirror and says, this is also the exact same. He touches it with one finger and says, let's see. He comes of a mirror from some other mirror somewhere else. Yun says, I'll kill Kong Jin Hyuk, that son of a bitch. I won't let him live. Other girl says, I'd usually disagree with you, but I think you're actually right for once. No matter how much we need to increase our forces, there's no need to take in someone who's difficult to control, no. What's with you, Tang Soha? You never take my side. Gunnet thinks, we've secretly made contact with my outsiders until now. But none of them ever figured out our identities like he did. How in the world does he know? We may be better of elimination him, like Yun said. They hears a loud sound. He says, what's going on? Someone says, from the storage room. A huge plant is destroying everything. Jin Hyuk says, I've brought a housewarming gift, but. My little cherry here has quite the appetite, as you can see. Unfortunately, it ate all the food you had in your storage room. Gunnet get angry and says, KNAG Jin Hyuk, how did you get in here? Whatever you're thinking of doing stop it. Stop it this instant. Jin Hyuk says, why should I? Gunnet says, you daredevil do you have any idea what you're doing right now? Jin Hyuk says, what are you talking about the queen? They gets really surprised the here then and says, you know about the queen. All the other player think, queen. What's that? Jin Hyuk says, the one that appears when a base that 200 people or more are defending is destroyed before the third wave. The ruler of the fourth floor, mother of the dead, also know as queen. I was wondering how to fill that number. But thankfully, you guys set up your base here. 
The queen is impossible to defeat even everyone here were to join forces. Why is someone who already knows that trying to summon here? Facing 100 waves of zombies is a hassle. So just let yourself be destroyed. Yun says, you goddamn son of AB. Don't you dare run away after you've said you fill. Come back and fire me. The destroys the base supermarket. Teresa thinks what is this vibration? The supermarket is being destroyed. Teresa says, by supermarket, do you mean the base, that the triad who fought us earlier made is there? No way, could it have something to do with Jin Hyuk Opa? Chun says, I have a bad feeling about this. A message popped up saying, a unique event has been triggered. We see that Queen wakes up and says, weak human, punish. A message popped up saying the master of the fourth floor, Pendriel, is making her move to punish the weak players. Yang was see the message and shouts, what the hell does it means by master of the fourth floor? Lee says, no way. Wasn't blocking the zombie waves all we needed to do. Chun gets angry and says, Kong Jinhyuk, what the hell are you planning? He stands on top of building seeing towards the stadium and thinks this seems like a good spot. He brings out the Eclipse Stone, and thinks, the item that I earned by killing the third floor boss. It's time to use it. The he breaks the Eclipse Stone. A message popped up saying, activation Eclipse Stone. Sun gets covered in by some and it gets dark like a night. A message popped up saying, strengthening dark attribute abilities by 100%. Weakening light attribute abilities by 50%. Lee says, what's wrong Teresa? She says, no way. My sacred power was reduced by half all of sudden. Boss monster sees the message saying, strengthening dark attribute abilities by 100%. And says, impertinent human. The master of the fourth floor is staring at your position. The master of the fourth floor declares an all-out attack on the Songam Stadium base. Jin Hyuk sees that and says, good. Shall I start uploading now? All the players starts to run and says, this is crazy. I never heard about there being a boss on the fourth floor. Let's get the hell out of here. This run is already over because of those damn triad bastards. But hung, this floor is gonna be locked for 20 days if we don't clear it. We shouldn't be running like this, but rather helping. Shut the hell up. We'll figure it out after we survive. A message popped up saying a new video has been updated. This video shows the destruction of Triad, an appearance of hidden boss. Then another message popped up saying, a new video has been updated. Jin Hyuk says, cleaning up the Triad's massive shit. People in comment says, at least people managed to survive since Kong Jin Hyuk shifted the boss's attention to him. But is it possible for 5 people to fight a boss? I'm not sure about the others, but Kong Jin Hyuk is Korea's S rank, doesn't Ha have a Chan? Where's unknown at a time like this? I wanna see him fight alongside Kong Jin Hyuk. Yang was sees the video and says, Wow, when the hell did he find time to shoot a video? The views are already no joke, hung. She gets angry and says, But Opa, didn't you set way too big of a stage? Lee says, Why would you make them come to this base? Teresa says, The second wave hasn't even begun yet. The one who destroyed the supermarket base wasn't you, right? Jin Hyuk says, I wonder I'm not too sure about it myself. Chun says, regardless of whether you destroyed the supermarket or not. I couldn't care less about pointless stuff like that. So do you have a way to face the queen? Jin Hyuk says, I have a way to win. Chun says, I'm glad you didn't do this without any plan at all. So what is it? He points toward Chun and says, you will be the most important part of this plan. After that we see that boss monster and zombies are walking towards the stadium. She says, weak human. The reach the stadium she says, here. That human, mine. Rest, punish. All zombies starts to run toward the stadium. Teresa says, they're coming. Everyone retreat, a tank and some small turrets attack the zombie. Lee says, be careful, Nuna. Damn it. These guys are unique zombies. Just use everything without holding back and a lot of new zombies appears. Boss says human, idiotic, and weak. Punish. This is my home. A huge mountain of ice appears in front of the and some people are trapped inside it. Boss is surprised to see that and says, what is, this? Lee, Yanwa, Chun and Teresa all of them are trapped inside the ice. After that we see that the boss is holding a purple crystal. Then we see that Chun is really angry and says, Kong Jinhyuk. I swear. You won't die a comfortable death. 
You have received 100,000 coins form Chun Yu Sung. Who else but you has money like this it can't be helped. Jin Hyuk thinks, it's a bit of a waste to use my own coins. Jin Hyuk says, from now on, we will all be bait. Chun gets angry to hear that and says, bait. Are you kidding me? He buys something from the shop. Jin Hyuk says, oh, let me correct myself. Bait is a bit of a weird word. You'll be a booby trap. Then he activates his ability, Glacier Formation, Brilliant Ice Prison Realm, and also all the zombies and boss also get ice. Boss says, cold. Boss activates Black Death. Boss jumps toward Teresa and says, get out of my home. Jin Hyuk activates Shallow Breathing, and also activates Sword Demon King steps. He going towards the boss's base with full speed. Boss see that and thinks, he's heading to my base. She says, no. After that Jin Hyuk thinks, Pendriel. Mother of the dead. AKA queen. He level, her skills. And her especially fatal poison attacks. The boss of the fourth floor is overwhelming in all aspects except her intelligence. However, the core of the fourth floor is base defense. This applies to the players. As well as the zombies. If the queen is in the Songam stadium. That means her base is completely empty. Boss run towards the Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, she figured it out faster than I expected, huh? Jin Hyuk smiles and says, however, you're still too late. With the distance between us, I have plenty of time. He activates Grave of Swords. And Blessing of the Star. He kills a lot of zombies and thinks this place is as repulsive as always. I'll finish this quickly. In any case, that should be appearing soon. It's the flag. A blade covered in red energy comes toward Jin Hyuk, with full speed. He dodges it by Sping and thinks, I appeared. A monster says, pray dodge. Jin Hyuk says, the watchman that protects the queen's flag. Monster starts to laugh and says, meet, meet. Jin Hyuk says, now then. How should I take care of you this time? Booker has a big Caesar. Booker attacks Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk blocks the attack with the twin dragon sword. Booker sees that and says, it doesn't cut. Jin Hyuk uses element of fire and says, it's not your average sword. He burned the face of Booker. He thinks, its recovery speed alone truly is legendary. However, this is more than enough to restrict its visibility. He cuts him a lot. But nothing happens to Booker and Booker says, I won't die. With just that, Jin Hyuk appears behind him and activates Mandala. And says, you will. A huge explosion happens. A message popped up saying, you have leveled up. You have acquired scissors filled with a vengeful spirit. Jin Hyuk grabs the scissors, and say, my 31st victory. Jin Hyuk see towards the flag and says, shall I put an end to this now? A message popped up in front of Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, would you look at this? The message says, Black Hound is revealing their reasons. They wish to make you a proposal as the representative of Egyptian mythology. The Black Hound alias this is. Anubis. Jin Hyuk thinks I though he'd be dormant for a while after I gave him a scolding in the underground first floor. Interesting. Jin Hyuk says, I'm listening. A message popped up saying Black Hound is making a low roar. Jin Hyuk says, huh, what? Are you getting angry? Jin Hyuk grabs the flag and says, you want me to just pull this out? Message popped up saying, Black Hound is getting very flustered. They urge you to calm down. They claim that the Egyptian gods want to see a proper end to this battle. Jin Hyuk thinks, from the perspective of the ones who rule the higher floors of the tower. It's difficult to acknowledge the fact the fourth floor was cleared without even a proper battle with the boss, it it. Or it could simply be because they don't like this impudent human. Jin Hyuk says, and why should I accept that proposal? I can win if I just pull this flag out. Black Hound proposes a contract. Jin Hyuk get really excited and says, you sure are generous, aren't you? After that boss reaches back to her base. She is surprised to see the flag is not pulled out. She says, why is the flag untouched? Jin Hyuk says, you're asking why I didn't pull the flag out to win right away. It's because someone insisted that I fight you. I've already received a deposit, so I can't pull the flag out until I defeat you. She says, a deposit. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, a deposit. He changes the style of scissors and says, and not only that, I was paid in advance. The boss bring out her sword and says, you'll regret it. Jin Hyuk activates blessing of the star. 
A message popped up saying, weakening light attribute abilities by 50% due to the effect of the Eclipse Stone. Jin Hyuk thinks, even if my Rift stat is taking maximum effect. I have nowhere near the sufficient stats to kill her. She appears behind Jin Hyuk ready to kill him. She swings her sword and hit the Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk blocks her attack with his scissor. She says, you blocked. Jin Hyuk used, Mandala. She says, why aren't you disappeared? Please disable her. Boss gets really angry and says, disappear. She attacks Jin Hyuk with a lot of attacks. He uses Sword Demon King's steps. To dodge all her attacks, a message popped up saying, increasing movement speed by 70%. He smiles and activates Glacier Formation. She gets trapped inside the ice. Jin Hyuk jumps and hit he in neck with a powerful attack. She only gets a small cut. She frees herself and says, I won't die, with just that. I know, this is nowhere near enough. She attacks him with a powerful attack. He uses, Glacier Formation. And covers her eyes. He dodges her attack by moving just one step. He attacks on her eyes. She says, irritating human, that was. A mistake, she attack him, but blocks her attack with his weapon. He goes flying above to the skies. She activates Requiem of the Dead. As her attack about to hit him. Anubis gets excited to see that. A message popped up saying, Blackhound is gloating. Then we see that Jinhyuk is thinking about something. Then a message popped up saying, Blackhound offers the item Jackal's Tooth, as the deposit. Jinhyuk thinks, it's a material item that increases movement speed by 10% and attack by 30%. Jinhyuk says, you sure are generous, aren't you? However, it feels a little lacking. I'll agree to this battle if you agree to one condition. A message popped up saying, Black Hound, is curious as to what the condition is. Jin Hyuk says, it's nothing special. There's a B grade item called White Branch. Give that to me. He thinks, White Branch is an item mainly used for medical purposes. It's actually an extremely common item. It can be obtained very easily from the 10th floor and above. In the eyes of Anubis on the 42nd floor. It'd be nothing but worthless trash. Anubis give an evil smile and accepts your condition. A message popped up saying, receiving the item's jackal's tooth, and white brank. You may not pull out the flag until your battle with the queen is over. He bring out the two items that Anubis gave him and gives a big smile. Anubis is confused to see that. A message popped up saying, combining, white branch, jackal's tooth, and scissors filled with a vengeful spirit. He successfully fused three items. He gets, causality severing side rank immeasurable. Boss is surprised to see that. A message popped up saying, the system is intervening due to the appearance of a divine artifact that must not exist on the fourth floor. Due to the downward scaling effect, this item may only be used once. Jin Hyuk thinks, I guess artifacts that go against probability can only be used once. But that one chance is, plenty. She gets scared and thinks, danger. She thinks I can't dodge. She attack him using her sword. And he use scythe. It hits her sword and breaks it. It cuts her too. She thinks of a flashback. She goes through a big door. Jin Hyuk says, to her, that son of a bitch Muhin did nothing but hide at the back. But you were far stronger. Goodbye. A message popped up saying, the fourth floor boss monster, Pendriel, has been defeated. Jin Hyuk leveled up three times. A message popped up saying, you have successfully defended the base. Each party member will receive a rank random box x5. Teresa gets really happy and says, Jin Hyuk did it. This time, as well. News reporter says, only 24 hours have passed since the fourth floor opened. I still can't believe it. Yes, since everyone expected that it would take at least 20 days to defend against all 100 waves. It's certainly hard to believe that KNAG Jin Hyuk and his team cleared the floor in just one day. I think we've seen the true power of an S rank. Truly amazing. Jin Hyuk goes to meet Yanwa and Lee. Jin Hyuk says, sorry I'm late, I had to pick someone up. Yanwa says, who? And Alice is also there and says, this is quite shabby for a banquet hall. The says, oh, Ms. Alice, the one we met before. Jin Hyuk says, I brought her here since she's also a member of our veteran company. Lee says, veteran company? What's with that name? Jin Hyuk says, what about Ms. Teresa? Yanwa says, Teresa will be here in about an hour, so she told us to eat first. Chun is also there. 
Jin Hyuk sees him and says, I thought you wouldn't come at all, but I guess you still came. Chun says, I'm only here for the random reward secret method that you promised me. Jin Hyuk says, okay, I'll tell you, so don't stiffen the mood and have a drink. And all his other subordinates also come there and thinks, we're here, too. They bow down and says, congratulations on clearing the fourth floor, director. Jin Hyuk says, thanks. Jin Hyuk says, eat as much as you want tonight. It's all on her as a commemoration for clearing the fourth floor. They all order a lot of food and drinks. Jin Hyuk drinks, and says, that hit the spot. Alice says, I can't believe it. Alice also eats a lot and says, to think I can eat so much of something this delicious with just two coins, and had lots of meat. But the taste of THS region is on another level. Alice gets angry and take the piece of chicken. Jin Hyuk says, okay, you can have it. Alice gets happy and says, thanks. I'll never forget it. Jin Hyuk thinks, who'd possibly think she's one of the strongest in the tower by looking at this. Lee asks Chun, what did you do before all this happened, huh? Chun says, I was a medical student. Lee gets surprised and says, really? No way. Teresa also come there and says, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. They all gets happy and says, Teresa in the flash. Can I tag you, let's take a selfie together, honey. Jin Hyuk thinks and says, whenever I cleared floors in the Tower of Trails before. I was always alone. Alice says, why are you smiling? Jin Hyuk says, just cause. It's pretty rowdy. Jin Hyuk level 29, he sees his stats and says, I went up 3 levels. Jin Hyuk thinks, I thought I grew in the most ideal way in the past, but. I'm growing incomparably faster than before. Jin Hyuk thinks, I wonder if it's being influenced by the variables that are showing up now that the game has become a reality. Well, it's fine, since I get more profits than losses. Now then, let's take a look at the 4th floor reward. We sees an item high grade skill strengthening scroll. Jin Hyuk bring is out and says, I'll use this on glacier formation that I'm making the most use of. His skill glacier formation level 8. Some says, hasn't it gotten cold all of a sudden? Did you turn the air conditioner on? What the hell are you talking about? Wear some more clothes if you're cold. Don't you dare take a half day off after pretending to be sick again. Jin Hyuk says, next up. A grade random gotcha box. It's a probability based item that allows you to pull in a grade item by spinning a roulette. A message popped up saying, please press the red button located in the middle. There is not much time remaining. If you let the roulette keep spinning, it'll draw out the user's anxiety using a countdown and stress inducing sounds that imply the threat of a grave peril arising a message popped up saying, the time has run out. Please spin the roulette again. Most people press the button around this time. But this is something that I, who used to search for all kinds of bugs. The someone had purposefully hidden within the system, found out. The message popped up again and again. The time has run out. Please spin the roulette again. If you keep spinning the roulette without doing a thing, then on the 37th attempt. The roulette speed is reduced by 99%. Chun says, Kong Jin Hyuk, are you seriously saying you can choose the a grade item that you want by doing something like this? Chun says, just how much have you played this game? Jin Hyuk thinks, I let Chun Yu Sung choose the reward that he wanted using the same method. Chun says, I can finally beat him. But there's a penalty that the reward will be destroyed after one week if you use this method. He was so happy after getting to complete his attribute sword. I can't wait to see his face next week. You have obtained tricolored pills rank A. Jin Hyuk think, considering I'll have to use them within one week, this is the best one out of the items that I can use to clear the next floor. And now, the final and most important item needed to clear. The fifth floor. He uses the Great Magic Library entry ticket. A message popped up saying, the great magic library has opened. He enters the great library, should I go see that geezer after a long time? After that we see that an old man is reading a book. Old man says, what in the world is this about? I heard that the fourth floor has been cleared, but. I didn't expect to see a guest already. Old man says, welcome. My name is Rick Hennessy, the manager of this library. Jin Hyuk thinks, he is an intermediate administrator grade big shot who manages the Tower of Trails Great Magic Library. Jin Hyuk says, finally, my first encounter with a tower administrator. My name is Kong Jin Hyuk. 
Rick says, this is something you don't see very often. I never imagined that someone would set foot in here so soon. Even if you manage to set food in here. The fact that you manage to get to where I am in this giant labyrinth of a library is also very interesting. Jin Hyuk says, I happen to be a very lucky person. Rick says, I don't mind if you browse through the books, but there are no books of you level that you can read here, Kong Jin Hyuk. Kong Jin Hyuk gets a book. Rick says, you would require at least a fundamental understanding of rune language. Solution to entry into the sick circle written by the Empire's court mage Telemos. Jin Hyuk says, right. Rick says, you know. Rune language. Jin Hyuk says, I knew a lot of people, so I've picked up things here and there. Rick thinks, he should be a player who has only just entered the fifth floor, but he already knows rune language. Rick says, may I ask you something, Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, yes, go ahead. Rick says, I can see that you are different from the average player just from the fact that you managed to enter this place. However, your background seems to be beyond the realm of special. Jin Hyuk says, background. Jin Hyuk activates, judgment of Anubis. To be honest the Egyptian gods are backing me. That's why I was able to come here, as well as learn information about the tower. Rick thinks, no way. This is most certainly the energy of the god Anubis. To think they'd already be showing interest in a player. Jin Hyuk they seem to treasure me very much, since they even granted me power like this. A message popped up saying, because a subject was not selected, judgment of Anubis will be cancelled. Rick says, a person of value must receive corresponding treatment. Rick says, it seems I've mistreated a valuable guest. My sincerest apologies. Jin Hyuk thinks, Anubis would have collapsed from stress if he saw this. Rick thinks, to atone for my mistake, I will give you one of the books here as a gift. Jin Hyuk says, can I really choose anything I want? Rick says, of course. I would like to offer a valuable guest a gift of the same value. In that case. I will take this. Are you really fine with that? Jin Hyuk says, it certainly is a good grimoire, but because it's written in ancient rune language, it cannot be read unless you're an ancient species. I, the black dragon Matrian, record this commemorate my ascension to an ancient dragon. For a thousand years, I have studied a way to tear down the principles of this world. Blah blah, it's just a book written by some Chunabu lizard. I'll take this. Rick says, pardon me as expected of someone who has received the blessing of the gods. Rick starts to disappears, I will keep my eye on you from now on, Kong Jin Hyuk. I will look forward to the day that we meet again. Player Kong Jin Hyuk. Someone says, I was truly gruesome. The fifth floor of the Tower of Trials seemed like the world of an already collapsed civilization. And in that collapsed world, we see some people screaming and saying, capture them. Find the sacrifice. All that remained were fanatics crazed with blood. It felt like some massive psychiatric ward. We see that a news reporter says, a psychiatric ward. I see. Reporter says, fanatics don't seem all that threatening. Why did you decide to run away without fighting? I also tried to subdue them by using skills at first, but. There's a completely different obstacle aside from them. And that is the inability to use skills. What? Skills can't be used. Player says. Because I couldn't even summon my subspace inventory, I was only able to escape. By using a return stone that I had in my pocket. That's why we're giving a special 20% discount off the Exit Guild's return stone, with the cheap price of 5000 gold. Teresa says, take me with you to the 5th floor. Jin Hyuk says, no. Teresa says, why not? I'm sure you're going to challenge the 5th floor right away, so I can't let you go alone. Jin Hyuk thinks, she's so persistent, why is she acting like this all of a sudden? Jin Hyuk says, you can't. No matter how much you want to come with me, I can just sneak in by myself, so give up. She grabs Jin Hyuk arm and says, promise me that you won't push yourself, then. Jin Hyuk thinks, don't push myself. A message popped up saying, a sponsor gift has arrived from the Caladium Kingdom. Isn't the Caladium Kingdom, the kingdom hostile to the Murum forces? A message popped up saying, you have acquired faint odor rank F. Due to a sponsor from an upper force, you have broken out from the fifth floor's restraint. Jin Hyuk thinks, whoa, to think they gave me a gift while opposing the tower's restrictions. Looks like they've started approaching players with potential, just like the Murum. I'll make very good use of this skill. 
A message popped up saying, you have entered the fifth floor of the Tower of Trials. You will start from a random location. Skill usage is blocked. You will receive a random F-grade item. There is only one rule escape alive. Due to your possession of Maitrian's ancient grimoire, one of you skills will be free from restraint. You may use Eye of Gluttony. This is why I chose this in the Great Library. I'll leave using this for later. Some other people's also appears. It's so dark. Why is it so damp here? Jin Hyuk thinks, people placed at the same starting point have already started to arrive. I'll leave the newbies here and head to the. A message popped up saying, activating pursuit scroll. He is surprised and thinks, pursuit scroll. He gets angry and says, you stubborn. Teresa also appears behind him. Teresa says, I didn't think you'd keep your promise, so I followed you. Jin Hyuk says, I believe I told you not to follow me. What in the world were you thinking, coming all the way here? Teresa says, please don't berate someone who followed you out of worry so much. Jin Hyuk thinks, ah, oh, now I have to change my plan. There's something in my pocket. Mine too. Teresa says, I have a flashlight. What about you Jin Hyuk? Jin Hyuk says, a pen. Teresa says, a pen. That's not very good. Jin Hyuk says, no, this can be of use. Someone bring out a lighter and says, I can finally see a little. She says, I'll turn on the. Jin Hyuk grabs the flashlight. Teresa is confused. Man with the lighter says, what a dreary looking place. How can we escape when it's so dark? A lot of masked men are seeing them. They say, over there. Sacrifices. Masked man starts to run toward them. Someone says, idiot. Turn off the lighter. Masked man says, capture them. Over here hurry. Jin Hyuk and Teresa are hiding behind something. Teresa says, shouldn't we? Save those people. Jin Hyuk says, Teresa, now that you're here, you must follow my judgment, no matter what. Teresa says, pardon. Jin Hyuk says, we must not unnecessarily expose ourselves for the time being. You're much too unprepared for a frontal assault at the moment. Teresa says, aren't you looking down on me too much, Jin Hyuk? I've made my own preparations. Here, take a look. I bought one for you too. It's the exit return stone that people say is crucial for the fifth floor. Jin Hyuk slaps his own face. Teresa is confused. Some people are blocking the door. Saying they'll get through at this rate. You guys at the back, come help too. A girl bring out return pill and says, what the hell? Are you guys doing? She says, what do you think? We're going to escape. See y'all, losers. That return pill break. The says, not activating. What the hell? I bought one too. Mine too. A big man appeared with a weapon, all of theirs pill broken. They says, it was a scam. Jin Hyuk says, you trusted it just because it was on a broadcast. This world is full of scammers. Teresa says, I bought two to give to you one as well. A man appears behind her with ropes in his hand. Teresa says, I really should go. Masked man says, a sacrifice for our god. Teresa throws him. All the other masked men are shocked to see that. Teresa says, we've been discovered, haven't we? Jin Hyuk says, looks like it. Masked Men says, our god desires a sacrifice of sacred blood. Let us accomplish the advent of our king together. Eternal happiness. Jin Hyuk bring out his pen and hits one of them in the neck. He hits a lot of them in the neck. Jin Hyuk says, who wants to do the next sermon? All the masked man gets really scared. A big man appears behind them, a man says, Sir Proxy. Jin Hyuk says, Teresa, you've played tag before, right? Proxy throws away one of his men. Jin Hyuk says, that giant head is it, so don't get caught by him. The giant attacks him with his hammer. The starts to run away. We see a man in purple hoodie saying, what of the sacrifices? His man says, we are capturing them without complications. He says, our god desires more sacrifices. Now that the tower has opened and ignorant people are entering. It is the promised time for the great one to descend once again at last. One of them says, cult leader. I think you should see this. He says, they're sacrifices that we discovered just now. Leader says, it's my first time seeing the proxy have such a hard time. He's quick on his feet for a mere sacrifice. One of them says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Leader says, you know him. One of them says, yes. He is, the most dangerous obstacle to our plan. Teresa and Jin Hyuk are still running, from proxy. 
Teresa says, such speed for a man that big. He can't even be compared to the regular cultists. It's impossible for us to face that giant head right now. Jin Hyuk says, let's focus on outrunning him first. Could you give me that for a second? A huge light appears. He hits with hammer the spot of light. It was a flashlight that Teresa brought with her. Jin Hyuk says, that should have bought us not time to think up a strategy. Jin Hyuk listened carefully, Teresa. Teresa says, okay. Jin Hyuk says, I'll lure the giant head by myself. Teresa says, pardon. You want to lure him after we barely got away from him. It's okay. We'll have to face him sooner or later if we want to clear this floor. Jin Hyuk says, while I'm luring him. You evacuate the others. I'm sure they've got no way of leaving now, since their precious return stones turned out to be a scam. I'll try to clear the fifth floor as quickly as possible. It's become a bit complicated though. Because I needlessly followed him. Teresa says, okay. Jin Hyuk says, oh, could you remember this for me, just in case. Proxy sacrifice. Where, giant head. Jin Hyuk says, aren't you way too shit a tag? After that we see Jin Hyuk is running away and Proxy is following him. Teresa is seeing all that hiding. Jin Hyuk says, you just need to use it at the right time. Teresa says, at the right time. When would that be? Jin Hyuk says, you'll definitely fell it. When that time comes, she pick up the hockey and thinks, yes, I'm sure I'll know when the time comes. I'll save those people from earlier first. Jin Hyuk thinks, Teresa must have gotten far enough. He activates, Eye of Gluttony. A message popped up saying, warning. An act that defies the fifth floor's causality has been detected. Jin Hyuk says, Rotting Heart, is showing interest in you. A secondary advancement condition has been denerated. Rotting Heart, suggests that you become their sword. You may advance to Dark Apostle once you accept the condition. Jin Hyuk says, Rotting Heart. One of the absolute beings of the tower, just like Alice, who resides in the upper floors of the tower. He is commonly called the Demon King in this place. In such a place, where skills have been sealed by borrowing the Demon King's power. If one tries to break through the restraint in any way possible, the will receive attention. A message popped up saying, Dark Apostle. Dark Apostle. It boasts extraordinary power, but one must live as the Demon King's pawn for the rest of their life. The people in the Demonic Human Association would have accepted with their mouths foaming. But, how could a tiger possibly become a dog subordinate? Jin Hyuk says, I refuse. Demon gets angry and a message popped up saying, Rotting Heart is enraged. Proxy removes his helmet. A message popped up saying, You will receive the Demon King's curse, for the sin of refusing the Demon King's offer. He feels extreme pain in his chest. A message popped up saying, You will become the target of all demons. This curse will last until death. He cough out blood. Jin Hyuk says, That fucking hurts. Jin Hyuk says, But. Jin Hyuk says, Are you guys just gonna stand there and watch? Come at me. Then we see that all the other players are caught, they are begging for their life. One of them grabs a girl's head and says, Sacrifice for our god. Teresa appears there and ready to attack. She hits him on the face. Teresa says, Take care of the others. She says, Hello. The other girl starts to panic and says, It's no use. We're all gonna die here. We can't get out of here. She's already been engulfed by fear. One of the men attacks her. Teresa blocks the attack with the hockey. She hits him in face. She says, don't give up. We can all get out of here safely. Teresa says, so grab your weapon and stand up. My comrade is in the middle of clearing the fifth floor. Proxy picks up a man and starts walking. At a prison everyone is screaming and crying, we're all gonna die. We should have never come to this damn place. I was planning on returning right after getting some items. One of the guards shouts and says, shut the hell up. We'll torture you if you don't stay quiet. Guard bow down in front of leader and says, I've silenced him. Please continue your conversation. Leader says, yes, thank you. Is that him? The man with him says, yes it is. The man is demonic human. Demonic human, says, it's our first time meeting in person. Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk sees him and thinks, this mana belonged to a human. Since he's on the same side as the fifth floor boss, is he a demonic human? Jin Hyuk uses Eye of Gluttony. A message popped up saying, status window inspection has failed. 
The subject is currently activating a high-level mental barrier. Jin Hyuk thinks, mental barrier. I was planning on using this in my fight against a cult leader. But I guess I have no choice. A message popped up saying, you have used white pill. Increasing one of you stats twofold for 10 minutes. Increasing adaptability stat from 10 to 20. Another message popped up saying, I have gluttony, sees through the subject. His name Hassanville. And his level 38. Jin Hyuk sees his stats window and thinks, if he's a knight of the round table, then he must be the demonic human association begshot that Melina talked about last time. A big shot much greater than I expected appeared. He gave an evil smile and says, I was too busy suppressing the dark darkness within me. Cult leader say, are you sure this is the person you spoke of? He doesn't seem to be alright in the head. Demonic human says, I'm certain. Leader says, even I'm not this bad. You two can talk it out. Alice is laughing so hard that she starts to cry and starts hitting the ground. Jin Hyuk thinks, I'm cringing too, so just pretend you didn't see anything, please. Demonic human says, you don't seem to understand what's going on. Are you aware you've been captured to become a sacrifice? Jin Hyuk says, you think you can imprison my madness of destruction. How foolish of you. Demonic human thinks, what's with him? Could he be hiding some sort of trump card? With this skills he's shown up until now, that is more likely. Demonic human says, I already know how powerful you are, Kong Jin Hyuk. But now that your skills are sealed you cannot survive in this place. We see someone screaming and throwing up blood. Demonic human says, do you hear that? It is the sound of the live sacrifice ritual that you will all be a part of. A gruesome and slow death that you sanity cannot endure awaits you. He brings out a key and says, however. I could give you this key if you tell me everything you know about unknown. Jin Hyuk thinks, a key. Jin Hyuk says, you wish to know unknown's true name. Then I will present an answer to one who reveals their true name. Demonic human thinks, my true name. He's going to die anyway. He grabs his mask and says, my name is Hassanville. I'm also known as Lancelot. Are you satisfied now? A message popped up saying, the condition has been fulfilled. You have successfully copied mental barrier rank S. It's your turn now. Tell me about unknown's identity. I'll only say this once, so listen carefully. Unknown is. Demonic human says, I see. I'll keep my promise. I hope you have a quick death. One of the other prisoners run and grabs the key, and tries to unlock the door. But was not. Able to and says, what the hell. There's no keyhole. Jin Hyuk thinks, they'd obviously pull something like that. I any case. By now Teresa must be. After that we see that Teresa is also caught and thrown in a jail cell. One of the guards says, it's my first time seeing a sacrifice resisting so intensely. I think she defeated more than 20 people. That's an adjustment to her vitality, so I'm sure our god will be happy. Teresa says, where are the others? The girl with her is shouting and hitting other prisoners saying, this is all because of you lot. If only you bastards weren't here. It's all your fault. Teresa stops here and says, what are you doing? Stop it. She says, you're only shielding that person because you don't know. Teresa says, what? She says, the one you're protecting is an inhabitant of the tower. They say, the tower never would have existed if it weren't for you lot. Yeah, and I never would have been imprisoned in a place like this. So it's all your fault. Right. Little girl gets really scared and starts to cry. Teresa stops them and says, inhabitant of the tower or not, it doesn't matter. Hasn't she also been captured by the cultists, just like us? We see that Jin Hyuk thinks, I really want that mental barrier skill. It could become a driving force that could withstand divinity. A copy conditions window appears saying, 1. Make the subject say his night name. 2. Act as if you have Chunabu until you find out his night name. You may copy one skill of you choice once both conditions have been fulfilled. Jin Hyuk thinks, what sort of crazy son of a bitch is managing the tower system? I'll need at least 6 bottles of soju for this. Des Moines human says, why aren't you saying anything? Jin Hyuk says, oh, sorry. Teresa asks little girl, what's your name? 
It's okay, as long as I'm here, no one can hurt you. She says, Andrea. Teresa says, what a pretty name. I'm Teresa. Andrea tell Teresa her story. She says, the devotees came to our village one day. They said they'll save everyone in the village if the villagers offer on person as a sacrifice. Once they said that, the villagers said that I, who doesn't have parents, need to step up for the sake of the village. Saying that it's a meaningful duty and that it can't be helped. Teresa says, I see. You must have been very lonely, Andrea. Teresa thinks, although she's a tower inhabitant, she's no different from an ordinary human. Teresa listened to one of the guards saying, hey, we're supposed to prepare the next batch of sacrifices. Select one from each room. If no one is selected, you will all participate in the ritual together. Struggle as much as you can if you want to live for even a little longer. All of them gets really scared after hearing that and says, again. I don't want to. No, I Rufus. One of them says, wait. Yeah, let's send that kid out first. She's not even human, right? Teresa says, wait, stop. Don't make such rash decisions. Get a hold of your Celsus. One of the guards is enjoying seeing all this and says, good, struggle more. The Lord is even more delighted. And another guard is confused to see what is happening. Jin Hyuk says, I volunteer. Any objections? His cellmate are also confused and says, no, go ahead. They tie him up and some other people as well, they all are walking to somewhere. He bring out a pill out of his mouth and throw it in the water system right beside them. One of the guards sees him, he starts to whistle. Jin Hyuk thinks, the necessary preparations are now complete. Teresa should have been captured and be behind bars by now. And considering her personality, she would definitely volunteer herself. It's my first time progressing through this section like this, but it's going rather smoothly. The hidden quest was generated, just as planned. A hidden quest window appears saying, Contents, the fanatics who recklessly take the lives of others are regarded as villains. The adaptive stat will rise by 0.1 for every fanatic that is eliminated. The adaptive stat will rise by 30 if the cult leader is eliminated. Jin Hyuk thinks, I was always given one of the stats as a reward but. To think they'd give me the adaptive stat. We see a lot of them are shouting saying, oh, lord. The glory. The advent of glory. Some players are hanging with chains tied to the pillars. Jin Hyuk thinks, there are so many of them. One of prisoners puke by just seeing all this, Jin Hyuk thinks, this place isn't really bad enough to puke. Bearing out the next batch of sacrifices. They lower the gate, and ask prisoners to go ahead. They untie their hands. One of them says, glory to the Lord divine joy. The Lord desires sacrifices that tremble in fear. Jin Hyuk is surprised to see something. One of them says in a mic. What sacrifice does the Lord enjoy most, gentlemen? A noble sacrifice. A noble sacrifice. In that case take a good look. This woman sacrificed herself to save a child she barely even knew. Teresa is also hanging to one of the pillars. The one with the mic says, what a noble act. The of this noble woman will adorn the final of this live sacrifice ritual. A noble sacrifice. Jin Hyuk walks out and says, I was gonna put an end to this floor after raising my stats, but. He uses Maitrian's ancient grimoire. Escaping from the fifth floor ruler's restraints. Freeing everything that had been sealed due to the restraints. Jin Hyuk gets really anger and uses element of fire and says, fuck that. He can use all his skills for 10 minutes. He uses the element of fire on the pill that he thrown in water system earlier. He activates red pill, blaze. It blows up everything around him. They all get scared and says, what the could that be a skill? Impossible. Skills should be unusable here due to the Lord's commandment. He bring out his dagger and throws it toward the chains that ties Teresa. Dagger hits the chain and cuts them, she starts to fall and Jin Hyuk grabs her in mid-air. He checks her heartbeat. He gets really angry and bring out his full power and says, raising stats or whatever, I don't, give a shit. And he bring R a black pill. And says, I'll exterminate you all. He breaks the pill using his teeth a message popped up saying, using black pill dark. Unfolding black barrier. 
Some huge clouds of smoke appears they all can't see a thing. Jin Hyuk bring out his twin dragon swords. And activates the grave of swords. They say, shit where is he? One of them throw his weapon and start to pray saying, Oh, God of darkness, please answer my prayers. Oh, almighty demon king god, please guide use. They some intense energy and says, this energy is. The demon king god's energy. They all gets excited and says. He answered our prayer. Jin Hyuk cut them all down. A message popped up saying, the villain has been disposed of, the adaptive stat has increased by 0.1. He kill some more of them and his adaptive stat keep increasing. After that we see that Teresa is laying unconscious in middle of all this. We see a flashback where she was protecting the little girl. One of prisoners says, we'll send out that brat who isn't even human first. Teresa says, how is that fair? She's still a child. They gets really angry and says, child, that thing's just an NPC. Hand it over. Teresa hits them and says, you must think I'm easy to handle just because we can't use skills here. But don't misunderstand, I'm confident I can win even if all of you face me at once. They says, then are you saying you'll be the one to choose? Teresa says, yes, you're right. I'll be the one to choose. After acting like a goody two shoes, you're just like the rest. Teresa sees toward the child and smiles. And says, I'll be back. Guard gets really excited and says, what a noble sacrifice. After that we see that a lot of the cult member are dead. Teresa wakes up. Jin Hyuk says, you pushed yourself pretty far again. She smiles and says, I knew you'd come. He cut the chain and free her. He obtained 23 adaptive stats. He thinks, now as long as I defeat the cult leader and escape. Teresa say, I have somewhere, I have to go first, Jin Hyuk. They open all the cells, she gets back to her cell and says, Andrea. Andrea says, Teresa. She hugs Teresa and starts to cry. Teresa says, thank god you're safe. Jin Hyuk is confused to see that and says, what's going on here? Teresa says, Andrea is an inhabitant of the tower. They were dragged here by the devotees and forced to either become a sacrifice or become one of them. Only two and a half minutes are for the effect of Maitreyan's ancient grimoire's effects to end. Jin Hyuk thinks, I can't believe she made me use my precious 10 minutes on this. Wait, if she's an inhabitant of the tower. He give an evil smile. He goes near Andrea and says, Andrea, right. Jin Hyuk says, why didn't you become a devotee? All the inhabitants here are madly faithful to God. Andrea says, I didn't want to believe that there was something like a god. Even the villagers in my hometown sold me because I had no parents. If there really is something like a god, then they would be responsible for creating this despair-filled hell. So if this was God's plan, then I'm sure he's a Dutchbag. Jin Hyuk says, I'm not sure if this will console you, but I'm similar to you. I was abandoned in an orphanage soon as I was born and grew on my own. Living without parents is a difficult thing. Teresa thinks, Jin Hyuk is talking about himself. But I had to keep living on. Resenting and despairing doesn't change a thing. Andrea says, but, as long as the cult leader is here. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, the cult leader is here. Let's do this, then. I'll get rid of the cult leader for you. So try living in this world free from the douchebag's restraints. He activated Brand to Tribulation. And in exchange become my comrade, okay. He puts Brand seal on her and says, all done. I'll be in you care from now on Andrea. Teresa says, wait, he didn't do anything like that to me. Jin Hyuk says, let's go defeat the cult leader. A message popped up saying, the duration of Maitreyan's ancient grimoire has ended. Sealing all skills. Cult leader says, let there be joy. Cult leader is about open an evil looking item, and says, glory to our god. Jin Hyuk says, the cult leader is completely different from the other fantics. He can't use skills like us, but he's just as strong as Breaker. Teresa says, then can't you just defeat him easily by using skills like you did earlier? Jin Hyuk says, I was going to. But the time limit ran out, so I can't use my any more skills. Teresa say, oh, I see. Jin Hyuk says, I can do something about it if we fight hand to hand. 
But the divine artifact he uses is the most dangerous risk factor. Teresa says, divine artifact. Filth eating urn. It's a divine artifact that kills a designated target with absolute certainty. Teresa says, absolute certainty. Then does that mean we can't win? I'll try to block it at least once. It takes a while to reuse, so your role is the most important. You must subdue the cult leader before the spell activates again. We're here. Are you ready? They both says, yes. Jin Hyuk says, keep this in mind. As long as you remember what I told you. You'll definitely see the right path. They enter the leader's room. Leader sees them and says, the perpetrators who made a mess of the ritual. Came to me themselves. How interesting. Jin Hyuk says, where's the one who was with you? Leader says, he left a while ago. He said he'd obtained everything he needed. Jin Hyuk thinks, he sure is quick-witted. I wanted to get rid of him here. I don't know how you broke free form the god's restraints and used your skills, but. He removes his hoodie and says, I will definitely offer you as a sacrifice and make you atone for this atrocity. Teresa sees the artifact and thinks, that must be the divine artifact Jin Hyuk spoke of. Jin Hyuk jumps toward leader and says, here we go Teresa. Teresa jumps from the other side. Jin Hyuk kicks him, he blocked his kick with his arm. Teresa kicks him on the leg, he loses his balance, Jin Hyuk kicks him on his head. Jin Hyuk shouts and says, now. Gag him. They tie his mouth so he can't speak. Jin Hyuk jumps toward him. Leader throws, Teresa away. She hits wall. Leader's punch is about to hit Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk spins and dodge attack and punches him in face and uppercut. Jin Hyuk says, I beat someone 10 times larger than you barehanded before. You think I'd lose in a hand-to-hand -hand fight? Teresa gets up and says, as expected of Jin Hyuk. Cult leader starts to laugh and says, no bad. Very good. You're the greatest sacrifice. Leader says, then, I will use you as a sacrifice first. Bateria. Teo Pa. Joy to our god. Some dark energy come toward Jin Hyuk. Teresa sees that and thinks, that's the spell Jin Hyuk told us about. Keep this in mid, Teresa. This technique has a long cooldown time. Take a good look at the urn's eyes. You'll be able to estimate its cooldown time by doing that. And, I'll leave the rest to you. The spell hits Jin Hyuk he cough out blood. Teresa is shocked to see that and says, no. A message popped up saying, you have died. The demon king's curse is disappearing due to your death. Leader gets excited and says, what a fresh sacrifice. I'm sure the demon king god will also be happy. Teresa says, wake up Jin Hyuk, open your eyes. Leader says, are you pained by your comrade's death? She a mixed angry and sad look on her face. Leader says, you can't call it a proper sacrifice. He kicks Teresa and says, if there's not enough pain. Andrea shouts Teresa. Leader sees to Andrea and says, you were there, huh? He is about to grab her and says, come here. Teresa jumps on him throws him using a backflip. Teresa says, I will never let you take Andrea, at the very least. Looks like you still had some fight left in you. Leader gets excited and says, good. After that we see the dead body. Teresa is being beat up. Teresa thinks, fighting him head on without my skills is impossible. Leader jumps towards her and says, glory to our god. Teresa dodges his punches by jumping backward. She picks up a broken piece of something. She destroy the lights with them. Leader says, you think darkness is your ally. How ridiculous. Teresa hides and thinks, alright, his visibility should be restricted. I have to take that urn away from him first. I have no chance of winning if he activates that spell again. Leader finds her punches. She dodged the punch by jumping aside and thinks, how did he find me so quickly? Leader says, you're quick on your feet. But I simply have to find you again. Your radiant blonde hair stand out even in the darkness. After I knock you out, I'm going to look for the hiding child. And when you wake up, I'll have you watch as she gets sacrificed to the urn. With your own two eyes, she gets hit by a powerful punch. She hold herself and start to run away. Leader says, you're sturdy as well. Endless glory to our god. Hit as best you can. It's only a matter of time. Until I find you. Teresa thinks, I can't waste the precious time Jin Hyuk bought for me. 
If I fall here, even Andrea will. She picks up another broken piece. Leader sees her hair, and says, I've changed my mind. I'll let you live if you swear to become a devotee. Yes, I'll make you the demon king god Saintess. So why don't you come out with that child? If you don't, oh. We see that she not there only here hears her hanging there. It was a distraction. She come from behind him and about to grab Urn. We see flashback, where we see cuts of her own hair and thinks compared to Jinhyuk's sacrifice. My hair is. Nothing. Leader see toward her. She thinks, his reaction speed is. Fast. He turned toward her ready to punch. Andrea throws something of Leader's head. He gets distracted, and says, cheeky brat. Teresa grabs the urn, and says, nice timing Andrea. Leader says, what are you going to do after taking that? Are you going to appoint yourself as a sacrifice or something? We see another flashback where Jinhyuk says, oh, and could you keep this in mind, just in case. Memorize this, Pateria de Amarius. Teo pa verisio. Teresa says, what's that? It's a rune language spell. Use it at just the right time. The right time. You'll know when the time comes. I know now. This is the right time. She says, Pateria de Amarius. She thinks Jinhyuk knew about this. Leader is shocked to hear that and says, how do you know ancient rune language? Teresa thinks, that I could do this in you place. She says, a veteran taught me. Teo pa verisio. Divine artifact gets activated and some dark energy goes toward leader. Leader says, wait, impossible. Demon king god, that dark energy kills the leader. A message popped up saying, the boss of the fifth floor has been defeated. She picks up the Andrea and says, are you hurt Andrea? Andrea says, no. Andrea points toward Jinhyuk and says, but, that Opa. She says, I did it, Jinhyuk wake up. I'm sorry for following you as I please. I won't do it again. So please wake up. She starts to cry really hard. A message popped up saying, the demon king god's authority had disappeared due to the absence of a boss monster. Lifting skill usage restrictions. Blessing of the star, activated, and a message popped up saying, you can revive once, as long as the death is not instant. He gets up Teresa and Andrea gets really happy. Jinhyuk says, dying sure is, extremely painful. But, why are you crying again? You were crying in the maze too. I can't help it, they just flow out. It still hurts there. I'm sorry. But why did you cut your hair Teresa? Teresa points towards the message and says, Jinhyuk, why isn't the notice for the next floor opening not popped up when we've defeated the boss? Jinhyuk points towards the exit and says, the objective of the fifth floor is strictly to escape. In other words, this floor will be considered to be cleared if we pass through that door. However, there's something else that's unique about this floor. The unique point of the fifth floor, is that the boss monster seat can be inherited. Teresa asks inherited. Jinhyuk says, since defeating the boss is not the clearing condition. The owner of this divine artifact urn becomes the new master of the floor. And I'd like to entrust that seat, to Andrea. Teresa is surprised and says, what? To Andrea. Jinhyuk says, Andrea, I promised you that I'd let you live in a world without the cult leader right. He give her urn and says, here, live as you like this time. Live in a way that no one can make you unhappy. A message popped up saying, the seat of master is being inherited. Commencing rapid growth in accordance with the ruler's authority. Teres is surprised to see that and says, Andrea grew up. Andrea immediately become an adult lady. Andrea smiles and bow down in front of Jinhyuk and says, My name is Andrea, the master of this desolate land. Every being on this floor including myself will follow your will. A message popped up saying, The master of the fifth floor Andrea, swears allegiance to you. You are the first to have a boss monster swear allegiance to you. The feat is being recorded in the Hall of Fame. Jinhyuk puts his hand on Andrea's head and says, Live with a smile on your face from now on. Andreas hugs Teresa and says, Teresa, come visit me often. Teresa says, of course. They exit the fifth floor and a message popped up saying, the sixth floor of the Tower of Trials is opening. Time remaining to conquer the next floor, 90 days. Takoyaki says in the comments, shouldn't every president in the world give Kong Jinhyuk an award or something at this point. 
Stagnant Water Identifier says, everything about Kong Jinhyuk. He's a stagnant water fr. What a legend. Teresa Fan Song Chan says, he has amazing chemistry with Teresa death to Kong Jinhyuk. In a newspaper we see that they all beat up that player who sold the return pills. Everyone is celebrating in the world saying, as a celebration for clearing the fifth floor, the beer is on the director. A lot of people are watching his video where he cleared fifth floor. Chun is also seeing that. Chun grabs his own head and says, Kong Jinhyuk, you're not even giving me any room to chase after you. Someone knocks on Chun's door, and says, excuse me. Chun doesn't answer and, the person at the door break the door. He a blonde man with a white mask on his face, he points his sword toward Chun. Chun bring out his sword and says, who the hell are you? That man says, my name is Gawain. How unexpected. It's a bit narrow for unknown's home. I expected something more classy. Chun is confused and angry to hear that and says, unknown. What are you? Chun thinks, someone who'd do such a thing, is Kong Jinhyuk. Chun gets really angry and says, Kong Jinhyuk, the foo. We see that Chun's apartment blow up. After that we see that Jinhyuk says, my ears itchy. Alice is shopping she says, from there to there, I'll buy them all. Shopkeeper says, pardon, all of them. Jinhyuk says, for God's sake inflation's gonna come because of you. Alice is standing on a lot of gold and says, I don't know who that is, but let them come. As payment for educating Andrea from time to time, I let Alice enjoy cultural life. Though it's mostly revenge spending. Jinhyuk says, how to live is a booze, a boss's attitude. A boss's daily schedule, and overall knowledge one must have as a ruler. She's teaching them all to her. You could call it an introduction to boss's course. I'm sure she'll become indispensable for my plan someday. Jinhyuk's level 32 now, and he has 1,283,288 coins. Jinhyuk thinks, I'm growing so quickly, no matter how many times I see it. Including what I earned on the fifth floor, my adaptability stat is now 78. Even the rankers who grind dungeons with the support of their guilds should be around level 30. If the rift stat is taken into account, there aren't any players with better stats than me at the moment. And the item I obtained by clearing the fifth floor. I can't believe I obtained this. I still can't believe it. Boundary bending mirror, growth type, rank, over rank. Connects to anywhere on the 10th floor and below upon use, cooldown, 90 days, duration, 30 minutes. The floor level that the play can connect to and the duration they can do so for will as they grow. Can be accompanied by one other. Jinhyuk says, I'll have much to prepare from now on. In that case, Jinhyuk calls guild leader, he picks up the call and says, yes, director. It's rare for you to call me first. Jinhyuk says, I have something I need you to do. Are there any issues? Guild leader says, the issue is that things are going too well. You've become so famous that it's harder to find a channel without you in it. There are so many people wanting to apply because they saw you, that work is about to come to a screeching halt. Jinhyuk says, there are that many people. Guild leader says, there are hundreds flowing in each day. That aside what can I help you with? Jinhyuk says, I'll just send you a list, so reserve them all. Guild leader says, a list. Yes, also, schedule a meeting with fighting father. Jinhyuk goes to a cafe to meet someone. Then other person says, have you finished replenishing your carbohydrates? I've been waiting for your call, player Kong Jinhyuk. He is fighting father Kim Kate. Jinhyuk says, the last time we met was at the test, so it really has been a while. Jinhyuk thinks, it sure is nice to have power. The big-headed Kim Kate from the test. Is now this polite? Jinhyuk says, I'm sorry about our deal regarding the Mandragora route. I've been a bit busy climbing the tower. Kim get angry to air that but keep the smile on his face and say, of course you were. Jinhyuk says, lighten up. That's why I showed up. As a form of my apology, I'd like to change the conditions of our deal. From what is heard, Fighting Father has around 10 ranked dungeons on the third floor. Kim says, that's right. Then let's just go with you giving me one of them. So what you're saying is, instead of the original deal of 10 dungeons on the first floor, you want us to give you on a ranked dungeon on the third floor. 
Jin Hyuk says, yes. Kim says, so you want to raise the condition on our end. Despite you not having even told us the antidote recipe you promised yet. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, yes. That's exactly right. Kim says, play Kong Jin Hyuk. On what grounds are you suggesting such a deal? Jin Hyuk says, increase in inflation rate, price of raw materials, and labor cost. Kim gets angry says, we are not a charity group. I didn't come here to listen to your absurd demands. Looks like I wasted my time. Kim says, I will consider this as something that never happened. Jin Hyuk says, the third floor labyrinth, great temple, that you guild possesses. You failed in every single attempt to conquer it, correct? Kim says, how did you know that? Jin Hyuk says, I'm also a guildmaster. I can acquire information like this anytime I want. I heard you're continuously challenging the great temple that you have monopolized. But your reputation within the guild is a disaster due to your continuous failures. Won't your position as team leader be in danger at this rate? So I will clear that labyrinth for you. After that we see at the Austria Vienna. Jin Hyuk and Alice are watching the performance. Alice says, what a beautiful performance. I'm completely lost for words. A message popped up saying, you have appreciated a masterpiece influencing an era. You have completed going to a concert seven times. The condition has been fulfilled. You have successfully copied the skill perfect pitch rank F. You have successfully copied the skill understanding of instruments rank F. After that they eat dinner. Alice says to a waiter, bring me two more bottles of your most expensive wine. Jin Hyuk says, I should be able to finish it all by today and go back to Korea. A message popped saying, one eat at Michelin three-star restaurants. Two observe the chef making food. Three make different genres of dishes. Alice says, contractor, I'm not saying I don't like it. But why are we enjoying leisure like this? Jin Hyuk says, it's all for a reason just enjoy it while you can. Alice says, that's fine with me. Jin Hyuk says, Tower of Trials 6th floor elven forest. The elves that are apathetic toward foreigners simply guard the beautiful forest. The next floor will open simply by spending 90 days on the floor. Most players simply mark their attendance on the 6th floor and go level up on some other floor. However, every single floor has an objective, as well as opportunities that Un can acquire. I'll go there fully prepared. He received a video call from Kim. Kim says, it's ready. He appears somewhere and thinks, teleportation magic is pretty nice. The advancement temple is located on the third floor of the Tower of Trials. It is the most popular and flourishing agency for players first advancement. Most people come to see this place as priestess to change their class. Without even realizing that there is a heinous labyrinth deep underground. Kim come to him and says, you're here. Jin Hyuk says, you're just in time, team leader Kim. Kim says, of course, since this is very important. They're the members participating in today's raid. One of them says, it's an honor to meet you. I am the captain of the second raid team, Li Yangguan. Young Wan says, I've watched every single one of your YouTube videos. Jin Hyuk thinks, Lee Young Wan is a rather famous raid captain of Fighting Father. A girl says, I'm sub damage dealer Ha Yansu. I'm a huge fan. Another one says, I'm the raid team's main healer. Please give me an autograph. Kim see that and thinks, this isn't some fan meeting. Kim thinks, even super elites of our guild are reduced to mere fans before Kong Jin Hyuk. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Kim says, Lee young is the raid captain in name, but I will give all authority to player Kong Jin Hyuk. You can also have whatever that comes out from the labyrinth. But just one thing, please succeed in the raid. Jin Hyuk thinks, I was planning on backstabbing him if he tried anything funny, but I guess that's not necessary. Jin Hyuk says, understood. Then let's meet at the entrance in 30 minutes after finishing preparations. After that we see that Jin Hyuk is climbing the temple stairs, he reaches top a beautiful girl is standing there, she is first advancement priestess. You must possess a class to become stronger. I ask you, which path will you pursue? A message popped up saying revealing classes. Jin Hyuk thinks, I've tried all the popular ones with my sub accounts. The path I will pursue, arrange them in order of unpopularity. Jin Hyuk says, it's unpopular and hard to play. This is perfect. 
Jin Haik thinks about Chun and says, back in the museum, and in the labyrinth. He had a lot of pride in his barrier skills, didn't he? Then I should trample him more thoroughly. A message popped up saying, you have accepted the barrier master, advancement quest. He sees some people standing and thinks, what's with them? One of them says, is Kim Kate a fighting father here? They are all from Samurai Guild. Their leader says, let's talk. Kim says, why are you people here again? I told you before, I will not allow you to participate in the Great Temple Raid. Samurai leader says, team leader Kim. Do you have any idea how many people are disappointed by fighting father's continuous raid failures? Rather than holding onto a labyrinth beyond your capabilities. Isn't it better to conquer it together for the sake of humanity? Kim team member talk to each other saying, hey, hey look over there. It's the samurai guild, that had been showing enormous growth lately. I heard they were growing like Karzi with their strong teamwork and information gathering capability. Wouldn't they be able to clear the great temple? Kim thinks, they're even sweeping public opinion. This isn't good. Jin Hyuk says, you sure are popular, team leader Kim. Samurai thinks sees Kong Jin Hyuk and says, that man. It's Kong Jin Hyuk. The Korean ranker. The Korean S rank, Kong Jin Hyuk. Could he have some sort of relation to fighting father? I've been listening, but something bothered me. Samurai says, what are you talking about? Kong Jin Hyuk says, you've been saying how we'll fail because we're lacking in strength. But from what I can see, your forces are no different. One of them gets angry and says, you son of A, how dare you? Samurai stops him and says, calm down, he's an S rank. Samurai says to Kong Jin Hyuk that, are you saying we're lacking in strength? Jin Hyuk says, not lacking, but not even up to standard. Kim's team member thinks, since he said they're no different from us. Are we also no up to standard? Samurai says, I doesn't matter what you say. We have a stent that can't even be compared to you guys. Jin Hyuk asks strength. Samurai says, we have. A real veteran who's climbed all the way up to the 30th floor of the Tower of Trails. Jin Hyuk is surprised to hear that and thinks, 30th floor. Kim's team starts to says, did you hear that? They have someone who climbed up to the 30th floor. No wonder they've been rising up so quickly. Samurai says, we already have information about territories that no one even knows of. Whatever traps there are and strategies we need, we can prepare for them. We will use this knowledge and become the first heroes who save humanity from the Tower of Trials. And it wouldn't be bad if we become rich in the process, either. Jin Hyuk activates Eye of Gluttony. And his words are the truth. Jin Hyuk thinks, that means he believes that is the truth, at least. Then I'll just find, the one who spouted such bullshit. He uses Eye of Gluttony. On all the members of Samurai Guild. He found him. His name is Takeshi level 27. Takeshi has a skill called Hemi Foresight. Jin Hyuk thinks, a half-baked foresight that can see into the upper floors based on its mastery. He gets really excited and think, things are getting interesting. We see a flashback where Samurai says, should I actually got it right? The trap really didn't activate. You're a real one. Takeshi thinks, no one knows that the ability I happened to acquire is half-baked. I thought I'd be able to get better treatment if I hit it as something whole. No, I was sure of it. How is it a lie if no one knows? Takeshi see toward Jin Hyuk and thinks, but this guy. Why is he staring only at me? Jin Hyuk says, I don't know who it is, but he must be amazing if they rose up all the way to the 30th floor. Information from above the 10th floor hasn't been leaked anywhere, has it? Samurai says, you know you stuff. Information is the most powerful strength in this era, why don't you just let us accompany you obediently? Kim says, you think I'd believe such bullshit. Jin Hyuk stops him and says, you should have told us that earlier, then, was there even a need for us to talk for this long? Let's head inside together. Finally, someone who is can actually communicate with. Samurai says, stop frowning, team leader Kim. We'll at least raise your reputation if we manage to clear it. Let's go. Kim says, what is the meaning of this? How could you let them go in with us? What's gonna become of us if we just let them in? After all our protests. Jin Hyuk says, team leader Kim, you wouldn't have let them in if I didn't concede to them, right? 
Kim says, of course. I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Jin Hyuk says, that's not good. Look at how much they want to become heroes. Shouldn't we at least give them the opportunity to experience? Whether it's easy or not to play heroes by laying their hand on someone's food. Kim thinks, this guy what the hell is he planning now? Lee says, we'll be off as well, team leader. A message popped up saying, you have entered the labyrinth grade temple. Guild member of Samurai Guild says, look at this. They're players who challenge the labyrinth first. How miserable if there no way to turn them back. No you can just consider yourself a goner if you lock eyes with it. Don't worry, I've already thought up a countermeasure. He bring out a shield of Perseus. Who you really have prepared for everything. Jin Hyuk thinks, they must have used a lot of money. I'm not sure if they even know how to use it properly though. A message popped up saying, the condition has been fulfilled. The second perk for the one who first conquered the tower has arrived. He thinks, a perk at a time like this. We getting my first class advancement quest and entering the labyrinth the trigger. You have acquired moon imprint. This ability will display its effect once the first class advancement is complete. Moon imprint rank immeasurable. Description, reduces activation time of all barriers by 25% and increase the effects of all barriers by 30%. Another message, popped up saying, if you find every lost language buried within the tower long ago, then you can learn the nameless barriers. Locations where you can find the lost languages will be shown upon you first class advancement. He sees that surprise look on his face and says, lost languages. I've seen them as I climbed the tower, but I could never find any clues for them. So all of this is the reward given to the one who first conquered the tower. He gets really excited and says, there's still something that I don't know about the tower. They prepare for combat. A gigantic cobra appear in front of them. Maintain formation. We'll break down its spirit. Main damage dealers, attack. They use fire attacks on the cobra. Leader of the samurai jumps activates his shield and hits the snack. Lee sees that and says, amazing. They're so amazing that, there's nothing for us to do. Damn ho pathetic. Jin Hyuk thinks, these fighting father guys still have a long way to go. They're demoralized just that. From what I can see, they wouldn't even last on minute against one Alice, even that's generous. We see that on the tower of trials fifth floor. Alice says, no, how many times do I have to say that know how you do it? I'll show you again, so watch carefully. While looking down like this, okay. I command you. Submit. Andrea says, you really are different from just the feel alone. Alice says, of course, you and I are fundamentally different. If you get it, then try again. Andrea says, yes ma'am. They say captain, which way should we go? He sees toward Takeshi and smiles. Takeshi thinks, left, which is bright and looks safe. Or right, which looks like you could get ambushed at any moment. My foresight didn't show me anything like this. What to do? Takeshi is about say left. Jin Hyuk says, I see, so it's left. As expected of a veteran. Most people would have chosen the dangerous looking right path, thinking it was some sort of reverse psychology trick, right? You're well aware that people who trust shallow reverse psychology tricks are sent to hell in this labyrinth. I don't know who you are, but I'll trust you to carry us. They goes left the safe looking path. Jin Hyuk thinks, his foresight is poorer than I expected. To think he'd choose to go left. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Since it's hell regardless of which way you go. They see an orange laser and say, what's that? It that a laser. It's coming this way. Samurai asks Takeshi. Takeshi says, isn't this just a simple trap? Don't worry about it too much. A lot more laser spawns. Samurai Guild says, what the hell? They all activate skill mana infusion. They're coming. Block them. Their mana infusion and shields dose not work. One of the laser cuts one their member's arm. Samurai says, shit, they're getting through. Infuse more mana. He says, Takeshi stay behind me. Takeshi thinks, damn it. This is all because of that bastard Kong Jin Hyuk. But you won't come out unscathed in this situation either. A message popped up saying, beginning the barrier master first advancement quest. He makes some hand signs. And activates inadequate physical barrier. A message popped up saying, you have fulfilled the first condition of the advancement quest. 
A strong barrier surrounds Jin Hyuk and Fight Father's members. Kim's party members are surprised to see that, Lee says, what in the world? One other member says, it's my first time seeing something like this. Jin Hyuk thinks, I guess this is the limit until the advancement. Well, it doesn't matter, since I fulfilled the first advancement condition, the activation of a barrier. Jin Hyuk says, stay inside my barrier. A girl says, player Kong Jin Hyuk. Where are you going? Jin Hyuk says, I have to go get some items. You get an item if you evade these lasers 300 times in a row. They are shocked to air that and says, what? Feel free to challenge it alongside me. It's not as hard as it looks. As long as you follow the beat. He jumps around and spins around. And says, it's not that difficult. It's like he is dancing. Lee sees him and thinks, unbelievable. The guys from the samurai guild are screaming and in complete disarray, but. This man is smiling. We see flashback where Lee says, team leader Kim. Isn't a bit too much a loss on our side if we yield everything to Kong Jin Hyuk. Kim says, you must still be too young to understand, Lee. There are times when you need to accept things, even while putting up with losses. Stepping aside so you don't get in the way is also a valid strategy if you can't crush them with certainty. Jin Hyuk is still calmly dodging all the lasers. Lee sees him and thinks, this must be why the team leader said something like that. Jin Hyuk reaches the end of the laser path, a message popped up saying, you have cleared the hidden mission. Jin Hyuk gets a ruined stone and thinks, a reward is the best thing after working up a sweat. A message popped saying, you have obtained burning flame. We see that Samurai Guild one of them has lost his arm. And a lot of other members are injured. One of them says, Yoshida is dead. Samurai leader says, all of you get up. Confirm the number of injured and deceased first. Jin Hyuk sees that and says, my, a lot of you are injured. This barrier was made to hold only 30 people, so I couldn't let any of you in. Samurai leader gets angry and says, you piece of shit. You're all perfectly fine. Did you already know about the trap? Jin Hyuk says, yes, I knew, is that a problem? Samurai leader says, is that a problem? Are you seriously saying that? People are dead. Jin Hyuk says, I heeded to you tantrums and let you come with us. Since you were babbling about having a 30th floor veteran, you have no right to be angry. Did I ask you to come with us? Trash. Samurai says, son of a. Do you seriously think the Samurai Guild will let you get away with this? Jin Hyuk says, you gotta be kidding me. Is this seriously the time for you to be saying shit like that? A message popped up saying, special conditions fulfilled. 1. Death of more than 50% of the raid party members due to the traps. 2. Acquisition of burning flame. The guardian of the great temple is awakening. Samurai leader says, shit, what is it now? A huge fire snake appears in front of them, it is called fire drinking snake. Jin Hyuk says, stay on your toes, this is where it really begins. If you have something to argue about, do it after you stay alive. It is a really big snake made of fire. Its stats window appears saying, fire drinking snake. Level 55. Description, a pet snake that Medusa adores, its entire body is made up of fire, and physical addicts are ineffective against it. Samurai leader says, the formation isn't ready yet. If you've realized you place, then why don't you hand it over now? Samurai says, hand what over? Jin Hyuk says, don't play dumb. I'm talking about that shield. Wouldn't it better to give it to me if you're not even gonna use it properly? Samurai says, don't bullshit me. What kind of lunatic would just hand over a divine artifact? Jin Hyuk says, is that so? Snake gets ready to attack. Jin Hyuk uses glacier formation and says, then I guess it can't be helped. I'll just take it off your corpse. Samurai says, wait. Snake uses Spear of Fury. A hug fireball is coming toward them, they say dodge it. Samurai says, this is a one-way tunnel. There's nowhere to dodge morons. Samurai activates a barrier and says, Takeshi stay behind me. Samurai leader says, Takeshi. Survive no matter what. After that we see that, they all are burned to crisp. Shield falls down on the ground. Samurai leader is also dead. Jin Hyuk cover his finger in ice and picks up shield and says, I told you so. That's not how you use it. 
We see that Takashi survived the attack, Jin Hyuk says, what good is a divine artifact if the wielder is crap? Don't you think so too? Takashi is just a little injured, and says, just who? Who the hell are you? How can you act as if you know everything? Jin Hyuk says, why? You can't see the answer with that foresight you're so proud of. Takashi is surprised to hear that and says, impossible. You saw through my skill. Takashi says, please answer me. What is your relationship with this tower? I don't see a single future related to you. Snake is right behind Jin Hyuk ready to attack. Jin Hyuk says, it's a bit embarrassing to say it myself. Snack uses the same attack as before. Jin Hyuk uses glacier formation. Jin Hyuk gets really angry and says, how dare you start roaring. When people are talking, Jin Hyuk uses glacial prison, which traps the snake in a hug mountain of ice. Takashi is surprised to see that. Jin Hyuk says, you asked what relationship I have with the tower. I'm actually an exiled deity of the tower. Takashi says, deity. Takashi thinks, the absolute beings that rule over the upper floors of the tower. Is that how it is? That's why his ability far surpass human capability. Takashi says, please forgive my grave sin. Of not recognizing such a being. Jin Hyuk thinks, deity, my ass. Why would I be going up one floor at a time if that was true? I would have made an elevator or something. Jin Hyuk says, I look like this at the moment because I was exiled into a human's body. But it looks like you may be of use when I conquer the upper floors in the future. Takashi says, me, thank you for thinking so highly of me. Jin Hyuk says, so, would you like to conquer the tower alongside me? Takashi thinks, is this a once in a lifetime opportunity? To be chosen by a deity. Takashi says, thank you very much. It is an honor. I will do my best. Jin Hyuk says, good, in that case, I will grant you a stigmata as a token of our pact. It is the you burn to death if you betray stigmata. Jin Hyuk activates Brank to tribulation. It is still not the right time, so you must never expose this secret. Understood. Takashi says, yes, go and carry out the tasks I've assigned you. Jin Hyuk deactivates his barrier. Lee says, he defeated the monster that wiped out the samurai guild. All by himself. Lee says, thank you, player Kong Jin Hyuk. We all managed to survive thanks to you. It's a little frustrating though. I don't think we were of much help to you. Jin Hyuk says, I appreciate your gratitude. But it's too early to talk as if everything is over. She's not the type to stank for the death of her pet. Lee says, no way. All forces, prepare for combat. You mustn't look. One of them says, pardon. We mustn't look at what? Medusa grabs his head to turns it toward her. He turns into a stone statue. Medusa break him. Medusa says, disgraceful humans. Not only did you invade my temple. She gets really angry and says, but you even laid you filthy hands on my child. She release a large amount of mana they says, such overpowering mana. Lee says, all of you get yourself together. We've all gathered for this moment. Lee activates collective leadership and says, attack. A message popped up saying, fear resistance and moral of party members increase by 20%. One of them uses lightning bolt. He misses Medusa says, pathetic. Where are you attacking? She hits Lee with her tail and says, do you think? I'm some moron who can only use petrification. One of them says, what was that sound? Did you get hit? Damn it, I didn't know what's happening with my eyes closed. Meduse is behind her ready to attack. She says, is everyone alright? Jin Hyuk hits Medusa with a shield in her face. She falls to ground. Jin Hyuk says, from here on out, please stay back. This one is mine. She is surprised to see that Jin Hyuk is not turning into stone even after looking into her eyes. She says, how are you not turning into stone, after locking eyes with me? Jin Hyuk activates Eye of Gluttony. A message popped up saying, you are immune to petrification. Jin Hyuk says, isn't it because you're weak? Medusa gets excited and says, what an ill-mannered human. She actives, Gorgon's Domain. Magic attack speed increases by 30% and movement seek decreases by 15%. She says, I won't let you have a quick death. She says, I'll melt you whole. She activates Acidic Fluid. Jin Hyuk activates Sword Demon King's Steps. His speed increases by 70%.
Jin Hyuk dodge all her attacks and says, how do you expect to hit me with slow attacks like those? She activates Viper's strike. A message popped up saying, the divine artifact answers to its master's call. Increasing physical and magical defense by 300%. Medusa gets angry and thinks, Eve after using Gorgon's domain. My strike was deflected. He hits her on the forehead and in the stomach some ruin letter appears where Jin Hyuk has hit her. He activates ceiling coffin barrier. He says, the final condition required to advance to barrier master. He traps her inside a barrier. He says, successfully trap a boss monster in a barrier. She is tied with chains. She says, you thinks, you can trap me. With a glass wall like this. She breaks the barrier. Jin Hyuk thinks, would you look at that. She attacks him a lot of times using her tails. He dodges them all by running to a side. He activates giant's clutch. He breaks some big piece of wall and throws them at here. She breaks them using here tail and says. How barbaric. Something like this won't work, so. He is throwing more and more rocks at her. Medusa gets really angry and says, stop throwing those damn things at me. She thinks, wait, what's going on? At a glance, it looks like he's just barraging me, but. I don't feel any killing intent in his attacks. A big magic circle appears on the ground under her. Jin Hyuk says, you caught on a bit too late. She thinks, he drew runes using, the ashes from the corpses. He activates a 3-star barrier ceiling coffin. A powerful binding force shackles the target. Jin Hyuk says, you won't be able to break out of this one. I put a lot of effort into it. She says, release me this instant. Jin Hyuk says, stop wasting your strength and stay still. A quest window appears saying barrier master advancement quest. Trap a boss monster in a barrier. You have fulfilled the third. Condition to advance to barrier master since it's difficult to trap a boss monster alive most people just trap a goblin boss on the first floor but what if you succeed in trapping a high ranking boss monster you have successfully trapped a boss monster of the highest rank available in the advancement quest you have advanced to a superior class of barrier master rune interpreter a message popped up saying rune interpreter Description, you are able realize the essence of runes, reinterpret the, and create barriers that have never existed before. Barriers made by a rune interpreter are twice as effective as regular barriers. Jin Hyuk get really excited and shouts, yes. Jin Hyuk thinks, in new a hidden class would appear. The harder the conditions I fulfill, the better the rewards are. Meaning, I can still dig even further for better rewards. He engrave, moon imprint. A message popped up saying, reduces activation time of all barriers by 25%, and increases the effects of all barriers by 30%. Jin Hyuk gives an evil smile, and says, not only that. There's even a perk. I'm frothing at the tormenting possibilities using this. Medusa says, what are you going to do to me? Are you going to kill me? He says, I wonder. I guess I could skin you and make some decent armor. She starts to cry and says, what? He thinks, it's usually common knowledge to kill boss monsters. Since you can obtain experience points, rewards, and items. However, there is no merit in killing Medusa. Medusa's head loses its petrification ability when it leaves the temple. And the armor made from the snake's skin deals continuous potion damage to its wearer. In that case, what use is a Medusa that has been captured alive? He buys some items for 3,350 coins. He mixes them all together. He draws something on the ground using the mixture. A message popped up saying, a secret circuit has been connected through the magic circle. He contact the Rick. Rick says, how in the world did you find out about this contact information, player Kong Jin Hyuk? I'm very surprised. Jin Hyuk says, I just bought some random stuff and mixed them together, but what's this? What an extremely strange coincidence. Rick says, you cannot make excuses, I have not shared this contact information, not even to the deities. I must know how you found out about it. Jin Hyuk says, come to think of it, there's a monster here. Alive Medusa. Rick is surprised to see that, Jin Hyuk thinks, I knew he'd be interested. Jin Hyuk says, you're an avid collector of anything related to Greek mythology, so you won't pass up on this. Man I was just about to finish it off. Well, since you're here, you might as well watch. 
Here I go. Jin Hyuk activates Grave of Swords. Rick shouts wait. You mustn't kill such a precious thing. Who cares about how you found my contact information? What's good is good. I will open a gate leading here for you. Let's talk face to face. Rick gives an evil smile and thinks, things may turn out very interesting with this meeting. Jin Hyuk thinks, what's with that smile? A gate appears in front of Jin Hyuk Rick says, come in. Rick says, welcome to the 42nd floor of the Tower of Trials. The city of the ancient Egyptian gods. White Oasis. Jin Hyuk says, I can't believe I got to set foot onto the 42nd floor already. It's my first time coming face to face with a deity before reaching level 100, isn't it? Jin Hyuk says, I thought I was being transported to the great library, but I never thought I'd be brought to a place like this. Are you taking a vacation here? Rick says, I'd love a vacation, but I'm here for business. It is the residence of the Egyptian gods you know all too well about. They've been wanting to meet you very much. So I guess you could say things worked out well. Jin Hyuk says, the way he's talking. It must mean he found out about my lie of receiving protection from an Egyptian god. One of the residents sees him and says, hey, look, a human. I heard humans entered the tower, but to think one I already hear. Rick says, do you know this is Jin Hyuk? This is where Sphinx originally was. Though it's nothing more than a giant crater now. It was formed after it was revealed that you swindled in the name of Lord Anubis. Jin Hyuk picks up a small rock and says, what a waste. I heard it was a statue of high artistic value. Rick says, are you not afraid, Jin Hyuk? Of the absolute beings of such great power, who rule over the upper floors of the tower. Jin Hyuk throws the rock and says, I wonder. Do I really need to be afraid? It's not even the 50th floor. Rick laughs really loud and says, how very amusing. You sure never disappoint me, Jin Hyuk. After that we see that Anubis punches his throne and says, you shamelessness know no bounds. Anubis says, how dare you stand before me after dirtying my name. We see that God OD Resurrection Osiris is sitting with him. Osiris says, what a sorry state you've ended up in, Anubis. Rick says, I, Rick Hennessy, pay my respects. Jin Hyuk says, it's not like I came here because I wanted to see you. I was just deceived by this old man. Anubis gets really angry and says, King Jin Hyuk you insolent bastard. Anubis try to step on Kong Jin Hyuk but Rick puts up a barrier and protects him. Rick says, Kong Jin Hyuk is here by his right as my guest. You wouldn't think of defying the laws of this tower in front of me, would you? Rick sees toward the Anubis with a serious face. Osiris starts to laugh really hard and says, you're pretty funny today. Rick sees toward Jin Hyuk and thinks, player Kong Jin Hyuk didn't even flinch. As if he already knows about the laws of the tower. Anubis sighs, if I can't kill him directly. Then I'll do it within the rules of the tower. Anubis summons a warrior. Deliverer of the dead. Rick thinks, the strongest warrior that can be summoned against a player on the sixth floor. To think he'd bring out the deliverer of the dead. It cannot be defeated with Kong Jin Hyuk current abilities. Now. How will you get out of this situation, Jin Hyuk? Anubis says, if you last 5 seconds against my warrior, I'll let you choose one thing from this temple's treasury. A message popped up saying, would you like to accept the dual request of Anubis a ruler of the 42nd floor? Jin Hyuk smiles and says, I just have to last 5 seconds, right? Jin Hyuk purchased the royal blood. For 2 million coins, he has on 1,242 coins left. He uses the blessing of the star on the royal blood. Royal blood converted in holy royal blood. He accept the duel. And activates sword demon king's steps. He killed a monster summoned by Anubis with just one hit. A message popped up saying, the extreme clash in attributes has resulted in a fatal effect. Damage increases by 1500%. The warrior of Anubis has lost. Jin Hyuk says, isn't that a bit too long? Anubis is shocked to see that. Osiris says, impossible. A mere human of the sixth floor defeated Anubis's warrior. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, all right, what should I choose from the treasury? Anubis shouts and says, enough of you bullshit. Attacking as soon as you accept isn't fear. Someone shouts Anubis. This is a promise you made yourself. You're not thinking of defying the rules of the tower are you? 
He is the god of the sun Horus. Anubis says, God damn it, whatever. Horus apologies, and says, I will show you to the treasury follow me. There are a lot of items in gold in the treasury of Anubis. Horus says, now, choose. A promise is a promise. Horus says, I'm sure you will climb all the way up here in the future. So how about it? Why don't you become a resident that rules this floor by choosing one of us? If you do, you will receive power more valuable than the mere treasures of this treasury. You will receive our support for real this time. Rick says, what Lord Horus just said means. He's offering a power selection that one can only make once to a human who's currently only on the sixth floor. So he ends up actually receiving protection from a deity. Interesting. Jin Hyuk says, I don't need something like that. Ours is surprised and says, you don't need it. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, I don't need it. I'm going somewhere higher than this place. So there's be no need to receive help from here, is there? So, I'll just take this as a gift. Horus gets really angry and says, what a daring human you are. Anubis says, is it over? Horus says, yes it is. The temperament of yours is always your downfall. Anubis says, can it? What did that damn human choose? He took the black egg of the ancients. Anubis says, the black one. Did he choose it while knowing what it is? I wonder, I couldn't confirm it. But one thing's for certain. Depending on what he does to the egg, it may bring calamity to the humans. Alice says, what? Egg of the ancients. Why did you choose something like this? You should know it'll be really bad if it's hatched the wrong way. Jin Hyuk says, really? Alice says, well, let's say you somehow survive dot but where am I supposed to go shopping if this thing blows the entire city away? He summons her back into the ring. She gets really angry and says, I told you not to summon me back and forth without notice. Jin Hyuk says, stay in there for a bit. Jin Hyuk gets really really excited and says, for the first time in a while. I thinks it's time I actually focus for real. Jin Hyuk thinks, the only information that I know about the ancients. Is a single phrase form the tower's eccentric adventurer, Faces. The solution is delicious mana. He uses element of fire on the egg. And also uses the glacier formation. Then he activates blessing of the star, in true heavenly flower cultivation technique. The egg of the ancients is absorbing the mana in the atmosphere. Jin Hyuk says, how's this? Isn't it appetizing? A small and really cute black dragon came out of the egg. Jin Hyuk thinks, it hatched. It's looking for the mana that it just tasted. I'll gather all my remaining mana, and give it form. He compress his mana into a small pill. He gives the pill to black dragon. And says, this is my first treat to you. Dragon eats the pill. Dragon gets really happy. A message popped up saying, engraving a stigma on the ancient. Another message popped up saying, your great achievement of being the first to tame an ancient will be recorded in the Hall of Fame. All beings of the tower are paying an interest to you achievement. Once you give you pet a name, its loyalty toward you will further increase. Jin Hyuk says, a name. He picks up the dragon says, okay, since you're black with yellow eyes. Let's name you Goguma. Jin Hyuk think, it's cute, but I won't have enough mana if I have to feed it. Dragon is really happy about his name and says, Goguma. Goguma. A message popped up saying, the intermediate administrator Rick Hennessy has subscribed to your channel. The 90%. Commission fee rate has decreased to 80%. After that we see that someone is saying to Jin Hyuk what do you think? You just have to make an appearance and partake in a simple interview. You know our program is the best in the industry, don't you? We guarantee a 40% rating. He is SWB station manager Kong Byungchun. Jin Hyuk says, does the manger usually take care of things like this himself? Manager says, of course it's normal when you're involved. If you make an appearance and share some of you rating life hacks. People would go absolutely insane. Jin Hyuk thinks, climbing the tower of trials. It's the only terrestrial program that managed to stay afloat, if I remember correctly. But is this gentleman blind or do have problems with his memory? He doesn't recognize me at all. Is there something on my face? Jin Hyuk says, no. Very well. Then let's move on to my payment. I'd like it in magic stones. Manager says, of course. 
There are tons of players who like to be paid in magic stones these days. How much can you give me? I'd like as much as possible. Manager says, we happen to have a fixed standard of payment. But if it's for a superstar like yourself, I can prepare an unlimited condition. Jin Hyuk thinks, unlimited condition. Manager says, there is someone who hopes to make an appearance alongside you. If you appear together with him, I will give you an opportunity to take an unlimited amount of magic stones from our station. Jin Hyuk says, you got a deal. So, who's that person? We see that at SWB stations, someone come out the car and says the day has finally come. He is director Hong Diokpyo. Someone says to him, is it true that you're making a surprise appearance in today's program? Is it true that the relationship between the Black Cloud Guild and player Kong Jinhyuk has been restored? He says, someone else is here. She is the s rank Ten Chao from the Jongwa Guild. An s rank Shuehua. A reporter says, I'm sure the program will blow up with such an all-star cast. The ratings will be insane. Kong Jinhyuk also appears there. Jinhyuk says, how have you been, Hong Diokpyo? Hong says, good thanks to you, I've been very busy restoring my image that was tarnished form that humiliation. Jin Hyuk says, you called two friends to show off your connections. Hong says, you said you'd appear, so shouldn't I do at least his mush? Jin Hyuk says, that so? Shui Hua thinks, so he's Kong Jin Hyuk. Ten Chao thinks, our target. Teresa also come there, and even Yu Qianyang appears as well. Chun Yu Sung as well. A reporter says to Chun, Chun Yu Sung, I heard you rejected recruitment offers from every guild, but why have you answered player Kong Jin Hyuk's call? Other reporter says, are you comrades? Chun gets angry and says, nothing of the sort. He's someone I will defeat. Ten Chao thinks, Yu Qianyang, who should have been long dead. The Saintess Teresa, and even Chun Yu Sung are on Kong Jin Hyuk's side. Ten Chao and Shui Hua starts to walk away, Hong says, wait. Where are you two going? You said you'd appear on the program together with me. Ten Chao says, we've fulfilled our objective. We are no longer duty bound to uphold the condition. Hong says, what objective? Jin Hyuk says, if you were gonna show off your connections, then you should have done so properly. Hong says, after I worked so hard to create this opportunity. He grabs one of the reporter and says, wait, sit interview me. That reporter runs away even leaving his pants behind. Hong gets really angry and says, you'd even take off your pants for him. After that we see that inside the station, Jin Hyuk is smiling with satisfaction. Chun says, are you reveling in Hong Diokpyo's despair? Jin Hyuk says, I'm grateful you're here, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't meddle in my private life. Chun says, what? Private life? What about how my house was destroyed because of you? Jin Hyuk thinks, oh, right I told the demonic humans that Chun Yu Sung is unknown. Jin Hyuk says, I have absolutely no idea what you mean. Chun says, don't play dumb. Chun says, just form comparing the 16 video that I have of you. I can figure out that you're unknown right away. Jin Hyuk see toward him and thinks, this damn stalker. Jin Hyuk says, that aside, what did you think? Chun says, about what? Security is checking their clothes. Jin Hyuk says, the guy sent by the Demonic Human Association. What did you think of him after fighting him? Chun says, that man named Gawain, he was fairly strong. But compared to our fights, it felt extremely light. That's all. Yu Qianyang asks Teresa, what's your relationship with Mr. Kong, miss? Teresa says, a comrade who I trust more than anyone. Yu Qianyang says, is that so? He says, she's got some competition. They sits in a conference room and says, someone says, we're starting the recording. Report says, we're here with some special individual in this episode of Beyond the Tower of Trails. First, player Kong Jin Hyuk. You're the center of attention due to you absurd clearing speed. Do you have some special know-hows for clearing the tower? Jin Hyuk says, special know-hows, oh I have one. That is to just do it until you get it right. Reporter says, I see. How straightforward. Then what about the third floor? Jin Hyuk says, you just have to dodge them all. Reporter says, then the fourth floor. You just have to dodge them all for that floor too. Manager says, how do you expect us to broadcast this? 
Do you have any idea how tremendous the losses are when we waste one broadcast recording? You've completely messed up the recording, so we're in complete disarray. And not only that, you've shamelessly come to get you appearance fee. Jin Hyuk says, answer any question you are asked, I simply upheld the contract. Do you expect that kind of far-fetched logic to work? Jin Hyuk grabs him and says, Lee jong -soo. You remember who that is, don't you? Yes that Lee jong who you just thought of. The streamer entertainment CEO who you treated as a brother. Together with Lee jong you plotted to squeeze streamers dry with slave contracts. There was a time when we streamers come to this office together to protest. I was there too, don't you remember? Thanks to that, I learned many things about life. I learned what I have to do to not be a pushover. To us, who you were sucking dry thanks to the contracts you guy cleverly drafted up. Do you remember what you said? Contract wise there's no issue. Jin Hyuk gets really angry and says, do you still think my logic is far fetched? Manager says, opens a locker and says, this is our station's magic stone storage room. There are a lot of cases filled with magic stones. Manager says, as per the contract, we will give you the opportunity to use an unlimited number of magic stones in this room. For the next two hours, that is. Jin Hyuk sees toward him with angry look and says, two hours. Manager gets scared and says, it was written in the contract. Very small, in the corner. You can use the magic stones here to do whatever you want. And by the way, there are anti-theft spells cast on these stones, so they cannot be put in subspace inventories. Manager thinks in which case, the only thing he can do is to absorb the magic stones. However, the average time need to absorb a low-grade magic stone is 5 minutes. No matter how many magic stones he absorbs, the number he can absorb in 2 hours is negligible. If you need anything you can ask the staff members here. Entry and exit is very restricted here after all. One of the employees says, wow, it really is Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk thinks, so his intention is to make my reputation fall into a bottomless pit. If I try to take the magic stones by force. Jin Hyuk says, very well. I'll use as much as I can in the next two hours. Manager says, a wise decision. Then I will see you in two hours. Please treat Kong Jin Hyuk well, you too. Jin Hyuk says, hello. Would you like to see something amazing? Manager says, Jong Su. It's truly unfortunate you died an unjust death. But living people need to stay alive. Why are you back to haunt me you're already dead, damn it. I've minimized the losses in magic stones, but how do I pull away from him? Should I place a few journalists on him and create some sort of controversy? I'll think it after I get out of this situation. He opened the room of magic stones and says, Player Kong Jin Hyuk were you satisfied with you two hours? We see that there is not a single magic stone left. Those two employee of his are playing the black dragon. Jin Hyuk says, oh, you're finally here, director. Do you have any more magic stones my baby here is a big eater. Jin Hyuk thinks it's the price you pay for pulling tricks after still not knowing your place. I'll continue to use you for the rest of your life. We see the stats window of Goguma the Ancient, his has his 1 and level is 98. Jin Hyuk thinks, it's strong, but I'm severely lacking in mana for it to fight. I only have 80 mana. If I have Goguma fight. Alongside me, I can barely last 5 minutes. Then I have no choice but to grow faster than planned. Jin Hyuk calls someone and says, hey, what are you doing? We see that Ten Chan is talking with someone on voice call. She says, we've affirmed the target. He had already formed an alliance with the selected central figures. Caller says, he's rising his forces much quicker than expected. I thought his relationship with Chun Yu Sung was hostile. He responds aggressively, but from the fact that he obediently answer his call. Ten Chan says, it's fair to judge that he is already on Kong Jin Hyuk's side. The caller says, we have no choice then, add them all to the red list. If they won't join us. They are enemies of Zhang Hua. Jin Hyuk says, to Chun what do you think? Jin Hyuk bring out the boundary bending mirror. They both are on the Tower of Trials, 6th floor Elven Forest. Chun says, you said you were gonna teach me a training method to get stronger. Was this it? You sure managed to obtain an absurd item. That aside, why did you call me over when you were gonna go above this floor? 
I'm sure you'd be able to handle things by yourself. Jin Hyuk says, you know it's all because I care about you. You gotta get stronger to challenge me, right? Chun says, so, which floor are we going to? Jin Hyuk activates boundary bending mirror. Jin Hyuk says, us. They both goes through the mirror to the 10th floor. 10th floors is called Warrior's Haven. The Guardian Warriors protecting the boss. There are around 21 of them. So you think you can handle them? I think so, as long as the monster back there doesn't wake up. 10th floor boss, Immortal Stone Giant. Jin Hyuk says, really that's perfect. Then let's do this. If you defeat all the warriors over there and last one minute against the boss. All except on E-Serious Duel. Chun says, deal. And bring out his sword. And says, you'd better keep that promise. Guards wake up and says, this is the haven of warriors. Only those who are qualified can. Chun kills the guards and says, out of the way. After that we see that at the hair item specialty shop. Teresa is there. Teresa sees someone and says, you were the raid captain in those ruins. Song Chianwa. Both of them apply hair restoring ticket. Song says, I missed you my hair. A message popped up saying, the curse is still in effect. All hair on you body will be lost. Song says, wait no. Teresa says to him, it's alright Chianwa. Hair isn't everything there is to a person. Song says, Teresa, I think this curse is retribution for my sins. Teresa asks, sins. He says, my sins when I was the raid captain in the first floor ruins. I was so greedy for accomplishments in a measly first floor ruin. And caused me people to get hurt. Something like hair loss might be an extremely light sentence. Teresa says, since many people were hurt because of you greed, I don't think you did the right thing. But having something you want so much that you'd risk your life for it. Is somehow very wonderful. Then see that on the 10th floor Chun activates Song of Swords. And kill a lot of guards. And he is also hurt. And thinks, now all that's left is. To last one minute against that monster. As long as I last just one minute. I can have a serious duel against him. Emerging victorious. Against you is something I will accomplish with my life on the line. Boss monster opens his eyes. After that we see that Chun is laying on a bed and says, where? Am I? A girl is sitting beside him, she says, a hospital. You're his subordinate. I wish I was only a subordinate. The director ordered me to take you to a hospital so that's why I brought you here. You were in terrible condition. Oh, and he told me to give you this once you woke up. She gives him some kind of black rock, Chun see it and thinks. This is. Yes, that's right I was in the middle of fighting the 10th floor boss. The boss activates the skill Absolute Invincible. The main body will not receive damage. However, I could not damage it at all. Neither physical nor magic attacks worked. My elemental sword also suddenly broke for some reason. But Kong Jin Hyuk that son of a bitch. Jin Hyuk says, 21 seconds that's no good. You're still a long way. From catching up to me. Jin Hyuk activates Sword Demon King's steps. He dedged every attack with insane precision. Boss activates Sanctuary. Gravity in the field increase by 500%. Chun says, such overpowering pressure. You won't be able to dodge all over the place anymore, Kong Jin Hyuk. What will you do? The moment I thought it was over even for Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, took you long enough. He activates one star barrier, spell enhancement barrier. Increases the spell effect of the field by its square value per second. It's time for you to truly become stone. A message popped up saying, activation target. Center of barrier. Damage is negated due to invincible. Boss monster gets crushed to a small stone. Chun says, impossible. Kong Jin Hyuk defeated the boss right in front of me, as if for me to see. That is the last thing I remember. A message popped up saying, the 10th floor boss has been neutralized. Time left to conquer the next floor 90 days. A copy condition window appears saying, the immortal stone giant possesses one of the absolute abilities, invincible. You can copy the skill if you subdue the opponent. The condition has been met. You have successfully copied invincible. The activation duration of invincible will be drastically reduced. Chun says, as always, you humiliate me to the very end. After that we see that on the 6th floor elven forest. 
Two message popped up saying, you have acquired the giant's great sword, armor breaker. You have acquired the giant's shield, gray heart. This shocking achievement will be recorded in the Hall of Fame for two days, recorded name, unknown. Jin Hyuk think, this high is why I can never quit. Tower of Trials. Since I uploaded a video of unknown after a while, I should be able to somewhat replenish the coins I lost during my battle against Anubis. Since Chun Yu Sung defeated the small fry for me, I was able to use the mana hungry one star barrier. Alice says, contractor. Jin Hyuk says, what? Jin Hyuk it looks like someone's tailing us. You're aware, right? Oh, that, of course. Alice says, were you just leaving them by despite knowing? That's no like you. Jin Hyuk says, the place where I'm going now is very unwelcome to outsiders. I don't earn anything from fighting them now. Just let them keep following me. One who is following Jin Hyuk says, Kong Jin Hyuk is currently heading toward the 6th floor elven forest. After that we see that in Beijing. Someone says, to Zonghua Guild S rank Leek Chang. Says, not only did he steal the 5th floor first clear from you. You even let him get to the 10th floor before you. What the hell have you been doing this whole time? She cuts one of his ears and say, pathetic. There's not a single thing you've done right. I have to step up for things to get going. She is Zonghua Guild Master S rank Nangong Tian. One of them tries to heal him Guild Master says, leave him. It won't end with just one ear next time. Remember this moment every time you see that wound. They says, yes sir. Guild Master says, I don't know why Jin Hyuk is remaining of the 6th floor, but it's rather good for us. God to the 6th floor and regroup with Shui Hua and Ten Chao. Burn the entire forest down along with Kong Jin Hyuk, including the witnesses. On the 6th floor, the one who is following Jin Hyuk receive call and they say, continue watching the target. He says, yes, sir. An elf from behind him. Jin Hyuk says, the 6th floor of the Tower of Trials, Elven Forest, is one of the best resorts in the tower. Because the 7th floor automatically opens after 90 days. People looking to get away for recreation usually visit this place. We that some people are camping inside the forest. A horned rabbit appear behind them. One of them goes toward it. The girl with them says, hey, don't go that way. That's elven territory. It's dangerous. He says, but there's a cute horned rabbit here. You know how much elves hate outsiders. Get over here if you don't want to get killed by arrows. The person who was following Jin Hyuk got killed by a girl elf. That elf sees Jin Hyuk and thinks, why was he getting tailed? It doesn't look like he has any particular objective. It he just lost. But one can never pass through this forest without skill. You'll never get out of here. We see that Jin Hyuk tries to smell something. And says, it's left. Elf see that with a surprise look on his face and thinks, that path is. On can only tell which way to go by smell after spending a long time in the forest. How does a human know of such a method? But it's okay. Fortunately, he approached an illusion barrier. Once he get caught in that barrier, he'll just march in place within an endless illusion and exhaust himself. I'll just keep watch on him. And just drag him back outside once he passes out. Jin Hyuk says, man, this isn't how you do it. These should be in passive characters like this reduces the barrier's effectiveness by half. Whoever made this, they must have dozed off during grammar class. She is the one who wrote it. She gets angry and thinks, what the hell is that human? Jin Hyuk thinks, I have a fledgling elf on my tail this time. Alright, it's about time. Jin Hyuk bring out some stuff and says, I'm so hungry I guess I'll make something to eat. He activates otherworldly restaurant. He cooks something, amazing. She sees that and says, I guess this human knows how to cook. Elf how dare you. In the sacred elven forest. She says, cook animal meat. You dare disparage this forest. Jin Hyuk says, what are you talking about? This isn't meat. This is soy meat, made from soybeans. If you don't believe me, come see for yourself. She says, don't play around with me. It looks like meat. She says, impossible. It really smells like beans. Jin Hyuk thinks, the elves of the Tower of Trails have a morbid liking for cooking and music. However, animal meat is the one food item that is considered taboo amongst the elves. So, what would happen if I give them a chance to eat something that resembles meat? 
Jin Hyuk says, would you like a taste? It's one of the best works. They'd be unable to withstand their kuriosit. She picks up a bite and says, you're sure it's not meat. Jin Hyuk says, do not insult my dedication toward cooking. I wouldn't dare lie or pull tricks using food. She eats it and says, delicious. My word, how can something be this good? Elf says, I didn't realize you'd be a precious guest who would present a new dish like this to us. She says, I am Sylvia, a ranger of the elven forest. I apologize for my misunderstanding. What must I do for you to forgive me? Jin Hyuk says, then, could I visit the elven village? After that we see at the elven forest village hall. Jin Hyuk says, my name is Kong Jin Hyuk. One elf says welcome. I am Penheim, the patriarch of the elven forest. Jin Hyuk is surrounded with elves with arrow. Jin Hyuk says, but am I really being welcome? One of the elves with white airs says, how dare an outsider form who knows where. Expect a welcoming. You humans do not have the right to set foot into this sacred forest. He and his Teslon and his level is 30 and his age is 926. A copy condition window appears saying, he is a very prideful ranger. To copy a skill from Teslon, who takes pride in his bowman ship more than anyone, you must fire an arrow with higher accuracy than him just once. Jin Hyuk says, he's the same as always. He was extremely wary of humans, even in the game. Well, I guess me making a complete mess of things here had a part in it. Jin Hyuk says, I was invited here by Sylvia. As an arrow is about to hit Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk blocks the arrow with his dagger and says, you attitude toward guests need work. Should I have brought a gift or something? Teslon says, you have good reaction speed for a mere human. The next one will run straight through you forehead. Sylvia stand between them and says, Sir Teslon. Wait, this man is a guest that I invited as an apology due to my mistake. Teslon gets really angry and says, shut up, Sylvia. How can you still bring an outsider to the village? You'll need to take responsibility after we deal with this bastard. She says, I didn't bring him here blindly. He has great talent for cooking. And he can even bring us food that we've never tasted before. Teslon thinks, never. Tasted before. Teslon says, did you think I'd let you go just because you say that? Patriarch stops Teslon and says, Teslon, enough. There's no need to kick him out yet. We can at least confirm it for ourselves first right. Teslon says, Chief. Jin Hyuk thinks, the figs that grow in the elven village are extremely special. They contain magic as a magic crystal does, so your magic power will increase just by eating them. When the elves harvest the figs, they give thanks to the forest on that day. And call it the Moonlight Festival. Jin Hyuk activates otherworldly kitchen. All the elves are surprised to see him cook. Jin Hyuk you may freely eat you fill. Rather than real meat, they're patties made from soybeans. Teslon is looks around and tries to pick the food. Jin Hyuk take the plate away, and says, don't you have any pride, you punk. You're the one who aimed an arrow at me. Everyone is eating, but Teslon does not get any food. Chief says, this flavor is quite extraordinary. He gets really excited and says, to think that an outsider could bring us such great joy. I've got a good feeling about this year's Moonlight Festival. We thank you, Great Forest Mother. Let the Moonlight Festival begin. Some player who are camping in the forest hears a lot of sounds from the forest, they says, it looks like the elves are doing something. You're right, it's pretty noisy. If they weren't so aggressive, I'd go see what's going on. Don't even think about it. Do you know how bad their tempers are? They'll probably go crazy and shoot their arrows at us if we go near. This might not be elven territory but it's still amazing. Isn't that right? We see that some black masked man comes and kill his friends. Then they kill him as well. One of the masked man says, there are no witnesses. After that we see that, elves are practicing archery in the forest. Jin Hyuk says, as I heard, elves are born with a natural talent for archery. Chief says, is that right? It's so natural to us that we don't even recognize it. What do you think? How do you feel about your first Moonlight Festival experience? It is quite rare for a human to participate in our festival. The more our figs are known to the outside world, the more people want to trespass into our territory, which causes us to isolate ourselves more. But I'm confident that we elves love music and food as much as others do. 
and I know that we are a race that loves peace more than others. Jin Hyuk says, the elven way is impressive. Teslong says, who the hell do you think you are to judge us? Jin Hyuk says, what the? Are you pouting since I didn't give you any food? Teslong says, it doesn't matter how good you are at cooking in the end, you're nothing but a human. You existence in this forest is filth itself. Jin Hyuk says, your face is filthier, you bastard. Teslon says, you wanna die, human. Jin Hyuk takes out an arrow, let's not ruin the festival's good mood. Rather, let's do this. Jin Hyuk says, let's challenge each other to an archery competition. And have the loser leave. Teslon says, how dare you bring up an archery bet in front of me. Fine, prepare the target. All elves get excited and says, wow, it's an archery completion. They run toward the match and says, let's go watch the competition. Leave everything behind and let's go. Jin Hyuk says, it's a bit boring since I don't have anyone cheering me on. Teslon says, you're nothing but an outsider. Who the hell would cheer for you? Jin Hyuk says, then I should bring some cheerleader as well. He bring out his small cute black dragon. Teslon says, what a strange summon beast. Teslon says, that's a surprisingly cute cheerleader. If you're done, go first. You just need to hit the target on that tree over there. Jin Hyuk says, okay. Jin Hyuk hits the third layers. Teslon says, not bad. For a human. Teslon says, but if you want to beat me, you've got a long way to go. Black Dragon jumps and activates his fear skill. A message popped up saying, due to the effect of fear, you have fallen into a state of fear for three seconds. Teslon and all the elf falls to ground. Teslon says, what in the world? Did you do? Jin Hyuk says, how naive. You'd do anything to win right. A message popped up saying, you have met the conditions. Teslon gets really angry and says, crazy human. Jin Hyuk says, to Goguma you have to be careful. This is important. Don't do that from now on. Teslon gets up and says, you damn human, did you bring that dragon out just to act as cowardishly? Don't you have any honor? Jin Hyuk says, no, I have none. Because I'm a filthy human. He gets perfect marksmanship rank double A. Teslon says, I don't care whether you're filthy or not. I'll never acknowledge a victory that's won like this. Alright, alright. I'll just count that one as a warm up. You can shoot again if you want. Teslon says, I won't let it go if you're gonna play around again. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, yeah. Teslon says, things have gone on for too long. Teslon activates perfect marksmanship. Hit the center of the target. Everyone says, perfect shot. As expected of Teslon. Sylvia says, Kong Jin Hyuk, it's still not too late. Why don't you beg Teslon for forgiveness? Teslon is the greatest ranger out of all of us. It's impossible to win against him in archery as a human. Jin Hyuk says, the best of the elves. Even better. He uses glacier formation and hits the target, the target goes filing in the air. Teslon says, you bastard, what are you doing? Jin Hyuk says, what do you mean? I'm just adjusting difficulty to match my level. He fused blood demon chi and perfect marksmanship. And he obtained red magic bullet. Red magic bullet rank triple A. Teslon sees that and thinks during that split second something change. Jin Hyuk activate red magic bullet. He hits it in middle of the target and split it into two pieces. All the elves are shocked to see that. They says, that takes is made of fig tree woo, so it shouldn't break easily. He split Teslon's arrow in the center and destroyed the target. Jin Hyuk says, how do you feel about losing to a filthy little human? Teslon says, I can't throw out even the little bit of honor I have left. Since I lost, I will immediately vacate this village and never come back. As Mother Forest's ranger, Teslon, I always keep my promises. No I guess I am no longer a ranger. Jin Hyuk says, big ears wait. Teslon says, what's the problem? I said I'll leave. Or do you wish to mock me further? Jin Hyuk says, I get you honor or whatever, but it's festival time, you know. I think the atmosphere is gonna die down if you leave like that. So, let's change the conditions. Teslon gets really angry and says, I'd rather leave. Everyone is holding their laugh in. Jin Hyuk says, it's a look that only the rally strong can put on where I live. We call it the expert look. We Teslon is wearing a girl's dress. 
Someone says, who just dared to laugh at Teslon? He starts to laugh himself and says, you have a pretty evil hobby. I didn't think Teslon would accept the condition so calmly. Jin Hyuk says, was it a bit too hast of a prank? Jin Hyuk thinks, well, the best ranger of the town is being mocked. Should I let him take if off after a bit? Chief says, no, it's fine. He needed to taste loss eventually. I think his obsession to protect Mother Forest was actually hindering him. On that note, I'm glad we got to meet you. Jin Hyuk thinks, this elder is a better person than I thought. Jin Hyuk says, then I guess I can be meaner. Chief says, let's teach him a lesson since we got the chance. An elf has come running from the forest without an arm. Chief says, you're Lucian one of the guards from the village outskirts. What happened? Lucian says, invaders. There are invaders. A bunch of masked guys suddenly appeared. And started swinging their swords at whatever was in front of them. It wasn't something the rangers. Of the village outskirts could handle. They're very strong. Even the higher ranking rangers couldn't defeat them. Lucian please stop speaking. You're not in good condition. Elder. Chief says, prepare for battle. Unload the weapons. Storage. The invaders should already have surrounded the forest. Fight with you lives to protect Mother Forest. Teslon says, I'm picking an emergency opposition group. High ranking rangers, come to me. Jin Hyuk gets really angry. Some players are running, I can't run anymore. Who are those bastards? One of them stops and says, wait, listen, we're just players. Other one says, you idiot. One of them kills all the players. Their leader says, don't let anyone escape alive. Everything within the elves forest needs to disappear. They kills all the players they find. Two arrows hit one of the invaders. One of them get in the head with an arrow. Chief comes to the scene and says, how can this be? Mother's children, were massacred so cruelly. Chief says, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to protect you. Chief says, I'm issuing a command. When you come across a villager who's alive, evacuate them to the center of the village. There are strong allies there, so it should be relatively safe. When you come across the enemy kill them on sight. We will avenge our kind in the name of Mother's Forest. They all says, yes, sir. Jin Hyuk says, revenge is good, I have a plan in mind. Chief says, a plan. One of the invaders says, Shui Hua, I think the elves have begun to fight back. He says, that's faster than anticipated. He contact everyone and says, everyone listen, our ultimate goal is to get rid of Kong Jin Hyuk. There's a communication blocking barrier set up all throughout the elves forest. Kong Jin Hyuk won't be able to call for help. Ten Chao says, surround the enemies and approach the center of the village until you find the target. See Team Roger. A team, Roger, including the S rankers, our force consists of 150 people. We will soar around the forest and make our way inwards. The team that comes across Kong Jin Hyuk. First will stall for time. The rest of the teams will arrive for support and then attack together. No matter how strong the target may be, he won't be able to handle three S rankers at once. Ten Chao thinks, you will quietly disappear from this world. As Jongwa desires, Kong Jin Hyuk. Then suddenly Kong Jin Hyuk appears in front of her and throw her into a tree. And remove her mask. And says, I was wondering who it was, but it was you guys. Those Jongwa guild bastards that were loitering in front of the broadcast station. Jin Hyuk throw the mask away, and says, I hope you're ready to pay for disrupting me. She gets excited and says, I didn't think I would hit the jackpot. She calls the other teams and says, we found Kong Jin Hyuk. C team says, we're going to where the B team is. Move quickly. Some elves attack C team with arrows team leader blocks all the attacks. Teslon says, where do you think you're going, outsider? Your enemies are us. C team leader says, you piece of shit natives. Jin Hyuk activates Grave of Swords, and Sword Demon King steps. He kill a lot of them. She say, don't stay closer spread out. Jin Hyuk activates Glacier Formation. A lot ice spears hit them. Ten Chao sees that and think, he's much stronger than what I saw on screen. At this rate, we'll all die before the other teams get here. I need to stall for more time. She says, hey, Kong Jin Hyuk. I don't know why you've come here. But I assume you're here to gain something. Jin Hyuk says, what does that have to do with you guys? 
Just come at me instead of wasting time. Tima says, we're destroying everything in sight and closing in on you. Ten Chao says, while you're here, the others will be getting closer to the center of the village. And once they destroy the entire village, whatever you wanted, will be destroyed with it. Jin Hyuk says, destroying the village. Ten Chao thinks, if there's something he wants in the village, then he'll go there to try and protect it. That's how. I will stall for time until the rest of the teams find us. Jin Hyuk smiles. She sees that and says, don't you care if the village gets destroyed? Jin Hyuk says, no, no of course I don't want that to happen. I get what you're trying to do. But to me, it's very funny. We see back at Elf Village Tima has reached there. They are all surprised to see something, and says, what? No way. Why is she here? She says, I honestly don't care what happens to the elves. She is Alice and she is very angry and says, however, you guys disrupted my contractee's work. She activates blood spears, and says, that's enough reason to kill all of you. The all gets really scared and says, we can't handle this kind of monster. Vanish. She kills them all and says. Ten Chao contracts the Tima and a message popped up saying, person you're trying to reach does not exist. She is surprised to see that and says, what? Tima leader is dying saying, support the center of the village. Alice is kills them all and says, how boring. It wasn't even entertaining. She sees some elves and says, do elves make alcohol too? Shui Hua thinks, the strongest of us is already dead. That bastard. What did he do? She says, everyone cast blood demon circle. The all surround him, and activate Kishosis poison injection. Due to the effects of the psychosis poison, you have obtained fear resistance. They all jumps toward Jin Hyuk at once. He kicks them left and right. One of them comes from behind Jin Hyuk, to attack. Jin Hyuk kill him with his twin dragon sword. He says, you guys really are out of you are mine. He us glacier formation to kill a lot of them. Shui Hua sees all that and thinks, Ten Chao where are you? You need to come join us now. The elves are fighting with Team C. Teslon uses perfect marksmanship. Sylvia uses forest's restraints. They grabs the leader of Team C. Teslon says, I won't let you escape. He launches the arrows and says, pay for your sins before you leave. Team leader activates self-defense chi. All the arrows break on the impact. His defensive power increased by 50%. Ten Chao receives the messages says, Ten Chao, hurry. Kong Jin Hyuk is here. Ten Chao thinks Shui Hua. Ten Chao says, I see your plan is to stall time with me here. But it won't work. He breaks all the wines. And activates abundance sword chi. He attacks Sylvia. A hug explosion happens inside the forest. Teslon picks her up and dodges the attack in time. Sylvia says thank you, Teslon. Teslon says, don't let you guard done, Sylvia. Ten Chao is releasing large amount of mana. Teslon says, this one's strong. We see that Jin Hyuk has killed a lot of them and say, there's no one left now. Why don't you come on out? Shui Hua thinks, everyone dies before the other even joined us. Shui Hua comes out and says, right, there's no point in hiding any longer. He checks her stats window, and a copy condition window appears saying, Shui Hua is a player who deals with strong poison. If you manage to overpower her while being exposed to her poison, you can copy one of her skills. Jin Hyuk thinks, while being exposed to her poison. That's tricky. Copy requirements related to poison were always, tricky like this. Shui Hua says, I get that you're strong. But, she activates heaven's poison and say, it'll be difficult to stay alive once you've been hit with my poison. He dodges it with ease. He thinks, this is gonna hurt, right? I do want at least one poison skill. He grabs her and says, I'm trying to make a decision right now. She activates self-defense chi. Her defense power increased by 50%. She says, I can deal with most physical attacks with this skill. He hits her really hard in the stomach. She think, no way. This much damage despite the skill. He says, I'm trying to think right now, so stay quiet. She thinks I have to somehow hold on until Ten Chao gets here. She thinks I have to damage him. She get up and attacks him from behind. He says you sure don't want to listen. He turn around and hits her with a powerful punch. 
a poison needle and stick in one of his fingers. She says, Kong Jinhyuk. Did you really think I was only going to foolishly take on damage? She says, I got you. The poison starts spread. His hand turned purple. She says, the thousand poisons will cause your mana circuits to go crazy and destroy your organs. It's a poison that permeates your magic, which means it's impossible to create an antidote. You'll die a slow and painful death. He activates vibrating fist arts. His magic recovery rate increases by 30%. Jin Hyuk gives an evil smile and says, an antidote. Who says I need something like that? I can just use my magic and control if by force. She says, damn it, looks like. It'll be impossible for me to survive. He pooches her in the face and uses glacier formation. As he is about to kill her, Ten Chao reaches there and uses great mountain sword key. Ten Chao stands right in between them and says, hey, Shui Hua can you stand? Jin Hyuk sees him and thinks, if this guy is here, then does that mean Teslon was defeated? A copy condition window appears saying, Ten Chao secrete adores Shui Hua, Ten Chao will attack in the name of friendship in order keep her alive. If you suppress Ten Chao without a single injury, you may choose the skill you wish to copy. Jin Hyuk thinks, I don't need Great Mountain Sword since it's a lower leveled version of the Soul Chaser Sword. But root out the source might be useful. Wait. But what is the system, anyway? How can it know all about how a person feels? His head starts to glitch out. Ten Chao sees that and says, I looks like something weird is going on with that guy. Now's your chance. Hurry and get up, Shui Hua. What about the rest, Ten Chao? Ten Chao says, I think we're the only ones left. She says, then listen carefully. There's something I realized after exchanging blows with him. I'm sure that, even if Li Qijang was here, we would never be able to defeat him. Ten Chao says, you're saying he's that strong. The mission failed, so there's no meaning in going back to China. The only thing we can do now, is see the mission through to the end. Jinnihik hold himself together and says, what the hell are you guys doing? She activates pollution. A message popped up saying, you have developed a resistance to feed due to the effects of pollution. Ten Chao jumps toward Jin Hyuk and says, even if I die, I have no regrets. Jin Hyuk says, it looks like you're ready to get serious, then I'll get serious too. He activates Sword Cemetery. A message popped up saying, you understanding of bladed weapons has increased by 500%. Ten Chao uses, Great Mountain Sword Second Form. First Great Slash. Shui Hua uses Poisonous Snake Sword. Let's go out with a bang so we don't embarrass ourselves. He uses Soul Chaser Sword Arts 8th form. Body of the Dark Spirit. A message popped up saying, the communication blocking barrier. Ten Chao is dead. A message popped up saying, a thousand poisons and root out the source have copied rank double A. And root out the source rank double B. A message popped up saying, the cop skill is being saved in the world's memories. Jin Hyuk thinks, ah, I knew it the 8th form skill isn't easy to handle. My muscle ache tomorrow will be no joke. He says, what should I do with the Chinese guild from now on? And that's how China's attack against me ended. A fourth of the elven forest burned down, and many elves died. Teslon lost his fight against Ven Chao and was injured. But thanks to Sylvia being beside him, he was able to survive. Teslon says, thanks for stopping the attack. Jin Hyuk says, stop trying to act cool and just go rest. Elder Finheim must have been in great shock. Since he only gave out order and didn't leave his house. Alice became an idol to the elf children. And enjoying wine became a cultural trend for some reason. And I, who was the cause of it all? He activates the 8-star barrier great army's stronghold, has been activated. The three-star barrier dimension break has been activated. The three-star barrier Chi Men Dun Jia has been activated. He says, no bad. Those Chinese bastards won't be able to carelessly enter now. Jin Hyuk says, I hate people touching what's mine. We see at the Chinese guild headquarters. The attack party of 150 people including three S ranks was annihilated. Chinese guild vice leader S rank Lao Yu. You're telling me that Kong Jin Hyuk guy is that strong. Ten Shao. Li Kejang and Shui Hua all measure up to 10,000 in magic power. Although they're strong, they're still in the mid-high positions amongst the rankers in our guild. 
The association's ranking system hasn't been properly established yet, so those who are measured to have more than 10,000 power are labeled as an S rank. Just because Kong Jinhyuk is labeled an S rank doesn't mean we should treat him the same as the other. Why not send assassins with more than 20,000 magic power from the executive branch to his home? Send assassins to a foreign S ranker. Are you crazy? What would you do if that caused a war? Who cares are you afraid of war? Afraid? I'm saying there's no benefit to it. Vice Guild Master thinks, damn it. I'm sure Namgong Cheon won't sit still once he hears about this. Do you still not understand the situation you're in? A Muram resident of the 21st floor Grand Elder of the Moyong Noble Clan Moyong Su. The all bow in front of him. Grand Elder says, assessing the opponent's key is a basic of combat. To think that you do not understand such basics. It's clear as day to me that you will all lose once more. Vice Guild Leader says, forgive me, Grand Elder. Grand Elder says, leave dealing with Kong Jinhyuk to us from now on. I will tell Namgong Cheon myself. Vice Guild Leader says, however, how can we dare allow Grand Elder to step forward? Grand Elder says, enough. Do you still not understand? None of you are on a level of being able to face that man. He thinks what that man showed in the last bit of the video that was sent to us. Was the 8th form of Soul Chaser Sword, I'm sure of it. The Soul Chaser Sword art that rate even in Murram. Was learned up until the 8th form by an outsider. It seems there is still an opportunity for us. After that we see that Chief is back in the village and says, we've had to endure many losses because of ambush. Despite the sacrifices of the rangers, many of us died. However we must go on. In order to rebuild the mother forest and so that the children of this forest can once again prosper. Continue the moonlight festival. We will celebrate the lives of those that have gone and overcome our sadness. Jin Hyuk activates Otherworld Restaurant. Chief says, who would have known that a random outsider we met in the forest would be so helpful. He says, you're right. Jin Hyuk says, don't leave in leftovers. Yes, thank you. The species that famous for being foodies doesn't have much of an appetite. I guess the shock was pretty big. Someone appears there are all surprised to see that. We see that as it is Teslon. Jin Hyuk says, wow, you must really like that outfit. You're still wearing it. Teslon says, it's not that. I always believed that outsiders are a threat to our forest. I thought they would invade the forest in order to harvest the mana-filled figs. But in reality, the outsiders, ambush was just a massacre. And I wasn't the one to stop the ambush. But instead, it was you. I put these clothes on because I lost a bet. But I will keep them on as a way to honor the promise with you. Jin Hyuk thinks, it's not fun if he wants to wear it. Someone laughs at him. He says, who dares to laugh at me? We see that Alice is laughing really hard, and says, what are you wearing? I've never seen such a stupid outfit before. She falls down because of her laugh. And says, I didn't know elves had clowns. 2. All the elves starts to laugh. Chief calls him and says, KNAG Jin Hyuk can we talk? Chief takes him to a building and unlocks the two-star security barrier. Chief says, this is the ancient storage where the village's treasures are kept. No one can enter without my permission. Jin Hyuk says, I wasn't expecting this. It's cool that I get to see it. This is an instrument we use called the carton. Just playing it can amplify the effects you receive. This is a token of my thanks for having saved our forest. I will always remember you. Jin Hyuk I don't really care for a harp if you're gonna give me a gift. Then why not that one? You mean Pentagrith's molar and canine. The epic looking bow and dagger. Chief says, that's been passed down the bloodline from our ancestors. Our ancestors treated the injury of a god and received it as a gift. Chief says, I would give it to you. But even I, as the chief, don't have the right to give it to someone. But according to the prophecy, it will find its rightful owner with time. Jin Hyuk says, really? Jin Hyuk thinks I didn't know they had that here. Alice is drinking a lot and says, everyone, fill up your cups. I like your guys forest. If I someday take over this place, I'll make sure to let you guys live. Our village's savior. For Alice. Jin Hyuk is mixing something in wine. Everyone drinks it. Jin Hyuk thinks, what was that? I should take it and leave soon. 
The security barrier seemed to be too star. Jin Hyuk reaches there but there is no barrier. Alice goes back into the ring. He steals the bow and dagger. Jin Hyuk says, thanks for the gift. After that we see at the Tower of Trials third floor Church of Hatred. We see that an executive of the demonic human is saying, we can't even enter the 10th floor without Uncount's permission. We're gonna miss out on all the relics that are available for 10 days after the floor is open. Just dealing with KNAG Jin Hyuk is enough, but to also have to deal with unknown. I didn't think just two people could fuck things up so badly. Melina stands up and starts to walk away. Executive says, Melina, where are you going? She says, to rest. She come out of the room and says these idiots. They don't even know that KNAG Jin Hyuk is unknown. Just thinking about it makes my brand burn. I'll die if I reveal it. After that we see that a man and woman are walking in. She stops them and says, who are you to enter? We see that they are high vampires like Alice. That kills the guards that are standing there, Melina is also injured. One the vampires tastes the blood on his sword and says, their blood tastes just as cheap as them. Other vampires says, you need to fix your habit of trying to eat whatever you see. It's hard to find humans with good blood. Melina thinks, these bastards, they were so fast I couldn't see them. She says, what are they? One of them puts the sword against Melina's neck and says, well then. Shall we see what her blood tastes like? Lancelot appears there and says, sorry to show up like this. Dear aristocrat of the noble knight, how can I help you? Female vampire says, finally someone who can understand. After that we see that 90 days after the elves forest, the 6th floor, was unlocked. The 7th floor was automatically unlocked. And small things began to happen in preparation for the next step. We see that one of Jin Hyuk's slaves, is sitting and thinking, just on more year, I need to graduate at least. No maybe the world will have ended by then. A message popped up saying, the long-awaited veteran corporation shareholders meeting will begin soon. Employees, gather at Tower of Trails first floors Moon Lake by 1400. We will come find you if you're absent of late. She gets really angry and says, stop bossing me around, you piece of shit, Kong Jin Hyuk. We see at the Tower of Trails first floor Moon Lake. Jin Hyuk says, you're all on time. They all get there, she says, we pulled all nighters make those chess horses, can't you just let us go? Yeah, please stop with this elderly abuse. Jin Hyuk says, if you want, you can just quit. They gets excited and says, really? Then I quit. Me too. Jin Hyuk says, alright. And bring out his dagger and says, but we need to pay compensation in case of death. So can you tell me your bank account details? They both get excited. Old man says, getting a job these days is so hard, I've been thankful to you. She says, getting a job early is always good. Jin Hyuk says, the, I assume there's no one else who would like to quit. Shall I get to the point? We'll do a short introduction round first. And each one of you can report to me what happened. Kim Hee-wong says, hello. I'm Kim Hee-wong, a proxy guild master of the Black Crow Guild. Park Hanna says, I'm Park Hanna, I run errands for Kong Jin Hyuk. Kim says, I've gotten information that Jang Yunsuk from Dangan Guild's second attack squad has entered the seventh floor. According to the information, he's trying to find some kind of feather. We see that Tower of Trials seventh floor tundra. Has a snowstorm all the time. If you make it from the starting point to the end, the next floor opens up. But the seventh floor is infamous for requited a lot of time and preparation for the raid due to its harsh environment. Jin Hyuk thinks, a feather. It must be the phoenix feather. Well, blessing of the flames would be real helpful when going through the seventh floor. Park Hanna says, Chun Yu Sung has fully recovered and has been discharged from the hospital. And he told me to tell you that he's gonna kill you. Jin Hyuk says, it does sound like he's fully recovered. Next, Takeshi is also there and says, I'm Takeshi from the Samurai Guild. It's an honor to be able to see you again. I've stolen the item you wanted from the Temple of Medusa. I'm sure they're in a frenzy because of their national treasure disappearing. Jin Hyuk says, nice good job. He gets Heaven's Fountain Sword. Jin Hyuk says, well, I don't have a use for this now that I have the canine. But I guess I can trade it off for something useful later. 
and says, next. After that we see that, Andrea is also there she says, hello, I'm Andrea, in charge of the fifth floor. The organization of power is complete on the fifth floor. There are almost no players coming to the fifth floor, but I'm increasing our forces in case there are. They all are confused to hear that Park Hannah thinks, wait. What do you mean you're in charge of the fifth floor? Jin Hyuk says, Andrea here is the boss of the fifth floor. Floor management must be a lot of work good job. They all are surprised to hear that and says, boss. They all gets really scared and says, why is a boss monster here? You what have you been doing? They all starts to run a ways. Jin Hyuk sees toward Andrea and says, Andrea grown a lot. Is it because of Alice's teachings? Jin Hyuk says, there's no reason to be scared. Next up is, Melina form the Demonic Humans Association. The all are surprised again and says, Demonic Humans Association. Jin Hyuk says, stop stalling and give the report. She says, yeah, yeah. There was an important incident. There was higher floor organization that approached up. Jin Hyuk says, higher floor. We see a flash we the vampires says, we're the blood relative of the Dikasis family who worship Amulam. If you help us, we will make sure that you obtain what you want. I've heard that you need a relic from the 11th Froom. Lancelot says, how intriguing. Then, can you tell us what it is you want from us? A prisoner we had on the first floor ruins escaped. You guys are gonna need to help us in catching the escapee. Melina thinks, escaped prisoner. Jin Hyuk says, and they would give the apostate's bracelet from the 11th floor. Melina says, yeah, it's what the association's higher ups really want to have. Alice start to react, Jin Hyuk thinks why is Alice reacting like this. Jin Hyuk says, that's all for today. She comes out of the rings really angry and says, those Dikasis guys. They're one of the pieces of shits that betrayed me. I will find them and tear them to pieces. Alice sees toward Jin Hyuk and says, right you. Didn't you promise me, that you would help me fulfill my revenge? This is our chance, you're gonna help me, right? Jin Hyuk says, that promise to help you avenge your betrayal. I plan on keeping it no matter what. Don't worry, but, we need to be careful right now. I don't have enough mana to fully embody you powers. Revealing ourselves to those guys is more dangerous for us than for them right now and you're gonna have to refrain from coming out of the necklace for a bit. She says, but, Jin Hyuk smiles and says, Alice, please trust me. She says, dibs on the chicken drumsticks today. Jin Hyuk says, all right you can have them all. Jin Hyuk thinks, I've managed to calm her down, but I should prepare just in case. After that we see at the seventh floor tundra. Inside a tent someone is saying, so the eastern sea is also blocked. Yes there are too many glaciers for us to get through. The temperature's too low, and it's humid too, so it's hard to start a fire. On top of that, the supply route to gate is invisible due to the snowstorm. They say we can't progress like this. Squad captain says, stop saying that we can't and find some other way. We will get through the seventh floor this time, no matter what. One of them says, captain, you should come see this. He comes out and see Kong Jin Hyuk is standing outside. Squad leader says, player Kong Jin Hyuk what brings you here? Jin Hyuk says, I'm here to clear this floor, of course. I see why you guys were struggling so hard. Squad leader says, I'm telling you now, but we don't need help. We can do this on our own just fine. Jin Hyuk says, huh, I never said I was helping. Don't assume. I'm just interested in the phoenix's feather, and you guys just happen to be in my way. Squad leader says, this place is our exclusive route. Are you saying you're gonna invade our territory? Jin Hyuk says, invade. You talk real funny. Someone listening in might think the seventh floor is the Dangan guild's property or something. Squad leader says, that is a provocation. Jin Hyuk says, it's a fair competition, actually. Jin Hyuk says, you can try to stop me if you want. Captain. Jin Hyuk walks inside a forest two men stop him and says, stop. Entry here is not. They see that he is Kong Jin Hyuk. They say, wow, I'm a big fan. What brings you to such a cold place? Jin Hyuk says, I have some business to tend to in the forest. They say, that's not allowed. The forest is dangerous. We're not here standing guard for no reason. 
Jin Hyuk just walked past them and says, thanks for the concern, but don't worry I'll be fine. They says, I didn't even see him walk past me. He's walking above the snow too. I guess even an S rank's walk is different from ours. I guess I gotta report it, though. Squad captain says, gather a team and pursue him immediately. He says, go after him. Squad captain says, player Kong Jin Hyuk said that he's here to collect the feather. In other words, we can get it for ourselves if we follow him. Follow him and find out the method. This is an order as the captain. Jin Hyuk sees a scene where someone has died. He picks up something and says, this is a person from the Dangan Guild's traces. But there's no body. He see big claw marks on a rock in front of him and thinks, this is definitely. Jin Hyuk says, why did you follow me? You said it's dangerous. They say, we can't send you alone to a place like this. I thought maybe you'd need at least some guidance. Jin Hyuk see them and thinks, who's guiding who here? They says, it's so cold. He activates glacier formation and element of fire. He creates an igloo on the spot and they all sit inside it. They says, it sure is nice to have an S rank player around. What a relief. I'm Gok Daeho. Jin Hyuk activates Eye of Gluttony. Jin Hyuk thinks, what boring stat windows. Jin Hyuk says, you're welcome, did Jang Yunsuk order you guys to follow me? They say, what do you mean? Jin Hyuk says, don't lie when you're not good at it. He told you to follow me so you can figure out how to obtain the phoenix's feather. Seeing as you guys came here despite this place being dangerous, that's the only reasonable explanation. Jin Hyuk says, well, I'm not scolding you or anything. There seems to be a more annoying problem than obtaining the phoenix's feather right now. They say what? He says, did you see the big boulder outside? They say yes, the one with the weird pattern, right? He says, that's the mark of an ice troll. The says, I've heard of them. They're supposed to be the strongest intermediate rank, monster on the seventh floor. Jin Hyuk thinks, and that mark, is the mark of the frost blade, tribe, the strongest of the ice trolls. They say, are you saying that this is their territory? Jin Hyuk says, the ice trolls, territory is in the wetern regions, not here. That's why it's annoying. The fact that they're here in the first place is unnatural. And this place is the only route to the island with the phoenix's feather. Jin Hyuk thinks, ice trolls are trying to obtain the phoenix's feather. Despite having ice resistance, something's off. Some ice spears comes toward their igloo. Jin Hyuk activates. Glacier formation. They start to run a ways. And says, find cover. They says, where are they attacking from? I can't see clearly. Jin Hyuk is standing out in the open they says, player Kong Jin Hyuk you have to hide. We see that some more spears come toward him. He dodges them all. He says, you should know by now that this won't work. Come out. They are the high vampires, they says, so you're Kong Jin Hyuk. Female vampire says you're pretty cute. Alice gets really angry and Jin Hyuk uses eye of gluttony. And Jin Hyuk thinks, calm down, Alice. Jin Hyuk see his stats window, his name is Lior de Bershin, level, 108 and age 1082. Jin Hyuk cover his one eye and says, there's a big enough level difference that just looking at his stat window using eye of gluttony. Uses up a lot of mana. These copy requirements are hard. Each one has so many penalties. One of them comes out and says, Kong Jin Hyuk are you okay? Jin Hyuk says, Gok Daeho. Take your companions and get out of here. Get out of the forest and call for support. Gok says, then what about you? Are you gonna face all of them alone? Jin Hyuk bring out his bow and says, I'll be fine. Just buy me a drink once we're done here and go back. Promise. Gok friends grab and they drag him away. A copy condition window appears saying, survive after saying four death flag worthy things. If successful, you can copy one of the opponent's skills. Each saying will temporarily lock one of you already possessed skills. You have accomplished the first death flag saying. Thousand poison has been locked. After that we see that an ice troll punches Jin Hyuk, he dodges it. And punches the ice troll. The vampire says, Kong Jin Hyuk. How can blood smell so sweet? I'm getting more and more interested in you. Them come to him and says, that's enough. Kong Jin Hyuk. I heard a lot about you from the demonic humans, you're apparently pretty strong for a human. They says, my name is Lior de Bershin. 
I'm affiliated with Decasis. She says my name is Ophelia. I have the same affiliation as him. Jin Yuk arcs is this all you doing? Involving ice trolls and kidnapping humans. Ophelia says, straight to the point. You don't seem surprised by us. Yeah, you're right. You can say it's a trap we created. Jin Yuk says, a trap. Ophelia says, a trap to ensnare someone skilled enough. To notice unnatural events in Tundra. The demonic humans told me. The names of the people who made it out alive of the first floor's hall of the depraved. Teresa de Laurentia. An unidentifiable man, unknown. Chun Yu Sung. And someone who acted as a porter but turned out be skilled. Yu Kong Jin Hyuk. Or certain that one of those who made it out alive. Helped Alice Khan Ataraxia escape. And. Coincidentally, you're the first one to come to this place. Why would that be? Liorda says, I'll tell you this now, but you shouldn't expect help from the other humans outside the forest. The demonic humans should be there to get rid of them soon. Then, is it my turn to ask questions? Where's Alice right now? Jin Hyuk says, Alice, I don't know who you're talking about. Bershin says, well, I guess we have no choice if you want to play dumb. Bershin bring out his weapon and says, I'll force you to remember. Bershin jumps with super speed and get behind Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk sees him. He activates. Dark fighting spirit. Some dark energy attacks come toward Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk blocks and dodges some attacks. Ophelia says, Bishan, you can't kill him, we need him alive. He kicks Jin Hyuk's and says, I'm aware, Ophelia. Jin Hyuk dodges his kick. Bershin thinks, I'm aware, but this human's better than I thought. Then, Bershin activates Blood Jade. It covers Jin Hyuk's eyes. The opponent's sight will be blocked for 30 seconds. Jin Hyuk gets surrounded by blood balls. He activates blood. Thorn. Jin Hyuk activates. Element of fire. He burns the blood. Jin Hyuk says. That's not gonna work well on me. Ophelia thinks. I heard he's strong for a human. But he's not losing at all again Bershin. Is he. The one who helped Alice escape. Barshan says. You're pretty good for a trapped rat. Jin Hyuk says, a trapped rat. You guys told me an interesting fact first, so I'll tell you guys one too. I already know you guys would come find me. Barshan says, you already knew. Jin Hyuk says, I have a lot of places I can get information from. Squad captain says, an ambush. Get in defense position. Damn it, an ambush from fellow humans. There's no time to waste. Hurry. We see that Teresa is also there. She activates, sacred blessing. Divine power has been reinforced by 20%. Teresa says, I'll support please get in position. Lee Taemin and Yu Yanwa are there too. They says, kill them all. Chun Yu Sung is also there, he hits them with an really powerful attack. Chun says, a shame to use this on such trash. They both are really surprised to hear that. Jin Hyuk says, I prepared a bit for you guys. What do you think? Do you like it? After that we see that Lee activates. Machine Monarch. A tank appears and kill a lot of them. And some drones also appears. Young Noah is jumping from one drone to another she activates, Mana Reinforcement. She activates Angle of Wind. And Teresa is granting them divine effects. Demonic humans are not good against divine power. One of them says, Sir Lancelot, we should retreat and re-prepare. Ophelia feels something, and thinks, this disgusting feeling is, divine power, that's irritating, she says, Bershin, he says, I felt it too, Ophelia, he activates, blood pool, he gets trapped inside a blood ball, Ophelia says, the divine power created a variable we didn't expect, Bershin says, we need to retreat for now and change the plan, Jin Hyuk uses element of fire to come out of the blood ball, he says, I thought I already said that won't work with me. He sees that they are running away. Barshan says, Kong Jin Hyuk, I will make sure to kill Yo with my own hand. Jin Hyuk activates daylight. Jin Hyuk says, what? You should finish you sentences. A hug light beam appears and hits them. The forest splits in two. Jin Hyuk is surprised and says, did, did I get rid of them? A message popped up saying, you have accomplished the second death flag saying, Element of fire has been locked. Jin Hyuk says, the most cliche death flag sentences work well. Element of fire was locked. Did I counterband them? Jin Hyuk says, calm done Alice. 
it's not time yet. After that we see that Dangan Guild camp is burned to the ground. They say to Teresa, thank you so much. If it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't have survived. Teresa says, it's nothing, I'm just glad you're all okay. Teresa says, Captain Young Yunsuk, the damages to the camp are bad. The demonic humans will definitely continue to attack us. Why don't we retreat outside of the tower? Jin Hyuk and I will be in charge of defense on the way there. Squad Captain says, Kong Jin Hyuk. I see, it's him again. She says, Jin Hyuk over here. They goes to him. Jin Hyuk says, must have been sudden. Thanks for coming all the way here. Lee says, you always contact us out of nowhere. Yanwa says, it's fine. I wanted to get a few items here anyway. Jin Hyuk sees Chun and says, I didn't know he was also here. We've managed to block the demonic humans. But we can't let our guard down since we don't know who was behind it. For demonic humans to ambush a huge guild. What is happening? Jin Hyuk says, the demonic humans are working together with the high vampires from the higher floors of the Tower of Trials. And I think they're scheming something here in Tundra. They says, what? Jin Hyuk says, from what I've gathered, that the enemy wants, is an outbreak. The ice trolls were defending the location with the phoenix's feather, despite already having ice resistance. And the phoenix's feather is famous for ice resistance. However, if you combine it with the right item, it can also become a portal. Chun says, how is that related to an outbreak Kong Jin Hyuk? Isn't that too far-fetched? Dangan guild members were kidnapped. And a lot of them at that. I think, they're planning to combine humans with the phoenix's feather to get out of the tower. Teresa gets really scared and says, no then a large outbreak. Like the one is Amsterdam. Chun calms her down and says, don't worry that won't happen. He's probably saying all that because he has a plan. Just tell us the plan. Jin Hyuk says, you know me too well. Is it because of how you were acting like a stalker all this time? After that we see that Ophelia and Bershin are bowing in front of someone. He says, is that human, Kong Jin Hyuk, that strong? You couldn't even bring back a prey caught in a trap. I am greatly disappointed. At this rate, how will you catch the escapee? Barshan says, I'm sorry. There was an unexpected variable. Ophelia says, the human, Kong Jin Hyuk, he wasn't surprised when he saw us. He was able to calmly respond to the skills that Bershan used against him as well. Vampire leader says, he was able to fight back against our skills. Ophelia says, and one thing was clear. It was subtle. But when he was fighting Bershan, I sensed Alice Von Ataraxia's energy. He says, really? Then, we may find her sooner than we expected. I feel a bit better now. After that we see that Lee's drones are flying around in the area. Jin Hyuk says, Taemin and Yanwa will stand by in the forest. We'll use the drones to catch the demonic human's attention. Teresa and Stalker will separate from the group to fulfill their task. Chun gets really angry and says, Is that the kind of bullshit plan you have? Jin Hyuk says, You have no choice, do what I say. I don't get why he always complains. He's gonna do what I say anyway. The Dangan Guild will abandon camp and evacuate to the outside of the tower. Except one person who refused until the end. Jin Hyuk says, I don't care whether you stay behind or not. But why are you following me? He says, are you really asking that because you don't know? This is the property of the Dangan Guild. And I'm in charge. Anyway, where are we going? Jin Hyuk says, we or going towards a freshwater lake. A freshwater lake. Freshwater lake. It's where mana is most concentrated on the seventh floor. When something bad haps to the tribe, the Frostblade tribe's chief comes here to reserve mana. In order to flip the tables. After that we see at the troll tribe and outside of it Jin Hyuk and the captain is standing with a white flag. And they start to walk. Captain says, but why do I have to hold this? Isn't it the responsibility of the person in charge? You said earlier that you're the person in charge. Captain says, the trolls aren't attacking like you said. Jin Hyuk says, this ice trolls aren't that savage. They value honor very highly. They prioritize family over everything. So as long as you hold up the white flag, they won't attack us. Captain says, honor, my ass. They're just a mob. Tribe chief says, I've heard a lot about you. You beat up my tribe member with you bare hands. 
You seem pretty strong. Shy did you surrender so easily? His name is Kalakal. Jin Hyuk says, is this the same ice troll? Why is he so big? Jin Hyuk throws the flag and says, I have no intention of actually surrendering. I only pretended to have done so in order come here without fighting anyone. Chief gets really angry and says, what? Are you saying you lied? Don't you know the honor of a warrior? How can you stand in front of me with so much confidence? After committing such a dishonorable act, Chief bring out his weapon and says, meet you death with honor in order to wash away the dishonorable action. Following the old tradition, I, Kalakal, the chief of Frostblade tribe, request a duel. Jin Hyuk says, what do you think? Do you still want to be in charge? Captain says, no. Jin Hyuk says, alright, then just watch. After that we see at Zonghua Guild headquarters. Guild master is angry and says, what kind of situation is this? All those member with 3s ranks. Did in the elven forest. Grand elder says, I don't think Kong Jin Hyuk is an opponent you can win against. Guild master says, no Moyong Su, if you just give me one more chance. Grand elder says, how much more do you need to be embarrassed in order to learn? Don't involve yourself with him any longer. After that we see that Chun is really angry and says, I'll kill him, Kong Jin Hyuk, with my own hands. Then we see that Jin Hyuk is fighting with the troll chief. Chief attack him with full power he deflects the attack. Chief activates chief's cry. Jin Hyuk activates 2 star. Barrier, distortion barrier. Distorting the direction of the attack. Jin Hyuk says, I have this thought every time. But he's definitely strong for a troll. Jin Hyuk activates glacier formation. And hits the chief with a lot of ice spikes. He jumps with his twin dragon swords in his hand. He activates grave of swords. And hits the troll with a powerful attack. All the trolls and captain are surprised to see that. Captain thinks, he defeated him within 5 minutes. Chief says, you're strong, human. It's my loss. Please kill me with honor. Jin Hyuk says, I don't know about honor. But I know a lot about ice troll traditions. Absolute obedience to the winner in a duel. It's an unbreakable and divine rule. And do you know what I thought of when I won against you? I thought that you're good enough to win against the demonic humans and the decasis mosquitoes. So why are you obedient to them? Chief says, I assume you're talking about Ophelia and Bershin. I'm not obedient to them because I lost in a duel. I lost to someone who was incomparably stronger than those two. That's why I'm obedient to them. His name is Michael, a high class kin of the Decasis family. As long as he exists, I stand no chance against him even if our entire tribe were to fight alongside me. Chief says, I know there's no hope for neither me nor my tribe. So at least grant me an honorable death. Jin Hyuk thinks, a high class kin of the Decasis family. I see how it is. Jin Hyuk says, you said you're Kalakal, right? To hell with the honorable death thing, let's do one thing together. I'll help you take back future for you and your tribe. You have to obey me anyway right? Jin Hyuk says, to captain that I'll leave those guys to you as collateral. After that we see that demonic humans are running after Lee's drones. Lancelot says, isn't something off. The drones that are scouting are being detected by us continually. Isn't scouting supposed to be a discreet thing? What do you think, Sir Michael? Michael says, you're pretty smart for a human. He says, Ophelia. She says, yes. Michael says, go to the freshwater lake. We haven't gotten any messages from the Frostblade tribe in a while. It seems Kong Jin Hyuk is bringing them to his side. I assume those drones are bait to distract us. If Kalakal seems any bit suspicious, kill them all. She says, I'll do as you say, Sir Michael. He says, Bershin, get that ready. Barshan says, yes. Michael says, demonic human, I'll get rid of those annoying drones in the meantime. Lancelot says, thank you, Sir Michael. Michael activates climate reformation. The weather is getting worse. All his are destroyed. Lee says, Nuna, the drones are all down. I think he's noticed. She activates heavenly flower cultivation technique. And says, it's about time. They're gonna be here soon. You get ready too. Taman. Lee says, okay. He activates great fortress. Machine core. Codes. Lancelot says, prepare to attack. We see that Ophelia is flying towards the freshwater. And thinks, is he trying to take the phoenix's feather using the ice trolls? 
That's clever. She sees Jin Hyuk and Chief are getting along really well. And says, are they already on his side? She says, fools. There's a reason I stationed the military headquarters at the Freshwater Lake Canyon. She activates Mana Storm. She says, it's because it's easy to bury them all at once if something goes wrong. She hits the tribe with the storm. She comes down and says, what a shame. His blood smelled real sweet. Yangwa hears the sound of the attack and says, that was a really big sound coming from where Jin Hyuk Opa is. Lee says, would he be okay? Jin Hyuk appears right behind him says, yeah, I'm fine. I'm right here. Lee gets really scared. Yangwa says, what the hell? When did you get here? Lee says, you need to make some sound when you walk. You scared me. Yangwa says, wait, if you're here, then who's at the lake? Ophelia sees something and says, what is this? We see that it was all in two-star illusion barrier. She thinks it was all an illusion. Then what was it for? Teresa activates blessing of the star. And says, just as Jinhyuk said. I won't kill you if you surrender now. Ophelia smiles and says, I've fallen right into his trap. I despise divine power. Yanwa says, let's get started. She starts to run toward demonic humans. Demonic human says, the enemy's approaching alone. Lancelot says, don't let your guard down just because it's one person. The activate dark projective body. She dodges all the attacks left and right. Lee attacks them using robots. Demonic humans activate Mana Shield. Lancelot thinks, how bold. They attacked us first despite having fewer numbers. She jumps and ready her fire fist. And Teresa also jumps and ready to attack. Teresa attacks her with a really powerful attacks. Ophelia says, divine power is so annoying. Chief says, there's no time to watch. Hurry. There's a long way to go. It's begun. A battle that we can't turn back from. After that we see that Teresa overpowering Ophelia. She hits Ophelia, really hard. Ophelia goes, flying and hits a boulder. She gets up and says, you disgusting little paladin. So annoying. Teresa walks toward Ophelia with an epic look on her face. Ophelia says, did you know that? While we were here fighting, the demonic humans were attacking your teammates. They're probably begging to be spared right now. She smiles and says, no way. My teammates aren't that weak. Yangwa is beating up a lot of demonic humans all by herself. Lancelot sees that and thinks, you Yangwa. She's basically a monster. She's not losing at all despite fighting all of us just by herself. But I don't see Teresa. We'll be able to win. He says, surround her. Yangwa thinks. It was convenient with Teresa here because of her buff magic. But it's starting to get a bit hard. She says, Taman. A lot of landmines appears on demonic human's head. Lancelot sees them and thinks, those are. Lee uses anti-tank landmine. Yanwa runs away. Lancelot see that and says, Yu Yanwa's running away. We can't let her go. Running away. That's cowardly. Catch her. Michael say to him in his head. Foolish Lancelot. This is a trap. He stops all demonic humans and says, stop chasing her. Yanwa reaches the forest. Lee says, those bastards suddenly stopped. Yanwa says, what? Then what do we do? They have to come this way. Jin Hyuk thinks, did they realize it's a trap? Our landmines are gonna go to waste. Jin Hyuk feels something and says, retreat to the ridge. Someone hits them with huge dark gravity bomb. It destroys the entire forest. They are running away on the other side of the forest. Demonic human sees them and says, they're coming out of the forest circumvent the forest and chase them let's go lancelot thinks running away from the dire wolves in the snow how foolish they climb a mountain and lee says it's too hard to run because of all the snow lee tame in hurry lancelot is right behind them and thinks we've almost caught them lancelot gets scared and says you're we see that jin hyuk and uncount both are there at the same time lancelot says unknown after that we that at the Zonghua Guild building. Someone is right outside the building ready to attack them. One of them says, Nangong Tian, it's serious. That person destroys the gate. We see that it's unknown. It's Chun pretending to be unknown. He bring out a paper and says, listen up, Zonghua Guild, you weaklings. Is this shitty guild really supposed to be the strongest in China? You'd do better running a Chinese restaurant. 
Guildmaster says, wait what? What are you talking about? Unknown says, I'm taking the Zhonghua Guild sign away. Don't ever show yourself in front of me again. Guildmaster says, wait, wait. Stop cutting me off. What are you talking? If you're mad, then come to the succinct floor of the Tower of Trials right now. Guildmaster says, no I get it, so please listen. Unknown says, you'll be facing not only me, but also Kong Jinhyuk, the strongest in the universe. We'll beat you to a pulp. Guildmaster gets really angry and says, what the fuck? How arrogant. Unknown says, then goodbye. He blow up the guild building. Guildmaster is really angry and reaches the seventh floor of the Tower of Trials. Guildmaster is standing right beside Unknown and Jinhyuk. Lancelot see that and thinks. Who are they? I've never received information that Unknown's allied with anyone. Someone says, to Guildmaster Nangong Tian, it's Kong Jinhyuk's army all around. We sense several strong auras. Guildmaster says, Kin Jinhyuk you made it sound like it'd be only be you, but you brought support. Unknown comes to Jinhyuk and says, how dare you make me recite that childish letter. You'll definitely pay for this. Jinhyuk says yeah, yeah. Let's get this over with first. The both jumps towards each side. Gil. Master says, attack get rid of all of them. Lancelot also ordered to attack. Jinhyuk thinks, the little misunderstanding created. Made he demonic humans and Zhonghua guild fight each other without even understanding why. Jinhyuk is laughing really hard and says, and that was enough to turn the tables of the battlefield. Lancelot activates a knight's oath and says, we'll get this over quickly and take down unknown. Guildmaster activates, or a blade, and says, we need to hurry and then take down Kong Jinhyuk. All four for them are running away. Jinhyuk says, they're having fun. They can fight until they feel better. They reach the unmalting valley. Jinhyuk says, this is a secret place that only I know. Let's talk about our plans where and warm up a bit. Chief says, welcome I was waiting for you. They all get really sacred to see the ice trolls, Lee says, what are these ice trolls doing here? Jinhyuk says, no need to be nervous. They were being controlled by the vampires. They're cooperating with us in return for us freeing them. Chun says, you're rather good at pulling others to your side. Jinhyuk says, you unsheathed your sword, didn't you? They says, Jang Yunsuk's here too. He's collateral. Just pretend he's not here. We see that Teresa is also there. Some child trolls are helping her. She says, sorry, Jinhyuk. I ended up losing Ophelia. Jinhyuk says, I guess capturing her alive was too hard. Good work anyway, Teresa. Yanwa says, what are you gonna do now, Opa? I think thing have escalated a lot more than we expected. The enemy will head toward the island with the phoenix's feather, to get out of the tower. Thankfully, we're in a more advantageous location than them. We need to prepare a lot of things before the get here. They says, what preparations? Jinhyuk says, as much preparation as possible. All four of his veteran squad member are here. Chief bring out a red pill and says, this is an essence I've been collecting to revolt against Michael. A message popped up saying, essence of souls. Allows you to use the mana collected in the essence for two hours. It's a precious item we obtained by risking building a camp in the freshwater lake valley. He give it to Jinhyuk and says, the fact that I'm giving this to you. Signifies my complete trust in you. Jinhyuk think, this is an essence event that usually occurs when you subjugate other tribes. But I guess it's happening in this manner this time. Chief says, I decided to give you my full trust after seeing you fight for us. Jinhyuk says, he seems to be gravely misunderstanding something. Chief says, let's make sure we don't regret anything in this war so that we won't be slaves anymore. Jinhyuk says, freedom sounds good. Let's do it. Jinhyuk makes a big mark on the ground. Michael says, how bold. You exposed your location first. Jinhyuk says, I heard you made the demonic humans fight other humans. And convinced Kalakal to become your ally. Michael smiles and says, you seem quite clever. So why do you do something so foolish? He uses essence of souls. His men go from 113 to 320. Reaming time 2 hours. Jinhyuk's level is 42. Jinhyuk thinks this guy is Michael. Jinhyuk activates Eye of Gluttony. 
A message popped up saying, you cannot use this skill due to the level difference. Jin Hyuk thinks, we have this big of a power gap despite the essence. Jin Hyuk says, you must be Michael. I assume you're trying to leave the tower by using the phoenix's feather. Michael says, oh, you realized impressive. Makes sense that you were able to help Alice escape. Jin Hyuk says, Alice, I don't know who you're talking about. Michael says, there's no point in playing dumb. Or certain that you, re the one, who helped Alice escape. Michael says, where is she right now? If you tell me where she is, I'll let you live. Ophelia was desiring you blood too. Jin Hyuk thinks, these guys are want to make me their lunch. Jin Hyuk says, no thanks. What I don't get is why you want to get out of the tower. Michael gives an evil smile and says, the reason. Jin Hyuk feels really strong pressure. Michael activates Blood Wayport. Michael says, Blood Wayport, it's a technique that take human blood as a sacrifice to form a creature. It was rather easy to find sacrifices since human came to me on their own. We call these creatures that are without reason gasolers. Some blood creatures appears there. Michael says, what do you think? Aren't they cute? We need the phoenix's feather to send these gasolers out of the tower. And to get even more human blood from outside the tower. Michael starts to laugh and sighs, we will keep creating gasolers using human blood. Until we have a military that can conquer this tower. Jin Hyuk thinks, I've never seen this pattern before. Did the existence of humans outside the tower become a variable in this situation? Michael says, bring me the phoenix's feather. Those creatures runs towards Jin Hyuk, he says. You made some really annoying creatures. He says but it's okay. One of the creatures dies. I have no intentions at all to give you the phoenix's feather. Jin Hyuk's friends are there as well. Michael says, what have you hidden in the forest? Michael turn around. Jin Hyuk activates daylight. Says, you, focus on me. Michael's hand becomes a really big blood hand. He says with an evil smile on his face that I'll beat you up until you beg for me to kill you. Kim activates strong will and Yuri is sitting on his shoulders. A message popped up saying, you will now suffer from fatigue for 20 minutes. A lot of blood monster are running after them. She activates one of her statues to attack the blood monster but blood overpower her statues. She says, damn it, why are there so many of them? This was never mentioned in the briefing. She calls Mina and says, honey how's the situation over there? After that we see that old man activated fire element. And says, it's been a long time since I've fought like this. It's as if I've been rejuvenated. He throws the fireballs at the monster and kills a lot of them. Mina says to Yuri, the grandpa's compatibility against these monsters is good, so we're hanging in there. But I still think we need about 20 more minutes. Yuri gets really angry and says, damn it. Can't you go faster? I don't know how much longer I can handle this. Kim says, that's dangerous. Please stop. Yuri, we can't help it that it takes time drawing this with our footprints. Please protect me a bit longer. Yuri gets really angry and says, why is it always me? Why do you always give me the hard jobs, Kong Jin Hyuk? Teresa is also killing a lot of them using her divine powers. One of the blood monsters bite Teresa on the shoulder. She uses holy explosion. A really big explosion happened. All the blood monster around her dies. She thinks everyone's doing their best to stop them. Because if we fall, an outbreak will definitely happen. So there's no way I'd let that happen. She gets ready to fight again and a lot of monster jumps toward her. Jin Hyuk jumps toward Michael with his fist ready. Michael activates blood fists a lot of blood fists appear behind him. Jin Hyuk dodges all the blood fists. Some really big blood hands surround him. And grab him. He activates the blessing of the stars. And destroys all the blood hands. Michael says, ha, huh, so you know how to use divine powers. Jin Hyuk punches Michael. Michael dodges his punch easily and says, but that's not good enough. Michael sees something gets really surprised. And says, you're not a sane person, are you? To think that you'd be happy that your attack didn't follow through. Jin Hyuk give an evil smile. Ophelia and Barshan return and says, we've returned after completing the spell, Michael. Michael smiles and says, good, you both should also unsheathe your weapons. We'll attack him together. Both of them are surprised to hear that. And says, as you command. The both bring out their weapons. 
Jin Hyuk gets really excited and he has an epic look on his and he says. What the? Gonna come at me all at once. So unfair. Michael is also excited and says, that's what you say, but why does it look like you're happy about it? Confess where Alice is and we won't kill you. Jin Hyuk says, I really don't know. A huge blood fist appears behind him, Michael says. Lies. Ji Hyuk destroys the blood fist with his dagger. Barshan attack him with his sword. He dodges all his attack with ease. Barshan screams and says, where's Alice? Ophelia appears behind Jin Hyuk ready to attack. Jin Hyuk says, why do you guys keep picking on me? He grabs Ophelia's hand says, I said I don't know. How many times do I have to tell you that? A blood fist hits Jin Hyuk in the back. He goes flying. Jin Hyuk stops himself. Michael says, the I have no choice but to keep beating you up. They starts to attack him at once he deflects their attacks, with his dagger, left and right. He is gets some scratches on his body. Yuri activates something and says, it's done. A huge magic circle appears on the ground. Barshan says, what's this? When was a huge barrier set up? Jin Hyuk activates 4 Stark Barrier Temporal Confinement. Jin Hyuk says, you keep whining, Alice this, Alice that. Jin Hyuk brings out the ring says, did you miss her that much? He injects mana in Bram's ring. He says, she's pretty pissed, you know. They all are surprised to see her. Jin Hyuk says, I hope you can all come to an agreement. Michael says, the real thing showed up. A message popped up saying, due to the weakening of the tower's restraints, 20% of your maximum power has been released. Alice release huge amount of mana. Ophelia says, despite being in those ruins for so long, she can still use this much power. She says, I am Alice von Ataraxia. I've lost much while being exiled within the darkness. I will now have you hold accountable for all your sins. You dirty traitors. Jin Hyuk calls Yunsuk and say, it's finally time for you to be useful. Yunsuk gets angry and says, what? Jin Hyuk says, just kidding. I really need your help. Please find the magic crystal that's the root of the magic procedure with Kalakal. You have to hurry. We don't know how long the people can hold on. Troll chief start to run toward the blood monster, and says, hold on tight. Chief activates white beast. Messages popped saying, imbuing transparency on the currently equipped weapon. Attack power has increased by 15%. Attack speed has increased by 15%. Chief says, monsters like these wouldn't be guarding the magic crystal. I have a few other guesses, so let's check those out. Yunsuk thinks, why do I have work with this kind of mob? I'm the second captain of the Dangan Guild. Chief says, don't worry, I'll make sure to protect you. Troll thinks, I can't lose the only method of communication with Kong Jinhyuk. Alice fly really high and activates blood spears. Judgment. A really huge spear appears and hits them. A really strong shock wave hits them all. Youngwoo is barely holding on and says, I'm about to go flying. Chun is also struggling. And Teresa as well. And Teresa thinks, this is coming from where Jinhyuk is. What kind of a fight is going on right now? Michael uses blood hand cover himself and his friends. He says, pretty impressive. Jinhyuk says, Alice, it seems like you two have a lot to talk about, you can take Michael. I'll take care of the rest and then join you. Alice says, are you saying you don't think I can face them all at once? Jinhyuk says, no. I just don't want you to take on all the risk on your own. Or teammates. And Alice. He smiles and says, nothing. I'll tell you after all this is over. Alice says, that's lame. A message popped up saying, the third line of death flag line has been counted. Invincible will be sealed. Jin Hyuk says, I'll take you minions on. They goes with Jin Hyuk. Michael says, long time no see, former patriarch of the Ataraxias. How have you been? She gets really angry and jumps toward him and says, you bastard. Don't you dare say my name with that dirty mouth of yours. Michael blocks her attacks with blood hands. And says, you shouldn't have left that place. This is all you can do because of the tower's restrictions. When you used to be called the world's strongest. Seeing you in battle in such a weakened state. Is such a sad reality for me. She says, enough with your fakeness. I can still win if it's against you. She uses blood explosion. Michael is unharmed and says. To protect the balance of the tower. You're like this now because you strived after a foolish goal like that. 
You have the power to reach a much higher position, so why do you risk everything for some meaningless peace and balance? That was the problem with you. It's my turn, Miss Alice. He wears a blood called Vischa. And says, please take a look at how much I've grown. She says, how dare you, you young little. Barshan says, this time will be different. Jin Hyuk says, you make it sound like you guys were going easy on me. Barshan says, that's true. I left you alive for information. Ophelia says, but since Alice is here, there's no need to keep you alive. Jin Hyuk says, is that so? Then I'll show you my real power too. What I've shown you until now, was only 20% of what I am really capable of. The both are confused. A message popped up saying, the fourth line of death flag lines has been counted. He successfully copies mana blood sucking rank A. Jin Hyuk thinks, I kept you alive and took all you beatings to get this skill. Mana blood sucking, a skill you must copy no matter what if you come across vampires. If I combine this with a divine skill, he combines mana blood sucking and blessing of the start. He obtained soul blood sucking rank S. A message popped up saying, you will earn 0.01 spirit stat per hit. Ophelia sees that and says, this energy is mana blood sucking. That's a skill only vampires can use. How did he? Bashan says, wait, that's no ordinary mana blood sucking. It's been combined with divine power. Jin Hyuk jumps toward them and says, stop watching and have a taste instead. He hits the Barshan three times and steals 0.3 mana from Barshan. As an effect of soul blood sucking, he gets 0.01 spirit permanently due to the effects of soul blood sucking. Jin Hyuk says, spirit. It synergizes with all the stats you have, and fills your body with vitality. A hidden stat I found by trying 62,000 different combinations. A stat that grows infinitely. There's no longer a ceiling. On how much stronger I can grow. After that Jin Hyuk activates, Sword Demon King steps. He hits them a lot of time and gets a lot of spirit points. He keeps hitting them with an evil look on his face. Ophelia and Barshan are being overpowered by Jin Hyuk and their mana keeps decreasing. Barshan says, now, Ophelia. She activates, blood thrust. He sword get really long, Jin Hyuk dodges it with ease. Jin Hyuk says, you sure are trying. A huge explosion happened where Alice and Michael are fighting. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, I guess he's too much for Alice in her current state. I'll have to get back to her as soon as possible. Jin Hyuk says, I don't have much time, so I'll stop with the state stacking. Jin Hyuk gets really serious and says, fess up what it is that Michael what. Only then will I try to consider keeping you alive. He activates Grave of Swords. Jin Hyuk releases a large amount of mana. They feel really strong pressure. And says, what's with this mana? He was still hiding his true powers. Barshan shouts and says, there's no way we would fall for such. Threat. Jin Hyuk kill him with a single super speed attack and cuts his head off. He says, I only really need one person for information. He looks toward Ophelia with an evil smile and says, then, are you ready for an honest conversation? Ophelia. She gets really scared. After that we see that Alice is struggling against Michael. Michael grabs her with a blood fist and throw her into the ground with full force. She thinks, shit, I don't have enough mana. Michael jumps and hits her with a powerful attack. Blood beasts are fighting against Chief. Chief activates White Beast. They see the crystal they were looking for Chief says, found it but there are a lot blood monster are protecting it. Chief starts to run toward the crystal super fast and says, in order to win this war, we need to destroy the magic crystal. Chief says to Captain, I'll open up a path for you. Can you reach the magic crystal? He says, you're telling me to get past all those monsters and destroy that giant magic crystal. He says, you have a family to protect but I. I just wanted to become popular with women. I just want to become a more successful person. What do you want from me? A lot of blood monster climbs on top of Chief Troll and starts to bite him. Chief says, don't make life so complicated. Life's meaning is much simpler than you'd expect. It's just doing what you can do at the moment. Troll jumps toward the crystal and says, that's the life of a man. Troll Chief falls and says to Captain, go. He bring out his sword and starts run towards the crystal. We see a flashback where someone says, congratulations on becoming the second captain of the Dangan Guild. There aren't many better jobs than this these days. You'll be able to have it all. Money, fame, women. 
Captain thinks, what I can do at the given moment. What I can do right now. What's in front of me right now. He destroys the crystal. A message popped up saying, the mana source of blood vapor has been destroyed. Blood Wayport's magic circle starts to disappear. All of Jin Hyuk's friends are happy to see the magic circle disappear. Jin Hyuk says, they did it. After that we see that Ophelia is drowning. And Jin Hyuk is the one who is drowning her. Jin Hyuk says, my arm's falling asleep. Do you want to talk now? He brings her out of water and she says, 29th floor. We are aiming for the 29th floor. He says, 29th floor. That's where the Empire's forces are. She says, Sir Michael said. That he wants Balmung, which the Empire has. That's all I know. He throw her away and says, Balmung. I see. He says, the best Dragonslayer sword, Balmung. I guess he was gonna use that to kill the dragon of the 48th floor. She cough. Jin Hyuk uses brand of tribulation. On her. Jin Hyuk says, Ophelia do you want to die of live? She starts to cry and says, why are you asking such an obvious question? I wanna live. A message popped up saying, you have earned the other's consent. Brand of tribulation is melting into the opponent's body. Jin Hyuk starts to walk away and says, I look forward to working with you from now on then, Ophelia. After that we see that Alice is being beaten up by Michael. Michael says, I'm sure you've enjoyed you little escape enough. It's now time to go back to where you belong, Miss Alice. Jin Hyuk says, you held on well. And uses Grave of Swords to cut of his blood hand and free the Alice. Michael says, my vista that endured even Miss Alice's attacks. Was sliced through. Alice is happy to see him and says, contractor. Jin Hyuk sighs, good work, Alice. Rest for a bit. Jin Hyuk says, I'll fight you from here onwards. A message popped up saying, the essence of Soul's reaming time is 30 minutes. Michael attacks him with blood fist. Jin Hyuk's it with Grave of Swords. And also hits him a lot of times and gets a lot of spirit due to the effects of soul bloodsucking. Alice sees him fight and thinks, was he always that strong? No, he wasn't. I'm certain, since I was always with him. She gives an epic smile and thinks then. He grew stronger in the short period we were apart. Michael says, annoying parasite. And throw a big blood fist and says, I'll crush you. Jin Hyuk cuts his blood fist into thousands of pieces. Michael is surprised to see that. Jin Hyuk cuts him a lot of times. Michael blocks all his attack using, skill mana barrier. Jin Hyuk thinks, mana barrier. I'm not dealing any damage because the gap between our mana is too big. It's gonna take me ages to catch up to his level with soul blood sucking. After that we that captain is fighting with blood monster. Yanwa gets there and kills one of the monster with her fists. Chun is also there and says, I'm sick and tired of being Kong Jin Hyuk's minion. Chun sees Captain and thinks, he's Dangan's Jang Yunsuk. Did he defeat them all with a broken sword? He's more tenacious than I than I thought. Captain says, Chief Kalakal's dying. Someone, help. He's as a comrade who has protected my life. Teresa says, I'll go. She starts to heal the troll chief by using sacred healing. She gets tired and says, he's over the hump now. Captain says, Kalakal, can you hear me? She falls to ground unconscious. Chun thinks, she's passed out. She tends to overdo it. Jin Hyuk says, do not come here no matter what. Fall back with the injured to the decided location once you're all done. Chun thinks, whatever you're doing, be done with it quickly, Kong Jin Hyuk. We're all reaching our limits here. Jin Hyuk uses Eye of Gluttony. Message popped up saying, Luckstat is being applied. Adaptability stat is being applied. He sees his stats window but it's all question marks. And copy condition window appears saying. Michael is a hunting dog of the Decasis family and the highest ranking vampire with the role of black wings. If you survive a fight with this strong vampire who is usually only seen in the highest floors of the towers, you'll be able to copy one of their skills. Jin Hyuk smiles and thinks, I'm thankful I can even see the copy requirement this time. Michael gets excited and says, you're smiling to yourself again. You sure are an interesting human. Michael activates Moon Hiding Nails and says, let's see how long you can keep up that smile. He attacks Jin Hyuk with a slash attack. Jin Hyuk cuts his attack with Grave of Swords. Michael grabs his sword and says, I'll take out each and every one of your annoying little teeth. He leaves his sword and says, really? Jin Hyuk says really and bring out a bow and hits him with red magic bullet. 
Jin Hyuk jumps backward to increase the distance. Michael gets a small scratch on his face and says, you have a lot of little tricks up your sleeve. If you call angering me a trick that is. Michael gets really angry and activates Hellfire to destroy the world. Alice says, contractor get away. You won't be able to survive if you're hit by that. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, no. I have to be hit in order to survive. Alice shouts and says, what are you talking about? Get out of there. He activates the shield of Perseus and throws it toward her. And says, just watch. He activates Hellfire. A huge mountain of fire appears. Shield protects the Alice. She says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Michael gets really tired and says, think of it as an honor. It's my first time using up all my men against a human. Alice is confused. Michael says, Lady Alice, since the little parasite is gone, shall we begin again? She gets really happy. Michael is surprised to see that. Jin Hyuk jumps above him. Michael says, but how? Jin Hyuk has a really big smile on his face. We see a flashback. Jin Hyuk activates Invincible. A message popped up saying, warning using a skill that goes against causality comes with great mana load. Jin Hyuk says, you don't know how long a second is to someone like me, do you? Jin Hyuk hits him with the bow on the head and says, it's enough to beat you to a pulp. After draining you mana, Michael tries to activate mana shield, but he doesn't have enough mana. Jin Hyuk hits him with a really powerful attack. Jin Hyuk hits him multiple times. Michael thinks, this is impossible. How was he able to survive my hellfire? But also be perfectly fine. Michael grabs his bow and says, I was taken aback for a bit. I never expected to consume all of my mana. But do you think that I'd lose? Against someone like you. Michael kicks him really hard. He goes flying. He appears above him to punch him. But Alice appears in front him and blocks his fist. Michael says, Lady Alice. She says, you fool. Did you think I'd sit by and watch? Michael says, you shouldn't. You've hurt me. She says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Are you okay? I can sense that you're almost out of mana. He says, this much is fine. Jin Hyuk thinks, to be honest, all I'm doing is just protecting Alice. Plus, in 10 minutes, their chance of winning will be completely gone. After that we see that somewhere on the 39th floor, some vampires are watching Jin Hyuk fight using a crystal ball. They say, did he provoke Michael into using his ultimate skill on purpose? I'm rather worried Michael might lose. We cannot lose Alice right in front of us. One of them says, wouldn't it be dangerous if we were to intervene since it's a lower floor? But considering the enormous amount of resources was invested into that place, we should do something. One of them says, X and C on, what should we do? X and C on, says, we'll watch for a while more since it's not over yet. Michael is about to attack Jin Hyuk, Alice grabs his arm and stops him. He says, how can you stand on the side of an inferior human, Lady Alice? You may have been dethroned but is used to respect you. Isn't this a clear betrayal of your own kind? She gets angry and says, betrayal. You dare accuse me of betrayal. What you guys did to me was betrayal. And I'm not on the human's side. Jin Hyuk jumps to kick him. She says, I'm on the contractor's side. Jin Hyuk kicks him really hard. Michael goes flying. Jin Hyuk says, Alice let's go with blood spears. She says, will you be able to handle the mana? He says, yes, I can. She uses blood spear and jumps toward Michael and throws the spears. Spears hits him in the chest. She comes closer to Michael and says, I know you guys are all watching through his eyes. Michael says, you're quick to catch on. She says, you filthy traitors. Heed my words. I will get my revenge no matter what. Michael says, but Lady Alice. Don't you think you're a bit too weak for that? This much won't even pierce heart. Jin Hyuk says, it's okay. Because I will. Jin Hyuk hits the spear and spear goes through his heart. He cough out blood. There is a hole in his body. A message popped up saying, surviving the battle against Michael. You have fulfilled the conditions to copy a skill. He copies moon hiding nails. His level goes up a bunch. And the effect of the essence of souls has ended. He says, easy and falls to the ground unconscious. Alice grabs him and says, contractor. She says, I tasted revenge for the first time thanks to you. I'm very happy. She says, Kong Jin Hyuk. To be honest, a small part of me, didn't trust you. I couldn't figure out the reason you were helping me. But is trust to completely now. 
Thank you. On the 39th floor some gets really angry and says, no way, appraised royal guard lost. To a mere human. The blood waveport was destroyed too. This is gonna be quite a hiccup in the process of acquiring the forces necessary for the attack on the empire. Exencian says, there's no reason to act rashly. It's a shame that the blood waveport was destroyed, but we didn't lose everything. Locating Alice was good enough. Kong Jinhyuk. I'll be watching you. Kong Jinhyuk wakes up. Teresa is there watching him. She says, everyone, he's up. She says, we went to find you because you weren't coming back. We moved you here because we found you. Passed out. No one was in the area where you fought. Besides the dead vampires. Jin Hyuk is something wrong. He says, it's nothing. Thank you, Teresa. Everyone good work. He smiles and says, I'm hungry. Let's eat. After that we see that demonic humans and Chinese guild are still fighting. Guild master raise his hand says, stop. Everyone, stop. You, over there. Why are you attacking us? Is it because Kong Jin Hyuk told you to? Lancelot says, what nonsense is that? We plan on getting rid of you guys and then going after Kong Jin Hyuk. Lancelot says, wait. Kong Jin Hyuk's order. Are you guys not on the same side as Kong Jin Hyuk? They says, shit stop the battle fall back. Ophelia see them from a distance and says, those useless demonic humans. I was wondering what they were doing, but they were just wasting time. She says, at least I survived but. What's with this stupid branding? Every time I think about him, it burns. Melina says, huts like it's burning. She says, you're that rude bitch from earlier. Why are you here? She says, LMAO, you were so arrogant. But it looks like you've been branded too. Ophelia gets angry says, you dare mock me. You, a mere human. She gets scared and says, it was a joke. A message popped up saying, fighting between slaves is forbidden. Brand is burning. Jin Hyuk gets the phoenix's feather rank double A. Jin Hyuk says, clearing the seventh floor will be a piece of cake with this. Do let's eat first. Jin Hyuk has cooked the food. Teresa eats it and says, I've never tasted anything like this before. Yanwa says, wow, Opa's good at cooking too. Well, it's a basic skill. Chief says, thanks, my tribe is alive thanks you. I don't know to repay this debt. A message popped up saying, receive recognition from the Frost Blade tribe's chief, Kalakal. Condition has been fulfilled. You have succeeded in copying White Beast. He says, no need to thank me. It's not like I did it for free. Jin Hyuk says, you just need to pay me 500 magic crystals each month. And for the conveniences sake, it'd be nice if you could leave it at the entrance. Chief is shocked to hear that and turns into stone. Chun says, you devilish bastard. I'm disappointed in myself for reconsidering my opinion of you. Jin Hyuk says, you say that, but you're devouring my food. Chun says, I'm eating because I'm made. My blood pressure rises whenever I think about what you made me do. Jin Hyuk says, then, just tell me, there are many ways to make up for it. Do you want to make a bet? Or short on food anyway? Chun says, a bet. Jin Hyuk Sias, the one to hunt the biggest fish wins. We'll record the loser calling the winner hung and upload it onto YouTube for a week. Chun takes of his shirt and jump into water thinking, I'll win, I'll win. He see a lot of really big fishes and says, upload, my victory. Lee says, Jin Hyuk you're always doing stuff like that. Teresa says yet again. Lee says, you're so evil. Jin Hyuk Sias, he was being annoying with his winning. Yanwa says, maybe Yu Sung Opa's actually enjoying this. Yanwa throws something toward Jin Hyuk and says, right take this. I found it where you were passed out. It's a necklace Jin Hyuk thinks, this is. The object Michael was going to use on Alice. I'll have to look into it. He says, thanks, Yanwa. Where did Jang Yunsuk go? Did he go back with his group? Yinwa says, I don't know. He's been gone for a bit. Chun comes out with a really big fish. After that a message popped up in front of everyone saying, the seventh floor of the Tower of Trials has been cleared. By veteran company group, Guild Master of Dongan Guild gets really angry and starts to throw stuff around and says, You idiot. We sent you so much support. And you got all of it taken away by Kong Jin Hyuk. And you dare come back empty handed. Guild Master throws some paper toward Captain and says, You swore to clear the seventh floor. This is the plan report you turned in. What the hell did you do there? And how did you break your sword? 
Do you know how expensive that was? We see at the Awakened Association that department head says, the seventh floor has been cleared. It was player Kong Jinhyuk once again. He says, according to the Dangan Guild's report, there was a conflict with a higher floor force on the seventh floor. They were aiming for an outbreak with the demonic humans. Player Kong Jinhyuk and his group were able to defeat them. President, should we approach player Kong Jinhyuk? President says, no, let's just watch for now. It's not wise to reveal our intentions so rashly. President says, Kong Jinhyuk. Whether he will stand on the side of humanity. Or on the other side is hard to see as of now. So let's just let them celebrate for now. The world is still in order right now. After that we see that someone says, emergency. VVVIP protocol summons. Spread this information to everyone. Everyone, do just as we practiced. Hurry. Don't miss out on any details. They says, it's a honor. We wish you a happy day. We'll make sure your shopping experience is great. We see that it's Alice. They all call her, Miss VVVIP. She give them a lot of gold and says, the greeting isn't bad. I'll prepay. From now on, anything that my hand touches is mine. I won't take any questions. They picks her up and they start shopping. One of them says, the branch manager passed out. The other one says, leave him be. He's just happy. He just has a weird way of expressing his feelings. Jinhyuk sees toward Alice and thinks looks like Alice has recovered well. He bring out poor Waith's necklace. Rank over rank. He thinks Michael was trying to lock up Alice again with this. Why was he trying to seal her instead of killing her? Is there still something I'm not aware of? I'll have to keep it for now. A message popped up saying, an invitation from Rick Hennessy has arrived. If you bring this invitation, you can attend the masquerade ball being held on the first floor of the Tower of Trials. Jinhyuk thinks, a masquerade ball. It's one of the event type quests that are activated once you'll reach the 25th floor. When Tower of Trials was a game, I once attended as a guest. Of course, back, then it was a failed game, so I was the only one to attend. So I just danced around on my own and set things on fire. But this time, it's different. Countless rankers were probably invited this time. Jinhyuk says, Alice, there's somewhere we have to go. After that we see that Tower of Trials first floor neutral zone nameless city. Alice angry and says you promised to let me shop all I wanted. Jinhyuk says, we're here to shop too, so don't be too mad at me. Alice says, is this where we have to go? Jinhyuk says, I need a suit for the masquerade ball. He goes into the shop and sees that, Chun is also there says, you too. Chun gets really angry and says, you. You called for a bet and let me be the only one to die. Jinhyuk says, hey, hey. There's no point in fighting here. Enough with all the mana, the goblins are gonna pass out. Some of them even pass out. By the way, diving into cold water is good for growing your muscles. Don't try to change the topic. Are you even honest? Chun says, don't try to change the topic. Are you ever honest? Jinhyuk says, yeah, yeah. Don't be so mad. I have a sword for you. Chun says, do you know how many times I fell for those sweet words? Jinhyuk says, think about it. I even told you how to remove the attribute sword. Chun says, that's true. Chun says, well if it didn't break when I was fighting the stone giant, I would have used it for a long time. Jinhyuk says, yeah, you've been looking for a new one. I'll give you a good one. So stop being so mad, I'll see you later at the ball. Jinhyuk says, I'm serious. Chun says, I'll trust you one last time. Jinhyuk has his fingers crossed and says, alright. Chun sees Alice and thinks but that girl that's always beside him. Which country is she from? Well, as long as she's not an enemy, it doesn't matter. Jinhyuk says, to Goblin, sorry for all the ruckus. Goblin says, no, it's okay it happens. Are you both looking for a tire to attend the ball in? I recommend going all black. Jinhyuk says, yeah, but I'm interested in other things too. If there's something you're looking for. Jinhyuk says, an incense containing the snowflake canola flower. I smelled it the moment I stepped into the shop. Isn't it strange that a goblin tailor on the first floor would have this flower when it's found only on the snowy peaks of the 16th floor. Goblin says, what do you mean? Jinhyuk says, I noticed something when my friend and I were arguing too. When Chun Yu Sung was oozing mana, all the other goblins passed out. 
but you were fine, and your eyebrows twitched in reaction. When you noticed Alice, it seemed like you realized who she was at once. So, I've come to this conclusion. You're playing dumb, but you're a higher up, probably intermediate rank manager like Rick Hennessy. What do you think? Am I wrong? Goblin says, like Rick said, you really are an interesting person. There is one thing you got wrong, though. I'm not an intermediate rank manager like Rick Hennessy. Rick's the one working for me. Jin Hyuk gets really surprised and uses Eye of Gluttony. Immediately, a message popped up saying, the level gap with the opponent is too large. Failed to open, he is Tower of Trials high ranking manger Hasting. Goblin says, my name is Hasting. Jin Hyuk thinks, Tower of Trials high rank manger. This goblin is one of the seven managers who created the rules of the tower. I didn't get to meet all of them in the past, but to think I'd meet one here. Goblin says, Rick actually told me that there's someone, who already know about the existence of mangers. You're more interesting than I though. Of course, I should reward you. Since you've found a hidden manager. I'll tailor an awesome suit for you. Jin Hyuk says, geez, you're being so stingy for someone who's a high ranked manager. Goblin says, is there something you would like? Jin Hyuk points toward Alice. Alice says, why do you keep pointing at me? It's unpleasant. She holding an invitation. She says, did you provoke him like that just to get an invitation for me? Jin Hyuk says, I just tried it because I thought he'd agree. You like balls. She says, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. Don't you get how dangerous of a goblin hasting is? Those guys are very dangerous. They create the tower's rules. I've only met one high rank manger in my entire life. Jin Hyuk says, don't worry, Alice. I know how dangerous they can be. Jin Hyuk thinks, but as dangerous as they may be. I know that if you use them well, you can reap great benefits. A message popped up saying, the tailored suit and dress are both ready. Have a great time, hasting. Jin Hyuk says, then, shall we get going? He thinks, so this is the ball which only the rankers chosen by the tower can go to. Do you think Maria or Teresa will be here? I wish I could see them. Do you think Unknown was invited? After that we see that some Samurai Guild member are here as well. They says, are these the real heroes that are fighting on the front lines? Samurai Guildmaster Hoshikawa Yoshio. Guildmaster says, Sutomu, look at the crowd. Don't they resemble parasites? Living of the flesh of the strong without trying to get any stronger. Seeing all that trash gathered in one place makes me want to get rid of them all. Sutomu says, boss, aren't you just mad that the guild's treasure was stolen? The treasure won't come back even if you were to kill all these bugs. Guildmaster says, Sutomu, you're supposed to just agree. Sutomu says, ah, right, I have something to tell you. I got a message that Zhonghua Guild was also invited. They said that since we don't know what could happen in there, we should form an alliance. Sutomu gets hit with walking. He gets angry and says, you're getting in my way. He gets salamed into the ground. Guild Manster says, Sutomu. Alice says, what? In your way. She says, how about now? M is still in your way. She says, aren't you gonna answer me? She activates overwhelming authority. Crushing the opponent that's weaker than the user with mana. She says, I asked, how about now? Guild Master thinks, Sutomu, the top ranker in Samurai Guild, was crushed so easily by this young girl greater than. Just who are these guys? Jin Hyuk says, enough. It'll put us in a difficult situation if people find out who you are here. She undo her overwhelming authority. She says, annoying. Guild Master says, it's good that you're stopping her, but that's enough. Was this really necessary between fellow rankers? I will apologize in his stead if it was our fault, though. Jin Hyuk says, I stopped her. He uses glacier formation, and form a hammer, and hits Sutomu in the head. Jin Hyuk says, seems like you misunderstood. He says, I was telling her to get out of the way so I could beat him up myself. Jin Hyuk says, do you get it, Samurai's guildmaster, Yoshio. He give an evil smile and uses Eye of Gluttony. Guildmaster level 52. Jin Hyuk thinks, that's it for the guildmaster of the world's top 7 guild. Why are the copy conditions so damn complex? You bastard. You did this knowing who I was. Guildmaster says, then I'm sure you're aware that we're a mage organization allied with the Zhonghua guild. Do you think you can handle the retaliation from such a large guild? 
Jin Hyuk removes his mask and says, I'm not sure. Do you think you can handle it? Jin Hyuk says, you are. Kong Jin Hyuk. They all see him and says, it's Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, they sure are loud. Jin Hyuk activates. Glacier formation. Don't be scared I just put him up because people were too loud. Jin Hyuk says, I'm sure you've heard a lot about me already. And that such a crude threat won't work on me. To be honest, I don't care what you guys do. But I want you to be careful about one thing. I'll be advantageous for you to not get in my way. Whether you're a guildmaster or whatever. She steps on Sutomu head. They starts to walk away. Guildmaster gets really angry and says, Kong Jin Hyuk. The go inside the palace. Alice says, they've set up everything despite it being just on one floor. He thinks, I've never been to a masquerade ball with this many people before, I feel a bit awkward. Let's see. I see Teresa was invited too. Next to her Maria. I saw her at the conference. This stalker bastard form the suit shop is here too. Jin Hyuk is surprised to see someone and says, those people are. Two more players come she says, what do you think that person will be like? He says, the type to scream until the very end. Then what about her? He says, the type to beg to be let go. His name Casey S rank and he says, everyone looks so fun. Her name is Judalo S Kaos. Jin Hyuk sees them and thinks, the number one on the list of European players to avoid. Casey and Judalo, the twins. They purposefully provoke fights, and slaughter people for fun. But to me, they're just a precious source source for skills. I'm already looking forward to it. Alice sees Jin Hyuk thinks, he's scheming something again. After that we see that Samurai Guild Master is standing with someone he says, he acted like that despite the fact that we're allied. Samurai Guild Master says, I've also lost my companion, so I'm here alone. I'm worried there might be some penalty for not coming. Zonghua Guild Vice Master S Class Liao Wei, thinks, KNAG Jin Hyuk. After all that humiliation I nthe elven forest and tundra, we meet here again. Plus, there's been an order to not get involved any further with him. I can't even do anything. Someone comes and says that arrogant bastard. I'll go take care of him myself. All of them see toward him and says, what? Look at this. Loot at the horn, is it a monster? Are you all enjoying the ball? I'm a lower floor manager, Carmen. Jin Hyuk says, do you have something you want from me? Manager says, I heard that you meet one of the guests I invited to a pulp. Is that true? Jin Hyuk says, the buddy that fell over from walking into my companion. He was hut that bad from that fall. Wow, I guess I should send a flower bouquet or something. Manager says, send flowers. Are you kidding me? You ate begging to be killed. Jin Hyuk removes his mask and says, the host is threatening their precious guest. This party is a mess. It'll be a problem for you too if you try to kill me. Manager says, stupid bastard. You think it'll be difficult to get rid of just you won the first floor. You can't see. But the tower's greater powerful beings are watching from the second floor. But despite what I'm doing right now. No one's coming to stop me. Alice is about to use his skills. Jin Hyuk stops her. Goblin manager screams his name and stops him. We see a flashback where Jin Hyuk sends Goblin a message and says, One of my shit's buttons look loose. I came to you because you were supposed to be the best but what a disappointment. Please come and fix this, or I'm gonna leave a very lengthy review. Goblin thinks, no way. It's impossible that a suit I made would have flaws. Goblin and Rick are in the party. Goblin is really angry and says, Carmen. Goblin hits Carmen on the leg, and says, aren't you going to respond? I asked you what you're doing to my customer. One of the players sees the goblin and says, a high floor manager. That tiny goblin is one. Goblin says, I already knew that some managers were exercising influence using bribes from other powers. As long as it doesn't cross a certain line, I'm okay with overlooking such things. But if a manager is to harm a guest invited by another manager, who would be willing to accept such invitations in the future? Carmen says, I didn't know you invited him. I'm sorry. Goblin says, that's not a good reason, Carmen. You need to apologize to the person affected if you did something wrong. Carmen is surprised to hear that and asks, sorry. Jin Hyuk starts to record and says, oh, this is gonna be a good one. Well then, try apologizing from the depths of your heart. Lower floor manager, Carmen. 
Carmen bow down in front of Jin Hyuk and says, I'm sorry. Jin Hyuk says, did you skip a meal or something? Louder. Carmen gets angry and says, how dare a human. Goblin manager looks toward him with angry look. Carmen bow down again and loudly says, I'm very sorry. A big muscular man sees Jin Hyuk and thinks, controlling a manager like that. What an impressive human. I didn't understand when his highness gave him a gift, but I get it now. If we can bring him onto our side, we might be able to end the war. With those martial artist bastards. Rick activates megaphone and says, I will progress with the ball in the place of the lower floor manager. I will now tell you the reason we invited you here. As you know, this ball is an event with only promising players. As some of you already know, there's a hidden purpose to this ball. It's for all of you to decide which side you will stand on as you continue to climb the tower. Rick activates something and a message popped up saying, starting the main even of the masquerade ball. Prove your worth. Some more messages popped up saying, Tower of Trials, pick one of the dungeons, labyrinths, or historical sites between the 10th and 30th floor to challenge. A player with high accomplishment in the challenge will have an advantage in choosing sides. A red button appears in middle of the room and Rick says, in order to choose the location, you only need to press the red button and say the floor number and location name aloud. Rick and manager starts to walk away and says, then, good luck, everyone. Everyone is surprised to hear that. The starts to talk to each other. The tower's top powers. The ones the lower floor manager mentioned. A girl whistle really loud and says, stop acting like amateurs. We're all players. It's an unexpected situation, but let's find a way to work together and clear this challenge. Why don't we check who each other is first? She thinks, I wanna see how powerful we are. Jin Hyuk sees her and think, Olympus is Maria. I guess she's a ranker, after all. It must be very sudden for her too, but she's getting straight to work. Chun says to Teresa, I guess we're on the same side again. One of the players says, wait, work together. Then you want to be chosen by the residents. A girl there says, yeah, I thought they were enemies of humanity. Maria says, everyone, calm down. Let's talk first. Jin Hyuk presses the red button and chooses. 25th floor, Good King's Valley. Chun says, that devilish. Teresa says, it always goes like this. A message popped up saying, all players are being transported to the chosen location. Jin Hyuk smiles and gives them a thumbs up, they says, wait. I'm not prepared at all. Shit. They all appears in front of the 25th floor, Good King's Valley. You can escape either by completing the labyrinth or by being chosen by a power. Jin Hyuk says, this place feels giant every time I come here. They say, without any preparation at all. One of them screams and says, it's a completion. I'm gonna accomplish the most things and get out of here by being chosen. Maria says, calm down, nothing good will come out of turning on each other here. She says, we don't even know what kind of place this is. I'm sure the person who pressed the button has a plan. We should talk to him. He is not there anymore. She says, he's already gone. Where did he run off to? He is standing by wall inside the labyrinth and says, let's see. It should be around here somewhere. He presses a wall brick and a message popped up saying, five paths leading to the good king's grave have opened up. You can only choose one door. There are five doors in front of him each with different element. He has to choose one of the five paths within 60 seconds. Jin Hyuk thinks, what a wicked message. You would think there's treasure hidden or something. If I choose a door with an element on it, the path will open. But at the same time a bunch of spirits who guard the grave will ambush you. And if I don't choose any door within the given time, a message popped up saying, the time is up. All doors will open as you have not chosen any door. A monster comes out of the one of the doors and says, why is it always me first? It is fire spirit salamander. Salamander says, what? A human. Salamander get covered in fire and says, don't hate me too much. I'm a guardian salamander that guards the king's grave. I will make you pay for the sin of invading the noble king's grave. Jin Hyuk says, did you hear that? He's gonna kill me. What do you think about that? His dragon gets angry and says, Mogi. Salamander is confused. Jin Hyuk put ear plugs in his ears. Black dragon activates fear. Salamander gets really scared and all his fire goes away. All the players outside of the labyrinth feels the energy coming from within. 
Teresa talks to Alice and says, Alice, right. Can I ask something? Did Jin Hyuk say anything about where we're going? Chun starts to walk toward the labyrinth entrance and says, he's probably at the place where the wind just came from. Doing ridiculous things is his hobby, after all. Alice stops him and throws a rock inside. It get crushed by a lot of traps. Teresa and Chun are surprised and Teresa says, you knew about the trap. As expected of Jin Hyuk's teammate. Teresa thinks, but what is it? I feel like I've seen here somewhere before. And I feel a kind of creepy chill from her. Wind Spirit Sylphid also come out and says, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Earth Spirit also come out and says, Salamander, what have you been doing? Water Spirit Undine says, didn't you say that there wouldn't be a situation where all of us have to step up like this? Light Spirit Wisp says, I'm sleepy. We see that Salamander is really scared Undine says, Salamander what are you doing? Why do you have your head on the ground? Salamander says, shut up and do the same. There's a devil here. She says, a devil. All the other spirits see the black dragon. We see that great elder of Murum is watching him through the crystal ball. And thinks, isn't that an ancient dragon? How does Kong Jinhyuk have that? He uses brand of tribulation on all of them. A message popped up saying, you have subordinated the five spirits. Unbelievable accomplishment. You have obtained 5000 accomplishment points. Current accomplishment ranking. Kong Jinhyuk is in first place with 5100 points. All the high powers shows interest in Kong Jinhyuk and ancient Goguma. A total of 13 intermediate forces wish to work with you. The third forces expresses great affection for you. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, then the third force is interested in me. I might be able to make things more complex than they are. Jin Hyuk says, I'm popular thanks to you, Goguma. He accepts Marim's calls. Moyong Su says, hello, I'm Moyong Su from Murum. I'll get to the point right away, come to Murum. Then I'll let you live. There's a commandment to kill for you, actually. Jin Hyuk hang up the call. Jin Hyuk says, to spirits everyone up. We're gonna be on the move soon, so practice what I showed you. You're all gonna be snacks for Goguma as you can't do it right. They all are really scared and says, yes, sir. After that he accepts the call from Empire. He says, I am Penheimer form the Caladium Kingdom, which is part of Empire. Jin Hyuk says, I'm Kong Jin Hyuk. I know that Empire has an interest in me. Penheimer says, it'll be a short conversation then. I'll be direct. Will you work with us? We'll be of tremendous help in your tower climb. Jin Hyuk says, I'll consider it in a positive manner. He says, oh, you're decisive. But, on one condition. Penheimer says, a condition. After that we see that there are a lot of traps in other players' ways. Maria says, how is it? Someone says, Maria, at this rate, it's gonna take hours just to undo the traps. She thinks, so we can't even make progress except for the group that followed the silver-haired girl. I guess things are centered around Kong Jinhyuk once again. A message popped up saying, the return conditions have been changed. All players will be transported back to the ballroom in case of death by the traps or monsters in the labyrinth. This authority has been activated by player Kong Jinhyuk. They says, did you see that? We can get out of here if we die. I have to die. How can I trust that? One of them tests it and she really was sent back. Other one says, shit, wouldn't that hurt? Maria thinks, did Kong Jinhyuk choose this level because he knew about this? Should I ask Teresa to introduce me? One of them screams and says, what are you happy about, you idiots? Don't you get it? Read the message. It says that all accomplishment points will be erased if you're taken out this is all Kong Jinhyuk's scheme. To secure an advantageous spot for himself in the competition. Maria says, you don't know how to be grateful, do you? Do you know anything about this labyrinth? Is that something you should say as someone whose life was saved by this change? If you're so great, then do it all on your own. He says, but if Kong Jin Hyuk didn't press that button in the first place. How ridiculous. Am I the idiot in this situation? He hears someone saying his name in his head. Moyong Su of the Murum. Moyong says, this is the distant whispering technique, don't speak so loudly. Things have gone away, Kong Jin Hyuk need to be removed. He says, I have to do it. Moyong says, no, you would never be able to. Don't worry, your job isn't to fight. A gift arrives in front of him. He says, this is. 
After that we see that, Penheimer says, that was a very big favor I just had to ask the middle managers for. You'll have to keep you promise, Kong Jinhyuk. Jinhyuk says, of course. I won't forget what you've done for me. He says, spirits, if anything touches me, even a molecule, you're going straight into Goguma's stomach. Don't make me say it twice. The five spirits operation mode. Earth spirit and fire spirit picks up Jinhyuk starts to run and all the other spirits are protecting him from the traps. Salamander says, I'm so tired. I'm gonna die. Water spirit says, shut up. Do you want to be eaten by the ancient dragon? Jinhyuk says, what a smooth ride. Jinhyuk tells them to stop. And says, you guys rest here. All the spirits fall to ground and says, thank you. Black dragon is sitting on them. Jinhyuk sees a dead body and thinks, a murdered players was just left here. She should have been taken back to the ballroom if she was killed by a monster. Or a trap. The fact that she's still here means, another player, killed her. We see the twins from the earlier are the one who's killing all the players. She says, the smell of very sweet blood. And he says, let's kill. The series max level newbie ends here. And I will upload new parts as soon as they release them. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $5. My goal is 50 Patreon and then I will become a full-time YouTuber. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. Thanks for watch, hello. Welcome to the 12th part of Max Level Newbie. And first of all, I wanted to say thanks to all of you for your great support to this series. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $5. My goal is 50 Patreon and then I will become a full-time YouTuber. And special thanks to my first Patreon Zoa C. If you want to support me Patreon and Discord links are in the description. And thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. We see a flashback where Casey, Judolo. They were witnesses. To the cruel murder of their own parents by a psychopathic murderer. But even in this harsh situation. The twins revolted. They picks up the some sharp. Casey jumps on murderer's head and stabs him in the neck. Judolo stabs him in stomach. They worked together to successfully avenge their parents. However, they would never be able to go back. A copy condition appears in front of him saying, if you are able to satisfy their twisted desires. You can copy their skill, all sharing. What the hell. Now there's even storytelling in the copying requirements. They both gets really excited and jumps toward Jinhyuk to attack. Jinhyuk gets ready and grabs their weapons and stops them easily. Jinhyuk thinks, the speed and power. The combination attacks. They're pretty skilled. He kicks both of them in face. They both smile and says, I knew it. He's strong. They both get ready again. And combine two pieces of equipment. And says, let's go again. They activate twins. A message popped up saying, coping the weapon of opponent whose proficiency is high and sharing it. Synergy has occurred. Attack power has increased by 200%. Judolo says, just one hit, please. Casey says, I want to smell that blood in my hand, I've never smelled such blood before. Jinhyuk rubs his neck and think, I don't feel so energetic. Alright, let's go. After that we see in the Empire some says, congratulations, Sir Penheimer. Congratulations of scouting Kong Jinhyuk. Penheimer says, it's too soon. I only managed to get him to make a promise. They say, there's no need to be humble. Penheimer says, it's all thanks to you help. Someone says, he will definitely be of great help in the middle floor's fight for power. Good work, Sir Penheimer. Murram Elder is frustrated and thinks, I didn't want to see the Empire bastards happy. It was foolish of me to act rashly just because of the ancient dragon. Shadow appears and says, Moyong Su. It's you, ghostly blood leader. Shadow says, I didn't expect a stern orthodox sect man like you to seek me out. What an incident. He says, lower you voice. This cannot be known by others. Shadow says, so, who do I need to dispose of? Is it that Kong Jinhyuk this empire bastards are talking about? Elder says, no, get rid of the group that works with Kong Jinhyuk. They're always the most annoying when trying to get rid of the Kong Jinhyuk. Shadow says, well, I don't care who it is but since this breaking the floor rule. The fees will be rather tremendous. Is that alright? I was just asking in case don't be mad. Shadow disappears and Elder says, arrogant unorthodox sect bastard. 
Elder thinks, if we get Kong Jinhyuk taken away by empire like this, then I'm dead even if I go back. Then, he bring out a small box and thinks, I'll just have to get rid of him myself. Casey and Judolo swings around their weapons to attack Jinhyuk. Jinhyuk dodges. They both attack him at the same time. He jumps to dodge the attack. He activates Demon King's steps. And he also activates Soul Blood Sucking. He hits them a bunch of time and earns 0.3 mana. They both give creepy smiles and Casey says, it feels like something leaving me. Judolo says, I've never felt this before. Jinhyuk says, if you express you pleasure like that, and punches them in stomach, and says, it makes me feel ill. Jinhyuk thinks, I do want the all sharing skill. But how am I supposed to satisfy these perverts? I've never felt this frustrated before. The both are barely able to stand Casey says, he's strong. Judolo says, yeah, he's definitely strong. Jinhyuk think this is taking up too much time. I guess I have to kill them. Jinhyuk brings out his dagger. They both bow down in front of Jinhyuk. He sees that says, what are you guys doing? Casey says, we realized that we can't win against you even with the two us. Judolo says, if we can't kill someone with blood as sweet as yours, we want to at least be your family so that we can stay close to you. He is confused but still uses brand of tribulation on them. He succeeds in copying all sharing rank a skill. The both are really happy. Jinhyuk thinks, I didn't expect it to be resolved like that. They both grabs him and says we're now family. We're gonna be together forever. Until death. Chun, Alice and Teresa are walking inside the dungeon. Chun says, so, where's Kong Jinhyuk? Alice says, I don't know. Chun says, then where are we going? She reply, I don't know. Chun gets really angry says, what do you know? Teresa grabs him and says, calm down. I can't really say it, but I'm certain. She thinks, the fine mana supply line, connected to the contractor, is heading this way. She says to them, if we go this way, we'll meet my counter. No Kong Jinhyuk will be there. Someone appear behind them and says, I that so. Some shadow soldiers come out of the ground. One of them says, then, I can't let you go any further. You will all have to die here. He is Marim's unorthodox sect ghostly blood leader Yong Ho. Teresa says, stay behind us, Alice. She gets really angry and think, Kong Jinhyuk, where are you? I don't even have man right now because I'm far from you. Judolo is says, right so where was it again? Casey says, the thigh. Right, the thigh. I stabbed them in the thigh with a metal railing this big. I felt their bone break. So with the metal railing. Jinhyuk is frustrated and thinks, I'm running out of social energy. Jinhyuk says, Casey, Judolo. Since you guys are family, listen up. Jinhyuk smiles and says, you can't just kill because you want to from now on. Can you promise that? And activates Brank of Tribulation. A message popped up saying, a new rule has been set. Judolo says, it's not like the cops will arrest us. Casey says, we're awakened anyway. Jinhyuk thinks, it makes things annoying for me. Jinhyuk says, then let's do this instead. I'll pick out the bad guys from now on. You can do whatever you want to those guys, okay. They get really happy. Jinhyuk thinks, I'm glad they're simple. Jinhyuk feels something, and activates Sword Demon King steps. And run somewhere they say, wait for us hung. After that we see that ghostly blood soldier attack Alice. Teresa appear in front of them. And uses sacred reinforcement. She also activates sacred shield. Teresa says, Alice, stay behind me. Chun activates, soul chasing sword chi. And attack a lot of soldiers at once. Their leader attacks him with super speed. Chun blocks his attack with his sword. Yomho says, you know how to use sword chi despite being an outsider. How interesting. Who are you? Chun gets angry and says, screw off. There's no way I'd tell my name to some like you. Yom jumps back and says, what a feisty one. Chun says, feisty. All right, I'll show you feisty. Chun activates, song of swords. And says, I was gonna save this kill for him. Yom says, what did you say? Chun says, this skill isn't something I intended to use on you. And use a lot of slash attack. Soul chasing sword arts, one with the sword. It kill a lot of shadow soldiers. Teresa sees that and thinks, Yu Sung is really strong. Yom says, I see you're skilled enough to be one with the blade. 
But what a shame. Yom uses ghostly blood blade. Chun was barely able to stop his attack. Yom says, you're skilled. But I happen to be your opponent. Chun throws up blood. And some red energy is coming out of his body. Yom says, you would have done great considering you reached that realm on your own. Yom is about stab him and says, awake of a talent. Teresa activates sign of the cross. And hits Yom with a powerful attack. Yom says, what an annoying skill. It was a big mistake to come here. When you have divine power. The surround Allison says, you should have protected that child. Yom says, seeing as you're in the back. You're not specialized for battle, are you? She closes her eyes and says, late. Jin Hyuk appears there and uses grave of swords and attack kills a lot of them with a single attack. He cuts down a lot more of them. Yong gets scared to see that and thinks, I couldn't even keep up with his movements at all. Teresa is happy to see him and says, Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, why are you always losing? Teresa says, it's not that Yu Sing's weak. These people are just really strong. Jin Hyuk says, really? He spins around his finger and says, except for us. Those are all bad guys. Casey and Judolo jumps and Casey sassy, she said they're strong. They starts to kill them Yom's army member instantly. Yom sees them and thinks, another group of skilled fighters. It's disadvantageous for us now. We'll have to retreat for a bit and recuperate. Yom coughs out blood. And says, what just? He stabs himself and says, this is my. Jin Hyuk says, Yom Ho. Don't be so arrogant. You're only a middle rank higher up in the demonic cult. Fighting you is getting very stale. Yom's army gets scared and says, the leader. Jin Hyuk says, twins, there are still bad guys that are alive. They say okay and starts to kill them. Chun sees him and thinks. He killed an enemy that easily destroyed my ultimate attack. With just one attack, he gets angry and thinks, how much more I have to try. In order to catch up to you. Twins kill all the member of Yom's army. Jin Hyuk says, them good job. I still have some work left to do, so you guys go first. Make sure to avoid the traps. Teresa says, to Jin Hyuk, those two are the infamous. Jin Hyuk says, yes, they're my company's new employees. Chun says, what are you gonna do now? From what I can remember, this labyrinth takes at least 20 days to complete. Jin Hyuk says, 20 days. Newbies must have all the time in the world. Jin Hyuk asks Teresa, what's wrong with him? She says, I'm not sure. Jin Hyuk says, these guys will open the path to the king's grave. All five spirits stand in front of him doing a pose. Jin Hyuk says, if we get the right items there, we'll be able to clear this place in an hour. Alice sees them and says, you've gotten a lot more pets. Teresa picks up the dragon and says, wow, they're so cute. Jin Hyuk says, enough fooling around. Show us the path. Spirit says, yes, sir. One of the Yom's soldiers is alive and open his eyes. After that we see at Zonghua Guild. Zonghua Guild higher up Xiao Ting. She says, there sure are a lot. She thinks, it's already been 24 hours since Liao Wei and Nangong Tian went into the tower. When will they be back? She sees a lot of people walking on the road and thinks. Everyone seems to be at peace. Would they know? How vulnerable they are right now. In a situation where the world's top rankers are unreachable. She thinks, there's no need to worry the civilians. We see back inside the tower, all the spirits are using their full power to open the door. They go inside the king's grave. There are a lot of treasures. Jin Hyuk says, everyone, don't touch the treasure. Message popped up saying, those who have entered the grave may pick a trees. Those who are greedy will be inflicted with the king's curse. Jin Hyuk says, pick just one. Jin Hyuk points toward the golden bell and says, can you see that? If you ring it, the path out of this labyrinth opens. It's that easy. Yeah, if you're gonna keep complaining, just ring that thing and leave. I don't wanna hear it. Jin Hyuk says, it should be around here somewhere. A shadow soldier appears on the door. Chun says, what are you doing here? I didn't know you were alive. He brings out a scroll and use early spring. Spatial transition I happening. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, spatial transition. Muram elder and a big samurai army appear in front of them. Soldier says, the ghostly blood troop died with the leader. Elder says, useless things. I knew the unorthodox sect couldn't be trusted. Good job, Liao Wei. Jin Hyuk says, you used a divine artifact Zhu to find me. Wouldn't the manager be mad about this if they were to find out? 
He opens up a small box there is small black pill inside it. He says, mangers cannot look into this labyrinth. Elder eats the pill and says, no one will know if I kill you all. So why would I worry? He uses great reverting pill. He gets buffed and says, I'm overflowing with power. Message popped up saying, all stats will be increased twofold for an hour. Power that wasn't refined within the time limit will disappear. They fell really strong mana pressure. Alice smiles and says, such inferior beings. Jin Hyuk puts her back into the ring. She says, what the hell? Jin Hyuk thinks, it's gonna be a problem if you get involved, just stay there. Elder screams and says, kill them all. His army runs toward them and says, yes sir. Teresa says, there are a lot of them. Jin Hyuk says, is that so? Then we can also summon allies. He summoned the five spirits. Battle mode. The all turns into really big monsters. Jin Hyuk says, go. Elder says, fight special spirit forces. Show them the power of martial arts. Teresa sees all this and says, I don't know what we should do. Elder jumps using his full force. He appears above Jin Hyuk ready to attack and uses wall breaking fist. Jin Hyuk jumps to dodge the attack and his fist hits the ground a huge explosion happens. Elder tries to punch him again and again, and says, you arrogant bastard. Stop dodging like a rat and fight me. Jin Hyuk sees something and says, oh, found it. Jin Hyuk picks up the item he was looking for and says, what? Way did you stop talking? You must know what this is. Elder says, that's the most disturbing divine artifact of the 25th floor. Horn that brings despair. Jin Hyuk says, yes, that's right. It's a divine artifact that causes a disastrous event each time you blow it. It's said that the fourth time you blow it, a great fortune will follow. Elder gets angry and says, do you think I'm stupid? You think you can survive after calling forth the three disasters in this enclosed space? If you think you can threaten me with that kind of. Jin Hyuk blows up the horn of despair. Elder is shocked out of his mind to see that. A message popped up saying, the first despair is coming. A really big scorpion appears there. A message popped up saying the grave's first disaster, black scorpion, has appeared. Scorpion attacks using his tail. A big explosion happened, a lot of soldier are flying because of the explosion. Teresa says, wait, I can't see Alice. Chun says, Teresa, this about saving yourself first. Chun activates battlefield selection. Elder gets angry and says, you. You bastard. Have you finally lost your mind? Are you intending to kill us all here along with yourself? Jin Hyuk says, you're being dramatic. I'm just getting started. Spritz are protecting them. He goes running really fast. Elder runs after Jin Hyuk, and says, stop right there. Scorpion attacks them, Elder steps on the tail of Scorpion and jumps. Elder sees something and says, you insane bastard, stop. Jin Hyuk blows the horn again. A message popped up saying, the second despair is coming. The grabs, second disaster, predator within the mud, appeared in front of the elder. Elder cuts the tentacle of the predator within the mud. It start eat the army of Murum. Elder says to, Liao Wei. Come support me. We need to take that horn away from Kong Jin Hyuk. Liao Wei says. What do you mean? Elder says, fool. That thing is what's causing this chaos. This is too good for you, but take this. Bring the horn back to me no matter what. Elder throws a sword toward Liao Wei. He picks up the sword and says, yes, sir. Fire spirit and earth spirit attacks the scorpion. Elder attacks Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk dodges all his attack with ease. Elder thinks, I must be patient. He'll continue to blow the horn since he's already begun. It is said that on the fourth blow, an enormous fortune will follow. It's certain he's in a hurry to blow the horn in order to achieve that. I'll make sure. It's me who receives the fortune is probably what he's thinking right now. It is said that this horn is supposed to be in great luck. But that depends on the perspective. It can be luck to someone, but a despair to another. Jin Hyuk blows the horn again. A message popped up saying, the third despair is coming. A really big shadow warrior appears. The grave's third disaster, body of thought. Body of thought attacks and hits a lot of them. Some says, be careful. It disintegrates whatever it vouches. Jin Hyuk blocks the attack with the shield. He drops the horn and says, now if I just naturally drop this, it'll be done. Horn hits the ground. Liao Wei picks up the horn. Elder says, yes, great, I will blow it. 
Hurry and hand it to me. Elder says, Liao Wei. What are you doing? I said hand it to me. Elder says, what's the reason you want to blow this on this item? I bet it's because something good will occur. I've worked hard until now. So I will take this. Chance to be a bit greedy for once. Jin Hyuk is surprised and says, wait stop. Liao Wei blow the horn. A message popped up saying, luck is coming. Liao shouts and says, come to me. Luck. Another message popped up saying, the king's grave has found peace again. A gate opens outside of the tower. Everyone is shocked to see that. All three disaster monster comes out of the portal. A message popped up saying the third disaster is coming. After that we see that Teresa is walking left and right. Chun bring out a big potion and preserve you power saintess. The only way to get out of this place is by either rendering me powerless or waiting for the time to run out. Remaining time is 5 minutes. He drinks the potion Teresa says, how can you be so relaxed? Aren't you worried about Jin Hyuk at all? Chun says, worried, about him. Chun smiles and says, do you still not get it after how long we've been with him? Most situation are under that bastard's control. He's the kind of guy who plans the unthinkable. The situation right now is probably exactly what he wanted. He throws a potion toward Teresa and says, there's no reason or need for us to step up. So just sit down and recover. The come of Chun's protective space and Teresa says, where are the disasters? Leo shouts and get really scared. Jin Hyuk is also really scared. Teresa and Chun also get really scared. We see that all the disasters are destroying the world outside of the tower. A message popped up saying, witness the punishment for causing chaos at the site of the king's grave. Teresa shouts and says, outbreak. A message popped up saying, the grave's owner is willing to give a chance for atonement to the grave robbers. A portal will be created to where the three disasters are. Elder has caught Liao. Liao is crying and saying, I have to go. My home is in flames right now. Elder says, stay still, Liao Wei. Elder says, there's nothing you can do even if you go there. This is why I told you to hand it over to me. Elder uses early spring. Ream change happens. Elder says, take the injured and return. Someone picks up Liao and start to run toward the early spring portal. Elder says, this is an order. Elder sees the disasters and thinks, if I were the one to blow the whistle last. Would all of those have gone to Muram instead? I failed to get rid of Kong Jin Hyuk. But I might have been lucky this time. All the disaster are killing people and destroying the cities. Jin Hyuk sees all this and close his fist because of anger. Spirits asks Jin Hyuk, leader. You okay? Jin Hyuk goes through the portal. Scorpion disaster destroy a building. A player is inside the building. Scorpion attacks again. She uses self-defense chi. She goes flying a fall to ground fall away. She is injured. There are some civilians there as well. She says, what are you doing just standing there watching? Hurry and evacuate. She stands up ready to fight and thinks, I have to stall for time until Nangong Tian. Comes back. Ever for a second more. Scorpion attacks her. Jin Hyuk and Chun attacks the scorpion simultaneously. Jin Hyuk says, Chun Yu Sung. Do you think you can hold up against that scorpion for 10 minutes? Chun smiles and says, then minutes. I'll end the bastard instead. Chun uses battlefield selection, and takes scorpion to the protective space. A message popped up saying, transporting the user to the chosen location. That girl says, you're Kong Jin Hyuk. Why are you here? Jin Hyuk smiles and says, why do you think? It's to earn express. Body of thought is attacking civilians. Teresa appears there and uses sacred reinforcement. And cuts down all the attacks of the body of thought. She thinks, there are still a lot of civilians currently evacuating. I have to stall for time for them. In order to save more people. Body of thought attack her. She tries to block the attack with her shield and all the attacks change direction at the last moment. And kills a lot of civilians. All the civilians that got hit by the attack turns into some kind of monsters. A message popped up saying. The mind is being contaminated by the body of thought. She sees that and says, the people are changing. All the changed people are attacking Teresa. She is really shocked. They all grabs. Her shield and sword. The body of thought give an evil smile and screams. After that we see that Chun is attacking Scorpion. He activates one on one. All the Chun using stats will be increased by 10%. The stats of opponent Black Scorpion will be decreased by 10%. 
Chun thinks about Jin Hyuk and thinks, I've never seen him look like that before. Chun says, right, in the end, he's also not perfect. Chun uses the Song of Swords. On scorpions and cuts of scorpion's tail. Scorpion cough out blood and screams. And the other disaster also screams. A message popped up saying, hidden quest is being activated. Kill the three disasters. Rewards depend on the results. Alice says, contractor, do you want some help? I can take those on my own. Jin Hyuk says, no there are too many eyes here. Jin Hyuk thinks, I planned on letting them loose in Muram. Then stealing the martial arts text and the great reverting pill during the chaos. I didn't think Liao Wei's greed would get in the way. He sees a lot of dead people. And says, this is frustrating. Jin Hyuk brings a bow and arrows. He activates two star restraint barrier. He activates Mandara. He is really an attack the second disaster with really strong attacks and says, from now on, I'll be much more precise and perfect in my calculations. Teresa activates sacred healing on the changing civilian. She thinks, I can't let the civilians get close to me. They'll all be hurt by my defense power. I need to get rid of the body of thought first. She activates sacred fall. Goes throw the monster civilians with super speed. She activates sacred reinforcement. She hits body of thought. Body of thought hits her back. She goes flying. She thinks, the divine power is working. I need to avoid the people that the body of thought is controlling and just focus on it. Body of thoughts grabs the monster civilians. She thinks, of her childhood. And someone says, Teresa listen closely. We have a duty to step up when people are in danger. Even if we have to risk our lives. That's the weight of the name Laurentia. Never forget that, my daughter. She gets really scared. Body of thoughts kills a lot of civilians in front of her. She fall on her knees and says, no. Just kill me instead. Just. She starts to cry tears of blood. A message popped up saying, Saintess is showing signs of corruption. Body of thoughts screams really loud. The second disasters comes flying toward the body of thoughts. Jin Hyuk is the one who have thrown the second disasters on the body of thoughts. Jin Hyuk is really angry and says, what are you doing? Body of thoughts grabs the second disasters. Jin Hyuk says, I get that the body of thought is annoying. But what the hell is this? I can't let you die peacefully. Jin Hyuk summons a really big monster. A warning message popped up saying, Tower of Trials is restrained and interfering. A message popped up saying, user's mana load has been increased by 50%. Jin Hyuk says, I don't care about my mana. Jin Hyuk activates overwhelming authority. That big monster creates a really big energy ball in his mouth. Jin Hyuk activates 3 star protection barrier. Jin Hyuk says, kill it. That monster activates sword of punishment. A really big light beam hits the body of thoughts. Body of thought is turned in ashes. A message popped up saying, body of thought has died. Dragon is also with them. Jin Hyuk uses eye of gluttony on Teresa. Jin Hyuk thinks, for Teresa to experience signs of corruption. Alice says, what? Is that Saintess corrupted? Jin Hyuk says, no not yet. Alice says, Kong Jin Hyuk you know what it means. When a Saintess is corrupted, right? Jin Hyuk says, yeah, I know. It means everyone might have to be careful around her in the future. Chun undo the battlefield selection. Scorpion and Chun comes back. Scorpion is dead. Chun levels up a bunch. Jin Hyuk says, you did it. Chun says, you can look down on me all you want. I don't care. I know that I have a long way to go. He smiles and says, but this time I saw how I can do it. Jin Hyuk gives him a sword and you should throw out things that are broken. Chun bring out the sword and says, this is heaven's fountain sword. Jin Hyuk says, good job Chun Yu Sung. After that a message popped up saying, will you return to the ballroom? Goblin manager says, we found out that the Muram forces illegally interfered. Unbeknownst to the mangers, causing this incident. Goblin manger says, I genuinely apologize for this is the tower's high floor manager. However, an apology doesn't make up for it. A message popped up saying, sending high floor manager Hastings punishment. Goblin manager says, Muram has committed a serious crime. I cannot forgive this as a manager. As punishment, I will take Muram force possesses. Those who must choose side, please take this into account. One of them thinks, I can get in contact with neither Carmen nor Moyang Su. I had been investing into Muram, but now they're broke. 
And where's Liao Wei? He sees Chun's sword and says, that's our heaven's fountain sword. He gets angry and says, you stole it. You have the nerve to carry it around in public. Chun gets angry and says, what? Steal. He hits him into the wall Chun says, I didn't kill him. Watch your mouth from now on. You have fulfilled the conditions for copying. Conditions to copy. Provide a cause to defeat Yoshio using someone else. Once you succeed you will be able to copy the skill sword drawing, succeeded in copying the skill sword drawing. Description, attack speed and power will increase by 25% when drawing the sword for the first attack. Jin Hyuk says, nice. Goblin and Jin Hyuk are outside. And Goblin says, it's chaotic because of everyone trying to choose sides. You should have been choosing side with them too. Goblin manager says, I'm sorry about the incident. I apologize again about the fact that I couldn't prevent the interference. Jin Hyuk says, what could you have done? You're just one person after all. Goblin manager says, you're right. But you managed to survive. No, I guess it's more correct to say you vanquished them. What will you do now? Is there anything else I can do as a manager? There's two, actually. They both go inside and goblin manager says, there's a big announcement. Thanks for your attention, everyone. Player Kong Jin Hyuk says that he will not be choosing any side. Players says, how is that a big announcement? Wait a bit. Don't you know the importance of listening? Goblin manager says, instead of choosing a side. He says, he will create a new force. They all are surprised and says, that's possible. No way. Or not even residents of the tower. Goblin says, the amount of points Kong Jin Hyuk collected today is 1,500,000 points. He fulfilled the hidden condition of collecting more than a million points, giving him the privilege of creating a new force. Goblin thinks, of course, we don't know how he managed to find out about this hidden condition. Penheimer appears there and says, wait, I rejected this as the representative of the empire. Jin Hyuk see him and thinks Penheimer. Goblin says, geez, one of the tower's forces has rejected the formation of a new force. According to the tower's rules, this rejection is valid for one year. Penheimer says, Kong Jin Hyuk, what is going on? You promised to come to our side. Jin Hyuk says, I said I'd consider a positive future with the Empire. Penheimer says, you didn't think you could just smooth this over with wordplay like that, did you? We spent a lot of resources in order to fulfill the conditions you put upon us. Penheimer says, don't make me say it twice. Keep you promise. Jin Hyuk says, all of the forces are watching this situation. If I lose here, my idea of creating a new forces will go to ashes. Jin Hyuk thinks, this is the perfect time to use that. Jin Hyuk says, Alice, what I'm not doing anything like you said. Let me borrow this for a sec. Jin Hyuk activates all sharing. Sharing Alice Von Ataraxia's skill Blood Road. Jin Hyuk activates Blood Road. A message popped up saying, you can now control all the blood of the living beings within a certain range. Penheimer thinks, the blood in my body. It feels like my blood's boiling. Penheimer gets scared and says, he was. Never someone I could convince. Into coming onto our side. Jin Hyuk brings out a lot of mana pressure and control his blood and says, do you still want to reject? Penheimer. Penheimer. Gets scared and says, I'll take it back. Please stop. Jin Hyuk stops and says, alright. Goblin manager sees toward Kong Jin Hyuk and thinks a flashback. Where Goblin says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Rick says, I think you better keep an eye on him. I'm sure he will provide us with incredible entertainment. Goblin says, you were right. Now that the rejection has been cancelled. Would you please choose a name? He covers his mouth and says, the name. A message popped up saying, a new force name has been registered. Force name, veteran company. Penheimer says, I'll see you soon. We'll talk about our relationship again next time. After that Jin Hyuk says, Penheimer never tried to be coercive ever again. Beijing's recover progress was quick. Without even trying to get to the bottom of the truth. A great monument for the people who died during the outbreak was built in the square. Someone says, to Xiao Ting. Where is the Zhonghua Guild master, Nangongtian? What will the Zhonghua Guild do from now on? Xiao Ting responded that the Zhonghua Guild, which was the biggest guild in China, had broken up due to disappearance of the guild master and other higher ups of important roles. Xiao Ting says, the ones who saved us from this recent outbreak. 
were neither the Zhonghua Guild nor the government. The ones who arrived first after the outbreak happened were Kong Jinhyuk and Chun Yu Sung. If it weren't for them, the monument would have been a lot bigger. Jin Hyuk is strongly activating Cold Heart. A message popped up says, you are able to keep your composure even in tense situations. Alice lie down on a bed and says, this is nice. I almost died of frustration because they wouldn't because they wouldn't let me do anything. I never imagined you would just create a new force right then and there. Jin Hyuk says, really, will you use all 1,150,000 coins to increase the capacity of the force to 23? Jin Hyuk thinks, after Xiao Ting's interview, my channel started receiving a lot more views and therefore profit. I'll put it to good use. A message popped up saying, the member capacity of your force veteran company has been increased to 23. Jin Hyuk creates the invitation and sends them. The first member joined. Jin Hyuk says, that was fast. Chun Yu Sung accepted the invitation first. After that was Taemin, Yenwa, Melina and Li Yuri's group. There were some time differences, but everyone accepted the invitation. And, Teresa. Teresa says, I'm sorry, Jin Hyuk I already have a force I've joined. Jin Hyuk thinks, Teresa was the only one to reject my offer. I guess it's obvious for a paladin to join the empire. It's okay I assumed as much. There's nothing I can do about it. The boss of the fifth floor also joined the force. A message popped up saying, the entirety of the fifth floor is now a part of the force, veteran company. Jin Hyuk thinks, with that, I have almost an endless amount of resources from the lower floors. However that's not the end. Using, copy free pass. He thinks, I'll also use the reward I got for killing the body of thought. A message popped up saying, you can copy an opponent's skill without fulfilling the copy conditions. Copying Osiris skill, Sun's sacred grounds. Description, you can reproduce the sun's powers. To top it off, I'll distribute the stat points. That's it. Jin Hyuk says, yeah, that's it. It's becoming more perfect than before. Jin Hyuk says, alright, then I'll do this. Alice thinks, geez, I've never seen a human look so evil before. It's hard to get used to sometimes. She realizes something and says, wait. He's the first one to borrow my blood road. Yeah, and there are more weird things. Those aren't things he would know as a human from outside the tower. I better ask him. She starts to glitch out like Jin Hyuk earlier. Jin Hyuk her and says, what are you doing? She says, what was it again? I feel like I was gonna ask you what we're gonna do now. Jin Hyuk says, is that so? We're gonna go to the 8th floor. Of course, I'll take care of some remaining business before that. We see a flashback where Kong Jin Hyuk says to Goblin Manager. Can you give this to someone called Yang Haoming in Murum? He gives him an envelope this is my second request. Goblin manager says, well, it's nothing difficult, but. What is this letter? A deal offer. Jin Hyuk goes to the Tower of Trials 5th floor stalactite cave. A Murum member comes there Jin Hyuk says, you came. Murum affiliated force black society leader Yang Haoming. Jin Hyuk brings out a book and says, then, shall we proceed with the trade? And uses Eye of Gluttony. Jin Hyuk thinks, Murum, one of the main forces of the Tower of Trials middle floors. A world where those who have mastered martial arts reside. Heavenly Demon, who is considered to be the strongest of them. And the organization which worships him, the Heavenly Demonic Cult. Within the Heavenly Demonic Cult, Yang Haoming is someone who is regarded rather lowly in contrast to his skills. Right now, when all of Marim's coins had been depleted, his desire for success is at its peak. So, what is it that you want? Yang Haoming says, so, what is it that you want? A copy condition, Yang Haoming is currently crazed over the idea of becoming successful. If you give him a bit of hope of success, you will meet the requirement to copy one of his skills. Jin Hyuk throws a book towards him says, this is. You're giving me something like this unprompted. What is the meaning of this? Jin Hyuk says, take it. I already got what I wanted. Jin Hyuk thinks, got what he wanted. What is he thinking? It's fine. Even if things go wrong, I have the Black Wind Society's elites here with me. If this truly is the Sword Master's Book of Secret Swordsmanship, this will be of great help in making me successful. I finally have hope of. A message popped up saying, copy conditions have been fulfilled. There are just drawing and stuff on the diary. He is confused and says, what is this? 
Jin Hyuk says, a diary my swordmaster used to write in as a kid. It was really difficult to steal that. He says, are you kidding me? They says, I've burned through so much money to get here. What did you call me here for? You guys were doing so horribly. That is thought I'd show you something. As the disciple of the dragon of heavenly authority the dark emperor. Yang says, what? Jin Hyuk thinks, dragon of heavenly authority dark emperor. The heavenly demon's right arm. An ancestral being with the same roots as the black wind society. They thinks, I don't understand how such a great person's name is coming from the outsider's mouth. Yang stops his troops and says, do not do anything. Yang says, how dare you dirty the name of someone I used to serve. I will shut you up myself. Yang jumps toward him to attack. Jin Hyuk says, just what I wanted. Yan appears behind Jin Hyuk. Yang activates Dark Heaven Arts. And says, die. Jin Hyuk stops him with a single hand with ease. Yang says, impossible. How could you block my, Dark Heaven Arts, so easily? They say leader. Jin Hyuk combine Grave of Swords and Dark Heaven Arts. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, I can copy and combine other skills. A skill created through combination is. Combination complete. Jin Hyuk says, says always a better version of what was combined. He activate Dark Heavenly Demon Emperor Arts. A technique used by the Dark Emperor. Dark Humanity Smashing Fist. Yang gets really scared. And Mountain Top blows up. There's a hole in wall. Jin Hyuk says, what do you think? Do you believe me now? That I'm the Dark Emperor's disciple. Yang thinks. Right. I did hear once that he went outside the tower to recruit skilled individuals. The Dark Emperor's already on the move. Yang bow down in front Jin Hyuk and says, I greet the Dark Emperor's disciple. They all bow down in front of him and says, I greet the Dark Emperor's disciple. Yang starts to cry and thinks, I, too, finally get a chance. To do better in life. Jin Hyuk thinks, Murum guys are so easy to convince as long as you just use some martial arts master's name. Alright, I'll leave everything I didn't want to deal with on the 8th floor to him. The 8th floor of the Tower of Trials. Linear distance 10,000 km. A maze of incredible size. It's almost as big as the Earth's circumference. It's so big that it has its own ecosystem. There are really no other threats other than its size. So the method to clear the 8th floor is simple. Find the power crystal hidden somewhere within the maze. And I, the Demonic Human Association's wild card, Melina, was sent out to inspect the 8th floor. The hundreds of entrances leading to the maze are filled with marked stands. It is possible to earn fortunes off the ingredients coming from the maze. Melina thinks, right, I've been worked too hard by Kong Jin Hyuk. It's not a bad thing to relax and look around a little. Melina says, how much does this cost? She starts to walk away. Jin Hyuk says, where are you going? He marked her and Jin Hyuk says, so. You came to the 8th floor to look into the double impact. Melina says, yes. Melina says, Lancelot said that it's getting much clearer on the 8th floor. Jin Hyuk thinks, double impact, is a phenomenon that occurs when several floors are moving somewhere at a larger scale. She says, it stings. Melina sees something and throws her dagger toward it. He blocks the attack. Jin Hyuk stops him and says, stop. We're on the same side. Jin Hyuk says, Melina, do you really think it's okay to just throw your dagger at strangers at fist sight? Who hides their own allies in their shadows? Let's do some introductions. Jin Hyuk says, this is the Black Wind Society's Woolyoung. A copy condition window appears saying, currently Woolyoung is only with you because of Yang Haoming's command, not because he trusts you. If you manage to earn his trust, you can copy one of his skills. Jin Hyuk sees toward him and thinks, earn his trust. What should I do to get that? Melina says, what's up with you clothes? Are you shooting a movie? A lot of troops surrounds Melina. Jin Hyuk says, tone it down, Melina. There are about 30 people hidden in the shadows. Melina says, great. Then you have enough to clear the 8th floor. She starts to walk away and says, it was nice to see you. Good luck, and see you in the next meeting. Jin Hyuk activates Brand of Tribulation. She comes back and says, let's go leader. After that we see that at, 20 kilometers from the entrance of the 8th floor. A player says, team leader. The scout team didn't come back this time either. They are from Rocky Guild. And their team leader is. A rank player Jack Friedman. Jack thinks something is wrong. 
there shouldn't be any big threats on this floor. A shadow appears in front of Jack and he says, what is happening in there? A monster comes out of the shadows. Jack says, physical reinforcement. A lot of arrows comes toward Jack and he blocks all the attacks coming toward him. Jank starts to shake and says, what's with this power? There shouldn't be any monsters here that are this strong. The shouts and says, it's an ambush. Everyone prepare for battle. One of them sees the monsters and says, what? They're just goblins. I'll take care of them. She activates flame spheres. Goblins doesn't get any damage. And they're fast. One of the goblin hits her. She gets poison effects and chow out blood. Someone shouts, Catherine. These bastards are using poison. Watch out. They ask team leader. For orders. He thinks they, re not normal goblins. They're strong. We'll all die at this rate. Wool Young also appears there, Jack sees him and thinks who. All the shadow soldiers attacks goblins and says, carry out the order. Jack says, you're unknown. Jin Hyuk and Melina comes here. Jin Hyuk sees the goblin head and says, this symbol is. A lot of arrows comes flying toward Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk uses moon hiding nails. Jin Hyuk says, you guys are the ones with the javelins. Jin Hyuk activates sword demon king's steps. All the monster attacks him using. Mana Javelin. Jin Hyuk appears in between the monsters. Jin Hyuk uses, Dark Heavenly Demon Emperor Arts. Jin Hyuk hits them with powerful punches. Jack sees that, and thinks I couldn't see any movements. A message popped up saying Woolyoung's respect for you has increased by 5 out of 100. Jin Hyuk thinks, so he's the type to feel respect if he sees something like this. Melina says, what are all these monsters? There was never anything like this on the 8th floor. Jin Hyuk thinks, this symbol is one that's given by the boss monster on the ninth floor. Plus, ogres don't even reside on this floor. Jin Hyuk says, I get what the consequences of double impact are. Melina says, what? They seize toward the sky. The eighth and ninth floor hive been conjoined. Jin Hyuk says, there are a lot of monsters watching them using crystal ball. One of the monster says, we've got an annoying interfer. Everything is for the great one. The 12th part of the max level newbie ends here. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $5. My goal is 50 Patreon and then I will become a full-time YouTuber. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the third part of the solo max level newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. Administrator is taking a bath and thinks, that's nice. System says, an emergency call has been connected. Jin Hyuk calls him, and says hello. Let's form a contract. Administrator says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Can you contact me through normal methods next time? After that we see that the ninjas are fighting goblins. Jin Hyuk bring out an potion. She asks, what's that? He says, it's nothing special. Just a medicine that only works on monster with this red mark. He bring the potion near a goblin. The goblin smells the potion and gets really happy. She sees the goblin and says, that's called a slave. They see a carriage. And says, it's complete. Jin Hyuk says, let's go. They are ridding the the carriage and goblins are pulling the carriage. Jin Hyuk says, goblin slave carriage. Demonic human says, is this what you captured them for? To use as a mode of transportation. Sung Yoon says, the 8th floor is large, so it's important that we save our energy. But the real purpose isn't transportation. She asks the real purpose. Jin Hyuk says, it's to show that tricks like this won't work. To the new owner of this place. Ninja says, I'll ask you this since you seem close to the liege. Is he always that cruel? She says, you're really a newbie. That bastard won't stop at anything to make sure things go according to his plan. Watch closely. You'll realize that, he's the closest thing to a demon king out of everyone you know. After that we see that Catherine is affected by the goblin poison. Her team leader says, hold on a bit. We'll reach the entrance soon. Administrator gets there and says, everyone stop. T 
team leader says, who is it? Reveal you identity or we will attack. He says, me, I'm just a loyal confidant. He starts to attack them. Jin Hyuk stops the carriage and says, so they're not biting yet. He buys a lot of cheap pickaxes. He activates three star amplification barrier. Jin Hyuk says, let's see if you still won't do anything after this. He activates element of fire. System says, forcibly reinforcing cheap pickaxes. Demonic human is really surprised and says, that worked. Item window appears says, temporary diamond pickaxe acquisition difficulty. Description a special pickaxe forcibly made with the power of an element. Mining range will be widened by 200% for 24 hours. He gives goblins pickaxes. He says, goblin slaves to the wall. Goblin starts to mine. Des Moines human sees that and thinks this is absurd. It won't even take a week to clear this floor at this rate. How does he come up with these nonsensical plans? Should I change sides? Administrator gets there and that's enough. There won't be an 8th floor at this rate. I understand what message you're trying to send. Unknown. Ninja and demonic human stand in front of ready to fight. Administrator says, don't be rash. I have a hostage with me. The precious people you work to rescue. Are resting very comfortably in a nice place. They are giving them electric shocks. Administrator says, if you quietly follow me, I'll safely let them out. Jin Hyuk grabs his face using giant's clutch. Administrator thinks, I couldn't even react. Jin Hyuk gets ready to punch and says, did you think I would care about some hostages? You must be mistaken thinking you have the winning card. But sending you to me when you can freely open portals. Was the worst move ever. Administrator activates black tentacle orb. Administrator is really scared and thinks, I underestimated him way too much. I need to fall back. Jin Hyuk uses dark heavenly demon emperor arts. And punches him through the orb. He grabs him and says, where do you think you're going? You gotta take your share of beatings. Jin Hyuk breaks his teeth. After that we see a big white monster is giving other small monsters read marks. Jin Hyuk gets there through the portal of administrator and says, looks like you were busy preparing. I took the shortcut. So I'm a bit early. Demonic human says, really, this is way too many, don't you think? Ninja says, my liege, there are too many enemies. I will secure an escape route with the Black Wind Society. Jin Hyuk says, Wulyan. She says, yes, my liege. He says, who did I say I was? Wulyan says, sorry. Dragon of Heavenly Authority, Dark Emperor's Disciple. Jin Hyuk says, right. Whoa just watch. These things can't do anything to me. Jin Hyuk says, just trust and follow me no matter the situation. I never let any of my people die. When was it? The last time someone cared about my safety. I had forgotten about it for so long. Is this now it felt? Wulyang says, yes, sir. System says, Wulyang's loyalty has increased by 20. Boss monster says, anyone, get rid of those rude invaders. I will reward the one who succeeds with the 8th floor's territory. Another big monster appears and says, I, the Black Rock tribe's Kangar. I will fight you. Kangar gets ready to fight. His head blows up. All the monster are really surprised. They says, Kangora was defeated in one attack. Jin Hyuk thinks, there are three boss monsters on the ninth floor. Jin Hyuk sees the white monsters and it is scared. Jin Hyuk thinks, but I don't see the other two. She must be scheming something. Shit. He's already here. I need to stall for more time. Monster says, you bastards. Attack him instead of just standing idling there. Bring me that arrogant human's head. One of the hostages tries to live stream and system says, live streaming is not possible. Team leader thinks, I have OT contact them somehow. Away too. After that we see it USA Awakened Association. USA Awakened Association Public Relations Team Ashley says, are you kidding me right now? Why isn't it possible? Jack went missing on the 8th floor. Emergency support team manager Hedges says, Indian and Russian players are very aggressively shaking up world affairs right now. It's impossible to send in American players for support right now since we need to ensure our security too. You know that better than I do, Ashley. Also, the 8th floor is just a big maze. There's no reason he won't make it out of there alive if he just puts in the time and effort. Ashley says, I get that Jack is your boyfriend, but don't be so dramatic. National security. 
My ass. He won't even go it save one of the nation's players. She thinks, Jack is definitely in danger. I can feel it. She sees toward her ring and says, Jack. System says, vision sharing request from Jack Friedman. Sharing the user's vision through vision sharing. Ashley, can you see it? Unknowns here. I don't know how but. The ninth floor's boss is down here on the eighth floor, along with a bunch of monsters. Jack says, warn the world, Ashley. The rules of the tower are not as we used to know. System says, stream has been set up. They see that Jinhyuk is killing all the monster. Jinhyuk says, why don't you step in right about now? Or are you letting me just farm all the express for myself? Monster says, you arrogant little. That's it for your child play. She uses Atasha activated lightning bolt and hits Jinhyuk. Ninja says, my liege. Water spirit says, we are the guardians of master. He brings out the five elemental spirits special forces. The monster says, why are the spirits that are supposed to be on 25th floor here siding with a human? Fire spirit starts to cry and says, we got beaten up real good by master. Jinhyuk says, is, it might turn now. He activates, five spirits battle mode. Jinhyuk says, Woolyung, now, get ready. Ninja says, yes, sir. All the ninja starts to fight. Demonic human says, whoa, this is really chaotic. But it must be really nice to have those spirits to depend on. Jinhyuk activates Brand of Tribulation. She starts to fight and says, I'll show you the taste of Valdivostok's Viper. Alice says, do you want some help? Jinhyuk says, no, it's fine. This situation's completely under my control. For now, at least. After that we see that Saintess gets to his friend's house. She says, Uni, welcome. Take off you shoes. Saintess says, so this is your house. She says, it's technically my grandpa's house. Taman says, Teresa Nuna, it's been a while, Taman. Teresa says, that's. She says, Jinhyuk Opa was on the American news. So I was just watching that. Teresa says, you all already know Unknown's identity. I was wondering how to act like I don't know. Taman says, of course. We've known him ever since his emo phase. So we could tell right away it was him just from the way he moves. Taman says, look at this, Nuna. The 8th floor is supposed to be a giant boring maze. But for some reason, the 9th floor's boss is down there. She says, isn't it too early for that? Taman says, that's what I'm saying. Teresa thinks, he's with some female companions I've never seen before. Ninja is cutting down the monsters. Demonic human says, hey, you. You're super strong. At this rate, we'll win. Ninja thinks, she's jinxing it. After that we that the 9th floor boss Lizard King and 9th floor boss Black Fang. Appears there. The white boss monster gets really happy to see them and says, you're finally here. System says, bone of burned colossus. Permanently destroying opponent's weapon. Branch soaked with pure blood. Permanently injuring the body. This injury will not be healed. Jinhyuk thinks, it's prepared some really annoying relics. Is that why it wasn't here before? The white boss says, why are you so late, you bastards? Lizard King says, why are you playing captain? Black Fang says, do you think this is easy to obtain? Boss says, shut up. Just take care of those guys. Black Gon says, you're being so dramatic over some insect. I'll get rid of him. Jinhyuk says, Woolyung. Yes, my liege. Ninja order her forces to protect Jinhyuk. Black Fang starts to kill them and says, annoying bastards. I'll eat you up. Ninja starts to fight. Ninja uses swift shadow strike. Black Fang says, you arrogant little dog of Murum. Demonic human is killing the monsters. Jinhyuk says, Melina. Melina says, what? I'm busy right now. System says, item being combined. 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Jinhyuk says, you see this? This is your lifeline. Jinhyuk says, if you want to make it out of here alive, then protect this until it's complete. Melina says, I'll do anything to live. She uses Cobra Whip. Sungyun calls, Silphied the Wind Spirit. She uses Leap of Wind. Jinhyuk gets ready to jump. System says, you can leap across long distances thanks to the wind's help. Lizard King says, you fool. I'll kill you once you land. Jinhyuk brings out Goguma flight mode. Lizard King says, damn it. Get down here. System says, livestream is being paused. His friend says, what? Is it over? It was just getting fun. Nuna, 
Don't break the TV. After that we see administrator Rick editing the live stream and Rick says, he make me do so much work. Telling me to edit out the node between unknown and Kong Jin Hyuk. Rick says, how can I continue with this work when the conditions are so picky? Jin Hyuk says, I'll give you an ancient species scales in return. You know that you can't it from anywhere else other than me, right? Administrator thinks, right, I can't let that pass. But I don't understand why. He requested for this barrier. System says, higher beings cannot interfere on the 8th floor. A lot of warning message popped up in front of the administrator. Administrator says, what is that all of a sudden? He opens a portal really quick and goes through it. After see someone saying, amazing. I didn't think you'd be so prepared. But it's not only you who so prepared. System says, the barrier is being undone. The third part of the solo max level newbie ends here. Please subscribe and like. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the fourth part of the Solo Max Level Newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. A lot flying monster comes toward Jin Hyuk to attack. Jin Hyuk says, get me near its head. Jin Hyuk brings out twin dragon sword. And cuts down all the monster. Sung Yoon says to the ninth floor boss. You brought all these down from the ninth floor. Jin Hyuk says, there sure are a lot of them. Jin Hyuk uses daylight skill. Jin Hyuk says, I'm sure it won't be a problem for you even if I decrease your number a bit right. Jun Hyuk uses red magic bullet. The boss monster uses lightning armor. System says, rapidly increases defense power by wrapping the body in lightning. Jin Hyuk kills a bunch of them. And says, I did it. Goguma says, tweet. Jin Hyuk says, right, I shouldn't jinx it. She activates lightning strike. Jin Hyuk dodges all the lightning strikes. Boss says, damn it. Get hit for once. Lizard Man says, the other leaders are also unable to approach unknown. He thinks, this is our military headquarters, but the enemy's morale won't go down at all. No, we overpower them in numbers, so if we just endure. She sees Melina protecting the item and says, that item. System says, synthesis complete. String that connects faith has been completed. String that connects faith, is reacting with boundary bending mirror. Melina says, I survived this time too. System says, those who have responded to the calling of the user with string that connects faith is being summoned. This item can only be used on targets of a different species. Lizard King says, no way. There's no way a species that would react to the call of a human exists in the tower. System says, connecting to the floor that responded to the call. Frost Blade Tribe's chief, Kalakal, says, responding to the call. Jin Hyuk says, Kalakal, thanks for coming. Three months of magic crystal payment are forgiven. Kalakal, says, nice. Kalakal blows the horn. They starts to attack, and says, for the glory of the frost blade tribe. Lizard King says, why are the ice trolls siding with the humans? Troll King starts to beat Lizard King. Troll King says, there is no warrior who would reject the calling of their savior. The other boss sees that and thinks, impossible. Black Fang is being beat up by ninjas. Ninth floor boss sees that and thinks, the tables were turned in that short of a time period. Jin Hyuk says, everyone's keeping themselves busy. Are you just gonna stand there and watch? Jin Hyuk says, let's get started. Boss monster says, do you really think that? You can win against me one on one. She uses activating lightning armor. A lightning type defense barrier is being formed. Jin Hyuk uses mandala. System says, allows the user to predict the trajectory of the target. She activates lightning whip. Jin Hyuk easily blocks the attack. She thinks, shit, he predicted my attack's trajectory and deflected it with just his bare hand. Was he hiding his real powers? Jin Hyuk activates. Sword Demon King steps. Touches her. Jin Hyuk says, this is your end. She says, wait, I have something to say. Jin Hyuk uses activating dark heavenly demon emperor arts. Punishing circle piercing technique. Jun Hyuk her really hard. She goes flying. Troll King has also defeated Lizard King. Black Fang says, fall back. 
Melina says, damn, it's finally over. Ninja says, the spirits are taking care of the remaining enemies. My liege, congratulations on clearing the 8th floor. He level ups 3 times. Jin Hyuk thinks, I feel like, I'm missing something. Boss Monster says, now that I've taken you attack, I'm certain of one thing. Your level, is nowhere near his. A barrier, appears which stops time, and only Jin Hyuk is able to move. He thinks, damn it, I thought I had prepared enough. But you're here, a really strong looking demon appears in front of Jin Hyuk. After that we see an hour ago. Jin Hyuk asks Melina wait. Jin Hyuk says, I get that you guys detected a double impact. It happens when invading a different floor. But, Jin Hyuk says, I wonder why. You're not telling me the reason you're looking into the double impact. Jin Hyuk activates brand of tribulation. Melina says, it was the higher ups. They said that if I chase the double impact, I'd be able to come across a very special someone. A special, someone. Jin Hyuk thinks damn it, I thought I had prepared enough. I'm the one that ended up coming across. This special someone. Demon says, it's you. The one who interfered without playing. Demon removes Jin Hyuk's mask. Demon says, I was wondering how you were holding it together in my mind realm. We see that Alice is hardly protecting him. Demon says, but some being is working really hard to protect you. I don't know who it is, but the efforts are commendable. You're gonna die soon anyway, though. Jin Hyuk tries to activate's Eye of Gluttony system says, cannot be activated due to the large gap in level between the user and the opponent. Jin Hyuk thinks, please, even just one useful piece of information. He tries again and again. Luck gets activated. System says, only a part of the information can be unlocked because of the Popoance level. Jin Hyuk says, Ma. Demon asks what? Jin Hyuk says, Ma Chedra, the one who consumes death. Demon is really surprised. Jin Hyuk says, I've been waiting for you. Jin Hyuk says, the opponent is being freed from mind realm. Demon says, you, how do you know my real name? A window appears saying, name Machedra. The one who consumes death. All the other information cannot be seen. Another window appears saying, description. Machedroth is an aristocrat in the position of a count. He ranks 26th among the demons and can cast very advanced magic spells. The demon realm is currently rampant with war over the rankings. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, seems like Alice passed out trying to resist the barrier. All my teammates are frozen. Even Goguma and the spirits. The likelihood of me winning against this demon in a face-to-face -face fight. 0%. Demon says, answer me, human. Jin Hyuk thinks, then the only method I have left. Jin Hyuk says, I'm a dark disciple of the rotting heart. Varial, one of the demon realm's demon kings. Ma Chedroth says, what? Dark disciple. Jin Hyuk says, are you aware of the human organization called the Demonic Human Association which worships demons? I worked with the Demonic Human over there to find you. As you're well aware, Demon King Varial is not interested in the rankings of the demon realm. He only does what interests him. At first, I only wanted to become a dark disciple. But I learned a lot more about myself as I continued to serve his majesty. That I'm a bit more of an ambitious person. Ma Chedroth says, ambitious. Jin Hyuk says, yes, I want to serve another demon king. Ma Chedroth says, considering what you know about me. And the faint demon Chi, you must be a dark disciple. Ma Chedroth activates black bullet. And says, but do you have that much value? You better be worth quite a lot. For me to overlook that fact that you interrupted my plans. Then prove it, your value. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, of course. Jin Hyuk activates Sun's sacred grounds. Ma Chedroth thinks my mind realm is being covered with another. Ma Chedroth is really surprised and thinks, this is. After that we see, ancient Egyptian god Osiris, says, isn't there anything fun going on? I'm so damn bored. Osiris feels something, and says, what? Who's using my skills without my permission? Ma Chedroth is standing on the Sun's sacred grounds. He thinks, it's not perfect. But this is definitely the power of an Egyptian god. Jin Hyuk says, what do you think? About my ambitions. I've even walked into the territory of gods. Ma Chedroth smiles and says, you sure are an interesting human. System says, undoing mind realm. They all starts to move and Melina says, what? I just felt something strange. Jack and his team is passed out. Melina says, why are those guys passed out? 
Wuliang thinks, I feel like I've been exposed to very strong demon chi. But if the liege is okay. Jin Hyuk is holding an item. Demon says to him take this. Demon gives rupture key to Jin Hyuk. And says, you'll need it to undo the contract with a demon. Find a rupture that appears in the tower and use that key to enter. I'm sure you won't have a hard time finding a rupture. I met a few dark disciples. But you're the most interesting and bold one. I can't help but admit that Varile has quite a good taste in disciples. Jin Hyuk thinks, he's met a few dark disciples. Does that mean there are already players who have become dark disciples? Alice says, contractor, are you okay? Jin Hyuk says, yeah, thanks to you. Alice says, that bastard was a high-ranking demon that uses really advanced magic. I can count on one hand how many times I've experienced time-stopping magic. Are you sure it'll be okay to lie to someone like that? Jin Hyuk says, it's okay, Alice. Don't worry too much. I have a plan. Jin Hyuk touches a crystal and system says, you have cleared the 8th floor. You have defeated the 9th floor's boss monster, Natasha. You have cleared the 9th floor. Ninja says, my liege, congratulations once again. What will you do now? Jin Hyuk levels up 3 times. He says, I'm gonna complain. Jin Hyuk goes the great magic library. Say to Rick with very angry look on his face that, why don't we talk? Dear great manager, Rick Hennessy. Rick says, the barrier for stopping the intervention of a higher being. It was definitely completed without any problems. But for some reason, while I was gone, a hole appeared in the barrier. Rick says, you're expecting me to believe that a hole formed in a barrier made by an intermediate manager. And what kind of new and original excuse is you not being here when it happened? That day Muram ambushed the empire. As the intermediate manager, I had no choice but to go to the scene. Jin Hyuk thinks, Muram is at war with the empire. Their forces must be much weaker now because of the coin penalty. How did they? I guess I can't use this as an excuse to nullify the contract with you. Rick says, then, as expression of apology. I'll let you purchase, one of my items. As you the items I have are a collection of very rare things. Just getting the opportunity to purchase these items, is an incredible reward. Jin Hyuk sees him and thinks, look at him, he's trying so hard to sell me stuff. Jin Hyuk says, I assume the currency is still, the scales of an ancient species. Jin Hyuk takes out the dragon. Rick sees him and gets really happy and says, look at those shiny scales. I cannot say no to an ancient species. Jin Hyuk says, then let's trade one scale for a rupture compass. What do you think? It's pretty similar to the original promise, no. One scale for a rupture compass. Rick says, the ancient dragon you have there isn't even fully mature yet. And we don't know his name, so I don't think I can really settle with just one scale. Rupture compass. I'm so low on stock too. What will I live off of if I give it away like that? I'm not made of money, you know. Rick activates bargain. Rick says, so, I'll sell it for 10 scales and a week's rent of the ancient species. A special deal for you. It's basically a loss for me, it's a charity at this. Rate. Jin Hyuk thinks, this bastard is infamous for driving hard bargains for everything and anything. The infamous great merchant organization's master. Jin Hyuk, says, never mind. Rick is surprised and says, what do you mean? You don't need the compass. I was gonna be nice, but you want to knock down the price like that. I think it'd be better to talk to Hastings. From what I know, going against the contract with a manager is a pretty heavy crime. First, it was a lower floor manager, and now it's the intermediate floor manager. I'm sure the high floor manager will be real happy to hear about this. Rick says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Wait. Alright. I'll give it to you for one scale. Are you satisfied? Jin Hyuk gives an evil smile. Jin Hyuk says, then I'll take just one scale, Goguma. It'll sting just a little bit. Goguma starts to cry. Jin Hyuk says, no, Goguma. Don't make that face. He make really cute face. They are not able to handle cuteness. Jin Hyuk says, I can't do this. Rick says, I'll, just receive the payment later. Goguma gets really happy. Jin Hyuk gets the rupture compass. System says, an item that points towards a rupture in the tower. Jin Hyuk says, nice deal. Rick says, anyway, please keep what happened a secret from Hastings. Jin Hyuk stops and says, and one more thing. A lower floor manager called Carmen. Keeps intervening in the tower matters. 
I hope he'll be punished accordingly. Rick says, Carmen, don't worry about him, I'll make sure he'll never even show his face again. Carmen says, please spare me. I made a mistake. If you spare me, I will make up for this mistake. Please have mercy. Someone is mixing sugar in tea and says, a mistake. I merged the 8th and 9th floors so that you couldn't fail. A high-ranked demon was there too. I went to such lengths, yet you call you failure a mistake. That's called incompetence. They attack Carmen and Carmen says, please just give me one more chance. Please don't kill me, Sir Hastings. It's the goblin managers. That is punishing Carmen. Hastings says, why am I only surrounded by idiots? Don't be too concerned, please. I'll make sure no one can approach the sanctuary. Some give an really evil smile. Jin Hyuk says, the next day, a video was uploaded to the Hall of Fame. This video was edited by a manager. Comments are going nuts, they says, it's unknown. I want to see the original. I've never seen a player clear two floors at once. That's what martial arts is. I wonder who'll win if unknown goes up against Kong Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, the more famous unknown became, the more a certain question was asked. Someone says, objectively speaking, unknown would win. They says, bullshit. Kong Jin Hyuk would win 100%. I don't know, but I don't think AC we'll ever see them fight anyway. What are you talking about? Unknown would win, of course. Unknown was top tier ever since the Hall of the Depraved. He's just built different. We see at the Hall of Depraved. Jin Hyuk is now level 74. He thinks, I leveled up 7 times at once, not bad. Jin Hyuk says, you're back. What's with you face? Did things not go well? She brings out poor Wait's necklace. And says, no, it did, but he's not listening. I think he's satisfied with something. We see 15 minutes earlier. So that's where you were. She activates Blood Road. And says my loyal servant. Awaken. He awak and says, nice to see you, Bellis. She says, will you serve me this time too? Bellis says, Miss Alice. Yes, of course. I, Bellis, am willing to serve you forever. Bellis gets really angry and says, I cannot accept this. Miss Alice, the noble aristocrat of the night, is contracted with something like you. I cannot accept it. Just kill me instead. Kill me. We see Jin Hyuk gets back to his house. Alice says, to think I'd see that again. Jin Hyuk is spinning. The necklace really fist. Alice says how terrifying. The fourth part of the solo max level newbie ends here. Please subscribe and like. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the fifth part of the solo max level newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. Ballas eyes are spinning and he is upside down. Alice says, it's okay, you'll get used to it. He's nicer than you'd think. Jin Hyuk receives a message. And says, this is. He says, Alice, I'm gonna go out for a bit. Train him while I'm gone. Alice says, alright. Jin Hyuk sits on a bench on the street. And also there is also an old muscular man is sitting with him. Jin Hyuk says, coming all the way out here. The empire must be overflowing with coins. Old man says, the world outside the tower is impressive. What do you think about my appearance? Do I blend in? Jin Hyuk says, you should look into it a bit more. You look like a tourist. They goes to the ice cream shop. Jin Hyuk is really surprised and says, what, did you just say? The heavenly demon has come out of isolation training. Old man says, yes, someone witnessed him during the 24 hours floor invasion. Jin Hyuk thinks, the most powerful figure in Muram is already awake. That's a pain in the ass. This is way too early. According to the original scenario, he should only wake up after we're already past the middle floors. Has the marines orthodox faction decided in the end to hold hands with the heavenly demon for the war. Jin Hyuk says, then did you come to see me? To ask me to get rid of the heavenly demon. Old man says, no the Muram force invading us is our matter to take care of. Asking you to fight the heavenly demon would be overstepping too many boundaries. Jin Hyuk says, then. Old man says, our defense system was nullified as a whole during the last invasion. 
We looked into it and found out that it was someone on the inside. Jin Hyuk says, so there's a spy in the empire. Old man says, yes. You're quick to catch on. We want to ask you for just one thing. We'd like to ask you to find the Murum spy. If you capture the spy, then we will provide you with the best route possible to get to the upper floors and the empire's support. We'll contact you again once we're ready. I'll you this one thing. According to our own spies, Marine's scheming something big once again. You should prepare yourself. Jin Hyuk thinks, the demon's lower floor intervention. The heavenly demon coming out of isolation training. The war in the middle floors. Things are diverging from the original scenarios. Everything's happening earlier. He thinks will I be able to continue to deal with these events. Glass wall in front of Jin Hyuk breaks. Jin Hyuk says, I'm gonna need a change in atmosphere. System says, you have entered the first floor of the Tower of Trials. Jin Hyuk goes to the Tower of Trials first floor theme park. Alice says, there was a place like this on the first floor. Jin Hyuk says, most people don't know about it. Ballas says, Miss Alice, I'll lead the way. Please stay behind me. Ballas thinks, I'll make sure to be a better and more perfect. Guardian in this life. Someone else gets there. Jin Hyuk says, you're here, Teresa. She says, it's been a while. Jin Hyuk sees her and thinks, why is she acting so awkward? Teresa gets disappointed and thinks, I knew it wasn't going to be just Jin Hyuk. Why did I think it was going to be a date? Jin Hyuk says, don't be so shy. Did you not enter my organization because you felt bad? I even called Stalker in case you got bored. He says, are you sure we're training here? Jin Hyuk says, I told you so. Now that we're all here, let's begin. Alice asks, what are we doing? System says, activating theme park hardcore event. From now until the end of the event, the use of all skills and items will be restricted. A rabbit toy, gets there and says, welcome to theme park. I'm Ravi, your host. There is just one goal for this event. However, it won't be so easy. You won't be able to use any skills or items. And terribly powerful monsters will be after you. System says, opening theme park of hell. A really big monster gets there and Rabbit says, welcoming the strongest monster of the park horror raccoonman. Alice gets really scared. She destroy the monster with a single punch and says, it's gross. Rabbit is really surprised. Teresa is also killing the monster easily and says, Jin Hyuk, these monsters are weaker than I anticipated. Stalker says, you called me here just for this. Jin Hyuk says, did we get too strong for this? Just think of it as distressing. Rebbit says, wait, my amusement park of hell. It's all being destroyed by these invaders. Rabbit starts to cry and says, stop, you bastards. After that we see at the Tower of Trials 24th floor empire. Namgong Jinyo says, good work. You've managed to massacre one of the empire's prized knight orders on your own. We should have taken you in earlier. Namgong Tian. Tian thinks, so these are the powers I've gained with Marim's help. The world outside the tower was just child's play. Jinyo says, you can freely leave the tower. So things will be much easier for us once you eliminate Kong Jinhyuk. Tian says, Patiark, I can take him down on my own. But HW has way too many strong companions. If I try to kill him, they will surely risk their lives to try and protect him. Then I should do something about them beforehand. Who do you think is the biggest threat? Surely. Amsterdam Saintess. Teresa de Laurentia. Jinyo says, the woman who's protected by the Holy Empire. Then this will be a good opportunity for us to bring them both down. They are all having a lot of fun. Let's bring down Kong Jinhyuk's closest companions. After that we see at Amsterdam. Someone says, so, it wasn't just the two of you going to a theme park. It was just a company thing. Teresa says, yes. It was still very fun, though. Destroying that strange place made all my anxieties disappear. All her anxieties. Was she still bothered by what happened in Beijing? She says, I feel like you've taken after Kong Jinhyuk from being with him so much. Teresa says, me. No. I learned something, this time at the theme park. Jinhyuk seems like someone who's evil and selfish. But he's always surrounded by charming, good people. I think I get why. Ever since I met Jinhyuk. He's always been filled with confidence. He always know what we have to do. And he never hesitates. The time I spent with him was always fun. But I get it now. 
I get that he can't always spend time with just me like back in the old days. She thinks, anyone else would have felt jealous, but she just seems a bit sad about it. What a pure child. Then introduce him to me too. She see towards sky and says, what? Why is the sky red? The feel really strong pressure. She says, what? Is it an earthquake? Teresa thinks, no, this isn't an earthquake. Teresa jumps really high and see something and is really surprised she says. Oh no. After that we see at the fifth floor Andreas territory. There is some constructions work going on. Boss of the fifth floor is fighting against Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says. Look at the opponent's feet when you move. She says. Okay. Jin Hyuk says. Good don't forget to mix in some fakes too. The upper floors are open now are there fewer players bothering you lately? She says. Sometimes, there are pretty strong rankers, but it's no problem. Because. I'm stronger now too. She activates ultimate strike of punishment. Jin Hyuk easily dodges it. She is really surprised. She gets disappointed and says, you blocked it so easily. Jin Hyuk sees her and thinks, she's grown quite a lot. She was just a scared young girl when I first met her. The fifth floor has developed quite a bit from the fanatic den it used to be. The population here will soon part of my forces. Jin Hyuk says, there's a long way to go. Get up. Nothing changes when you just sit in despair. Alice says, I didn't teach you to act like that. She says, Master. Jin Hyuk thinks, they get along better than I expected. Andrea will grow stronger much faster with Alice's guidance. Well, it seems like Bellis is adjusting too. Han Sangjin video calls Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk says, long time no see. What is it, association president? Sangjin says, player Kong Jin Hyuk it's urgent. You need to come to the association as quickly as possible. Jin Hyuk says, urgent. What is it? Sangjin says, there is a large scale outbreak. All over Europe right now. There are a lot of monster are coming out of really big portals. Sangjin says, it's the largest incident we've had ever since the appearance of the tower. France, the Netherlands, England, Germany. Gates are appearing all over Europe at the same time. Currently, Europe's guilds are forming a defense line. But I don't think they'll hold up for long. They are using bullets attack them but bullets don't work. After that we see a player activates flame strike. Player says, sorry, but your attacks are largely pointless. Please go help the civilians evacuate instead. She is Olympus Guild's Maria. Teresa uses sacred reinforcement. And kills a lot of monsters and says, honey now. Mara says, I'm already on it, so. Don't worry about it. She activates a really strong attack flame strike and kills a lot of them. Maria sees Teresa and thinks she must still fell bad about what happened back in Beijing. But she's still trying so hard. You're amazing. Someone says, that's quite the advanced mage for a human. Maria feels really really strong pressure and thinks, what is this feeling? It's like, an enormous force of mana. Is grabbing me whole. Some swords comes flying toward her really fast. He activates mana shield. Shield gets destroyed and she gets hit really hard. She goes flying through the buildings. Teresa says, Maria Uni. A really big monster appears behind Teresa and punches her. She goes flying and hits the wall. The monster says, you're just as sturdy as they say. I've been looking for you. Saintess Teresa de Laurentia. It is a grand death night. After that we see some players are killing other monsters. Twins Casey and Judolo says, I hate how they feel when I stab them. I agree. I miss the days when we used to hang around Jin Hyuk Opa. Judea says, is there no hope for Europe? Casey's phone starts to ring she picks up the phone and says, who is it? They get really happy and says, Jin Hyuk Opa. Jin Hyuk says, where are you guys right now? We're in Dortmund, Germany. Judel says, hung, hung, it's a mess right now. I think it's an outbreak. Jin Hyuk says, listen closely, twins. There is a favor I'd like to ask of you guys. Town says, favor. What kind of favor? They say, yeah, yeah. Whoa, really? Okay. That's not hard. After that we see at the Awakened Association. They are having a meeting and someone says, it's been three hours since the large-scale outbreak across the European continent. The assumption is that there are at least 40,000 dead. Communication through the system with all of Europe is currently not possible. Europe's large guilds are on defense. But with though additional support, it's only a matter of time before the entirety of Europe dies. 
Once Europe falls, the next will be. Well, I'm sure you know. It's an emergency dispatch. I beg of you, all awakened. Please fight for the survival of humanity. Fifth floor boss says, how's Teresa doing? Tell her I miss her. Jin Hyuk says, okay, I'll tell her. Alice says, if, Europe's in a mess, then that saintess, probably isn't fine at all. Andrea needs to put all her effort into becoming stronger. A distraction will be a loss in force power. Then since this is also a matter outside of the tower, do I just stay still? Jin Hyuk yeah, it's not a situation that can be resolved by your efforts anyway. I'd like you to stay here instead and train Andrea. What do you think? She says, okay, leave this place to me. You go take care of things. After that we see Maria is laying unconscious on the ground. Teresa is fighting against the Death Knight. She activates Divine Blade. A lot of light swords hits Death Knight and breaks. She is really surprised and thinks, Divine Power should be a counter to Undead type. But all it did was make a scratch. Death Knight gets ready to attack she thinks, oh, no there's no way to dodge the. Death Knight hits her with a really strong attack. She is on the in her blood pool. Death Knight says, surprising. You held up for so long against me. Paladins are a pain in the ass. Isn't that so? And we see there is an really strong undead monster and his name is Velordum. Velordum says, I see why the Murum humans asked me to eliminate you. She certainly has a very pure and strong divine power. But there's a very interesting energy coexisting. Let's take her. Death Knight says, aren't you, going to keep the promise? The Lordum says, I think I've discovered something more precious than death. Bring that mage woman too. I'm sure they'll be useful. Twins record it on their phone. Jodolo says, did you get it? Casey says, yep, yep, success. Jodolo says, I think they're super strong. Do you think we can win against them? She says, how can we win against monster like that? Monsters like that are. She sends the picture to Jin Hyuk. She says, for other monsters to fight. Jin Hyuk is really angry. The fifth part of the solo max level newbie ends here. Please subscribe and like. And if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the sixth part of the solo max level newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. Namgong Yun, Hwangbo Gunnik, Tang Soha, Jagul Chun, they are in Amsterdam. They say, what a terrible demon realm. Tang Soha says, why does the Muram Alliance employ these corpses? Gun Ak says, yes, we can do this work instead. Someone gets there and says, have you ever considered that things are this way here? Because you did a terrible job on the fourth floor. Yun is really surprised and thinks, she's the first expert martial artist amongst the successors of Muram to reach Supreme Peak. She says, it's been a while. She is Bek Sialan. She says, a soldier only possesses value when he carries out the order given to him. Not when he questions the order given to him, do you understand? They says, yes, ma'am. Valerdom says, you're all here. Welcome to the new land of the dead. I'm Valerdom. Isn't this place splendid? Many wars must have taken place here. There are many types of the dead I can raise. Sialan says, that's enough small talk. We've come to check whether you've carried out your end of the promise or not. Valerdom says, you sure are boring. He bring out Teresa's shield and says, Teresa de Laurentia. The saintess. That damn human was no match for me. Gun SK grabs the shield and says, that woman. She's finally met her pathetic end. Valerdom says, that's a much better reaction. After that we see some helicopters come there. Someone says, we'll be in Amsterdam soon. The gates in the tower that lead to Europe have been taken over by the enemies. That means there is no way back once we get down there. He is awakened association department head Kim Taechun. Jin Hyuk looks sad. Taechun says, are you sure you'll be fine with these members? He says, player Kong Jinik. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, yes, of course. These four are enough. His friend says, we've already been through something similar on the fourth floor. Taemin says, although this one's outside the tower. Jin Hyuk says, what got into you? You never volunteer to join firsthand. 
Stalker says, shut up. I do what I want. Taechun says, player Kong Jinhyuk, is there something else we should know? Jinhyuk says, the boss, Valerdom, is a powerful lick mage. Unless he runs out of corpses, he basically has an endless supply of forces. The fewer citizens killed by him the fewer soldiers he will have. Please stop the gates in the other regions while we raid this place. He says, understood. Tankers from all over the world are coming in by both sea and land right t now. They'll help you with the boss raid. I weigh this every time. But good luck. After that a lot of flying monster attacks them. Taemin activates Machine King, and says, I'll take care of them. He uses Mana Bullet, and kills a lot of them. He says, there are too many of them. I can't get them all. They're gonna get here. Jin Hyuk says, hey, stalker. Watch closely. Jin Hyuk opened the door. He says, what are you? Jin Hyuk jumps and says, how a real expert. Reacts to this kind of situation. Jin Hyuk is going down really fast. Jin Hyuk activates amplification barrier. And also distance expansion barrier. And glacier formation. Jin Hyuk kills a lot of them. And then he calls out Sylphie. Wind Spirit gets there and Jin Hyuk lands on it. His friends are surprised to see his skill Taemin says. His skills are unbelievable no matter how many times I see them. Valerdom feels something and says, this method is. They've reanalyzed the formula of a spell to make it more advanced. Seems like a pretty talented mage is coming this way. Jin Hyuk thinks, is probably what he's thinking. Then considering Valerdom's personality, his next move will be. Summoning a large monster. A really big gate appears. And a bone dragon come out. Valerdom activates view sharing. Jin Hyuk says, then he'll just sit back and watch. Valerdom says, alright, alright. Prepare for death, everybody. Bone Dragon uses a really strong attack called fear. All the helicopters gets out of control. Stalker says, damn it. We'll go down without having done anything at this rate. Jin Hyuk summons Goguma. And says, Goguma, show them what you've got. Goguma also uses fear. System says, a higher being's skill has nullified the lower being's skill. Bone Dragon's fear has vanished. Valerdom is surprised and says, this is. Bone Dragon feels really strong pressure. That it is barely able to stand. Valerdom thinks, who's surprising? How is it that an ancient species is in the hands of a human? Is this the human the Murram guys warned me about? He must be Kong Jinhyuk. Stalker also jumps out of the helicopter. And lands on Wind Spirit. Jinhyuk is riding Goguma. And says, what do you think? Nick ride, right. He says, if you can do it, I can do it too. He thinks, is what I said, but how does he fight while riding this thing? Jin Hyuk says, Yanwa, Taemin. We'll take care of things here, you guys go on. Bone Dragon starts to fly. Stalker says, just the two of us are taking that thing on. Jin Hyuk says, yes, but in order to fight Valerdom, we have to conserve our mana. Let's make sure its attention is on us. Dragon come after them. Jin Hyuk says, I think that worked. After that we see at the Amsterdam Palace. There is a really big army of undeads. He activates skill, all sharing. System says, depending on how much you and your target understand each other, the scope of what can be shared will be increased. Sharing your thoughts. Twins are in middle of that army wearing skeleton masks. Casey says, someone next to you keeps glancing over. Judolo says, it's okay, no one will notice. Whoa, you're right. They're real idiots. They have tied Teresa with magic chains. Casey thinks, we did look for her since Jin Hyuk Opa asked us to. But she's tied up with some strange magic spell that I don't know. And that death knight is guarding her. This is gonna be annoying. Jajalo says, Casey, I think he's looking at us. I'm telling you, it's not the undead or stupid. They'll never notice. Casey, I think it's coming this way. I said, it's not. Judolo, you're being so dramatic. Not everyone pays attention to you, you know. Probably just sees us a hotter than average undead soldiers. Death Knight stands right in front of them. And says, there are some rats among us. They starts to run and says, we got caught. Book it. Stalker uses Aura Blade. But it has no effect on the Bone Dragon. Jin Hyuk says, I told you to conserve her mana. You never listen, huh? Stalker gets angry and says, it's gonna take us ages to kill it if I don't do this. Jin Hyuk says, you're that weak because you don't think outside the box. 
Stalker says, what? Jin Hyuk says, timing is what's important. Jin Hyuk speed up and says, follow me. Jin Hyuk says, you see that portal which the dragon came out of. We're gonna fall into it. Go. They go really fast he says, hold on tight. Stalker thinks, is he planning on crashing the dragon into the ground to kill it? I don't think that would kill it. They go through the portal. Jin Hyuk uses 2 star spell acceleration barrier. System says, spell casting speed will be increased by 200%. Jin Hyuk kills the dragon and system says, you have leveled up. Dragon starts to eat bone dragon. Jin Hyuk says, you did great, Goguma, you can have the head. Stalker thinks, planning to get rid of the dragons around the time the portal closes. I'm speechless. Jin Hyuk says, this, must, be the center of the enemy's lines. Jin Hyuk sees the board in front of him, and thinks, seems like we got pretty near using the portal. I guess we still have a bit to go until we reach the Amsterdam Palace. Valerdom appears behind them and says, amazing. I never would have imagined such a tactic. You're really imaginative. Reminds me of the days when I was human. Back in the day, Stalker hits him with Aura Blade. He says, there's no need for talking. Die. Valerdom heals himself and says, all the humans here are so boring. You're attacking while I'm talking. His status window opens up. He is 3005 years old. And his level is 91. Another window appears saying, description, Valerdom used to be a great mage who was also once a climber of the tower, but he came face to face with his limits and fell into despair. he signed a contract with the demon king and became a lich. He is prepared to do anything for the search of knowledge. And copy condition window appears saying, he has lived life hating every being ever since Havin become a lich. Show him how bitter and miserable life can be. Jin Hyuk says, a physical attack like that won't work. That is illusion of the original form. Only magic attacks will work on him unless we're attacking the original. Stalker says, what a shitty matchup. Valerdom is surprised and thinks, he knows that about me already. He says, I'm a fragile lick I'm Sue Scott. I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Please step up, guys. My dependable allies. Marines martial artists. Beck Sionel also gets there. After that we see it the France. Beck Jinyo says, you've been quite energetic lately. Jang Yunsuk. You were always just focused on women back in the day. He says, I decided to live a simpler life. You're looking better. They both jumps from the helicopter. Jinyo uses Beast's Roar. System says, all enemies within range will attack the user. Defense power will be increased by 30% for 30 seconds. Humanity began their counter-attack. The players who were dispatched all over Europe, fought hard to protect a place that was not their home. In order to defeat the invaders who were threatening humanity. And those invaders, did not take this counter-attack lightly. After that we see that Jin Hyuk and Stalker are standing face to face with Lich and Murram martial artist. Lich says, please take care of these guys. I'm gonna go finish the method to completely destroy this place. Gun Axe says, aren't you the guy who lost to me on the fourth floor? Your name was Chun Yu Sung, right? Yu Sung gets really angry. Jin Hyuk says, you were the one that got beat the hell up by me on the fourth floor, and then ran away. You bastard who do you think I am? Looking down on the Namgong clan. He says, I did not say it like that. It's all because you used a cowardly tactic with that giant plant and ran off. She says, yeah, you coward. Jin Hyuk says, that's funny. Isn't OT because you guys made a mess that day. Jin Hyuk sees, her and says, that you have a guardian now. Beck Seol in stats window appears. She is 25 years old. And her level is 115. And copy condition window appears saying, Beck Seolin's pride for the Mount Wa sect is unimaginable. Make her use all of the skills she has, and if you can dodge all of her, attack for 5 minutes, you will be able to copy one of her skills. He thinks about the Empire's old man saying, according to our spy, Marine's scheming something big again. Jin Hyuk thinks, even Beck Seolin from Mount Wa is here. They must be putting a lot of effort into this. Yu Sung says, I'll take care of things here. You go to Valerdom. You know a lot more magic spells than I do. Jin Hyuk says, there are quite a lot of enemies here. Are you sure? Yu Sung smiles and says, it's just enough for training. Go. Jin Hyuk says, then I'll leave it to you, stalker. You bastard. Where do you think you're going? 
One of them tries to block the Yu Song. He goes flying. Don't even think about going after him. Jin Hyuk goes toward the Lich. Yu Sung gets ready to fight and says, the one to chase him. Can only be me. He activates determination of desperation. Attack power increased by 20%. Defense power decreased by 10%. Beck Sialan says, what are you doing? Attack him. They all starts to attack Yu Sung at the same time. Yu Sung starts to fight them at the same Beck Sialan sees him and thinks, Chun Yu Sung. He's got quite the backbone for an outsider. Jin Hyuk running. He keeps killing the undeads on the way. He uses element of fire. A really big explosion happens. Jin Hyuk feels some dark aura, and thinks, I'm getting closer to the ominous aura. Teresa must be there. Will I be able to stop it in time? Teresa's corruption. After that we see that Teresa is surrounded by dark aura. Valerdom says, you're holding on quite well. How strong will you be once the corruption is complete? Can you stop making me wait? It's a bit annoying because of the increased number of people interfering. But tainting a saintess like you excites me. So, why don't you open the doors to your mind now? Miss Teresa. Death Knight says, Sir Valerdom. Valerdom says, what? I'm concentrating. Don't interrupt me. Death Knight says, we've lost sight of the rats. Some uninvited guests will be here soon, then. I'll give this to you. Lich brings out magic class relic dark angle die. Gather more soldiers and reinforce the barrier. Death Knight says, yes, sir. Valerdom says, and can you bring the human mage we brought earlier? Valerdom says, looks like, she needs some more provocation. The sixth part of the solo max level newbie ends here. Please subscribe and like, and if you want me support financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the 7th part of the Solo Max Level Newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. We see that Chun Yu Sung is fighting all of Murram martial artist alone. Yu Sung activates Soul Chasing Sword. Soul Chasing Sword Arts. They all go flying. Gun Ak is really surprised and thinks, this bastard. He's gotten exponentially stronger. From when I last saw him won the fourth floor. Beak Sianal starts to fight and says, impressive. An outsider using Soul Shossing Sword. She attack Yu Sung. He blocks her attack. And says, Yu Swordsmanship is rather concise. Yet precise. She says, did you say your name was Chun Yu Sung? Do you wish to make you soul chasing sword stronger? Yu Sung falls back and says, what are you talking about? She says, I'm asking if you want to come to Murram with me. I feel an obsession with power in your sword. I can bring you to the creator of the soul chasing sword. What do you think? Don't you want to become stronger? He thinks, become stronger. He smiles and says, that'll be a no. If I come with you, it'll interfere with someone's plans to save a saintess. Sianal thinks, I like him. After that we see that Jin Hyuk is destroying undead army. Death Knight appears in front of him. Death Knight activates dark angle die. Jin Hyuk feels strong pressure and barely able to stand. And the under his feet starts to break. He thinks, that's Valerdom's beloved magical relic, dark angle die. It's a rather annoying item. Some helicopter appears above and someone jumps from them. It's Yanwa. She uses falling angle of wind attack on Death Knight. System says, canceling gravity field. Jin Hyuk is able to move now and says, nice one, Yanwa. Yanwa gets ready to fight. Death Knight says, you little rat. Yanwa and Death Knight starts to fight. Death Knight activates dark angle die again. A really big fire tiger appears and attack Yanwa. She is really surprised and says, wait. That's a bit too much. Taemin gets there and activates Machine Monarch. He says, you've never seen a shield like this one, huh? She gets really happy. Yanwa says, Opa, hurry to Teresa Uni. We'll keep this bastard here. Jin Hyuk is running toward Teresa. There are a lot of undeads in front him. He thinks, all these undead, are focused on stopping me. Valerdom, that son of a. Jin Hyuk shouts and says, I'll do as you wish, so. Show yourselves. Twins gets there and kills a bunch of undeads. They says, you better keep your promise. Promise to live with us if we help you. 
they both starts to kill a lot of undeads. Jin Hyuk keeps on running. After that we see Valerdom says, I know humans like you very well. You're a pervert who cannot stand it when other people are in more pain than you are. They bring Maria there. And Valerdom says, especially if it's someone important to you. Valerdom uses, black lightning. Maria starts to scream with pain. Teresa is really angry and stop it. Valerdom says, this pain she's suffering is all because you're not strong enough. I'm sure you already know that though. That this is all your fault. You knew that none of this would have happened if you were strong. All you can do is watch and cry. As you friends are being killed in front of you. There is no one. You can protect. Her tears become black. System says, manifesting symptoms of corruption. Valerdom throws Maria away, and says, the gates to the mind. They're open. Jin Hyuk reaches there and thinks, shit. I'm too late. Teresa gets surrounded by really strong dark aura. The system says, the saintess is being corrupted. Every feels really strong dark aura. Yanwa says, what? Taemin says, what is happening? Teresa's hears turns dark gray. And some black markings appears on her face. And her eyes turn blue. She says, it feels good to be outside. Valerdom says, that's it. You've been reborn as something much cooler than I imagined. Here, this is you first order. Eliminate that man over there. She bring out a really cool looking dark blade. And jumps really fast toward Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk brings out twin dragon's sword. And blocks her attack. A really strong shock wave happens. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, hasn't your personality changes a bit too much. I liked your old self better. Teresa gives a smile and says, then you should have been better. They both starts to fight really hard. Twins, are watching them. They see Teresa and says, that person, is super cool. Teresa says, I feel so refreshed. Do you know how held back I felt because of that goody two shoes? You always hang around with other women. And whenever I try to get closer to you, that damned vampire kid is with you. Plus, Goody Two Shoes doesn't know who that vampire is. Are you kidding me right now? She makes her sword really big. She laughs and says, you think I'm the only one who felt held back. She swings the big sword and hits Jin Hyuk really hard. Jin Hyuk goes flying and hits the wall behind him. Jin Hyuk sees her and thinks, she's getting stronger. As she absorbs the demonic energy Valerdom is giving off. Jin Hyuk activates Grave of Swords. He thinks, if I don't get rid of her quickly. I'll eventually not be able to win against her. Jin Hyuk activates Demonic Soul Sword Dance. She barely holding on. He activates Berserk Demon Eradication. She gets excited and says, you're quite fast. But, Jin Hyuk stops right before killing her. Why can't you finish the job? Are you hesitating because you're afraid? That goody two shoes blessing of the star won't activate and she'll end up dead too. She grabs Jin Hyuk's shirt and says, I don't like weaklings. Taemin gets there and says, hum. Casey stops her and says, stay still. She says, something is happening to that honey. Teresa says, your face isn't my type either. I don't get what goody two shoes sees in you. But, this demonic energy you're giving off. She grabs his demonic energy and eats it. And says, it's very charming. Jin Hyuk smiles. Valerdom says, stop wasting time and kill him. She says, no. Veliordom is really surprised. She says, Skeleton, your demonic energy isn't bad, but this dude's demonic energy is much better in quality. I'm switching sides. Plus, goody two shoes like you. Jin Hyuk says, then I guess I have Teresa to thank. Veilerdom is really surprised and thinks, no way. She chose that human's demonic energy. But I worked so hard for her. I even broke my promise with the Murram bastards. And tortured some lame human for her. And she's switching sides just because of his demonic energy. I cannot forgive her for this. Valerdom takes his item back from Death Knight. And says, I'll make you pay for what you've taken from me. System says, activating the black engraved dies awakening. Teresa smiles and says, take the Death Knights. After that we see all the undead stops to fight and starts to run. Department head thinks of Jin Hyuk says, block them as well as you can. Department head shouts and says, we need to stop them. Stop as many of them as you can. Jin Hyuk says, so it's begun. There is really really big skeleton monster appears. Jin Hyuk says, the fight with the 14th floor boss. All the undead monsters starts to flying toward the boss monster. Yanwa and Taemin are really surprised and says, what the hell is that? 
What the hell kind of stupid monster is that? Jin Hayek says, guys, please stop the undead that are headed towards Valordom. The association's players are probably fighting them right now, but they won't be enough to stop all of the undead coming from all of Europe. If all of the undead get to Valordom, that creature will get much larger and cause a lot more damage. Yanwa and Taemin starts to run and says, all right, leave it to us. Jin Hyuk is standing in front of boss monster and says, I'll make this as fancy as possible. So that you only look at me. He brings out Earth Sprit and Goguma. Earth Spirit starts to make something. Boss monster is destroying everything around him. Death Knight sees that and says, oh, it seems like Sir Valordom is very angry. Teresa gets there and says, hey, Mr. Skeleton. You're the one who broke goody two shoes, huh? It'll be very different this time, though. I'm much more aggressive than the Saintess. Death Knight says, I'm down for a fight anytime, fallen Saintess. I was curious about your skills anyway. Saintess gets ready to fight and says, you're nothing but a corpse. They starts to fight. She is really excited and act like a maniac, she says, but the way you talk is pissing me off. Death Knight says, you movements are much more agile. But you talk more now instead. She says, stop judging. Death Knight says, why have you abandoned you master? You could have gotten stronger. She kicked Death Knight in the face. She thinks, it's true that Kong Jin Hyuk's demonic energy is charming. By Valordom has a near infinite amount of demonic energy. And Kong Jin Hyuk's demonic energy wasn't enough to make up for that. Teresa says, so, what? Goody two shoes. Are you gonna stay like that? As soon as I grabbed him. We see that Teresa smiles and says, it's Jin Hyuk. She says, Teresa stopped crying. So what other choice do I have? That spirit, those eyes. And the patterns on her face too. Twins are really excited and says, she's so cool. Jin Hyuk says, twins, there's no time to watch. Take care of what I asked you to do earlier and get to Yanwa. They says, ah, right. Okay, Opa. She says, you better keep up that demonic energy of yours. As long as I'm not bored of you. Goody Two Shoes will have one less thing to be sad about. Jin Hyuk thinks, does that mean she might switch sides again if she come across someone who possesses strong demonic energy than me? I guess that's one more reason to train my demonic energy. Boss Monster tries to punch Jin Hyuk. A really big explosion happens. Jin Hyuk uses daylight, and hits Boss Monster with a really strong laser beam. Boss Monster stars to heal and says, it's no use. There are still many more undead soldiers. Valrodom says, quite the excellent magic skills. I get that you're talented with magic. But you're still not good enough to win against me. What have you sacrificed in order to become stronger? In order to become the most powerful mage. I sacrificed all my family, my friends. And even the kingdom I served. In the end, my body and soul too. Valrodom uses multi-magic circle. A lot of really strong magic circles appears. I've given up everything. Twins take Maria and they see the circles and says, that many circles at once. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, is that so? Jin Hyuk activates fusion. Fusing element of fire with glacier formation. You cannot fuse any more of this. Jin Hyuk activates 10 star multi-layer barrier. Fusing daylight additionally. Jin Hyuk says, I'll show you more, then. System says, fusion successful. Valordom is really surprised to see him. Teresa sees that and says, whoa. There are so many beautiful magic circles are in the sky. And Jin Hyuk creates a lot more magic circle than Valordom. Teresa sighs, it's pretty. Jin Hyuk activates infinite magic. System says, you may freely use magic skills without consuming any mana. The skill's state is unstable. There will be restrictions to its usage. Its duration is only one minute. The seventh part of the solo max level newbie ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like, and if you want to support me financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to the ninth part of the Solo Max Level Newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. All Jin Hyuk's better fighting. Monsters. Jin Hyuk thinks. Goguma will make T-Bone stronger. 
so I'm sure he'll be unrecognizably stronger the next time I see them. Alice says, what are you gonna do now? We're gonna go to the mid floors of the tower now. The Murram force began attacking the Empire force much earlier than I expected. If I don't do anything, all of the middle floors will be under Marim's domination. Since the 14th floor's boss, Valardom, is dead, there are about three months to clear the 15th floor. I will build the foundation stone in Tay middle floors while the other players are raiding the 15th floor. Alice says, the Empire are the guns you stabbed in the back last time. Are you sure it'll be okay? What if they try to retaliate or something? Jin Hyuk smiles and says, Penheimer sent me this, it means that they've decided they need me. It ring of the royal family. System says, description, teleports the user to a designated location within the Empire's territory. Single use. Jin Hyuk says, I just got what I need back then. Anyone would have done what I did, don't you agree? She thinks, really, Jin Hyuk uses Ring of the Royal Family, and thinks, in order to do what I need to in the middle floors, I need to have a good relationship with the Empire. For now, I'll use Penheimer, to begin building the foundation stones with the Empire. System says, accepting the invitation of the designated floor's resident, teleporting to the chosen location. Jin Hyuk appears on a table in front of an old man. Jin Hyuk says, you're, the Emperor. Emperor Reinhardt III, everyone surrounds Jin Hyuk, and say, an intruder. Jin Hyuk says, I f up my first impression. Jin Hyuk thinks, Reinhardt III, a legendary emperor who led the empire to its peak long ago. But after his successor died of unknown reasons, he lost his will to live, he has since become a weak old lion. Waiting for his own death, they starts to attack Jin Hyuk. Jin Hyuk deflects their attack easily. He thinks, and Penheimer. Penheimer is taking the Emperor away. Jin Hyuk says, Penheimer is the Empire's Grand Swordmaster. Who will do anything for that Emperor? Jin Hyuk avoid all of their attacks. He says, Penheimer, tell him you're the one who called me here. Penheimer is not there anymore. He thinks, where's the damn old geezer? Jin Hyuk thinks, wait, since it's Penheimer who called me here. Is he testing me, if I kill anyone here? I won't be able to patch up my relationship with the Empire. Then, Jin Hyuk hit them. He thinks, I just need to not kill them. Someone gets there and says, back off, all of you. We will deal with him. They say, it's Grand Swordmaster Abraham and Mackenzie. Jin Hyuk uses Eye of Gluttony, and sees that Abraham is level 125. A copy condition window appears saying, Abraham treasures high best friend, Mackenzie. Mackenzie has a hamartia that he wants to hide, if you find out what that is and bring it up in front of Abraham, you will be allowed to copy of Abraham's skills. Jin Hyuk says, hamartia, that, what an evil copy condition. Jin Hyuk thinks, wait, Grand Swordmasters are the top 10 strongest within the Empire, why are they still here? They should be in the front lines to fight Murram. This is the great conference room of His Holy Majesty. Abraham says, give up any feudal resistance and surrender. He activates Aura Blade. The other soldiers, says, he's using it. The Grand Swordmaster's Aura Blade. Jin Hyuk says, I know. How to use that too. Jin Hyuk bring out his blade and activates Song of Swords. They say, oh, my, his Aura Blade is really long. Then is he a Swordmaster too? Jin Hyuk thinks, all right, the atmosphere has changed, now if I just de-escalate the situation. Someone else gets there and says, do not be deceived. He is a heathen, look at the color of his aura. It's not blue, it's a purple of ominous and impure energy. That is a clear symbol of a heathen. He is Duke Benchtalan. Jin Hyuk sees him and thinks, that bastard. Abraham jumps to Jin Hyuk and says, I knew it. Die you dirty heathen. Jin Hyuk easily dodges the attack and says, that's annoying. Abraham is really surprised and thinks, he dodged my sword without even looking. Jin Hyuk uses the Sword Demon King's steps. Jin Hyuk appears behind Mackenzie. Abraham says, what are you? No, Jin Hyuk removes the helmet of Mackenzie. Mackenzie, is bald. Everyone is really surprised to see that. Jin Hyuk daylight and says, it's real bright. Thanks. Jin Hyuk uses Mackenzie head to reflect light and uses flash bang. Everyone says, my eyes. Jin Hyuk disappears. Duke says, what are you all doing? Find the heathen right now. McKenney's puts his helmet back quickly. 
Abraham asks him, are you all right? His tear starts to fell and he says, I'm fine. Mackenzie says, I think, I'd be less hurt if you guys wouldn't react like that. Sorry, Mackenzie, it was just really bright. System says, you have fulfilled the conditions. You have successfully copied, Accelerant Sword. After that we see Empire Capital's outskirts. There are new wanted posters up. Someone says, apparently he's a heathen assassin who invaded the palace. He sure looks strange. Prize on Jin Hyuk's head is 550 million. Someone says, an assassin invading the palace. Has to royal family's dignity gone down that much? Seems like their downfall is near. Alice says, you became a wanted criminal overnight. It's been a while since we've gone out like this, isn't that wanted poster gonna hinder us? It's okay. It's not a big deal. Jin Hyuk says, I'm sure there are more people who are interested in me now. I humiliated two grand swordmasters right before disappearing. Alice says, is that what you're focusing on when you're being chased? Jin Hyuk thinks, it would have been much better. Had it not been for that Benchtalan bastard calling me a heathen. Jin Hyuk says, let's ask why they've made me a wanted criminal. To the very person who called me here. Penheimer says, you're here, Kong Jin Hyuk. You managed to find your way here. There's a simple meal prepared, please help yourselves. Jin Hyuk says, it's rather shabby for a safe house. Thank you for just ignoring me earlier. You call me here to catch your spies, but then you make me a wanted criminal. He says, I'm sure you're rather taken aback. But I wanted to test your skills since this is a very important matter. To see how you'd react OT in urgent change in situation. Jin Hyuk says, so, did I pass? He says, of course. It's amazing that you manages escape the palace so quickly. You always exceed my expectations. Jin Hyuk says, well, then let me find this spy and get things over with. I assume you've already prepared the shortest route to get to the upper floors as you promised. He smiles and says, of course. But I'm sure you're aware. That in order to gain access to this route. The Empire need to take over the middle floors. Jin Hyuk thinks, what a snake. He's finally showing his true intentions. Jin Hyuk says, so. He says, right now, the middle floors are in the midst of fierce war with. The giant's fortress at the center. But his majesty Reinhardt, is not stable. That is why the nobles are focused on a fight for power amongst themselves. Their goal is to take over the power vacuum that'll be created once his majesty passes away. It's very disheartening to see them fight over authority. When the most important thing right now is to unite against the enemy. At this rate, the Murum force will take everything from us. Then, we won't be able to provide you with the shorted route to the upper floors. Jin Hyuk thinks, the situation's worse than I anticipated. So what do you want from me? I will let you pick something from the royal family's treasures as a reward. I would like for you to lead the raid of the giant's fortress. So that we can conquer it. Jin Hyuk says, giving one of the royal family's treasure to me, an outsider. You might face execution if you get caught doing that. If I can contribute to protecting his majesty and the empire, I'd gladly give my life. System says, a third special quest for one who first conquered the tower has been created. Help Penheimer OT earn the trust of Reinhardt III and lead the empire to prosperity. You will receive a special favor in case of success. Jin Hyuk smiles and thinks a special favor. They shake hands and Jin Hyuk says, all right let's do this, then. For my own benefit, and for your nation, back to the main point. There's something I've figured out about the spy. He says, already, you're great. Alice feels something, someone is coming toward them. And she says, they've got a really pungent mana smell too. Penheimer thinks, someone managed to follow us here. That means they avoided my mana detection. Is it another Grand Swordmaster? Jin Hyuk says, oh, man, looks like you were followed. Penheimer says, I guess my skills have rusted quite a bit. I'll try to redeem my mistake as much as I can. Some monster breaks the door and comes in. Alice says, gross and punch one of the monster she says, I just ate. Penheimer kills two of them with a really quick attack and says, you shall not lay a hand on my guests. Jin Hyuk sees that and thinks, necromancy. The empire should abhor necromancy. Jin Hyuk uses dark heavenly demon emperor arts. He thinks then, there is only one possible answer. 
Jin Hyuk jumps and breaks the roof and goes through. Penheimer says, my safe house. Alice says, it's not safe at all. Jin Hyuk is seeing from from high above. All the monsters see him. Jin Hyuk bring out his bow and activates, red magic bullet. Jin Hyuk kills them easily and come down on the ground. He says, that's enough for pranks. Someone gets there and says, was it not fun? What a shame. I wanted to make a good first impression. Nice OT meet you. I'm Gawain of the Demonic Human Association. After that we see at the 21st floor, Murram. A gate opens. Beck Sialan is there waiting for someone. She says, you're here. Chun Yusung. Come out of the gate. Dot. The ninth part of the Solo Max level newbie ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like. And if you want to support me financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the 10th part of the Solo Max level newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. Beck says, you're here. Chun Yu Sung. This is Murum, the middle level of the Tower of Trials. What do you think? Great view, right? Chun thinks Murum. I didn't expect to reach this place already. She says, aren't you extremely grateful? To me for stopping the Dark Emperor from killing you. We see a flashback where Dark Emperor is about to kill Chun and Beck says, Dark Emperor. Please spare this man's life. Dark Emperor says, you dare stand in my way. Why Beck Sialan? She says, kindly, as a senior member of Murum, be generous and look out for your junior. He is the soon-to-be disciple of Soul Chasing S.A. Young. He must have gained a lot of enlightenment from today's experiences. Dark Emperor says, what? Soul Chasing Young's disciple? Chun says, not even in my dreams I expect you to say the name of Soul Chasing S.A. Young. But why would you tell such a lie? Soul Chasing S.A. Young is legendary master who was active ages ago in Murum. She's either long dead, or if not that, a gray-haired elderly by now. If this is a ploy to lure me here, you better be ready for the consequences. You know a lot about this world. She thinks, he looked great, frowning like that. She says, but gray-haired elderly. That's quite rude of you. Chun is really surprised and says, no way. She says, when Soul Chasing S.A. Young is still going strong. Soul Chasing S.A. Young says, are you the child who wields my Soul Chasing Sword? Jin Hyuk says, go with him into the Imperial Treasury. I'll listen to what he has to say and follow right after. Alice and Penheimer leaves. Penheimer says, are you sure it's okay? To leave Kong Jin Hyuk alone like that. Alice says, worry about those who need it. Young man, you sure have a lot of worries. Gawain says, if a contractor asks you to leave, they've got a hidden agenda. Jin Hyuk says, stop with that nonsense and get to the point. He says, going after Penheimer was the right answer, after all. It's a pleasure to meet you. Jin Hyuk says, now that there's no one else listening, get down to business, yeah. What do you want from me? And if you give the same crap about join the Demonic Human Association or some shit, I'd rather just fight you again. Gawain says, offering you to be on the same side. No way, we're both already aware after all aren't we? Between us, even if we hold hands, in the end, we'd be holding knives at each other's throats. With all this commotion around 10 minutes, should be enough time for the Imperial Guards to storm in here. In the meantime, let's have a friendly exchange of information. Truthfully, we see the Molina says, Gawain, what about him? Well, I don't know much since I'm assigned to Lancelot. What a shame. Jin Hyuk uses Brank of Tribulation. She says, that guy. I remember now. He's one of Round Table Knights of the Demonic Human Association. Unlike Lancelot, he's known for being active on the front lines. He's good at using necromancy and sword arts, and he's got a talent for digging up information. Jin Hyuk says, how great is it when you tell me what you now? Gawain activates scales of trust and target his own arm. System says, each side asks a question in order and that question must be answered truthfully. In the scenario someone lies or stays silent, the scales shall bring judgment upon you. Gawain says, 
Tell one the truth. The rule applies to me too. I'm you must have many question for me. So how about we have a little fun until the guards arrive? Jin Hyuk says, lunatic, you're just gonna tie us down, huh? Jin Hyuk accepts the scales of trust. And, says, great then come at me. After that we see that guards appears there. They surrounds the building, and they check inside of the house and there is no there. They say, there's a high chance it's a wanted criminal. Spread out and search. Gawain says, Kong Jin Hyuk. Not easy, as expected. I almost had my arm blown off. Also, I didn't expect to hear a question like that. Jin Hyuk asks him, how many people in the demonic human association changed their class to Dark Disciple? Gawain is really surprised and thinks, how does he know about the Dark Disciples? If he has this intel, the means he's either secretly in contact with a demonic human executive, of communicating directly with demons. System says, scales of trust are involved. You must answer truthfully. For now, I have no choice but to answer him. Right now, the demonic human association has a total of three dark disciples. System says, scales of trust are judging. It is the truth. Gawain says, I was really shocked. I didn't expect a difficult question like that. But now it's my time to ask a question, yeah. The hidden ruins on the 15th floor. Antichrist's tomb. Can you tell me how to get in there? Gawain thinks, Kong Jin Hyuk has an overwhelming amount of intel about the Tower OT trials. So he must have intel about the Antichrist's tomb as well. Him being on this middle floor right now is proof of that. I'm gonna find the tomb. And help with the Demon King's resurrection. System says, scales of trust are involved. You must answer truthfully. Gawain says, tell me what you know. Jin Hyuk says, Antichrist, are you talking about the place where you can manifest demons? Not telling you. Gawain is really surprised. System says, judging, it is the truth. Gawain thinks, what the hell? How on earth is that the truth? What the hell is happening here? Gawain is really surprised. Jin Hyuk says, the way to differentiate truth from lies is very ambiguous. That's why the skill scales of trust uses the subject's heartbeat to differentiate between truth and lies. In other words, system says, you have activated shallow breathing. You can now control you breathing rate and heart rate. As long as I control my heartbeat, everything I say will show up as the truth. Gawain thinks, now way. How on earth is he fine even after lying so obviously? Not to mention, he himself said that he knows about the Antichrist's tomb. Did he use a trick that disturbs the skill? Jin Hyuk activates three star barrier spell weakening. Jin Hyuk easily frees his arm. Gawain is really surprised. He thinks, he broke the ties with skill. Jin Hyuk thanks because of you. Now I know I've got three dark disciples to get rid of. Now, I gotta find out what you're doing here. Jin Hyuk activates brand of tribulation. Gawain uses emergency escape. System says, in return of moving your body to a safe location, you will take some damage. Gawain says, that unknown barrier and even a torturing spell. Playing games with you is dangerous. Let me tell you a fun fact to commemorate my loss. I took a look at the Murram zone on my way here. Apparently, we're not the only players in the middle region here. Jin Hyuk says, what are you talking about? He is there, the one who lied to me and you about being unknown. You comrade, Chun Yu Sung was with the Murram people. Jin Hyuk is really surprised. Gawain smiles and say, you one-sidedly stole intel from me, and I almost lost my right arm. But I think you've already lost your right arm. Your banter with us was great. But you should check whether or not your comrade has betrayed you from time to time. I'll get going now, all the air looking for them. Jin Hyuk is inside the underground passage. Jin Hyuk says, stalker, that rascal. This is not it. After that you see at the Empire's royal palace, someone says, have you still not caught the wanted criminal? Duck says, throw the man who drew this into prison. His shitty drawing is the reason we still haven't caught him. The Empire's prestige is falling down as we speak. Bring this heretic in front of me right now. Morons. Nothing gets done here unless I take matter into my own hands. We're already out of it from fighting Murram over a fortress, and footing around with one intruder is just ridiculous. Isn't that right, Sir Abraham? Abraham says, all of us saw it. The intruder's aura blade, the aura was bigger than that of grandmasters like me and Mackenzie. 
We caught on to it even without making any attacks directly. That man's either at the same level as me or higher. It might be Wisher to bring him over to our side. Duke says, you fools. Why are you inside the castle? You should be scouring the outside of the castle. Abraham says, he was never going to listen in the first place. Jin Hyuk gets into the castle. Wearing Grand Mage's robe, Jin Hyuk says, try looking for me for 100 days and see if you find anything. I remember it was this way. Penheimer says, no, you can't. I only promised that you could take one. Alice says, what? Don't be so stingy. Penheimer says, you're finally here. Jin Hyuk, she's taking way too many treasures, please stop her. Jin Hyuk says, at least look over the stuff like wine for later. I'm sure you won't regret it. Penheimer says, what are you going to choose? You must only choose one. Any more and it'll be too obvious. Jin Hyuk looks around and thinks, as expected of the middle region, fitting of all the great powers here, they sure have a lot of treasures. But right now, I only need one thing. I'm going with this. It is Red Dragon's blood. Penheimer says, the choice is up to you, but even the royal mages find it hard to use that dragon blood. What on earth are you planning to do with it? I'm well aware that it's hard to use. Penheimer takes the dragon blood. And says, I see I meddled needlessly. You'll certainly do just fine. That's all T4 he help I'm capable of giving you. He give the dragon blood to Jin Hyuk. He says, good luck with the takeover of the fortress. After that we see in the real world twins gets the video call request from Jin Hyuk. The get really happy to see him. Jin Hyuk says, you two are at my house, aren't you? They says, no, we're not. Jin Hyuk says, that, my sofa. They say, no, you're just mistaking it for yours. I asked you to move in with me, so I don't care. Anyhow, I have a mission for you too. They gets really happy and says, a mission. Jin Hyuk ends the call, and thinks, I'm sure Gawain didn't just coincidentally ask me about the Antichrist's tomb. It's one of the few places in the tower where you can manifest demons. If he's looked for a way to enter it, he must have a certain number of artifacts for summoning. Alice says, what the hell? Do we have OT live with those lunatics? Well, since I made a promise, yeah. If you hate it so much, why not buy me a floor below? Jin Hyuk and Alice are walking at the outskirts of the Empire capital. Alice says, by the way, why does no one recognize you? Even though you're wanted, Jin Hyuk says, that's because I may look normal to you guys. But to others, I look like this. Alice says, that's ugly as hell. Why are we standing here, though? Didn't you say we'd raid the fortress? We got a stop to make before we go to the fortress. What's with this shabby smithy? It may seem shabby from the outside. But there's a talented man too good to pass up inside here. The best blacksmith in the empire. Orin. Orin is sitting drunk. Dot. The tenth part of the solo max level newbie ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like, and if you want to support me financially you can join my Patreon only for $1. Patreon and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the 11th part of the solo max level newbie. A special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. At Orin Smithy, customer satisfaction is 1.6%. The undisputed number one most unfriendly shop in the empire. Alice is really surprised and says, what the hell kind of smithy is this? Jin Hyuk says, the place is basically a junkyard. She says, and you call him the best blacksmith. Are you sure we're at the right place? Jin Hyuk activates Eye of Gluttony. His name is Orin. Race, Dwarf, Level 23, a copy condition window appears says, Orin is the endless anvil of the Dwarf Kingdom Pentahorn and one of the five hammers, but he's already worn out, battered, and feeling helpless about everything. If you can make Orin's heart race once again, you can copy one of his skills. Jin Hyuk says, anybody there? Orin is really drunk and says, get lost. Jin Hyuk says to Alice, give it to me. She give him the Imperial Royal Prince 50 years old. Jin Hyuk says, he's in such deep sleep. Then what should I do with this 50-year-old Imperial Royal Prince wine? Jin Hyuk says, 
I brought such good wine, but the owner is sleeping, so I guess I have no choice. I'll have to go to another store. Oren says, wait, bring it here, right now. Oren starts to drink and says, that hits the spot. This is what I call proper booze. What do you want? Jin Hyuk says, we're here to fortify our gear. He says, a fortification job. Didn't you see the sign outside? You came here after seeing that. You're surely something. I'm just a drunkard who's already far from the line of work. Are you sure you won't regret hiring me for this? It doesn't matter to me. I'll be generous with the money, so give it a try. Jin Hyuk activates all sharing. Target Alice Von Ataraxia. Jin Hyuk says, let's start with this one. Jin Hyuk give him the Queen Pendragon's bracelet. She says, what? Hey, that's mine. When did you? Oren says, this is a rare, valuable item. Are you sure it's fine? Alice gets angry and says, I said that's mine. Oren says, okay, well, I don't mind as long as I get pain. But don't regret it. Oren activates metal breath and starts to work on the bracelet. System says, weapon fortification has started. System says, catastrophic failure. It is now, destroyed Queen Pendragon's bracelet. You failed at fortification. Alice is really shocked. She screams and says, my bracelet. Oren says, my hand slipped. Am I still drunk? I'm sorry about that. Jin Hyuk says, it's all right. We've got plenty left to fortify. He brings out a lot of items. Alice says, what are you planning to do with my collection? When did you take all that? After that we see at Tower Trials Level 3 Advancement Temple. There are a lot of players there and Teresa is also there. Other players says to Teresa, I'm a huge fan. What's the deal with your clothes? Where are you coming from? Please appear on our program just one time. She thinks, I came here because Jin Hyuk said he sent someone here, but... It's hard with so many people crowding around me. Twins gets there and says, we're here. Make way. Everyone sees them and says, it's the crazy twins. Run if you don't want to get dragged into a fight and killed for no reason. Teresa says, hello. So you guys are the reinforcements that Jin Hyuk sent. A portal appears there. Teresa says, come on, let's go. I also asked the Holy Kingdom and prepared your invites. Twins says, don't wanna. Teresa says, what, but you need to follow me. They say, I know, but we don't want to follow a weak looking person like you. Where's the black knight from before? Yeah, I could follow her. Teresa bring out the evil Teresa and she says, oi, twins. She grabs him from the face. And without spice, nothing gets to your head, huh? Think goody two shoes words are my words and listen. He gets really excited and says, I like this. She says, what about me? Do me too. Follow me and I'll play with you. How about that? They say. Great. Let's go. Stop pushing me. After that we see that Oren is still failing to fortification of Jin Hyuk's stuffs. Oren breaks another item. Alice is getting as restless. And says. I only wore the necklace on days where I felt great. Now it's dust. Oren thinks. That's the tenth one already. Not a single fortification worked. By the way. Am I really going to be okay? Alice is getting really angry. Jin Hyuk wears blacksmith's cloths and says, You've done enough, get out of the way. Oren says, What do you mean get out of the way? What are you planning on doing? Jin Hyuk grabs the hammer and says, After seeing you hit the hammer a few times, I think I could do it too. Oren says, What did you just say? Jin Hyuk says, You may have once been the empire's best blacksmith. But that being said, I can easily pull off, this drunken hammering of yours. Let me show you. Jin Hyuk uses Pentagris fangs. Oren says, I may be past my prime as an artisan, but you think blacksmithing is easy. Don't look down on other so. System says, weapon fortification has started. Oren is really surprised. Oren see him and thinks, he's pretty good at this. His technique is bold and precise. He's striking at the very essence of the heated metal with accurate timing. System says, using red dragon's blood in the fortification. Jin Hyuk spills throw some dragon's blood on it. Oren thinks, unbelievable, he's going to use dragon blood too. Where on earth did he get such precious goods? Is he trying to pass the limits of the gear's fortification? I'm past at how he humiliated me, but, seeing the whole sword turn red after drinking up that dragon blood. 
is making my heart race. System says, the condition to copy has been met. You have successfully copied metal breath. Jin Hyuk stops. Oren says, why are you stopping? You were doing so well. Jin Hyuk says, I can only imitate you. I can't recreate the essence of a master craftsman's workmanship. So, I would like for this fortification to be finished by a real craftsman. Oren says, me. Jin Hyuk says, I know how he feels better than anyone. The feeling a veteran has after hitting the highest of all stages. He must feel a huge sense of boredom. Where nothing feels new anymore. In the middle of that boredom is this new. Fresh. Spark. The veteran, in reaction to it, awakens once again. Oren is really excited, and says, here I go. He starts to reinforce the equipment. System says, you have reached the critical point of, of equipment reinforcement. Red Dragon's blood has successfully been fused with the equipment, bringing forth the maximum potential of the equipment. You have successfully reinforced the relic, which is known to be a very difficult process. Pentagrit's Canine Blue. The critical hit chance will increase by 7% every three attacks. Special effect. Attack power will increase a hundredfold when the Pentagrit S canine is purposefully destroyed. Oren is really happy and excited. He says, that was so good. Yeah, this is the feeling. Something greater than what I imagined was made. I'll be able to defeat most middle floor bosses with this special effect. Oren says, hey, thanks a lot. I believed I would never feel like this again. But the level I had reached wasn't the end. There is more I can improve on. I'm glad you enjoyed it. If you continue to work with me, you'll be able to experience a lot more surprises. Jin Hyuk bring out the contract and says, you just need to sign this contract. Oren says, suddenly, a contract. Oren says, I prefer to look through each condition before I make any decision. Give me three hours. Jin Hyuk says, of course, one should always read through a contract's conditions. But if you sign it right away, I can promise you one thing. I will protect you the from that being right there. Alice is really angry and says, you damned drunk. You're elated after destroying my collection. Jin Hyuk stops her. She says, don't stop me. I have to kill him. Jin Hyuk says, calm down, I'll let you go if he doesn't sign my contract. Oren says, okay, okay. I'll sign it right away. Spare me. A really loud bang happens outside. Oren says, this sound. Someone says, an ambush. Duke says, what is happening? Did the Murram force invade? One of the soldiers says, it's not the Murram force. It's the giants. They've crossed the borders and are ambushing us. With most of the knights are the front lines. The giants are invading the capital. Get the ranks. Prepare the ballisti. Jin Hyuk is seeing that and thinks, the giants are supposed to be at the giant's fortress as Penheimer requested. Why are they here? Jin Hyuk give her something says, take this. She says, why are you giving me this? Jin Hyuk says, I have a good plan. Soldiers are firing arrows. Arrows have no effect on giants. Soldier 1 says, it's not enough. Solder 2 says, do not panic. Hold on until the swordmasters arrive. Even if they're giants, they won't be able to climb the walls. The giants are run really fast. Two giants get ready to throw one the giants above the wall. The giant come running steps on the hands of other giants and jumps really high. He says, an order from the king of giants, Ograken. Kill the humans of the empire to atone. He gets above the wall. Two swordsmen are coming toward the wall they see a giant on top of the wall and thinks, they've crossed the walls. Damn it. By the time I arrive, they would have done all the damage. He recognizes the giant and says, that's. The giant also sees him. After that we see Jin Hyuk is fusing together the giant's clutch, Mandala, the thousand poison. System says, fusion success. Jin Hyuk jumps toward the giants and activates Colossus ultimate strike. Jin Hyuk says, get down. And punches the giant in the face. The giant fall down. Jin Hyuk says, alright, now. He starts the video recording. Alice says, I will remember this. Contractor, you dare make me do something so embarrassing. She is wearing the mask of unknown. And she activates blood roar. She picks up all the giants. Jin Hyuk activates. Accelerant sword. And sword demon king steps. Jin Hyuk says. The reinforcement effects are pretty good. He ends the video recording. Alice says. 
Did you make me do this just to test out your equipment? Jin Hyuk says, No way, just wait. Soldier says, I'm Alice. We lived tanks to that great mage and knight. They say, Wait, I think I was that person on the wanted posters. Everyone back off. Duke and Grand Swordmaster gets there. Duke says, I watched you defeat the giants. You've managed to hire a strong mage, I see. Grand Swordmaster thinks, I guess it's gonna be another fight. I'll avenge Mackenzie. Jin Hyuk says, have you come to arrest me again? Here, take me. Alice is really surprised. Duke says, what are you talking about? A hero's appearance is God's blessing. He has protected the capital from the giants. Let us go. I'll escort you to the palace. Give us a chance to show you what a royal welcome looks like. Alice's brain is still loading. Jin Hyuk says, what are you doing? Let's go. She says, yeah, the 11th part of the solo max level newbie ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like. And if you want to support me financially you can join my channel membership only for $1. Channel membership and discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my channel membership for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the 12th part of the solo max level newbie. A special thanks to my channel members for supporting me. And if you want to support you can join my channel membership for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part we see that. Jin Hyuk and Alice are inside the palace and Alice says, Heroes who protected the empire. Duke says, We welcome you once again. To the empire's capital, as representative of the empire, I do apologize for the unpleasant incident earlier. The atmosphere has been rather tense because of the war. Had I known that you possessed such excellent skills, I would have sent an invitation much earlier. I'm sure you're tired from the unnecessary misunderstanding that took place today. Please rest for today. We can talk tomorrow. Hey, prepare a room for our precious guests. Hurry quickly. Grand Swordmaster thinks, he was chased out just a few hours ago for being mistaken as an invader. But now he's being treated as a hero. Kong Jin Hyuk what a mysterious man. Mackenzie gets there sees Jin Hyuk and says, Oh my. Why is he here again? He says Mackenzie, I told you to stay put. How about a drink? It'll be my treat. After that we see that Alice is taking bath and drinking wine. She says, This is the life. Jin Hyuk says, Are you that happy? She says, yeah, this is the happiest I've ever been since getting my revenge. I didn't even get to shower for the last few days, wine in a bath it's perfect. Jin Hyuk thinks, having Alice appear as a powerful mage, is what caused the Empire's attitude towards us to do a complete 180. The media will be excited too if I upload Alice as another unknown. I'll get a bunch of coins. And I'll also be able to expand the area that unknown can be active in. By the way, Duke Benchtelin. He called me a heathen earlier, and now he's. He thinks of the foreign S-class hero and thinks, his facial expression suddenly changed. Does he already know that the spy in the empire is Benchtelin? He's just Marine's spy, but it is a pain in the ass, even if I tell Penheimer about this. I can't imagine a scenario where it's beneficial for me. Considering the atmosphere in the palace, Benchtelin has basically already taken over the capital. At this point, it's kind of hard to do anything despite knowing who the spy is. What should I do? Grand Swordmaster comes there and says, How about a drink? I'd like to apologize for earlier. He says, Mackenzie said that. He'd never experienced so much shame since becoming a Grand Swordmaster. Jin Hyuk says, Tell him that's a shem. He says, Anyway, I heard that the outsiders in the tower have only reached the 10th floor. Jin Hyuk says, I'm here per Penheimer's request. He asked me to help with raiding the giant's fortress. He says, Penheimer, he's finally done it after all the effort he spent looking for people to help him. Jin Hyuk says, what's with your face? I came to help you empire guys out, but you don't seem happy about it. Huh, Grand Swordmaster says, Sir Penheimer does his best for the sake of his majesty and the empire. Even if he has to sacrifice his life for it, that's very respectable as a knight. But the empire right now, is falling down along with his majesty Reinhardt. Even if you do bring down the giant's fortress, it will mean nothing without a great leader. At this rate, the empire will fall to Murum. Jin Hyuk smiles and says, is that the only reason you have for standing on Duke Benchtelin's side? To betray the emperor, 
he suddenly stands up. Jin Hyuk says, calm down, I just want to understand things. I'm not asking for a fight. I get it, for the sake of the nation, a person can throw away their honor as a knight. He gets really angry and says, I know that you were quick to catch on, but you're more than that. Well then, I might as well just get to the point. I can give you more than what Penheimer has promised you. So won't you bring down the giant's fortress for the duke instead? Duke says, I heard through Abraham. Thank you for accepting the empire's request. There should be an imperial siege camp to the west of the fortress. You just need to make your way there when you need help. I wish you luck. Do you really think he'll side with us? Duke says, it doesn't really matter either way. Tell the commander to use Kong Jinhyuk as much as he can. Before taking the fortress for himself when the opportunity comes. Abraham says, all right. He thinks, at this rate, the empire will fall to Murum. Could he say that, if he knew that Benchtalin was actually on Marim's side? Alice removes the mask and says, Contractor, are you really gonna side with that duke? Of course not. That bastard is probably racking his brain for ideas on how to use me before throwing me away. Let's think about what to do on our way to Fortress. I think I'll need move information in order to see the big picture. After that we see at the Holy Kingdom setteth. Nuns are praying for a female warrior in front of them and saying, a star that is dying and a star that is being born. All this began with light. Therefore the goddess of light shall bless you. I've never seen something like this before. There is a dark energy, but it's very strange. It's like two fish swimming together in a pond. She is Teresa. Someone gets there and says, according to the rules, we need to immediately purify you. But this particular situation is rather hard to judge. She is the Holy Kingdom's Archbishop Savannah. Teresa says, I'm sorry. Where there is bright light there is also a shadow just as dark. It just means you divine power is pure and powerful. Don't worry too much, child. Anyway, you won't investigate this place. She says, yes Archbishop. With those kids, twins are just playing around. Archbishop says, they seem like very corrupt children, are you sure about this? Teresa says, I'll just have to give it my best. Archbishop says, I can trust you since you're my precious child, but I'll need a reason in order to convince the others. Why are you doing this? Teresa says, my trustworthy teammate told me, that someone will threaten the 21st floor. Someone is preparing to begin the downfall of this place. Archbishop says, is this all God's will? What is it you grace? Do you perhaps have some kind of clue? There have been disappearances of people all over the empire recently. The people who disappeared were all guardians of holy relics. The holy relics disappeared along with them. But with the start of the war against the Murum, we didn't have the people to look into the matter. Though I believe it must be a divine revelation that you have come to us at this time. I'll leave the investigation to you, Teresa. After that we see Jin Hyuk video call her and says, Teresa, I came across the demonic human association on the 21 floor. She asked, the demonic humans, why would they be here? Jin Hyuk says, I think their plan is to summon the powerful demon onto the 21st floor. While everyone is preoccupied with the war between the Empire and Murum. I know how important the Holy Empire is to you. As well as, how much you cherish it. Please look into what the Demonic Humans Association are doing. So that we can protect the Holy Empire. Jin Hyuk says, alright, I'll send some people over to help you. Twin says, I almost died from boredom. They say let's go, find some clues. After we see Goguma the ancient dragon and the spirits are still fighting the ants, that Jin Hyuk ordered them to. T-Bone is leveling up really fast. T-Bone says, I think I've grown a bit. I can talk fluently now. What do you man, so? What? That's so mean. This is all a result of you helping me. All shut up. Please don't eat me. System says, the summoner's call is being activated. They say, are we finally getting out of here? System says, calling in the summons. They all starts to teleport. T-Bone says finally, is it my turn now? Jin Hyuk Alice sees him. T-Bone says, what do you think, master? About my courageous and brave appearance. He is still so small. Jin Hyuk says, I think you're way too weak still for having improved. Yeah, he's got a long way to go. T-Bone gets depressed. Alice says, didn't you call in Goguma? I don't see him. I just told him to go rest. System says, 
Ancient species Goguma is not responding to the owner's calls. Jin Hyuk thinks, he's super mad at me for having him work without enough praise and attention. Alice says, anyway, why are you trying to take that skeleton in? Isn't it annoying? Jin Hyuk you'll see, I wanted to test T-Bone anyway. Jin Hyuk says, I think we should put him up against the guy that's been following us for a while. The stalker thinks, I had completely masked my presence not bad. T-Bone gets angry and says, who's there? Come at me, master, I will prove myself worthy. They appears in front of Jin Hyuk. T-Bone hides behind Jin Hyuk leg and says, there's more than one. They says, the Dark Emperor has commanded us to bring you to him. Shadow Squad Commander Blood Sword White Snake. You must receive punishment for pretending to be the Dark Emperor's disciple. Jin Hyuk says, T-Bone, you take the assassins behind him. It's time to shimmy how much you've improved. T-Bone says, seriously. Alice gets ready to fight and says, you fools, fighting someone you can't even win against. I'll temple you all. Jin Hyuk says, don't kill them. Alice says, why, that's even more of a hassle. Are you purposefully trying to make things harder for me? Jin Hyuk says, no, those hounds owner is watching right now. Dark Emperor says, since he's been going around pretending to be my disciple. I'll see how skilled he is at least. They use Aura Blade. Jin Hyuk dodges all the attacks and thinks, a red Aura Blade. He is on the strong side among those of the Murum I've come across so far. He might be pretty useful. He's definitely agile. Wo Young is also there, thinks Kong Jin Hyuk. Please be careful. The White Sword sword is hard to deal with. White Sword says, you sure are good at dodging. How about this? He uses Blood Sword Serial Explosion. Jin Hyuk says, didn't you say you're supposed to be taking me to the Dark Emperor? Jin Hyuk easily dodges all the attack and says, you're just straight up using murdering techniques. Or am I mistaken? White Sword is really surprised. And thinks, impossible, I'm giving it my all. But I can't land a single attack on hit him. T-Bone is fighting the assassins, and says, don't act so arrogant. I'm stronger than you think. White see that and thinks, it can't be. That little skeleton soldier is putting up a fair fight against the shadow squad. Alice says, think of yourself lucky. If it weren't for the contractor you would have already died. He sees her and thinks, unbelievable. The rest were already killed by that girl. Jin Hyuk says, now that the minions are taken care of, let's test how much that old man Dark Emperor values you. The twelfth part of the Solo Max level newbie ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like. And if you want to support me financially you can join my channel membership only for $1. Channel membership and Discord links are in the description if you want support me. And a special thanks to all my channel members for supporting me. Thanks for watching.